Episode 175, A Conspiracy. Infernal God! The officer of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association took out two large iron hammers. His whole body was burning with a bright red flame, as if a flame devil had descended to the world. He jumped up and the two iron hammers in his hands were melting rapidly. The molten iron seeped into his hands and covered his arms. The temperature of the flame caused by the gene energy had actually melted the iron hammers. The opponent was definitely not an awakened practitioner who had three gene chains. Derek's heart was filled with fear. It seemed like the opponent was planning to finish him off before the next awakened practitioner from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce arrived. Derek clenched both of his fists tightly. Both of his fists smashed into the ground at the same time, and his hands sunk into the blue stone tiles on the ground. Boulder, opening hand, open for me! Derek pulled with all his might, and the limestone tiles were pulled up in large groups, forming a long chain in midair. The gene energy covered the chain, causing it to swing and not break. The bricks and tiles were closely linked, and they were all connected. When they were waved, they looked like two long dragons. Parlor tricks! How dare you be so arrogant! Half of the officers of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association were covered in molten iron. Bubbles were popping up under the burning flame. He wore a large iron hammer weighing dozens of kilograms, and it did not slow him down at all. It charged and crashed in the long dragon made of bricks and tiles. Boom! 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 Derek retreated while waving the green brick chains in his hands. The gene energy in his body was getting lesser and lesser. Every time the bricks and tiles hit the officer, a small part of the brick would be removed by the officer. The green stones would explode, and the tiles would be scattered all over the place. The long line of bricks in his hand was getting shorter and shorter, and the officers of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association were getting closer and closer. Sweat kept dripping down Derek's forehead. In his heart, he was hoping that the Kansas Chamber of Commerce would come and save him, but he was also praying that no one would come. The Demon Slaughter Marshal Association wouldn't retreat so easily just because they caught a fish. He was afraid that the Kansas Chamber of Commerce wouldn't be able to survive today, let alone win in the arena. The brick chain that Derek was swinging was less than a meter away. Unfortunately, the gene energy in his body had run out. He looked around the square, wondering where the people of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association were hiding. What kind of trap were they hiding? You still dare to be distracted? The officer of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association sneered. He smashed all the bricks in front of him with his hand that was covered in boiling hot iron liquid. He was gasping for air while grinning hideously and slapped Derek's head hard. Stop! Daniel suddenly rushed forward. He grabbed Derek with one hand and gently tapped on the officer's body with the other leg. Both of them quickly separated and retreated dozens of meters away. You! The officer of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association looked at the dent in his chest in shock. His upper body was covered with iron liquid. The temperature of the iron liquid was thousands of degrees, and the gene energy had mixed into it to assist in his defense. However, the young man only lightly stepped on it with his foot, and he felt a sharp pain in his chest. This young man's strength was definitely not low. <coughs> the officer of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association's throat was dry and itchy. He coughed twice, and a salty, wet taste rushed into his mouth. When he opened his hand and looked, he actually spat out blood. You! How is this possible? The officer of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association looked at Daniel in shock. The power of the kick was so great. Derek frowned and sighed. Daniel, you shouldn't have attacked. There are many awakened practitioners on the other side. They are trying to find out what is going on with us. Maybe they have already noticed our situation. Daniel nodded slightly and said lightly, It's fine. I can't watch you get killed by them. Every single one of you from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce is an important pillar of Oklahoma City. Daniel. Derek did not know whether to laugh or cry. He shook his head, but he felt warm in his heart. 
In the building of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association's headquarters, several middle-aged men were holding binoculars. They stood on top of the building and looked at the farce in the square leisurely. Ha! <laughs> ha! A bald middle-aged man sneered. He stretched his hand backward, and a piece of tissue paper was placed in his hand. The middle-aged man wiped it. He wiped his mucus and said to himself, Ginny, it's a little cold. Bring me my coat. Yes. The beautiful woman called Ginny picked up the coat in her hand and gently draped it over the bald middle-aged man. Opposite the bald middle-aged man was a man with a sharp mouth and a monkey face. This person started smiling. Chairman, I'm quite satisfied with my arrangement, right? I'm just trying to attract the Kansas Chamber of Commerce to take action. Second, I want to observe the mysterious people they have recruited today. Let's see what the other party means and thoughts are. This move will kill two birds with one stone. Our chances of winning the arena competition will be greater and more stable. President, don't you think so? The monkey-faced man added, Of course, this will not be without your wise heroic leader. The bald man glared at him and casually said, Ryan, what level is that Daniel kid at? Can you tell? Ryan scratched his monkey face. He looked very ugly, but only the people around him knew that the vice president was a military advisor with a sharp mouth, a monkey face, and a rotten idea. Vice President Brian was usually not smiling, and his methods were ruthless. He would only behave like this when he was by the president's side. Someone really treated the vice president as a lackey. They would think that he was a fool. That would be a fool. Brian chuckled. In my opinion, it should be around four or five gene chains. To be recognized by that old man Edward, it should be about the same as when he was at his peak strength. But it's also impossible to be too strong. Daniel is only in his 20s. Surpassing five gene chains is almost the standard of a King City disciple. The meaning behind this was self-evident. If Daniel really had the standard of the students in the Texas Academy, why didn't he study in Texas? Why did he have a bear that wasn't even a strange beast with him? Why didn't he have a high-level follower? This didn't make sense. The president yawned and nodded. All right. Try to test that Daniel again. There can't be any accidents, okay? I'm determined to get this Oklahoma City. The Welcome Home Sanctuary is currently refining essence blood of dragon blood and devil lion. I'm hoping to collect a contribution from Oklahoma City and return to the Welcome Home to exchange for essence blood. The president stood up in a coat, and his assistant Ginny took the initiative to help him hold the cup. The president took two steps forward, turned around, and said to the vice president, Oh, right. If you can successfully take over Oklahoma City this time, I'll give you a portion of the credit. When the time comes, I'll give you a portion of the essence blood from the dragon blood devil lion. Seeing the president leaving with the help of the beautiful female assistant, Vice President Brian felt his blood boiling. Dragon blood's devil lion's essence blood. Brian's eyes lit up. A strange beast could only extract a few drops of the essence blood in its heart. He had long heard that the Welcome Home Sanctuary had gone to war and destroyed one of the Dragon Blood Devil Lion's nests. This Dragon Blood Devil Lion was a social creature, and there were dozens of them at every turn. As long as the Dragon Blood Devil Lion matured, it would have the strength of two or more gene chains. The Dragon Blood Devil Lion King in the lead was a terrifying beast with six gene chains. How could an ordinary force dare to provoke such a monster? Episode 176 The Test There were at least a hundred drops of Dragon Blood Devil Lion in a nest. Furthermore, he, Brian, did not need much. He only needed a single drop. A single drop of Dragon Blood Devil Lion was more than enough. He was stuck at the perfection stage of the five gene chain. The sixth gene chain couldn't be condensed out. This drop of essence blood of Dragon Blood and Devil Lion came at the perfect time. 
In essence, blood that contained rich gene energy and gene fragments was a rare tonic for awakened practitioner who needed to condense a gene chain. It was better than eating ordinary exotic beast meat for 10 years. After the president and the female assistant left, the deputy president, Brian, put on a stern face and sneered as he slammed the table. Come, let's go down and meet that Daniel. On the square of Oklahoma City, the officers of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association felt a burst of pain in their chests. They instinctively wanted to retreat, but the vice president's warning kept echoing in their ears. They could only clench their teeth and shout loudly. Everyone, attack together! In the crowd of Demon Slaughter Marshal Association, several awakened practitioners with different force levels flew out. Each of them was facing three gene chains. Derek's face was getting paler and paler. Even though he knew they weren't more than five experts in the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association, he still didn't expect them to bring out so many experts so easily. Even if it was the weakest of them, Derek wasn't sure if he could win this battle. Sure enough, the Kansas Chamber of Commerce had no place to stand anymore. A wave of messy footsteps came from behind Derek. A familiar old voice came from behind him. Derek, are you all right? Edward let the others over. Apart from the three of them, even a Wakeham practitioner, who had a weak gene chain, came. There were also some ordinary warriors who held swords and spears. Daniel swept his eyes across the crowd. He did not see Brian or Black. He could not help but nod his head in satisfaction. Derek's face turned bitter. President Edward, you shouldn't have come. Edward waved his hand. Anyway, the Kansas Chamber of Commerce has already reached this stage. It's fine. <sighs> An inexplicable sigh came from the crowd. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce was not strong. Without the Oklahoma City built by their seniors, where else could they go? The people of Oklahoma City felt even more sorrowful. The Demon Slaughter Marshall Association and the Kansas Chamber of Commerce were completely different. From now on, the end of Oklahoma City was coming. Daniel quietly stood in the crowd and observed. After a few days of confirmation, the Kansas Chamber of Commerce was really determined to protect the future of Oklahoma City and the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association was a cancer that had parasitized Oklahoma City. The Demon Slaughter Marshall Association had no choice but to get rid of it. Edward did not look at the few officers of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association in front of him. Instead, he shouted at the entrance of the alley behind him, Brian, come out, I see you. <laughs> Brian, with a sharp mouth and monkey cheeks, led a large group of a hundred people out of the alley. As the vice president of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association, naturally he had his own extravagance. Amidst the crowd of hundreds of people, Brian walked up to Edward with a laugh. Edward, it's been a few years since we last met. How have you been? Edward snorted and spat. Brian, you were once an old man of Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Every brick and tile in Oklahoma City. With your blood and sweat in your body, you can only watch the future of Oklahoma City be filled with darkness. Why are you willing to work for others? Brian chuckled, but he wasn't angry at all. Edward, everyone has their own ambitions. I admire you, but I don't like to give in for nothing. I also want to cultivate and grow. Back then, I withdrew from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce and founded the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association. You see, you're right. The Demon Slaughter Marshall Association has never interfered with you in the years I've been in charge of it. Edward coldly snorted. Then, what do you want to say in the past month? Brian smiled. I've already said that everyone has their own ambitions. This is what I do when a big boss wants me to seize Oklahoma City. When the time comes, I will soar, and you can go wherever you want. <laughs> you. Edward knew that Brian was no longer his former companion. He was now a selfish man who was willing to work for his own benefit and harm Oklahoma City. Now, he was even planning to turn it into a sanctuary dominated by villains. 
the Kansas Chamber of Commerce was going through a tough time. Brian turned his eyes to the silent Daniel and said with a cold snort, This is the young expert that you invited, Edward, right? Little brother Daniel, do you want to consider working with us? You will also benefit from occupying the city. Everyone's eyes fell on Daniel. Daniel was not afraid at all. He stared at Brian and said, Why should I cooperate with you bunch of stinky dogs? All right. Brian was so angry that he laughed. He is indeed an outstanding young man with a high will. Our Demon Slaughter Martial Association is just a pile of dog shit. I can't compare to you. Then let's fight in the arena the day after tomorrow. After Brian finished speaking, he turned around and left. A large group of Demon Slaughter Martial Association members followed him and left. Edward sighed and said, Daniel, do you think that that would be bad? Be careful. Brian had only taken three steps when he suddenly turned his head and struck out a palm with the might of heaven and earth. A dozen of Demon Slaughter Martial Association's members were knocked away by Brian's left and right without any preparation. They spat out blood, and it was unknown whether they were dead or alive. What a vicious Brian. Daniel's heart was beating wildly. In order to successfully attack, the opponent first pretended to be straightforward and said they would meet in the arena the day after tomorrow. Then he suddenly attacked. He didn't even care about the lives of the Demon Slaughter Martial Association's members. All he wanted to do to succeed in the attack. Brian slightly bent his five fingers, and dozens of flying needles shot out from his sleeve at the same time. Each of the flying needles condensed a biting cold air and emitted a faint blue light. It flew through the air at high speeds, creating a piercing sound that pierced through the air. The people who were in trouble only felt a rain falling down, and they all closed their eyes and fell to the ground. Edward was the first to notice Brian's attack. He grabbed Daniel's shoulder and with his hand and wanted to take him away from the rain of needles. Gene energy surged around Daniel, and a low growl came from his throat. Absolute domain. The scattered flying needles, Edward's hand, Brian's attack, and everyone else's speed seemed to have slowed down. Daniel lifted his body and pulled Edward up. The flying needles flew through the air and hit the wall behind them, leaving tiny holes in it. Daniel threw Edward to the side. His hand suddenly lit up with fire. The fire was red and 30 feet high. The heat made people sweat and close their eyes. Divine flame fist. Daniel used his fist against his claw and crashed into Brian. The gene energy burned with a heavy load, and the bright red color merged with Brian's green color. It was extinguished, and it was bitten. The two energies exploded at the same time, and a buzzing sound rang in his ears. Episode 177, To Each Its Own Rumble Two completely different types of energy exploded in the air, half red and half green, alternating between cold and hot. The gene energy was as sharp as a blade, and it left a trail of blood on Brian's face. His body couldn't help but fly backwards. It was only after he was dozens of meters away that Brian fell down on his right arm. Crack! Brian endured the intense pain. He moved the dislocated bone in his right arm back to its original position and stood up with a trembling body. Seeing Daniel's ashen face, Brian couldn't help but laugh. Although Daniel was standing, he was lying on the ground. Daniel looked perfectly fine while Brian was injured. However, Brian believed that he had already figured out Daniel's true strength. Although he knew that Daniel was strong, was that all he could do? What if he could beat him? In the hands of his boss, Daniel would lose. Brian snorted and jumped onto the building. He said, Edward, Daniel, just you wait. The day after tomorrow at the arena, it will be the day when your Kansas Chamber of Commerce leaves Oklahoma City. <laughs> Daniel watched Brian jumping off the roof and gradually disappeared into the distance. 
His arrogant and wild laughter also gradually faded. The group of Demon Slaughter Marshal Association members were scared witless. They didn't even care about the injured members as they scrambled away. Brian thought Daniel was only so-so, but he didn't know that Daniel had only used 30% of his power at most. He didn't even use any powerful genetic talent. The Demon Slaughter Marshal Association could set traps and use schemes. Then, why couldn't Daniel hide his strength, pretend to be a pig to eat a tiger, and lie to the leader of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association? It would be best if the other party let down their guard and came to fight without any preparation. At that time, Daniel would properly teach the other party how to write the word death. Daniel? After Edward was thrown out, he glanced in shock at the flying needles that had sunk into the wall. He stood up and looked at Daniel with concern. Are you all right? Daniel waved his hand. No problem. Everyone take a good rest for the next two days. I will do my best in the arena competition. Edward wanted to say something but hesitated. Finally, he sighed and said, Daniel, why don't we just forget about the arena competition? Our Kansas Chamber of Commerce was able to build Oklahoma City on flat land more than 10 years ago. We can find a place to build another city. Our strength will never be easily defeated by the enemy. Daniel shook his head. What if another group of people also took a fancy to your city? Should we change to another place? Do you want to work for someone else? This. Edward nodded. This was indeed a problem. What he didn't say was that even if the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association was chased away, there would still be other greedy people like the dog and cat slaughtering Marshall gathering. However, Edward didn't want to trouble Daniel with everything. He could only take things one step at a time. In this post-apocalyptic world, people were in chaos. This was the only way. Let's go. Let's go back. Daniel turned around and said. Edward nodded and supported himself with a crutch. He turned around and said, let's go. When we return to the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, I will tell you about Brian's strengths and weaknesses. The group of people returned to the Kansas Chamber of Commerce dejectedly. As soon as Daniel appeared, a woman anxiously walked up. Daniel, something happened to your pet Black. He's now rolling around in the yard. Daniel heard her and hurried to the yard. Before they reached the yard, they heard Black roaring from hundreds of meters away. His voice was mixed with whimpers and was full of pain. This was the first time Daniel had heard Black shouting like this. Daniel! When Susie saw Daniel, she wiped her tears and said, Black, is he sick? It's my fault. I didn't take care of him. Daniel gently patted Susie's little head, signaling her to be at ease. Only then did he look at Black, who was rolling and wailing at the side. Under the touch of the nether devil, Black's body became fuzzy he could only feel the intense movement of the gene energy, but he knew nothing about the specific situation. The Dark Devil's touch gene completion rate was too low, Daniel sighed, but the Dark Devil's touch was too difficult to increase. Until now, he had not found the two animals that had synthesized the Dark Devil's touch gene, the four-eared bat and the six-eyed demonic spider. After Daniel carefully sensed what was happening, he used his hand to touch Black's fur. Under the burning sensation, Daniel came to a conclusion. Black was about to advance to a mutated beast. It had only been a few days. The world was indeed worthy of being called a world of mutated beasts. Black had been fed about 10 gene drugs by him, but his growth was actually happening so fast. Daniel squeezed him hard, and Black's tumbling body immediately stopped. There were tears in his swollen eyes. This was the pain caused by the intense pain in his body. He took out a gene drug and poured it into Black's mouth. Soon, it calmed down and laid on the ground gasping for air. Daniel stepped aside and said to Cindy and Susie, Black is evolving. Don't disturb him. Don't let him hurt you. Cindy immediately pinched little Susie's cheek as a warning. Little Susie playfully stuck out her tongue. Daniel had been sensing the changes in Black's body. Although he couldn't determine the exact situation, 
He could tell from the rolling gene energy that Black was about to succeed. Sure enough, a minute later, there was a popping sound in Black's body. It seemed to have opened some kind of aperture. And then it staggered. Roar! A wild roar was heard towards the sky. The imposing manner of the overlord of the mountain forest was fully displayed. Some of the timid, ordinary people immediately stepped back to cover their faces. If it wasn't for the fact that so many awakened practitioners and bloodline warriors had gathered here, someone might have fallen on the spot. Black stood up high and roared three times. Then his stomach started rumbling. He was hungry. He moved to his feet to the front of Daniel and sniffed at him ingratingly. His small eyes were full of pleading. Daniel snorted and was about to take out the gene drug to feed it when he suddenly remembered that he had decided to punish Black for a few days. He would deduct the gene drug for the next few days. Black disappointedly walked up to the little Susie. He sniffed her with his inky black nose and wiped her face with his cheek. Susie giggled. Black lifted Susie up, landed her firm on the ground. He pushed himself onto the crowd and walked towards the kitchen. Daniel patted Black's hind legs and warned, Don't hurt her or I'll beat you up. Big Black didn't even turn his head and let out a low roar, indicating that he understood. Edward was full of smiles. He couldn't help but respect Daniel once again. He had seen many capable young men, but it was rare to see a young man who could subdue such a strange beast. In addition to Daniel's unfathomable strength, Edward was suddenly filled with confidence in the arena matches the day after tomorrow. Maybe our Kansas Chamber of Commerce's life should not be lost. What a lucky day. The soldiers beside Edward nodded in agreement. Episode 178 A Trap the next day passed peacefully amidst all of the nervous waiting. Daniel and Edward exchanged cups. In the cups were the tea leaves that Edward had kept for a long time. Daniel tried it, and although he could not tell whether it was good or bad, it could be inferred from the simple packaging of the tea leaves that it was not a treasure. It was difficult for the Kansas Chamber of Commerce to take a step forward. Even the food they used to entertain Daniel two days ago was plain water and wild beast meat. What good stuff was there? Daniel let go of his distracting thought and listened to Edward carefully analyzing the structure of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association. Except for the chairman who rushed over from the Welcome Home Sanctuary, Edward could tell a thing or two about the structure of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association. Finally, Edward concluded, in short, the vice president, Brian, should still be stuck at the perfect level of the five gene chains. The other officer, Jimmy, was the one who injured Derek in the square yesterday. His strength is almost at the perfect level of the four gene chains. That's about it. Under Edward's gaze, Daniel's eyes were calm and did not fluctuate. Five perfect gene chains. Perhaps a few months ago, he might have faced a great enemy but now he could easily crush a bunch of them. The only troublesome one was the elusive Demon Slaughter Marshall Association leader. Edward had only seen him a few times, and his aura was obscure and unfathomable. Edward had never seen him fight before, so he didn't know his opponent's background. However, Daniel did not have any fear in his heart. Ever since he awakened, he had been through a lot of trials and tribulations. What kind of incidents hadn't he encountered? Daniel had prepared a lot of trump cards. Little brother Daniel, Edward sighed and said, What do you think about my girl? The two of them chatted casually, but he actually brought up this topic. This made Daniel think of the night when he first came. Daniel was rational and rejected Cindy's feelings of admiration towards him, but at this moment, how could he answer? Just as Daniel was at a loss, a flurry of footsteps suddenly came from outside the door. The door was pushed open, and Derek's body was covered in blood as he cried out, President Edward, Daniel, quick, something happened to Eric. What? Edward stood up immediately. 
He had specifically instructed Derek and Eric not to take any action during these two days. Why were they still injured? What's going on? Daniel asked calmly. Derek explained as he led the way. It turned out that when Daniel and Edward were drinking tea and chatting with each other, Derek and Eric, who had nothing to do, set up a small table in the Kansas Chamber of Commerce's communication room. They ate while chatting about interesting things. They suddenly received a distress signal from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Because it was a special route for the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, Eric believed it and decided to go out for a trip. It only took them one or two hours to go back and forth. As a result, Eric didn't return. Derek left the Kansas Chamber of Commerce in a hurry and went to the place where the incident had happened to check on the situation. Halfway there, he was surrounded by three awakened practitioners from the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association. They attacked him along the way, and he barely managed to return to the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Where is Eric now? Edward wasn't in the mood to ask who was responsible. He just wanted to find Eric as soon as possible. Every bit of strength they had in the Kansas Chamber of Commerce was precious. He couldn't let Eric die outside. Derek wiped the blood from his eyes and said with a bitter smile, One mile to the south of Oklahoma City. When I got there, Eric was already lying on the ground. I was chased all the way back. I'm afraid that Eric has already... Edward put on some clothes and was about to go out when he was stopped by Daniel. Edward, I'll go. Edward hesitated. Daniel, you... Daniel smiled. You stay here and prevent the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association from killing anyone. I'll go and bring Eric back. Edward pursed his lips and said, Then I will have to trouble little brother Daniel. Daniel nodded and jumped onto the courtyard. He stepped on the roof of the courtyard, jumped onto the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, and ran towards the south of Oklahoma City. Ooh la la. The rain in the sky gradually became heavier. Daniel quickened his pace. If Eric fell in the rain covered in blood, he had to get to the scene as soon as possible. Otherwise, the rain would accelerate the loss of Eric's blood and he would die faster. Daniel left Oklahoma City unimpeded. When he arrived at an open space, he saw several people pointing at a wounded person who had fallen to the ground from afar. Daniel quickly rushed over. The faces of those people were getting clearer and clearer. One of them was an awakened practitioner who had completed the four gene chains that Edward had emphasized. His arms and upper body were covered with black iron. The hot iron liquid sizzled under the cold rain and smoke kept rising. When Daniel saw the opponent clearly, the opponent also saw Daniel's face clearly. Damn it! The one who came was Daniel! Let's go! The awakened practitioner who was in the four gene chains was shocked. He turned around and ordered the few of them to split up and run in different directions. You still want to leave after coming here? Daniel left out a ferocious laugh and unleashed his energy. Absolute domain. Everyone was suppressed by the aura emitted by the gene energy, and their running speed became slower. First, Daniel took out a gene drug and poured it into Eric's mouth. After confirming that although he was seriously injured, the awakened practitioner's life force had yet to disappear, and only then did he raise his leg and chased after the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association's awakened practitioner. Roar of the Nether. Daniel spat out a mouthful of spiritual energy. A few of awakened practitioners from the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association who were at the back fell to the ground, bleeding from all seven of their orifices. Daniel's figure drew an azure arc in the air. His body turned into an electric ball and shuttled through the air. In a short second, he caught up with an awakened practitioner whose arms were wrapped in iron plasma. Daniel snorted coldly. Iron paste and rainwater were perfect for a lightning strike. The elemental hand pierced directly into his back. The electric plasters poured on the iron plasters. The awakened practitioner who was in the four gene chains suddenly trembled. His mouth was wide open, but he could only hear a low growl coming from his throat. 
Daniel pulled out his arm and chased after the awakened practitioner from the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association. The officer covered in the iron paste fell to the ground and mud splashed everywhere. One minute later, all the awakened practitioners from the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association died because they had misjudged Daniel's determination to kill them. Perhaps in their hearts, the five or six mighty gene chain warriors were high and mighty. Why didn't they drink and eat and enjoy themselves at home instead of coming out to kill people in the cold weather? This was a question that they would never understand for the rest of their lives. The officer from the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association widened his eyes. Only he knew that the entire Demon Slaughter Marshal Association had been misled by Daniel, an expert who can train the elemental gene to perfection and comprehend the talent of the elemental conversion was definitely not someone that the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association could provoke. Unfortunately, this secret could not be sent back to the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association. Daniel returned to Eric's side and touched his pulse. A gene drug had a significant effect. Eric was no longer in danger of losing his life. Even though I know the danger of this trip, I still have to come out and help others. Daniel looked at Eric with a complicated expression. I admire you. Episode 179 The Gold Coin Daniel brought the dying Eric back to the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. The gene drug had brought Eric back to life, but it was impossible for him to regain his combat strength. A night passed. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce, which only had injured people participating in the battle, suffered another serious setback. In the blink of an eye, the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, which had just recovered some of its joy, fell into a dead silence. Derek's body was wrapped in bandages, and his mouth was wiggling as he slowly said, Chairman Edward, I'll take the lead tomorrow. How long can I delay? No matter what, I use up some of my enemy's gene energy. Edward felt that this was a big mess. If Derek didn't attack, then he and Daniel would be the only ones left in the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. If Derek attacked, he wouldn't even be able to last two moves with his body covered in injuries. It would be a pity if he died in the arena. While Edward was hesitating, Daniel chuckled. Edward, leave everything to me. The Demon Slaughter Marshal Association is just a bunch of chickens and dogs. Edward knew that Daniel was powerful and qualified to be evaluated. He nodded his head and said, Then I will take the lead tomorrow. Daniel, you hold the line. We will do our best. After saying this, Edward wanted to cheer him up but it seemed like he had used up all his strength. He sat down powerlessly in the chair. The loss of strength made him physically and mentally exhausted. This undoubtedly reminded him of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce's comrades who had either fallen or left in disappointment in the past few years. Was there still hope for them? Daniel said casually, Edward, you can rest in peace for a while. I will definitely help you settle the competition. Besides, even if I can't help you, take a look at what this is. Daniel took out a gold coin. On the front of the coin was a grand imperial city. On the other side was a human figure with four limbs spread out in the shape of big. Edward blinked his eyes. Under the confused gazes of everyone, he cried out in shock. A coin from the command center? You, you actually have something. Edward was shocked. The coins in the command center were not something that could be casually obtained. It was a special Texas permit, a treasure that could allow a group of people to directly enter a command center to further their studies. No command center had the right to refuse. This kind of person could only be controlled by noble families, right? Could it be that Daniel came from a noble family? Or could it be that Daniel had once helped a noble family obtain this item as a gift of thanks? Daniel stuffed the gold coin into Edward's hand. The other party declined and was pressed back by Daniel. This thing is useless to me. If we fail, you can use this talent summon order to nurture the younger generation of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Edward could not reject such a precious gift. Even if he could not consider himself, 
he had to consider the hopes of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. I, Edward, thanked Daniel for his good intentions. As Edward spoke, a wave of sadness welled up in his heart. The old man actually had tears in his eyes. Daniel quietly laughed while the few awakened practitioners were still in shock. Since he couldn't bring any help to the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, this gold coin must be something they needed. The next day, the anticipated arena battle slowly began amidst the silence and intent to kill. There was no welcome speech, no cheers from the crowd. There was only hostility between the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association and the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. They wished they could stab each other with their eyes. No matter how numb and ignorant the citizens of Oklahoma City were, they stood behind the Kansas Chamber of Commerce and supported them. The news of Eric and Derek's injuries hadn't spread throughout the Kansas Chamber of Commerce yet, but they also weren't blind. If they didn't see the two of them on the day of the competition, it meant that something unexpected had happened. Dad, where is brother Eric and Uncle Derek? Cindy asked Edward in a low voice. What she received was a complicated look of joy and worry, which confused her. Compared to the gloomy atmosphere of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association was much more relaxed. The members of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association were laughing casually. They were pointing at some pretty girls in the crowd and making snide remarks. Only a few people knew about the result of the fight last night. Report. In front of the president and Brian, a member wearing a black dragon uniform reported in a low voice. Chairman, vice chairman, the few awakened practitioners who were on the operation last night did not come back. We found their bodies in the south of the city. Their deaths were very strange. Brian's expression became serious. He had expected there would be casualties, however, he didn't expect that everyone would die. The president gently sipped his wine. Oh, Brian, what do you think? Brian scratched his head. I think everyone is attacking. Daniel's strength is slightly higher than mine. He must have some trump cards. The president nodded. It's certainly that he has trump cards. Who doesn't have some trump cards? Have you arranged the arena for today? Mm-hmm. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce would be anxious because they had lost two awakened practitioners, but the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association would not. And with the help of the Snow Wolf Mercenary Group, the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association had a lot of awakened practitioners. Edward was already standing in the arena. After a while, an awakened practitioner, who had a vague aura of three gene chains, jumped onto the arena. First match, begin. The president narrowed his eyes and gently shook the wine glass in his hand. He leaned against the sofa, and the person on his left arm was his female assistant, Ginny. Brian pointed at the ring and said with a smile, That Edward was injured by me two years ago and lost all his strength. He is not as decisive as before. If I were to say it, even if I beat up that trash with three gene chains, he would still fight for an hour. As soon as Brian finished speaking, there was a loud bang. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce shouted in unison. Edward unleashed his divine might and kicked the awakened practitioner, who was the first one to go on the stage. This... Brian scolded Edward's ancestors. He forced a smile on his face and said to the expressionless president, This was just a sudden outburst. Chairman, let me tell you, he has internal injuries. Even if he had a temporary eruption, it would be impossible. Boom. There was a loud sound. The second person who jumped onto the arena was sent flying with a kick, and his figure fell beside the president's feet. Amidst the thunderous cheers of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce and under the calm gaze of the president, Brian was sweating like rain. He was so angry that he didn't dare show it on his face. I saw a ghost, Brian muttered. Why was this old Edward so fierce? This is impossible. Brian scratched the back of his head and said, Two years ago, I severely injured him. 
A jean chain was broken on the spot, and there was even an internal injury. Could it be that Edward has recovered? In fact, Brian's guess was about right. Edward drank Daniel's medicine, and all the internal injuries on his body were removed. It was just that time was too short, or else he might have really recovered the fifth lost gene chain. Under the president's gulping and Brian's angry gaze, the third person in the arena also fell. Brian coldly snorted and stood up. President, just you wait. I'll go and take care of him now. Episode 180 Retreat It's two against two. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce was overjoyed. Their eyes lit up once again. They were looking forward to a new life. They really hoped that they could chase away the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association and let Oklahoma City return to its former peaceful life. Brian turned around and jumped down. His two feet gently landed on the stone platform. He didn't make a single sound. All the knowledgeable, awakened practitioner's eyes widened. He took a deep breath. This meant that Brian had a very high control over his power. The traceless snow steps and the waveless water traversing were just so-so. Edward had to take this seriously. It had been five years. In these five years, he had never made any progress. Even though Daniel's divine medicine had gotten rid of all the hidden injuries in his body, his level had not recovered to the previous five gene chains. In these five years, Brian had improved by leaps and bounds. With Edward's observation and understanding, Brian should be at the perfect stage of the five gene chain. He was only a few steps away from forming the sixth gene chain. Perhaps this could be the opportunity that the president of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association had promised him. Brian. Edward took a deep breath and stared at him. Brian laughed. Edward, we don't need to reminisce about old times anymore. Let's meet in the ring. Before Brian could finish his words, a green dragon flew into the sky from his hand. It screeched as it flew in half a circle in the air and charged towards Edward. Great heavenly nether frost hand. The temperature around Brian suddenly dropped by dozens of degrees. Under the cold light, white frost began to form on the stone platform. Ah! A citizen near the arena actually sneezed because of the coldness. He wrapped himself in clothes and shrank in the crowd. Edward's expression was solemn. Brian's control over the temperature was even more terrifying. But he was not an ordinary person either. Edward took out a pair of iron axes. He was in his 70s or 80s, and his pair of axes were dancing in the air like tigers and tigers. The energy of this ice dragon in the air seemed to have a mind of its own. It wanted to hit Edward several times but he was scared away by the sharp axes in his hands. He could only rapidly circle in the air, making people dizzy. Brian jumped up. Because of the cold temperature in the air, everyone except Brian felt their muscles sore and their bones rusted. This was the slowing effect of the low temperature. Every inch between experts would affect the outcome of the battle. This move of his could said to be exceptionally sinister. The bright blue hand force covered the sky, and the entire sky was dyed in a layer of blue. The sky was sparkling, like a dream, and everyone couldn't help but to lose themselves in it. But it also made them feel intimidated. Many ordinary people who had yet to awaken had runny noses and trembling bodies under the thin clothes. They were terrified of the awakened practitioner's strength. He could even change the weather. Brian's hand pressed down from the sky and approached Edward. Edward snorted coldly. Brian had used all his strength in one move, but he would not retreat. Behind him was the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Ha! Edward shouted out loudly. Waves of gene energy rippled out from his body one after another. His beard and hair parted like wind blowing through them, and his eyes were wide open. Neither of the people of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce nor the members of the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association saw Edward's face. They were very surprised. Bang! The two of them collided with each other and were sent flying backwards at the same time. 
What a dead old man. His strength actually did not decrease in the past. Brian coughed in pain and spat out a broken tooth from his mouth. If it wasn't for the fact that they were really one gene chain weaker, Brian might not have been able to defeat him. It's a pity. <laughs> Brian wiped the corner of his mouth with his sleeve and a dark red blood stain appeared on his dark black uniform. Gill leader. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce exclaimed. A few people immediately rushed to the arena. Edward could be seen bleeding. The upper half of his body was covered with white frost. There was a black handprint on his chest, and his teeth were chattering. I... I... I didn't... It, it's... It's... Daniel secretly sighed. From the very beginning, he didn't agree with Edward going into the arena. The challenge of the four gene chains fighting to beat the five gene chains had always been extremely difficult. It wasn't like everyone was Daniel, who could do such a magnificent feat. Daniel stepped forward and held Edward's cold hands. Daniel, finish him up. Daniel nodded slightly. President Edward, you can go and rest. Leave the rest to me. Edward was escorted by the people from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce and was carried far away. Cindy sniffed and teared up. Her tender hands grabbed Daniel. Daniel, do your best. Thank you. Daniel squeezed out a smile and patted Cindy's hand gently. Go and look after Edward. He needs someone to take care of him. Yes. Cindy nodded her head firmly and ran out of the crowd towards Edward. Daniel let out a breath of foul air and jumped onto the arena, facing Brian. Immediately, a heated discussion arose, and a dense crowd of people came from all directions. Most of the people in the Kansas Chamber of Commerce and the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association did not know Daniel very well. As for the ordinary people, they only knew Edward of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce and Brian, the Vice President of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association. As for the others, they didn't have any opinion of him. Who is this young man? Is he here to die? Who knows? Shut up. One of the officers of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association quickly stopped his subordinate from talking nonsense. He raised his head and looked at Daniel. When he realized that Daniel wasn't looking at him, he heaved a sigh of relief in his heart. Those who didn't know were fearless. Daniel was a terrifying man. Last night, he alone had slaughtered half of the management of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association. If it wasn't for the loss of these officers, the awakened practitioners wouldn't have been in this position with only two gene chains. Derek and Eric, one wrapped in bandages and the other holding a crutch, quietly appeared in the crowd and looked at the arena. Daniel will definitely win this battle, Derek firmly said. Why are you so sure? Eric was a little surprised and looked at Derek. Derek laughed. He first saw Brian and Daniel's hand strike two days ago. Daniel took a step back. He was not injured at all, but Brian was thrown away. He had looked like he was in bad shape. Yesterday, Daniel had even taken out a gold coin in front of everyone. This meant that Daniel wasn't an ordinary person. He must have a great background. Now, even if Daniel could suddenly take out a few genetic weapons, Derek would not be too surprised. Wasn't this just a matter of course? Just watch and see, Daniel will definitely win. Eric saw Derek's mysterious look and did not pester him. He looked at the ring and his heart sank. Daniel, you have to work hard. The hope of our Kansas Chamber of Commerce is all on you. Episode 181, One Move. Brian's eyes narrowed slightly. His expression was calm, but his heart was beating rapidly. The day before yesterday, when the two of them exchanged blows, he knew that his skill level was not as good as the other parties. Even if he had a trump card, could it be that the other party did not have one? In this battle, Brian had only one thought in his mind, and that was to force out more of Daniel's moves, force out all of his trump cards, and let the guild leader defeat his opponent more easily. Daniel, right? Actually, our Demon Slaughter Marshal Association admires you very much. As Brian spoke, he used the same trick again. 
an icy blue dragon hand was swung out. With a flick of his sleeve, numerous flying needles shot out in all directions. At the same time, his body suddenly rushed out. His speed was about twice as fast as the previous match. Great Netherfrost Heavenly Hand. Swimming Dragon Nine Steps. A blue figure drew an arc in the air, leaving behind a trail of after images as it flew towards Daniel. Every move was calculated. Daniel coldly harumphed and launched a sneak attack as he spoke. He held back in the last match and went all out in this match. Even with just this little bit of skill, did Brian still think he could beat him? Roar of the Nether! Daniel spat out a purple spiritual wave. The spiritual attack was like a circle of light that enveloped Brian and all his techniques. His opponent's position and techniques were too dense. He had just finished one attack. You! Brian widened his eyes and caught Daniel's spiritual attack head on. A sour feeling rushed out of his eyes and nose. Brian touched it with his hand and it turned out to be bleeding. The opponent was using a spiritual attack. The soaring dragon and the flying needles were all hit by the mental energy. The energy of the flying dragon became invisible. The energy within the dragon clashed with the spiritual energy. The green and purple lights overlapped and the flying dragon flew around in all directions. Poof. It exploded in midair and turned into clouds of mist. The energy needles were even worse than the frost dragon's energy needles. They split apart and disappeared without a trace. Brian knelt on one knee on the ground. He tried to get up, but his body seemed to be out of control. His brain felt like it was pierced by needles. If he had not been standing in the arena, he would have rolled on the ground to reduce the pain in his head. The president leaned forward, his eyes wide open as he muttered to himself, It's actually a mental attack. Fortunately, my spirit has been tempered very high. I didn't expect I would ever actually need to use it when I only wanted to make up for my shortcomings back then. Oh. A painful voice came from the president's side. Oh, I forgot. The president turned his head to look and realized that he had unconsciously used too much strength. His female assistant, Ginny, was held by her waist and was almost strangled to death. Ginny's face was as pale as paper. She stood up weakly and tried to put on a formal smile. It's fine, president, as long as you are willing. As she said that, the female assistant scolded the president hatefully in her heart. But she did not dare to show any signs of it. Under everyone's wide eyes, Daniel slowly walked up to Brian and said with a smile, One move, and I used one move to defeat you. How do you feel? Brian panted heavily. His mind was still dizzy. When he heard Daniel walk to his side, he raised his head and looked at him in confusion. His pupils were unfocused, and his mouth was half open. Ridiculous. Daniel kicked Brian to the ground, and the tip of his foot accurately touched Brian's neck. The gene energy rushed into Brian's neck and cut off his blood vessels and spinal cord. Brian's head tilted. A touch of red slid down from the corner of his mouth, and he fell silent. What a joke. Daniel snorted and looked at the president who was lying on the sofa. With your little strength, why do you have the courage to cause such trouble in this land? The president was silent for a moment. He stood up from the sofa and walked to the ring. Why? The president coldly snorted. Just because I am from the Welcome Home Sanctuary. The president was not a person affected by emotions. He took a deep breath and said, Daniel, I will give you one last chance. If you are willing to join us, the people you killed before can be written off. My Welcome Home Sanctuary is hunting the Dragon Blood Devil Lion and condensing Essence Blood. As long as you are willing to join us, you do not need to do anything. I can give you two drops of the Dragon Blood Devil Lion Essence Blood. As soon as his words came out, everyone was shocked. The Demon Slaughter Martial Association's background was actually a sanctuary. The Fallout Shelter was a rebel army that covered the entire world. Every Fallout Shelter had experts with at least six gene chains as their pillar. 
Otherwise, they would not be able to stand out from the dense E-class tribes. What was even more frightening was that the pyrozine shelter was willing to tank out two drops of the dragon blood devil lion to recruit Daniel. The president did not stop until his words shocked everyone. With a smile on his face, he continued, The man you just killed is the deputy president of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association. I previously promised to give him a drop of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion, which is why he worked so hard. Now, I'm willing to give you two drops. You just have to wait. What do you think? As long as you are willing to join me, from now on, Oklahoma City will be under your management. You are the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association's chairman. Everything in this city will be yours. As soon as he finished speaking, the entire square became angry. The president was only willing to give Brian a drop of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion, but promised Daniel two drops in front of everyone. This was the weight of two deputy leaders. Would Daniel agree? Also, the management rights of the entire Demon Slaughter Marshall Association and the management rights of Oklahoma City could be said to have soared to the sky. Many people from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce compared themselves to Daniel and they couldn't help but laugh bitterly. If they stood in Daniel's position, they would probably abandon their ideals and join him. It wasn't because they were shameless, but because the bait thrown out to Daniel was too big and too sweet. Derek's face was full of smiles. A bitter expression appeared on his face. The dragon blood and devil lion's essence blood are still two drops. Ah. As someone with considerable strength, the awakened practitioner naturally understood what two drops of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion meant. When he was stuck at the bottleneck of cultivation for several years without any progress, he only needed one drop of the strange beast essence blood to easily break through. This was the dream of many cultivators. Eric's face was pale as he looked at the motionless figure in the arena. He muttered, Derek, do you think Daniel will agree? Derek shook his head. If Daniel agrees, I don't blame him. He has paid too much for our Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Even if we lose the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, with the gold coin he gave us, we can still find a place to go. In the arena, Daniel smiled. Below the stage, there were nearly a thousand people looking at him with pleading, envious, or jealous gazes. A gentle breeze blew by his ear as he stared at the president. I refuse. Nearly a thousand people opened their eyes wide at the same time. They could not believe it. Wealth and fame was right in front of him. He clearly didn't need to pay anything. Why would someone reject that? The smile on the president's face also gradually froze, turning into a cold expression. His eyes stared straight at Daniel, waiting for his explanation. Episode 182, Beast Form I don't understand. The president shook his head slightly. We could have gotten everything without any effort. Why did we spend so much effort to get nothing and even offend our welcome home sanctuary? Daniel laughed. There is a kind of person in this world that cannot be judged by common sense. They can join the tribe and enjoy the treatment of foreign delegates, but instead they choose to fight with dangerous beasts and rebels. They can join the camp. They could have become junior warriors to improve themselves. They chose to help the people and build the city. Daniel turned around and looked at the people of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. More than half of them were gathered here. Daniel saw Eric. Derek and others among them. They were still a few people coming from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce from afar. Daniel thought of President Edward, who had worked for the Kansas Chamber of Commerce for half of his life, and Eric, who had fallen into a trap in order to save the people. He couldn't help but smile. Compared to them, his efforts were only within his ability. The president's face revealed a touch of coldness. Fine. We don't work together and be on different paths. I understand little brother Daniel's intention. Then please. All right. Daniel looked at the president. 
His muscles tensed up, and his expression was cold. I will make you regret your stupid choice. The president threw his head back and roared. The pressure was like a lake falling from the sky, spreading out with him as the center. Everyone had heavy hearts. The desire of others to resist had been crushed, causing them to be unable to raise their heads. As the president of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association expected, with just one hand, the entire Demon Slaughter Marshal Association was able to carry out their orders. No one would dare to have any petty thoughts. Daniel's eyes narrowed slightly, and he kept wondering. Six complete gene chains. No, that's not right. These were seven gene chains. It was that the seventh gene chain had just been condensed. Therefore, the president urgently needed the dragon blood and the devil lion's essence blood to stabilize and increase the completion of the gene chain. His aura was extremely powerful. He had only felt it once before from Charles in the Alpha Shelter. The surging aura was like a deep ocean, enveloping his entire body. Waves of pressure rose steadily, becoming higher and higher, causing people to feel intimidated. Under the cowering eyes of the crowd, Daniel stood straight like a mountain in the middle of a flood. Is this your ability? This is all? Absolute domain! Daniel shouted in a low voice. His own aura spread out, and he was on par with the president in the arena. There was no cloud in the sky, and only two streams of air rolled up in a straight line. I don't know what you're talking about. The president was surprised by Daniel's performance, but he was more confident in his own strength. He clenched his right hand and a dark red gene energy burned. Heaven shaking divine fist. A powerful force smashed into the stone platform. After four battles, the rock that had not been damaged in the slightest cracked open and stalagmites rose from the ground one after another, quickly spreading to the bottom of Daniel's feet. Taking advantage of Daniel dodging the stalagmites, the president leapt into the air, and like a ferocious tiger, he threw out his fists like cannonballs. Divine Flame Fire Fist! Daniel's fist swept away the stalagmites that were standing up one by one. He raised his head and threw a punch at the incoming figure. Ding! The sound of metal clashing rang out. When the fiery fist met the president's sky-shaking divine fist, sparks could be seen flashing by. The spiritual force surged out, and spots of black mud that seemed to be solid gushed out of Daniel's eyes. It could not be compared to the Nightmare Lord Lauren's nightmare gene, but it also made the president's hair stand on end. His eyes were stunned for a brief moment before he quickly struggled to break free. You... The president took a few steps back. His pair of iron fists were glowing with a cold light, and he was not hurt at all. However, the president was extremely afraid of Daniel. The black mud had faintly broken through his mental defense. If Daniel would have trained and practiced that move a little more, it would have been better. He would have fallen into Daniel's trap. Unfortunately, Daniel could not help feeling a little regretful. His nightmare gene only had a mere 12% completion rate. It would only grow slightly in the midst of arduous training. There were tens of thousands of types of genes in the world. It was too difficult to make up for the completion rate of the nightmare gene with the gene extraction. Good kid. The president sneered. You can't test it. Brian didn't even use his trump card before he was killed by you. I almost followed in his footsteps. Then, blood red mad dragon. Roar. The president's head, which was completely bald, suddenly sprouted bamboo shoots after a rain. Blood-red fur grew all over his head and face in just one breath. A pair of sharp horns grew out of his forehead, and his calves bent into inverted feet. Blood-red golden scales emerged from his skin. Ah! Around the arena, the residents of Oklahoma City cried out in surprise. Turning a human into a beast? Was this still a human? The beast transformation of a return to ancestor gene was one of the awakened practitioner's trump cards. For example, the patriarchs of the three families of the Roaring Tribe would not use it until the final moment. 
Most of the residents of Oklahoma City were refugees from ordinary camps. They had never seen or heard of a beast transformation technique. When they saw the president of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association, they were even more certain that this was not a human, but a demon. Daniel jumped out quickly. The gene energy in his hand quickly burned and formed. A fireball the size of a wash basin was thrown at the president. The beast transformation process was the weakest process for the awakened practitioner. There was no need to talk about courtesy or morality with such a wicked person. If he could be killed with one finger, it would not take much effort. Divine Flame Fist! <laughs> it's too late. The dragon-shaped president had a human head and a dragon body. Sharp teeth grew out of his mouth, and blood-red scales burned like flames. Bang! Daniel's divine flame fist hit the man's dragon-shaped body directly. The fiery red flames surged into the blood-red flames. Not only did they not cause any harm to him, but they also joined each other, causing the flames to soar. His resistance to flames had been raised to an extremely high level. Daniel, who had the genes of the Lightning Walker, knew that just like him, the lightning attacks would be almost 80% immune to him, and the chances of killing him were very slim. Instead, he absorbed the power of the elements to strengthen his body a few times. Try this. Daniel crossed his hand, and blue electric sparks crackled. The flames that were as tall as two people immediately withered, and the heart of the flames was blasted apart. A large amount of flames were extinguished. Yes. After the beast transformation, the president of the demon slaughter, whose defensive ability had increased by many times, covered his chest. The scales were pierced by electric sparks, and a few drops of blood flowed out. The blood-red color that flowed out had just fallen into the flames when it started to boil with oxygen, helping the flames to grow even higher. <laughs> the president of the demon slaughter's body doubled in height. He lowered his head and looked at Daniel, who was only as tall as his waist. Neil, there is still time for everything. Episode 183 Fire and Lightning. The president of the demon slaughter looked around. When everyone's eyes met his, it was as if they had been struck by lightning. They looked away in fear. No one dared to look him in the eyes. It wasn't just the people of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Everyone in the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association felt the same way. Perhaps in the past, Brian would have remained calm pretending to be an idiot and applauding. However, the rest of them could only lower and bow their heads with respect. After seeing what the president of the demon slaughter did, the female assistant of the president was trembling with fear. She had heard that the president had an earth-shattering move that turned into an evil beast that would devour people. She had been mentally prepared before, but when she saw this half-dragon monster, she felt fear from the bottom of her heart. Eric and Derek looked at each other. If they were to fight the president of the demon slaughter with all of their strength, they would still be defeated in one move. The president of the demon slaughter was very satisfied with the attitude of the others, except for Daniel, who was like a thorn in his side. It was a kind of calm expression with some content in it. Why are you looking at me like that? The president of the demon slaughter coldly snorted and roared. It's just a beast transformation. Is it rare? Daniel said with a smile. If they were out of this remote place, they would know that there were many experts in the outside who could turn into beasts. What really troubled Daniel was the president of the demon slaughter's true seven gene chain. Dragon flame. The president of the demon slaughter took a deep breath and looked at the air that had entered his abdomen. His giant body had expanded by 30%. Daniel's eyebrows twitched. The power of this move was extremely high. Roar! The president of the demon slaughter spat out the gas from his chest, which was accompanied by a wave of fire that was like a dam opening. Daniel suddenly took dozens of steps back and stamped his hands into the ground. Half of the stones in the ring were lifted up by him, and they rose up into the sky. Boom! 
The flame hit the half stone table that looked like a giant stone tablet. It hit the one meter thick stone table in front of him. Fire waves rolled out from the top and side of the stone table. Ah! Get down on the ground! Run! Help! The spectators on both sides of the arena hurriedly fell to the ground or dodged. Those who were unable to dodge were burned into charcoal by the flames on the spot. They did not even have the chance to struggle. More spectators understood that this was no longer a safe space, and they all fled away. If not for this battle deciding the future situation of Oklahoma City, the citizens would have scattered and hid in their homes a long time ago. The stone platform one meter behind was roasted red. Even standing behind the stone platform, Daniel could feel a burning sensation coming from it. The fire gradually became smaller. The president of the demon slaughter stopped spitting fire with his red eyes and threw a punch at the stone wall. Bang. With a clear, cracking sound, the one meter thick stone wall turned into powder and scattered in the sky. The president of the demon slaughter's fist broke through the wall. It was now. Daniel's eyes lit up. The lightning on his body kept flashing. The moment the president of the demon slaughter was covered by the dust, his body turned into a ball of lightning and disappeared into the air. Crack! A clear and small sound came from the wound on the president of the demon slaughter's chest. Boom! The president of the demon slaughter's huge body fell to the ground. The wind was blowing and the dust mixed with broken stones was blown away by the wind. People only saw the president of the demon slaughter and Daniel exchanging places. The president of the demon slaughter widened his eyes and looked at the broken scale on his chest. The newly grown scale gave off a burnt smell of keratin. There was a small hole in the bottom of the scale and the smell of dragon meat was coming out of the hole. You... <coughs> How is that possible? The president of the demon slaughter was shocked. That brilliant blue light was definitely not wrong. It was an elemental transformation. You actually mastered an elemental transformation ability? Daniel's mouth slightly curled, and a smile hung on his face. What else? Unfortunately, the defense of your body is very terrifying. My elemental conversion ball can only drill out a hole the size of a needle. The president of the demon slaughter was breathing heavily. The veins on his forehead were twisting and blood red flames were flowing out of the wound. After a while, the blood flames blocked the wound and new scales formed on it. The light was as bright as before. Daniel quietly looked at the president of the demon slaughter's chest, which was covered with fur again. The black fur that had been electrocuted fell to the ground and there were a few pieces of half-burnt scales scattered on the ground. The metabolism ability was so terrifying. If the president of the demon slaughter had enough gene energy, this alone would be enough to exhaust countless awakened practitioners of the same level. However, this definitely did not include Daniel. Daniel took out a pile of low-grade beast core from his interspatial nanometer compressor. Gene extraction. An endless stream of energy flowed into Daniel's body. Compete with me in terms of endurance, what can you use to fight me? The president of the demon slaughter stood up high and reevaluated Daniel's strength. He decided to use his final move. Elemental transformation, right? Elemental gene chain has always been regarded as the strongest gene chain by the Texas Research Institute. However, this point of view has already fallen behind with the development of the era. Superhuman gene chain was the strongest. Look at me, blood flame wave. The president of the demon slaughter's entire body was burning with blood red flames. Different from the previous heat wave that attacked people, these blood red flames did not have the slightest temperature, but it made people feel a sense of fear and disgust. Daniel could not help but look straight at it. There were strong and weak human gene chains. For example, Lauren's nightmare gene was an extremely troublesome gene type. If Daniel did not have the inheritance armor on at the time, and his mental strength was extremely high, Daniel would have died on the spot. The president of the demon slaughter also had other strange abilities in other aspects. All the scenes in front of him were twisting and swaying. 
This involuntarily reminded him of the steamer he saw in the bun shop when he was young. The steam on the steamer was dense, and the light would be distorted by it. Blood dragon. The president of the demon slaughter's blood flames soared, and the entire sky turned blood red. The citizens of Oklahoma City no longer wanted to watch the battle. They fled in panic. Only the high-ranking soldiers and awakened practitioners continued to watch under the pressure. They knew very well that if they lost the battle, it would be useless to hide anywhere. Daniel, the president of the demon slaughter is so scary, Daniel sighed and said. This time, he had completely given up. Thinking about it, President Edwards saw the two of them using their power and understood that things could not be done. Even if President Edward was at his peak, he would not be able to compete with the president of the demon slaughter's ability. He would either submit to them or flee away. At this point in the fight, no matter which side lost, this side would not have a chance to live after the fight. Sweat dripped down Eric's forehead. Derek. I'll send someone to inform the president and have them prepare to leave at any time. Derek's shook his head. They might not be able to make it in time. Eric hesitated and said, Who do you think will win between the two of them? Derek looked at the president of the demon slaughter, who was burning with blood, and Daniel, who was quietly surrounded by lightning. He sighed. Who knows? Episode 184, Blood Waves It was completely different from what Daniel had expected. The president of the demon slaughter had actually thrown away his scales. The president of the demon slaughter used his sharp hands to peel off his carapace from his chest and tear it open bit by bit. Ah! A small number of female awakened practitioners who were still at the scene closed their eyes in shock. The other male awakened practitioner also felt his stomach roll and his head go dizzy. Pull! The president of the demon slaughter suddenly tore open his scales. Bloody flames were flowing inside his scales, and his heart was beating fast, and his stomach was wriggling. It seemed to have become liquid. Dazzling flames were flowing inside his body. Under the blood-red sky, the president of the demon slaughter laughed wildly. I want to see how powerful your elemental essence conversion is, or my dragon's body is stronger. The president of the demon slaughter shouted as he struggled free from the scales on his body. After losing the production of the scales, not only did he not weaken, he was full of energy and was eager to give it a try. Daniel glanced at the pieces of armor on the ground and a thought flashed across his mind. This thing should be worth a lot of money. Here it comes. Daniel's entire body tensed up. Even if he fully unleashed his absolute domain, his aura was still suppressed by the president of the demon slaughter's blood flames that filled the sky. His force could be defeated, but his technique and heart must not be lower than the president of demon slaughter's. Blood dragon devil flame. Balls of lightning. A blood-red body that looked like a liquid flame collided with the electric ball that had turned into a crackling sound. The blood-red flame took the initiative to wrap itself around the lightning. The blood-colored flame had just touched the lightning when a burst of electric sparks exploded. A cluster of bloody flames withered and fell to the ground, turning into an unknown grayish-brown liquid. The spherical lightning was also tightly wrapped by the blood-colored flame. No matter where it flew, the blood-colored flame would stick to it. If Daniel didn't remove the element conversion right away, he would be tightly wrapped by the blood-red flame and die. Water could extinguish fire. Fire could also evaporate water. Water and fire could not fuse together. Daniel's lightning and the blood-red flames were the same. Lightning constantly exploded. The grayish-brown liquid on the stone platform increased in number, but the electric ball on his body also gradually became smaller and weaker. 10,000 miles of sky was dark red, and that electric ball was the only hope in people's eyes. However, as the electric ball became smaller and smaller, people's hearts also continuously sank. Eric's eyes stared so hard that they became dry. 
He opened his mouth and wanted to say something, but he found that his throat was dry and hoarse. Do we still have hope? I don't know. In the distance, a woman in leather armor jogged over and leaned against Eric and Derek. Sweat dripped from her forehead and wet hair. She randomly combed her hair behind her ears and anxiously asked, Uncle Derek, Brother Eric, how is Daniel? All they got was silence. Even in their hearts, the battle in the ring had gone from 50-50 to 19. The chances of victory would be even lower. Eric paused for a moment and whispered to Cindy. Cindy, take Susie and President Edward and leave quickly. If Daniel loses, Derek and I can hold on for a while. Derek did not say what would happen if Daniel won. As the electric ball became smaller and smaller, and the president of the demon slaughter's blood-red flame was still half gone, Eric felt that the future was bleak. Hearing this, Cindy's eyes turned red just like the blood-red sky in the sky. In the arena, the ball of lightning that was originally the size of a basketball was only the size of a soybean. This meant that Daniel's gene energy was extremely scarce. That little electric ball that was like a spark of fire suddenly drilled out a blood-red liquid, turning into a human shape at the corner of the arena. Daniel turned into a human shape and squatted in a corner. He was breathing heavily in and out of his mouth. On the other side, the blood flame slowly landed in the center of the ring. Plop. The three-meter-tall half-dragon knelt on one knee, its face covered in red and black spots. Its aura was in disorder. Daniel chuckled. The size of his electric ball represented the richness of gene energy, and the size of the blood flame liquid represented life force. To Daniel, the gene energy could be replenished at any time. As for the life force of the opponent, <laughs> even though Daniel was an extremely skilled gene refining expert, he did not dare guarantee that he could refine a medicine that could restore life force. Life force could only be replenished by long-term recuperation and great tonics. <coughs> the president of the demon slaughter coughed weakly. The blood flame liquid trembled continuously, and at every moment, a portion of the liquid turned into black mucus and fell from his body. <laughs> the president of the demon slaughter struggled to stand up. I won! You lost all your gene energy while I was just weak. You are definitely going to lose. Oh? Daniel raised his eyebrows. Are you sure? Daniel quickly took a pile of Beast Core from his inner spatial nanometer compressor. The Beast Core was like butter in a hot pot, quickly melting and shrinking. Gene extraction. Daniel sucked the gene energy dry and squeezed the Beast Core's outer shell with his hand. A pile of grayish black dregs fell to the ground. After the two low grade Beast Core were sucked in, Daniel felt that half of the gene energy in his body had been restored. You. How could you be like this? Although the president of the demon slaughter did not know what had happened, Daniel's rising momentum was telling him that his gene energy had returned. This is impossible. The president of the demon slaughter shouted furiously. You must have used some secret technique to change your aura. How can your energy recover so quickly? I don't believe it. Die now. The president of the demon slaughter turned into a blood flame again and rushed over. Daniel's body made a crackling sound and a ball of lightning hit him. As soon as the blood flame touched the ball of lightning, it immediately understood that Daniel was not lying. The surging electricity drilled into the blood flame and rampaged around. The blood flame was unable to withstand the electric shock, and his liquid body kept trembling. No! The president of the demon slaughter wailed and retreated from the blood flame. He couldn't stand steadily and fell to the ground. Daniel's gene energy consumption was terrifying. He also withdrew his elemental conversion and took out a handful of beast core to quickly extract it. The president of the demon slaughter's life force was almost depleted. The blood dragon undulations faded from his body and the blood red color that filled the sky dissipated. It returned to the cloudless blue sky. Ah! Without the blood flame, the skin dragon was extremely ugly. The blood-red muscle fibers and veins were exposed in the air. 
The blood flowed along his legs and formed two pools of blood on the ground. Crack, crack. The president of the demon slaughter wanted to get up, but his bones cracked and he collapsed to the ground. Daniel could not help but cry out in pain when he heard this. He could not bear to see this happen. However, when he thought about how this guy kept doing evil things and how many innocent refugees he had harmed, he could only look up at him. Perhaps you have harmed so many people and never thought that you would have such a day, Daniel said faintly. The president of the demon slaughter's mouth was full of blood. If you lose, you will die, that is all. Then it is time to die. Episode 185 Draconic Blood Lion Essence Lightning flickered in Daniel's hand, and it became brighter and brighter, turning from blue to purple. Lightning Annihilation Lightning exploded. After a short and miserable scream, the president of the demon slaughter who had dominated the Welcome Home Sanctuary for more than 20 years fell. The Demon Slaughter Marshal Association, which was created by him, also came to a dead end. The members of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association fell to the ground as if they had lost their backbone. Ginny, the female assistant, sat down on the sofa behind the arena. Her eyes were blank as she muttered, It's over. Ginny pursed her lips and looked to her left and right. It was as if everyone was immersed in the shock of the president of the Demon Slaughter's death. She lowered her head and hid behind the sofa as she quietly slipped out of the aisle. Daniel looked around and saw the hidden gazes of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association members. He sneered. Absolute domain. Everyone was frozen. The pressure from the aura could only restrain their bodies, but killing the president of the Demon Slaughter had frightened them and made them unable to think of any way to fight back. Eric! Daniel shouted. Eric was stunned for a moment, then he quickly moved his feet and walked forward. Go and find every member of the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association. Those who have the blood of refugees on their hands, kill them. Kill those who commit crimes. Can you do it? Yes. Eric immediately agreed. His eyes were filled with joy as he left with his men. He had long wanted to get rid of those scum from the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association, but he wasn't strong enough, so he couldn't do as he wished. Now that he had gotten what he wanted, he could not wait to swing his long blade and cut everyone down from the beginning to the end of the street. Derek! The middle-aged man had a bitter expression on his face. He gently stood in front of Daniel, looking neither servile nor overbearing. Daniel sighed and said, Take the people of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce to treat the wounded immediately. As for the dead, quickly bury them. After saying that, Daniel threw a few doses of medicine to Derek. Normal people and below senior warriors can take it with water. An awakened practitioner can take one. If it is not enough, come to me to get it. Yes. Derek nodded slightly and left with his men. Daniel gave out several orders in succession. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce quickly got busy. Daniel, an outsider, could give out orders so skillfully because that was something he had long gotten used to in the Furious Lion tribe. Everyone in the Kansas Chamber of Commerce was grateful to Daniel, so they obeyed him and listened to his orders. Daniel, we caught a woman. A few junior warriors brought Ginny, the female assistant, to Daniel. Ginny's face was covered in dirt, and her delicate makeup had been ruined. She lowered her head, not daring to look at Daniel. Daniel glared at Ginny. You seem to be the person beside the president of the demon slaughter. What is your relationship with him? Ginny, the female assistant, smiled bitterly. I'm just an assistant. To put it bluntly, I am just a servant of the president. Please let me go. If I don't leave now, it'll be too late. You should leave as well. The few people who tied up the female assistant sneered. At a time like this, you still dare to say such stupid things. Trying to escape? No way. Daniel looked at the few people from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce and said, I'll have you go and do your work. I'll interrogate her. A look of understanding flashed across their eyes. They smiled and said to Daniel, Master, we will leave it to you. After saying that, they spread out in all directions. The female assistant lost the pulling force of these few people, and she could not stand stably. 
She fell to the ground. Daniel grabbed Ginny and said coldly, Don't play any tricks. Tell us what you know. Ginny could not help but tremble. Her eyes were full of anxiety. President of the Demon Slaughter is the backbone of the sanctuary. If he dies, the sanctuary will not let this matter rest. Oh, Daniel laughed. He would not be easily frightened by her. We will all die. The female assistant Ginny started to sob. The owner of the Welcome Home Shelter has a violent personality. I will definitely accompany the president of the demon slaughter to death. Quickly, let me go. Daniel was silent for a moment. Her expression did not seem to be fake. The president of the demon slaughter was already so powerful. How terrifying would the master of the Welcome Home Shelter be? Daniel said faintly, You can go and rest. I will send people to investigate what you have done in the past few years. If your crimes are unforgivable, then what awaits you is only death. Daniel waved his hand and sent Ginny, the female assistant, away. One day later, the Kansas Chamber of Commerce started to operate quickly. They were rooted in the people and never lacked manpower. They only lacked high-end forces. In the headquarters of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, people were coming and going, and they were walking in a hurry. Everyone was busy with the joy of working. Once the evil was eliminated, the entire Oklahoma City was flourishing. Recently, the Kansas Chamber of Commerce had gained a lot of new members. Daniel slept soundly until noon when the sun hung high in the sky. He walked in the courtyard in a daze. A few nearby courtyards were occupied by people again. Daniel shook his head and realized that it was time for him to leave. There were no treasures in Oklahoma City except for the corpse of the president of the demon slaughter. It could be said that he had gained nothing. In the courtyard that was covered in animal skins, Susie was jumping around in the corner. She was also holding a thick animal hide in her hands, helping the adults with their work. As for Black, he could only obediently squat in the corner and watch the little girl, Susie, walk back and forth. His hand was too thick, and it could not help the people. Daniel went up to rub the bear's fur. He did not pay much attention to it for the past few days, but the fur of this stupid bear seemed to have become even more shiny. You must have eaten the entire Kansas Chamber of Commerce's food until they are poor. Daniel patted the bear's head, causing Black to wail in dissatisfaction. It had been a long time since it had drunk the gene drug. It had become a strange beast and it needed more gene energy to replenish itself with the medicine than before. Daniel chuckled, I'll feed it to you after we leave Oklahoma City. After saying that, Daniel walked away under Black's resentful gaze. When he passed by the front desk of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, someone called out to him from behind. Daniel? Cindy walked over with a pile of documents in her hands. Daniel's footsteps froze and his heart was pounding. Could it be that Cindy had brought up the matter again? This made him feel awkward. However, it was actually Daniel who was thinking too much. Cindy gave him some information and left. The essence, blood of the dragon blood and devil lion hunting plan. Daniel suddenly remembered the two drops of essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion the president of the demon slaughter mentioned when he recruited him. It must be something mentioned in this plan. Daniel looked at the signature. It was indeed the Welcome Home Sanctuary. His spirits were lifted, and he started reading from beginning to end. After a long time, the fiery red solution in Daniel's hand lit up with a bright red light, and a ball of flame ignited. The precious information turned into dust and dissipated it with the wind. Daniel sighed. The dragon blood devil lion is in the process of hunting. What a coincidence. On the fourth day of the ninth month, the essence blood would be completely extracted. Calculating the days, it seems like it's almost time. Daniel had looked at the map of Oklahoma City. The Welcome Home Shelter was located 100 miles south of it. This 100 miles was filled with forest and swamps. Poisonous insects and strange beasts were not suitable for humans to live with. A hundred miles was not far away from other forces. Episode 186, Departure from Oklahoma 
the president of the demon slaughter. Daniel walked into the underground storage room and saw the president of the demon slaughter's corpse at the door. The corpse returned to its bald human form, and there was a thick layer of soil under it. The corpse did not have any skin protection, and there were ants and rotten insects crawling up and down in the soil, giving off a faint smell. If it wasn't for Daniel's special request, his bloody corpse would have been buried by the Kansas Chamber of Commerce long ago. Daniel covered his nose and carefully examined it. I hope you can bring me some benefits. Daniel stretched out his five fingers and aimed at the rotting corpse below. Gene extraction. Extraction failed. Extraction failed. Extraction successful. Congratulations on obtaining a new gene chain talent. Gene chain talent. Blood flame wave gene chain. Incomplete blood flame wave gene chain. 21% complete. Daniel immediately felt the blood flowing in his blood vessels turn from warm to boiling hot, as if what was in his body was not blood but magma. As the blood boiled and burned in pain, all of his muscles, organs, and every part of his body burned up. The dark storage room in front of him became blood red. Ah! Daniel could not help but let out a low roar because of the pain. But he soon suppressed it. Outside the storage room, there were people from the Kansas Chamber of Commerce coming and going. If they heard the noise, they would bring a lot of trouble. After an unknown amount of time, Daniel, who was holding the wall, finally felt the pain gradually disappear, and his eyes became clear again. When he reached out and pushed open the door, he turned around and saw a clear handprint on the wall. Outside the door, Daniel saw a busy scene and whispered, Looks like I have to go. At the entrance of Oklahoma City, Edward asked Daniel, Are you really going to leave? Don't you want to stay for a few more days? Edward had just recovered from his serious injuries, so he came to send them off with a crutch. Behind him, there were more than 20 people bustling about. They were all members of the Chamber of Commerce who had come out of their busy schedule to send Daniel off. Daniel smiled and said, No, I have something to do. Besides... I can't help you guys in the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. For no reason, I have extra two mouths to feed. Haha, <laughs> black. Daniel shouted, and a fat black bear walked out of the crowd unwillingly. The little girl Susie hugged the black bear's head reluctantly. Black, I will miss you. Black returned with a low howl and slowly walked to Daniel's side. He carried a large bag of fragrant grilled meat on his back. Daniel thought for a while and then said to Edward, Chairman Edward, Oklahoma City is no longer safe. You are only a hundred miles away from the Welcome Home Sanctuary. They have finished their tasks. They will send someone over any time. I suggest that you move to the vicinity of the New Will Command in the North and use the golden coins to nurture talents. The future is slowly being planned. Edward nodded. He also had this plan. The Kansas Chamber of Commerce could move away, but it was very difficult for the people living in Oklahoma City to migrate. This matter needed to be carefully planned. Daniel cupped his fist at everyone and said, All of you are busy people. Let's send you all there. We will meet again if fate allows it. Goodbye. Have a safe journey. We'll meet again if fate brings us together. Behind the crowd, Cindy quietly wiped the tear away at the corner of her eye. He quickly returned to his shrewd appearance and gently left. After the congratulations of the Kansas Chamber of Commerce, Daniel led Black away from Oklahoma City until they disappeared into the forest, never to be seen again. Black? Daniel shook his head when he saw the listless look on the Black Bear's face. Did this Black Bear really become friends with the little girl? It could also be that no one was playing with the little girl, therefore she especially cherished every playmate. Daniel threw out a gene drug to Black. It was one of the few dozen or so of them. The nanometer compressor that was originally filled to the brim was now completely empty, leaving only a dozen or so genetic weapons that Daniel rarely used. Black saw the gene drug flying towards him. He immediately shook his head and became alert. He held the gene drug and poured it into his mouth, then licked the small bottle with his big tongue. There was still a long time before receiving the next bottle of gene drug, so he could not waste a single drop of it in this bottle. 
Daniel flipped through the map as he silently estimated the time. There were still more than ten days before the date mentioned in the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion hunting plan. However, the plans could not be counted on. No one could tell if the plan would be immediately brought forward. Therefore, it was better to be early than late. Black, we need to increase our speed. We need to rush to the dragon blood devil lion's nest as soon as possible. Roar. A man and a bear were running wildly in the forest, causing the birds to cry out in alarm. Six days later, Daniel and Black had already lost their direction. They could only roughly tell north, south, east, and west based on the sun above their heads. I hope that the direction isn't too far away. Daniel did not have much confidence in himself. He thought about it and could not help twisting Black's ear, which made him beg in a rough voice. If it were not for the fact that Black had been charging around while chasing the wild deer, dragging Daniel down, causing him to forget his direction, and causing the map to completely lose its function, Daniel would not have been so uncertain. Roar! Black sniffed and seemed to have smelled something. He looked very anxious. What the hell are you doing now? Daniel frowned. Black's eyes were blurred. He could not help but get up and walk in one direction. Black? Daniel called out as he patted Black's head. The black bear did not realize it and continued to stubbornly walk slowly in that direction. There was something strange. Daniel was slightly shocked. Although Black would occasionally be disobedient, he had never encountered such a strange situation. Black's entire body was affected by something, and it was perfectly straight. He started walking in a certain direction. The bear's head crashed into a tree, but it couldn't stop him. It bypassed the tree and continued to walk forward. No matter how much Daniel shouted to Black, who was usually obedient, Black could not hear anything. Black, smell this? Daniel took out a gene drug and opened the mouth of the bottle. The smell of the medicinal liquid drifted in front of the black bear's nose. However, Black did not seem to be able to smell the gene drug that usually intoxicated him. Nothing could change his pace. Just as Daniel was at his wit's end, a gentle breeze blew from behind him. Black suddenly shook his head. His footsteps paused, and he woke up. Black! Daniel sat on the bear's back and slapped its face. Do you remember what happened? Oh? Black turned his head around with a blank look. He was very curious when Daniel ran onto his back. A breeze passed, and the scorching sun above his head brought along a scorching temperature. Black's nose twitched, and he lost his divine soul again. He kept walking in a direction. It was the smell. Daniel immediately came to a conclusion. It must be some kind of smell that attracted Black that Daniel could not smell. That breeze proved this point. Episode 187 What a Coincidence It's not just black. There doesn't seem to be any animals along the way. Jungle Marsh had always been a deserted place. It is also the natural home of all kinds of wild animals. No matter how big or small it is, it would be ridiculous if there were no animals all day long. They were probably all attracted by that smell. Daniel did not try to stop black. He sat on the bear's back peacefully. He wanted to see where the source of the smell was coming from. That smell was useless to him. If there was any danger, he could carry the bear and walk back. How could he, an awakened practitioner who crushed seven gene chains, be killed in seconds? The wind kept blowing, and Black was walking and stopping in confusion. Daniel stood on the bear's back and looked in that distance. The scene in the distance startled him. He saw a black mass of animals. There were scales, fur, wings, and all kinds of animals. They surrounded a pool of water and stood quietly. As they gradually approached, Daniel discovered that many animals following them had gathered from the distance along with the smell. Crack! Daniel heard a crisp sound. He turned around and saw a bloody rabbit's corpse falling into the bear's palm where the bear's paw had passed. The little rabbit didn't even make a sound before she died. Black the bear didn't have any reaction either. 
He just walked on his own path in a daze. Daniel sat on the black bear's back, quietly watching Black squeeze into the pile of animals. A wave of rancid smell mixed with the smell of feces drift about. Many animals had arrived and had been there a long time. When they approached the pool, Daniel was able to see a few withered wolf corpses lying on the ground, as well as some robust tigers, leopards, and elephants that were emaciated as well, and he didn't know how long they hadn't eaten. They were short like rabbits, snakes, rats, etc., and suffered losses and were trampled to death in large numbers. There were many strange beasts of various heights mixed within these beasts, and a few of them possessed formidable auras that weren't much inferior to Daniel. Daniel's heart slightly shivered. He had to be careful. He jumped on the back of the beast and touched the pond. He looked towards the center of the pond. He saw a strange purple lotus standing in the pavilion in the center of the pond. The green leaves were stretching upward, covering Daniel's sight. It was like a beauty in half-covered clothes tempting him. Demon Moon Lotus. Daniel's heart trembled. He stood up high on the head of an elephant and carefully observed it. The purple Demon Moon Lotus was tender and delicate, and between the red and purple, it was pure white. There was absolutely no mistake about it. This was a demon moon lotus that had yet to mature. When the lotus flower's body turned pink, it would emit a pheromone that humans could not detect, promoting the mutation of wild beasts and the advancement of exotic beasts. In the early stages of the world's metamorphosis and the competition between all things, the reason why the human civilization's evolution was swiftly defeated by exotic beasts was because of this demon moon lotus. The various command centers and camps had eradicated an unknown number of the demon moon lotus. Daniel had once seen a sample of the dried demon moon lotus in the Royal Mint's camp, and he had also read about it. This thing had to be destroyed. The demon moon lotus might be useful to Black. Then he would think of a way to secretly pluck this immature demon moon lotus while the wild beasts were unprepared. The life force of the demon moon lotus was extremely tenacious. As long as the root entered the water, it would naturally absorb the essence of heaven and earth. Daniel was not afraid that the demon moon lotus that was plucked would quickly die. Daniel jumped down from the stunned elephant and used his hands to push to the pond water. The water's surface was clear to the bottom. Except for some fish corpses, there were no other things that could be seen. The demon moon lotus was releasing pheromones that would attract wild beasts. At the same time, it was continuously warning the wild beasts not to approach. Otherwise, they would be poisoned to death and die without a burial ground. Daniel held his breath and directly jumped into the water. The animals on the four banks of the pond stared blankly at the demon moon lotus. Not a single animal stopped him from moving. It was not difficult to take the demon moon lotus away. As long as it was fed with some extremely nutritious food, it would be busy absorbing and growing for the time being. It would stop releasing pheromones, and the gene drug was one of the items that could greatly improve the demon moon lotus. When Daniel swam near the demon moon lotus, he did not even dare to breathe loudly. He was constantly emitting a colorless and odorless poison about 10 meters around him. Once he was exposed to the poison, no one could save him. After removing the gene drug stopper, the bitter taste of the medicinal liquid spread out. When the demon moon lotus sensed the existence of the medicinal liquid, it impatiently bloomed its delicate lotus leaves, showing its desire for the gene drug. Daniel poured the genetic liquid into it. The lotus leaves quickly shrunk, turning from a blooming lotus flower into a purple flower bud, stopping the spreading of pheromones. He reacted quickly uprooting the demon moon lotus and stuffing it into the nanometer compressor. Taking advantage of the fact that the pheromones that filled the sky had yet to dissipate completely, Daniel swam towards the shore. A gentle breeze blew over, bringing with it a slight chill. Daniel, on the other hand, was facing a great enemy. He was about to suffer. The breeze blew away the remaining pheromones, and the wild bees that were addicted to the taste of the demon moon lotus slowly woke up. They instinctively felt as if they had lost something and became restless. Daniel took a deep breath 
and shrunk his head into the water. These beasts were not stupid. Once they found Daniel in the water, he would immediately become everyone's target. It was not easy to deal with the powerful beasts. Rumble. The wild beasts became restless. The smell that they were addicted to had disappeared. They could not find the source. The desire to destroy had caused them to start fighting beside the pond. The weak wild beasts immediately became food for the strong wild beasts. Thousands of huge wild beasts had not eaten for a long time. The food was so rich that a bloody feast began. Hiss. A giant snake that was several dozen meters long was constantly trying to be swallowed by the beasts. Soon, it bumped into a colorful, ferocious tiger beast, rolling and killing it among the beasts. A snow-white ape beast crawled up and down by the pond, wanting to find the reason why the smell had disappeared. However, it made the furious mammoth beast angry, and it let out a sharp howl as it started fighting. Black was confused in the herd, and he turned his head to look around. He vaguely remembered resting next to the fire with Daniel. Why did Daniel disappear in the blink of an eye, and he was standing among so many wild beasts? Where was Daniel? Could it be that he has been dreaming for so many days? Black sat down and started to think. He suddenly felt someone lift his ear and felt a slight pain. He looked up and saw that Daniel had come back with a wet body. The nanometer compressor was really a divine weapon. Daniel thought that if the nanometer compressor had not secretly stored away the demon moon lotus, he could only bear the pain and destroy the lotus. He would also be attacked by the angry beasts on the shore. At that time, Daniel might be able to escape, but Black would be in trouble. Stupid bear, let's go. Daniel patted the bear's head. I've got something good for you. Episode 188 Forest Boa Beast Yes. Perhaps it was the spiritual sense of an exotic beast, but for some reason, the huge black snake had its eyes on Daniel. Ignoring the colorful, ferocious tiger tearing at its scales, it suddenly dashed towards Daniel. Hurry up and leave. Daniel pulled the black bear and ran to the front. Black's bead was not slow, closely following Daniel's footsteps. Hiss. The black snake raised its head to the sky and hissed. It spat out a mouthful of venom, almost hitting black. The dark green venom dissolved into the ground and formed a small puddle. It made Daniel's heart jump. If Black was hit, would he still be alive? The tyrannical aura clearly indicated that this was a beast king that was not weaker than the president of the demon slaughter. If he were to tangle with it among so many wild and exotic beasts, would he be able to win? Not to mention, just fighting with it would waste a large amount of precious time. Roar! The colorful, ferocious tiger was also a strange beast. When it saw the black snake abandon it to chase after others, it felt even more that its dignity was provoked, and it bit the black snake's tail. Daniel brought the black bear along and fled, carrying a heavy treasure with him. It was up to him to be careful. Black looked at Daniel as he ran. Maybe it was because of the strange beast's spiritual sense, but it kept turning its head as it ran. There was a nanometer compressor in his arms, and the devil moon lotus was in it. There was no aura that could be leaked out, but Black kept turning his head to let Daniel know that he had found the thing in Daniel's arms. It seems like the spiritual senses of all the strange beasts are exceptionally sensitive. I must use it quickly after the demon moon lotus is completely cooked. Daniel made up his mind and opened the map to continue searching. According to the route he had set, if he had not been lost, he should have arrived near the welcome home sanctuary earlier. He had lost his way in the middle and had deviated from the route for an unknown amount of time. Demonic Lotus Pond Daniel found a highlight on the map. This map was obtained from the Demon Slaughter Marshall Association. They had explored the limestone forest for an unknown period of time, so it was not surprising they knew about the existence of the Demon Moon Lotus. Fifteen miles north of the Demonic Lotus Pond was where the Dragon Blood Devil Lion resided. They were almost there. Daniel was overjoyed. This time, not only did he find his location on the map, he also found the route to his destination. Black, let's go! Daniel called out to the bear. 
but he found it cowering and refusing to respond. He only felt a few thick black shadows cover the sky. Daniel looked up and saw four 20 to 30 meter long giant snakes coiling around a nearby tree. They were staring straight at Daniel. One of them was the one beside the demonic lotus pond. The aura of the four giant snakes was stronger than the other. No wonder the Welcome Home Sanctuary and the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association had never thought of eradicating the demon moon lotus. These four jungle giant boa beasts would remove all of their thoughts of that. Yikes. The giant snake, which was as thick as a water tank, pressed down on the tree and smashed it into the ground with a loud bang. It raised its huge head and poked it at Daniel. A fishy smell swept towards Daniel, shocking everyone. Black struggled to get up. He wanted to roar and drive the other party away, but when the roar reached his mouth, it turned into a terrified whimper. At least eight gene chains. This was the strongest creature Daniel had ever seen other than the strange forest man who took Nala away. Compared to the invincible aura of the other party, Daniel's absolute domain was only a fly that was pressing down on the elephant. It would not cause any burden to the elephant at all. The four giant snakes quietly stared at Daniel. If Daniel observed carefully, he would find that they were looking in the same direction as Black. It was Daniel's chest, the nanometer compressor that contained the demon moon lotus. After all, the nanometer compressor concealed the aura of the demon moon lotus. The four giant snakes did not act rashly. It was only their spiritual perception that made them closely chase after Daniel. Daniel gritted his teeth. If he threw the demon moon lotus directly at these four snakes, he didn't know how many humans would be killed by these four mutated beasts after ten years. The demon moon lotus absolutely couldn't be given to them. Daniel tightened the nanometer compressor on his chest and called out lightly to the black bear. Black, let's go. After he said this, Daniel lifted black and ran. The four giant snakes stared at them as they ran away. Only when they could not see Daniel did they crawl and crash into the giant tree rock. As long as they could drag it out, it would help them. Daniel thought if it really didn't work out, he would smash the demon moon lotus in the nanometer compressor and throw the remaining broken limbs and fluid to the giant snakes. He would let them do whatever they wanted. In any case, he couldn't let this demon moon lotus continue to grow. Hearing the continuous rumbles behind him, Daniel felt his scalp tingle. The giant snake in the lead had eaten countless natural treasures in this jungle swamp and had grown to this extent. If it was allowed to come out of the limestone forest, ordinary tribes or command centers wouldn't be able to stop it at all. Even if the command center sent experts from the town to fight, no matter how many people came, they would all be food for the four boa beasts. After running tirelessly for about half a day, Black gradually recovered his courage and ran on his own. A giant pine tree rose from the ground. Daniel climbed up the hundred meter tall tree and looked into the distance. A city stood proudly on the plains in the distance. It laid flat on the ground. Small dots scattered on the plains. There were humans walking. Daniel could vaguely see smoke rising from the city. It seemed that this was the welcome home sanctuary. Who is it? Come down, I found you. A male voice cried out sharply. Daniel looked down and saw a few well-dressed men barking at them. They were holding the dog-type exotic beasts in their hands, and they were taking in deep breaths. Daniel lightly jumped off the tree and stood beside the shaking black bear. He carefully looked at the few people in front of him. The strongest person's aura was around five gene chains. He was wearing exquisite leather armor, and there was a genetic weapon on his waist that had ripples that were not shallow. The other people's auras varied in strength. From their clothing, it could be seen that they were the followers of this dog-type exotic beast. The dog-type strange beasts in their hands stirred fixedly at Daniel's chest. It was obvious that it was attracted by the demon moon lotus in the nanometer compressor. Hmm. The awakened practitioner, who was in the lead, saw the giant bear standing beside Daniel. He could not help but become cautious. He laughed and took a few steps back. He kept a safe distance between them. What treasures does my pet smell from you? 
It's better to show us now than to have us take it from you. Taking the treasure from me? Daniel snorted coldly. I wonder who you are. Daniel probed. Ha <laughs> ha. A few awakened practitioners laughed. We are from the Welcome Home Sanctuary. Have you heard of us? You have now stepped into the territory of the Welcome Home Sanctuary. The awakened practitioner, who had five gene chains, snorted and said, The commander of our Welcome Home Sanctuary is a hunting exotic beast to get rid of evil for the people. I advise you to obediently take out your treasures and do as I say. Otherwise, if you anger the commander, I'll make you die a horrible death. Episode 189 Trouble to the East The awakened practitioner was confident that he and the others could beat Daniel. If Daniel was not with a fat black bear beast, they would not even bother to waste their breath and just rob him. A thought suddenly popped up in Daniel's mind. The Welcome Home Sanctuary, Dragon Blood Devil Lion, the commander of the Fallout Shelter, Demon Moon Lotus, or a Boa Beast... If it worked well, not only would he be able to get rid of the forest boa mutant beast's relentless pursuit, he would also be able to punish the welcome home fallout shelter and cause the two tigers to fight each other. With that essence blood of the dragon blind and devil lion, Daniel had a chance to fight for a bit. Daniel confirmed his thoughts and looked at the few aggressive awakened practitioners in front of him. He immediately pretended to be afraid. You... you are from the fallout shelter? Daniel pretended to be afraid and took a few steps back while trembling. The shaking black bear, who was beside his leg, turned his head to look at Daniel strangely. He did not understand why Daniel would do this. That stupid bear. Daniel cursed in his heart. He only hoped that Black would not expose himself. It's good that you know. The awakened practitioner who had five gene chains snorted coldly. Hurry up and hand over the treasure. My wind wolf exotic beast has already smelled it. The five wind wolves that were squatting on the ground stretched out their tongues and gasped for breath. Their ten eyes shone with a green light, full of impatience. Daniel laughed in his heart and thought, You like to steal other people's treasures, right? Today I'll give you a big surprise. Pretending to be afraid, Daniel took out the demon moon lotus. Only the edges of the rapidly maturing demon moon lotus were still half purple and half red. The rest of the petals were soft and pink. The moment the demon moon lotus was exposed to the air, the black and wind wolf stared with their eyes wide open. Their bodies did not move, as if they had forgotten to breathe. Although the leader of the Welcome Home Sanctuary, the awakened practitioner, did not know what was so special about the demon moon lotus, Seeing the demonic lotus leaves, the delicate body of the lotus, and the faint appearance of the gene energy, he knew that this was a rare treasure. Daniel's temple was throbbing. The sight and smell of the demon moon lotus was spreading in the air. It would quickly attract the four boas right away. He had to dodge it quickly. I'll give you the treasure. Wait for me at the Welcome Home Sanctuary. After saying that, Daniel pulled the black bear. Black's limbs seemed to have frozen on the spot, and he was not willing to move at all. Daniel had no choice but to carry Black and run. The four boa beasts were about to come. If they were to come after them, that would be a huge problem. A few people in the welcome home shelter did not care about Daniel's escape. With such a bright treasure here, it was better first to think of a way to bring it back. The five of them carried the demon moon lotus, dragging the wind wolf that seemed to have lost its soul and rushed back quickly. Strange. I keep feeling that something is not right. One of them muttered. Looking at the wind wolf that was mechanically walking beside his feet, he could not help but kick it twice. Could it be that the wind wolf is tired? This could be true. Last night, a few wind wolves guarded the dragon blood devil lion's corpse for close to a night. How can it not be tired? The five of them returned to the vicinity of the Dragon Blood Devil Lion's habitat. The Dragon Blood Devil Lion had already been completely wiped out by the Fallout Shelter's commanders and generals. Corpses were piled up in the middle of the array. Several gene refining experts were busy working inside. Outside the formation, the Fallout Shelter's commanders and generals waited quietly. As the Fallout Shelter's rebel army, their resources were limited. 
The plan to condense the Essence blood this time could be said to have gathered all the manpower in the fallout shelter, and it had consumed a lot of resources. As long as the Essence blood was successfully condensed, the previous investment would be returned dozens of times over. Such investment and benefits made the bandit leader, who had experienced hundreds of battles, very nervous. He sat in his chair and could not sit still. Have you retrieved all your men? The commander, Henry, turned around and asked the general beside him. The rebel general nodded and said, I have already passed down the orders according to the plan. The hundreds of awakened practitioners who have spread out are gathering here. All of our forces are defending this place. It is absolutely safe. Hmm. The fallout shelter commander nodded. He thought about it and could not see the possibility of failure. Only then did he relax a little. Eh? The commander Henry suddenly frowned. He sensed a strange gene energy in the crowd behind him. Commander Henry turned around and pointed at a small leader in the crowd. He was a colonel in the Welcome Home Sanctuary. You, come here. The awakened practitioner who had stood in the crowd had a bad feeling. He could only pull the reins of the wind wolf and walk over. Commander, when you call me over... Commander Henry smiled but did not stand as he said, Did you get some treasure in the forest? Why did this sound so familiar? The awakened practitioner who was standing obediently stopped smiling. A struggling look appeared on his face. The commander stared at him. How could an awakened practitioner who was just a mere five gene chains accept this? He could only take out a paper bag from his pocket and respectfully hand it over with both hands. Commander, I picked this up myself in the forest. I don't know what it is, but I feel I have fate with the commander. I'm thinking of going back to customize a box for the commander. The commander Henry reached out and took the demon moon lotus from the paper bag. The rebel generals sitting on both sides looked over curiously. Once the demon moon lotus was in his hand, no one knew what it looked like through the paper bag. However, the weight of a hundred grams emitted a mellow and thick gene energy. With just a slight sense, one could tell it was definitely not an ordinary item. The rebel generals on both sides revealed looks of envy. The essence blood of the dragon blood devil lion was currently being condensed, and he had obtained another heavenly treasure for free. Today, this commander was really happy to have both of them at the same time. Good. The commander did not open the paper bag to see. He did not want to make some people jealous. He stuffed the demon moon lotus in his pocket and said to the awakened practitioner, who was standing obediently, When you go back, go to the warehouse and get a thousand gold coins as a reward. From tomorrow onward, you will work by my side. The awakened practitioner, who had heard the commander's words, felt happy from the bottom of his heart. He put on a fake smile and said, Thank you, commander. Congratulations, commander, for obtaining the treasure. Today's happiness is even more joyous. The commander is truly blessed by the heavens. Commander, the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil line is only a step away. Please step forward and give it a reward. Amidst the chaotic congratulations, the commander stood up with satisfaction. He could only hear a rumbling sound beside his ear. In the distance, there was a huge creature roaring and rushing over. Roar. The wind wolves' eyes were red as they roared towards the sky. There was an aura that humans could not detect that was seducing all the strange beasts. That sweet scent touched their souls, and they wished they could find the source and swallow it. What's that sound? The commanders and generals turned around to look. The rumbling figures were getting closer and closer. The trees were falling, and the beasts were all dead. The four giant snake beasts came together, screeching as they rammed into the forest, risking their lives. The demon moon lotus had matured. Episode 190 The Giant Snake These beasts! One of the rebel generals had barely finished half of his sentence when his mouth turned dry. Four giant snakes crawled out from the forest, staring in the direction of the commander with blood-red eyes. The snake core in its mouth jumped, and a foul wind blew against his face, 
Shut up. The commander, Henry, knew that the high-level exotic beasts had intelligence. Although they didn't understand the meaning of the word beast, their contemptuous attitude and emotions would anger these four giant snakes with terrifying auras. Henry was nervous. Behind him was the formation to condense the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. Once he gave up on this, the setup of the welcome sanctuary for more than ten years would be ruined. The traps, formation materials, and manpower that he had spent so many resources to prepare. If he returned empty-handed, would shake up the welcome sanctuary, causing a series of rebellions. Don't be nervous. The Commander Henry put on a calm face and suppressed the restlessness of the rebel generals. He pretended to be calm on the surface, but his heart was beating rapidly. He had seen reports about snakes in the limestone forest, but he never thought there would be four of them until they appeared. Furthermore, the essence of the dragon blood and devil lion shouldn't be that helpful to strange beasts. It should be to the extent where all the giant snakes were set out to fight for it. Could it be? Commander Henry's thoughts were scattered. The dragon blood devil lion was related to this giant snake by blood. No matter what, Commander Henry had to stand out. He calmly walked to the vicinity of the giant snake and loudly shouted to it. Four snake kings have graced us with your presence. What is the matter? If there is lack of food, our fallout shelter can provide enough food for you and help you get through the winter. I hope they can understand what I mean. While Commander Henry was thinking, the giant snake in the lead lowered its head and approached him. The commander was confused. What was he trying to do? After the snake was about ten meters away from Henry... It suddenly opened its mouth and tried to swallow him. How dare you! His heart was beating wildly. The commander was a powerful warrior with seven complete gene chains, and he had rich combat experience. When the giant snake pressed down on his head, he was on full alert. Rumble. The giant snake's head crashed into the ground, and it swallowed half of the soil that was the size of a double bed. The other three giant snakes also roared as they bit the Commander Henry. After dodging continuously in the air, knowing in the end that there was no way to dodge it, a snakehead ran towards Henry. Explosive steel dissolving. The Commander Henry threw out a punch, and a fish shadow after fish shadow flew out. Ding, 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 ding. Dozens of punches landed on the giant snake's head, leaving deep holes in it. Ugh. A giant snake retracted its head in pain and whipped its tail at the commander. Bang! The commander's fists were folded in front of his chest, but he was sent flying dozens of meters away. His arms were covered with a deep black mark, and the pain penetrated his bones. Generals, help me! The commander kept calling, and three rebel generals jumped to Henry's side. These three were the trusted aides that Henry had brought out from the command center when he betrayed Jason's command center. All three of them were powerful warriors with seven gene chains. All of you, hold back a giant snake. We can't let these beasts get close to the formation to extract the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. Yes, roar. The largest giant snake waved its body and charged straight at the commander, Henry. Its mouth was wide open, and its lower jaw emitted a dark green light at the same time. It bit towards Henry. A bunch of nonsense. Die. Bloodlight sacred radiant palm. The gene energy surged out with a blood red color. However, this blood red color did not have the intention to wreak havoc and murder. Instead, it carried a trace of holiness and bitterness as it slammed towards the snake's head. In the chaotic battle, Daniel hid in the bushes and looked between the humans and snakes in shocking battle. That familiar blood-red color appeared, and Daniel immediately realized that the president of the demon slaughter was indeed related to the commander of the fallout shelter. I'll let you all fight well. Have a good fight. Daniel happily looked at the formation behind them. There were four gene-refining experts standing at each corner of the formation and in the center were hundreds of dragon blood devil lion corpses. What a generous method. Daniel sighed. Whether it was the shelter or the command center, it was very rare to see a gene-refining expert, 
but the Welcome Center had sent out four gene refining experts at once. Furthermore, who knew how many resources were invested to form the huge formation within a hundred meter radius? The large formation was shrouded in black gas. Daniel could not see the changes within it. He could only feel that the dragon blood devil lion's gene energy was converging towards a single point, and the dragon blood devil lion essence blood was about to be completed. Rumble, rumble. The four huge snakes rampaged about, and the commander Henry and the three rebel generals did everything they could do to drag them along. However, the strength of the huge snakes was greater than that of the humans, and the gene energy of the strange beast was thicker than that of the four of them. They could only hold on with all their might, and just as the dragon blood devil lion's essence blood was about to be completed. Commander Henry finally made up his mind. He could not drag this on any longer. He had to heavily injure one of them and let the other three draw the giant serpents away, collect the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion, and then leave. Any delay would result in a change. Generals, let's get ready. Blood flame wave. The hearts of the three generals trembled. Every time they used blood flame undulation, it would cause a considerable burden on their bodies. It was fine when they were young and strong, but now they were much older. The stamina and gene energy could not hold on. This time, they used the blood flame wave to combine their bodies. If they did not recuperate for a few years after this, they would not be able to recover at all. If they were not careful, there might be a permanent rupture of the gene chain, causing their cultivation to regress. After the matter is done, the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion of the three of them will increase by 50%, deducting it from the escaping colonel in general. Commander Henry's heart was beating rapidly as he shouted. This time, when he returned, at least half of the welcome sanctuary's strength would be lost. All right. Blood dragon transforms into life. Blood ignition. Blood demon. The three generals all transformed into blood red beast monsters with different poses. Their bodies were burning with blood red flames. Even the giant snakes that were close to them did not dare to rush over. Instead, they moved around and surrounded the few of them. Commander Henry shouted, Blood flame wave! With himself as the center, the three of them transformed into blood red beasts and merged into his blood flame wave. The four blood flames merged into one, and Henry's facial features gradually blurred, turning into a five-meter-tall blood giant. Roar! The four giant snake beasts paused for a moment. The blood flames posed a great threat to them, but under the fatal attraction of the demon Moon Lotus, they roared in unison and pounced towards the Commander Henry to bite him. Oh, what a wonderful fight! Daniel sighed and shook his head in the bushes. He never thought that he would have a day where he would have to bow his head and compete with Henry. Daniel hoped that they would fight until both sides suffered heavy losses. It would be best if the four snakes and the other three died there. Not a single one of them was left alive. The family was all gone at once. In any case, in Daniel's eyes, whether it was the giant snake exotic beast or the welcome sanctuary, none of them were good stuff. Episode 191 Win Win Gulp Black gas filled the center of the array. The dragon blood devil lion's corpse trembled slightly and quickly dried up under the effect of the array. Specks of reddish brown liquid gathered above it. The dragon blood devil lions that were more than two meters long was completely absorbed by it. Their dark and bright skin was riddled with holes, and their flesh and blood dried up revealing their crescent moon white bones. Hundreds of dragon blood devil lions turned into dried wood. The ink black grand array was not only extremely scary, but even the bones could not withstand the corrosion of the grand array and turned into lumps of black ash. The black ash curled upward and melted into fist-sized liquid. This was the dragon blood devil lion's essence blood. It's a bone striking and sucking. Daniel murmured. Not even a speck of dust was left behind. The gurgling sounds came to an abrupt stop. The ink-black smoke of the grand array dissipated along with it. The dragon blood devil lion's essence blood had been completely condensed. 
Daniel's eyes flashed as he looked at the blood giant that was fighting with the four blood snakes. Blood fire! The blood giant spat out balls of blood fire. The giant snake's body was huge, and there was no way for it to dodge. As it was lit up by the blood fire, the thick scale armor turned into dust like a thin piece of paper. Hiss! The giant snake kept rolling, and smoke and dust rose into the sky. Under the immense vitality of the giant snake, it forcefully relied on gene energy to extinguish the blood-red flame. The four giant snakes opened their mouth and spat out venom to seal off the path of retreat of the blood-red giant, making it unable to move. Damn it! The blood giant's hatred grew. He wished he could roast these four giant snakes into meat skewers and eat them. If they had come earlier, he wouldn't have this problem. Why did they have to come just when he was about to collect the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion? When today's matter would be over, he would have to dig three feet into the limestone forest and eradicate all of the snakes. The blood fire burned fiercely on the blood giant's body. Henry was very clear that with every second he preserved, the vitality of the four of them would weaken a little. He must be quick. There was a black fog covering the Grand Formation. The first thing to come in contact with the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion were the four gene refining experts who were in charge of the formation. There's a fight outside. A slightly younger voice said, what should we do? The four of them fell silent. A large mass of several hundreds of drops of essence of blood of the dragon blood and devil lion was right in front of them. As long as they reached out their hands to touch it, they would not lack cultivation resources for the rest of their lives. The four of them had their thoughts, but they did not trust each other. Would there be a loyal follower of the commander among the four of them? Would one of the four of them want to eat all of them? An old man said, We will split into four and choose a path to leave. When the time comes, we'll give it to the commander or keep it for our use. We will find our way out. Okay. The four voices of different strengths answered at the same time. The essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion quietly floated between the four of them. It only saw the dirty transaction between the four of them. A quarter? The old man who reached out his hand first gently touched the floating essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. Under the gazes of the other three people, he chuckled. I only took a quarter. The old man grabbed a large handful of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. He took away three quarters of it. At the same time, he pushed out the other quarter of it with his hand. The reddish brown liquid gurgled out of the formation. Chase! The two of them crazily chased after the old man, while the other person turned around to pick up the quarter of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. A pleased smile appeared on his face. What are you laughing at? The lonely gene refining expert's facial expression changed drastically. He turned around and saw a young man stepping into the formation. Under the black smoke, one could faintly see the flickering lightning in his hand. Go to hell! The gene refining expert shouted fiercely. Pippa! With an explosive sound, blood burst out from the gene refining expert's chest and he fell to the ground with a weak look in his eye. Daniel put away the reddish-brown essence blood, turned around and chased after the other three people. Rumble. Another giant snake pounced towards the blood giant and bit down on it. Henry did not manage to dodge in time and was knocked back. A ball of paper shot out from his body. After leaving the protection of Henry's gene energy, the paper ball was quickly burned by the blood flames, revealing the pink lotus leaf demon moon lotus. The four giant snakes immediately threw down the blood giant and bit down on the small demon moon lotus. Commander Henry's heart skipped a beat, and he immediately understood. Demon moon lotus? Giant snake, how dare you? Henry's fury suddenly erupted. Only now did he realize that he had found someone else's way. At this moment, he was extremely regretful when he received the officer's demon moon lotus. He did not open it in time to check. He had fallen for the villain's scheme. Damn it. The dragon blood devil lion's essence blood. Henry glanced at the large array that was surrounded by a black fog. The gene energy within was no longer trembling. It had completed the condensation of the essence blood. 
Outside the large array, a group of officers and ordinary awakened practitioners were fighting around the huge snake. Death and injuries were everywhere. You have killed so many people from my welcome home sanctuary. Don't even think about having a good time. A blood flame shot out from Henry's hand, and amid the four giant snake bites, it accurately hit the demon moon lotus. The demon moon lotus split into several pieces with a puff. The tender red liquid fell into the soil and was absorbed by the cracked soil. Henry did not care about the four giant snakes that were fighting for the demon moon lotus. The demon moon lotus had been burned by its blood fire, and the possibility of reproducing had been cut off. The sand environment was not suitable for the blood moon lotus to grow. The blood giant rushed into the sky towards the ink black formation. After that, a furious roar was heard. It's gone! There's nothing left! The three gene refining experts kept chasing after the three quarters of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. Even in Texas, those pretentious noble families, not to mention the small gene refining expert, would not be able to resist snatching it. Tony, as long as you give me a quarter of my essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion, I will immediately turn back. Tony, me too. We'll each take our share. It's safer to split up and run. Under the earnest advice of the two men behind him, the gene refining expert who was called Tony was moved. In terms of speed, how could the three of them compare to Commander Henry? He was a powerhouse with seven perfect gene chains. Tony pursed his lips. All right, I'll immediately split this essence blood into three. Tony stopped in his tracks. The other two people also stopped about ten meters away. They stared closely at Tony to prevent him from trying to trick them again. Tony cut carefully. A large essence blood of the dragon blood and devil line turned into three small balls and flew towards the two of them. A fierce light flashed in the eyes of the young men. He suddenly pounced to the side and swiped his knife at the young man's neck. Then a bright blood red flower bloomed. You! Under the resentful gaze of his companion who was about to die, he took away two balls of essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion and rushed towards Tony. Die! The short knife shot out and entered Tony's chest. Genetic weapon? Tony widened his eyes and died with everlasting regret. Episode 192, Seize. <laughs> the only survivor, the gene refining expert, had an excited expression on his face. He couldn't care less about the genetic weapon that was stuck in Tony's chest. He stretched out his hand and touched the last essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. I'm rich. I'm rich. The gene refining expert's eyes were red. He thought of the beautiful future ahead of him. He dived into the deep mountains and forest to slowly digest three quarters of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. This was the result of years of hard work in the welcome home sanctuary. It could allow him to absorb it for a few years. When he succeeded, he would quickly break through to the current level of the sanctuary's commander, Henry. With that level of strength, he would be able to live a good life wherever he went. He wanted to be an official in the command center and enjoy the fun of watching others busy themselves in the office. Gulp. The three separate balls of essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion condensed into a large ball once again. It was glossy, reflecting a mesmerizing red-brown mellow luster. It's better to come earlier than later. These items are not bad, so I'll collect them for you. A hand reached out and took the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion from the gene refining expert. After Daniel took the essence blood, he raised his head and looked at the young man in front of him with a playful expression. Because of the uneven distribution of loot in the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion, he had killed two of his companions in a row. You are not a good person either. The gene refining expert's beautiful dream was shattered. His face was pale, and his lips had lost their color. You. You. What's wrong? Daniel sneered and kept the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion into his interspatial nanometer compressor. The gene refining expert took a few steps back and touched Tony's side. He suddenly pulled out the genetic weapon that was inserted into his chest. Air pierce, die! The gene refining expert laughed viciously. Although his father's strength was very weak, he still had the genetic weapon with him, so why would he be afraid of him? 
The genetic weapon with the genetic ability, I'm asking you if you're afraid. Daniel shook his head. With this level of skill, he could waste any more time with him. With a crisp sound, the diamond-shaped needle in Daniel's hand flashed, and the throwing knife was thrown to the side. Sparks flashed in his hand, and a bolt of lightning pierced through the gene-refining expert's throat. Daniel didn't even look at his opponent. His body flew away at a high speed. He had sensed a terrifying aura rising from the ink-black formation. It should have been the commander who had led his men to chase after him. Run. Daniel turned around and left without hesitation. A wisp of blood rose from the horizon behind him. Daniel turned into blue lightning and ran quickly. On the wasteland, a wisp of blue lightning and a mass of blood-red giant could be seen chasing him from the front and back. The speed of the two was similar, and the distance between them did not shrink. In terms of speed and endurance, Daniel had never been afraid of anyone. After experiencing the Oklahoma City Challenge Tournament, he knew that the blood-red fluctuation had consumed a lot of his life force. He used the Beast Corps' gene energy to exchange with his opponent's life force. It was obvious who was the loser with just a glance. Kid, I'll make sure you die a horrible death. The blood giant was so angry that it roared at the lightning in front of it from afar. Under the nourishment of its anger, its blood-red body became even redder. Idiot, Daniel thought. To say such vicious words at such a time, no matter what he said, he would not stop. There was not enough gene energy. Daniel suddenly stopped, and the blue electrosphere turned into a human form. He landed on a rock with high heels. He took up more than ten beast cores in his hand and began sucking wildly. Gene energy quickly replenished itself. Let's go. Daniel once again turned into a lightning ball and flew away. In just a few seconds, the blood giant had closed the distance by about one-fifth. This made the giant behind him even more determined to chase after him. Kid, return the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion to me. I'll spare your dog life. The blood giant shouted at Daniel in a loud voice. <laughs> Daniel sneered. He just said he wanted me to die a horrible death. Now he wants to spare my dog's life. Daniel did not reply. He continued on his way until the sun set and the sky had turned dark. Although he took advantage of the time when Daniel absorbed the beast cores to shorten the distance between them several times, the blood giant was getting more and more anxious. The three rebel generals who had merged with him kept warning Henry that they did not have enough life force. At the night, the ball of light and the blood flame giant was even more eye-catching. When the wild beasts in the wilderness saw the surging aura of the two, they avoided it. Even if their intelligence was not complete, they still knew the principle of pursuing benefits and avoiding harm. While the three blood flame giants were alarmed repeatedly, the ball of lightning that was a hundred meters in front of them flashed and disappeared in the pitch black wilderness. The blood flame giant landed near the spot where Daniel had disappeared. It searched back and forth, but it still didn't know where Daniel had gone. Blood flames rose from its body as it kicked a piece of rock into the air and shattered it into pieces. Damn it! Damn it! Rumble. The essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion slipped away from his hand and mysteriously disappeared in front of his eyes. He could only use the silent wasteland to vent his anger. The flat wasteland was filled with holes by the blood flames. The blood flames split into four and turned into human shapes. The few people in his body noticed that Henry was wasting his life force and decisively ended the blood flames. Find it. We have to find that kid. He's nearby. He hasn't gone far. Commander Henry said fiercely with red eyes. The four giant snakes killed almost half of our awakened practitioners. The strength of the welcome home sanctuary has been greatly damaged. This revenge must be avenged. Yes. The three rebel generals of the followed shelter responded at the same time. They spread out around Henry and began to search carefully. Under the rock, Daniel looked curiously at a small space. If it wasn't for the electric ball that he had transformed into, he wouldn't have been able to find this place. This small space was filled with purple vines. Occasionally there would be insects crawling out from the roots of the vines. The space that was isolated from the outside world was supported by these vines to form a food chain. This was a natural formation space that was naturally formed. Daniel clicked his tongue in wonder. 
This was truly a marvelous work of art. All right, it's time to take a rest. I wonder if the blood giant outside can find us. Daniel said with a smile. If he wanted to continue fleeing, Daniel was not afraid of the blood giant at all. If he continued to chase after the blood giant, the one who would be at a disadvantage would be the blood giant, not him. After losing so much of his life force and using all his trump cards, would the opponent still be his match? Daniel stretched his hand into the nanometer compressor and took out a large ball of essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. His heart was wild with joy. First, he took a quarter of the ink black formation. Then he chased out and snatched the remaining three quarters. With these hundreds of drops of essence blood in his hands, he might not be able to use them all by himself. He could leave some for the stupid bear. Hopefully the stupid bear did not wander around. Otherwise, he might not be able to find it. Daniel pointed at the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion and whispered, Gene Extraction. Episode 193 Absorbed Buzz The essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion emitted a mass of air, and pure energy slowly emerged from it. It stretched in the air until it became a thin thread, and the long, thin thread of smoke was absorbed into Daniel's body bit by bit. Extraction successful. New Gene Chain Talents obtained. Gene Chain Talents. Dragon Blood Devil Lion Gene Chain. Incomplete Dragon Blood Devil Lion Gene Chain, 25% complete. Essence Blood Extraction successful. Daniel saw an additional message. Essence Blood Extraction. At the same time, all of his gene chains had different degrees of improvement. Only 1% of the genes of the No Beginning Devil were able to rapidly increase to 21%, while the rest of the gene chain's growth was very low, ranging from 5% to 10%. The essence blood has such an advantage. Daniel muttered in shock. Even with the gene extraction killing weapon, part of his gene chain could not be improved. And this essence blood had instantly completed a large portion of his gene chain. Before he could rejoice, the pain that penetrated deep into his bone marrow quickly spread. Daniel pursed his lips and endured the pain as he continued to extract the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. Very quickly, half of the large mass of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion was used up. The remaining half seemed to have dim luster. The essence of the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion had been extracted by Daniel. A large amount of information appeared on the gene panel. Gene chain talents, chimera gene, incomplete chimera ancestral awakening gene, 99% complete, skill endowed, absolute domain. Gene chain talents, dark demon touch gene, incomplete dark demon touch gene, 39% complete. Gene Chain Talents Nightmare Gene Incomplete Nightmare Gene, 47% complete Gene Chain Talents No Beginning Devil Growing Genes Incomplete Nightmare Growing Gene Chain, Incomplete, 29% Gene Chain Talents Blood Flame Wave Gene Chain Incomplete Blood Flame Wave Gene Chain, Completion Level, 50% Gene Chain Talents Dragon Blood Devil Lion Gene Chain Complete Dragon Blood Devil Lion Gene Chain, incomplete 100%. Skill Endowed, RIP. Other than the gene chain with the change in numbers, the four gene chains had not been displayed on the gene panel for a long time. Daniel counted. He already had the gene chain count. His heart pounded. Didn't this mean that he already had 10 gene chains? Could he become a bloodline warrior now? A window immediately popped out of the gene panel. Would he awaken his bloodline? Yes, no. Due to the large number of gene chains lost by the host, the success rate of awakening one's bloodline is extremely low. Once awakening of the bloodline fails, the lowest completion gene chain will be permanently lost. Daniel read through the gene panel's notification with a solemn expression. After thinking about it, again and again, he chose no. Currently, he did not urgently need power. There was no need to take the risk of losing a gene chain to awaken his bloodline. The probability of that happening was extremely low. 
The bloodline that had the lowest completion percentage was from the corpse of the commander of the Seamless Sanctuary, Vincent. He had extracted the gene chain from the demon birth of no beginning from the intermediate energy. Whether it was the intermediate energy or the bloodline genes of the 13th family in Texas, the life of no beginning devil was too precious. Daniel could not bear to risk them. Daniel stored the remaining grayish-brown essence blood into the nanometer compressor. The pain was still flowing in his blood, and the veins on his temples were throbbing. Daniel stood up and stretched his muscles. Crack. Crack. Strength, stamina, spirit, these three-dimensional attributes have increased by a large amount. Blood flame fluctuation? The commander of the Welcome Home Sanctuary? <laughs> On the flat wasteland, Commander Henry and the three rebel generals were wandering around. Three layers of soil had been dug out from the ground, but they could not find Daniel, who had suddenly disappeared. Commander Henry became more and more irritable. Seeing that the morning sun had risen again, his hair began to turn white. Could it be that I can fly with my wings? Where did this kid run off to? The commander's fist smashed into the ground. With a booming sound, soil flew everywhere. A rebel general beside him sniffed, and his spirits were lifted. He shouted at the top of his lungs, Commander, I smell energy. What? The few of them quickly gathered together and carefully tried to examine it. Indeed, an unusual gene energy was fluttering in the air. Even if it was very subtle, it was almost undetectable. But as powerhouses of the seven gene chain, it would attract their attention as long as the abnormal fluctuations were caught by them. It's natural energy, a very wonderful heavenly gene energy. It isn't that brat's method. Even his genetic weapon can't do this degree. That's right, I guess it's naturally formed. The four of them exchanged a few words. Commander Henry quickly calmed down. Once he figured out the background of the other party, there was nothing to be afraid of. Attack in all directions. Quickly, destroy this natural formation. We'll force that kid out. Yes. Boom. 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 The four of them exploded their gene energy in the wasteland, causing rocks to crack and sand to fly everywhere. The little bugs below the ground frantically crawled all over the place, and under the violent gene energy, they were corroded and burned, turning into ash in the wasteland. In the underground space, Daniel could feel his ears constantly shaking. This fragile natural space was quickly disintegrating. The edge of the space was producing black cracks that were devouring the inner space bit by bit. The fine cracks soon covered the narrow space. The movement of the purple vines came into contact with the cracks. They were torn apart and the fresh juice fell into the soil. As if realizing a great disaster was coming, the little bugs flew around in the space, and soon there was a buzzing sound. A bug crashed into a crack in a daze, and before it could make a sound, it was torn into several pieces by the crack. Daniel felt his scalp go numb when he saw this. The process of the spatial collapse was terrifying. He didn't dare to delay any longer. It would be sad if he was trapped in this spatial zone and died. Daniel hurriedly touched a rock that had entered the spatial zone. He carefully sensed the energy within it. After that, his figure turned into a shadow and disappeared into the spatial zone. Come out. Commander Henry's fist smashed into the ground. The soil that could not withstand the tremendous force cracked in all directions. The soil rose and fell forming a spiderweb-like pattern. Dozens of meters behind the commander, an unstable figure suddenly appeared. The four of them looked happy. Good boy, you finally come out. Commander Henry had a ferocious smile on his face. He and the other three rebel generals surrounded Daniel and locked him in the middle. Daniel rubbed his wrist without hesitation. It was quiet in the narrow space, but he would hit his head on the ground when he stood up. He really could not relax his body. When the four of them got closer, Henry's facial expression suddenly changed. Why is your spirit so strong? Why is your spirit so strong? Daniel absorbed the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. The other three also stopped in their tracks. 
The essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion could not be absorbed so quickly, but Daniel's aura was too terrifying. It was not at the level of seven gene chains. Episode 194, Blood Flame Devour. You, you, how dare you? How dare you touch our things? Commander Henry was lost in his thoughts. He staggered back a few steps. The welcome home sanctuary was full of manpower and resources. In the end, it was taken away by an outsider. If this joke was heard by other fallout shelters, he was afraid that he, Henry, would never be able to raise his head in his entire life. Daniel touched his chest and took out the remaining gray essence blood. He waved it in front of their eyes. I have indeed absorbed most of the essence blood. There's still one more thing. If you want it, come and get it. Commander Henry ground his teeth hard and took a deep breath. You must have attracted those four giant snakes, right? The demon moon lotus was also given to my subordinate by you? Daniel generously admitted it and nodded. That's right. It just so happens to be a coincidence. What a coincidence. I originally only wanted to scam your fallout shelter, but I didn't think that there would be such a good thing like the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion. Commander Henry's face became more and more twisted. His eyes were emitting a blood-red light, and he wished he could swallow Daniel alive. He turned around and said to the other three, This kid just absorbed the essence blood. The essence blood is still in his body, and the growth of his strength is limited. Let's kill him and activate the ink blank formation once again. Then we'll squeeze the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion out of this kid's body. Although the other three did not respond, they stood beside the commander and expressed their support. The complacent smile on Daniel's face gradually disappeared and was replaced by a calmness and the intent to kill. This welcome home sanctuary had done all kinds of bad things, and this was the target that Daniel wanted to kill. They had the idea of killing and refining Essence blood. Such an action was against humanity. It even made Daniel want to kill. Blood flame undulation, blood dragon birth, blood flame incineration, blood demon. The four of them shouted and turned into different blood flame beasts. The four blood flame monsters fused and the blood flame giant that chased Daniel for more than 10 miles appeared in front of him. Roar! Brat, you must die. You shouldn't have taken away our things. Amidst the furious roar of the blood flame giant, it was as if four people with different voices were shouting at the same time, causing Daniel's ears to hurt. Tear. Daniel's right claw flashed with a black light. The blood flame giant pressed down in front of him and clawed at the blood flame giant's bodily fluid. Pop. It was a smooth touch. Daniel felt as if he had grabbed a lump of sticky ink and a lump of blood separated from the blood flame giant's body. Ugh! The blood flame giant screamed when it heard it. However, its opponent did not slow down at all. The blood flame giant threw a punch at Daniel. Mighty divine flame fist. Bang. A large hole was blasted out of Daniel's chest. The blood flame that was gushing out splashed onto Daniel's body. The blood red sparks fell into Daniel's flesh and blood, producing a ZZZ sound. How did you... The blood flame giant took out its fist and looked at the rapidly healing flesh and blood on Daniel's chest. The flesh and blood liquefied into blood red liquid and quickly condensed. After a while, the big hole on Daniel's chest disappeared and his skin returned to normal. Except for the large hole in his clothes, no one could tell that Daniel's chest had been pierced. How could this be? The blood flame giant's eyes widened in disbelief. How could you possibly have a gene chain with the blood flame fluctuation? You are not someone from the New Kingdom Command District. Where did you get a blood flame gene chain? Daniel chuckled and said, There are many coincidences in this world. Can't I just happen to awaken the blood flame wave gene chain? Impossible! The blood flame giant roared. The blood flame wave gene chain is a new type of gene that can only be obtained through the blood flame catalyst 
developed by the Joint Research Institute and several gene-refining expert geniuses. That thing is firmly in the hands of the district chief. No one can obtain it by accident. Daniel was shocked. Such a powerful gene chain was man-made. Consuming the blood flame catalyst will certainly cause death. It's impossible to awaken it naturally. Quickly, tell me, who are you? The blood flame giant lost control of his emotions. He glared with his blood red eyes. Then, fear appeared on his blurry face. You're from the New Kingdom Command Center, right? Do you want to destroy our welcome home sanctuary? What a ruthless plan. What a vicious plan. Daniel chuckled and did not respond. He let his imagination run wild. If I want to kill you, I will kill you. Commander Henry and the three rebel generals were traitors in the New Kingdom command area. At this moment, the four of them were facing a common enemy. The blood flame rose and the flames that hit their faces increased by 30%. Daniel shook his head. He had consumed the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion, and the gene chain had made up for it. His opponent's strongest attack had also been largely immune to his gene chain. How could he fight with him? Blood flame devourer. This time, the blood flame giant used all of its abilities. The original brilliant blood flames once again soared and continued to increase strangely. Daniel's body was covered in a layer of lightning, and when he looked at the blood flame giant, he couldn't help but be slightly startled. It really doesn't want to live anymore. The blood flame giant's flames were blazing, and they were more than three times stronger than before. However, the blood flame material in his body had been completely emptied. The blood flame, which was formed from flesh and internal organs, aided the flames. Even if the four of them defeated Daniel, after transforming into human form, they were still unable to move due to serious injuries. If not for the tenacious vitality of the seven gene chain, they would very likely have died on the spot. Injuring oneself first before hurting others, why is there a need? Daniel shook his head. The other party really had the intention to kill. Under the control of fear, they would rather risk dying together with him in exchange for injuries. Since you want to die, Daniel said softly, I will fulfill your wish. Lightning! Crack! Lightning surged from Daniel's body, and the purple-blue lightning resonated with each other. His body gently floated in the air as he charged towards the blood flame giant's flames. Blood flame, devour! The giant's body spun, and the thick flames began to melt. A ball of scorching sun rose high into the air and smashed down towards Daniel. Daniel's lightning was not as powerful as half of the raging flames, but every bolt of lightning was able to damage the bone marrow in the blood flame giant's body. Daniel's body was also devoured by the flames until the lightning was completely extinguished. Only the surging blood flames were left in the wasteland. Boom. The intense explosion wrapped around the flames and expanded in all directions. Sand, shrubs, insects, and anything that was swept into it was swallowed and melted into a part of the flames. The blood flames exploded, and the aftermath of the explosion spread throughout the wasteland. Four figures appeared in the air and fell in unison. Each of them was missing an arm and a leg, especially the Commander Henry. Apart from his head and half of his body, there was not a single bit of flesh left. They turned their flesh and bones into fuel and turned their heads into flames of blood, rushing towards Daniel. Their injuries were much more serious than they looked. If a doctor cut open their skin, they would find nothing left other than rotting flesh and blood. Episode 195, An End Their organs were like melted butter, half of them pulsating with life, the other half turning into pus. The gene energy in the four people's bodies were quickly consumed and used to maintain their bloody injuries. Did we win? A rebel general opened his eyes and said. His body was cut off from his waist down. The lines on his broken waist could be seen. 
A transparent layer of gene energy covered his body to prevent his blood from flowing out. The other two rebel generals kept screaming amid their injuries. Only their commander Henry managed to hold on with his superior cultivation. Maybe, <coughs> as long as that kid's blood flame wave gene is not complete, then it must be. Commander Henry's eyes were wide open. Following his gaze, half of the rebel general's body also looked over. He saw a young man standing in a pothole in the wasteland, unharmed. Apart from some of his clothes being burned and some blood stains on his face, no one could tell that he was injured at all. That was close. Daniel sighed to himself. Although he had ten gene chains, he was only a bit away from completing the gene chain and awakening his bloodline to become a bloodline warrior. However, the blood flame devourer that burned everything had extinguished his elemental essence conversion and forced him out of his elemental state. Once he used his defenseless human form to face that unparalleled flame, even if his blood flame wave gene could reduce some of his damage, he would still be unable to escape from being seriously injured and become one of the four people lying on the ground. At the moment of life and death, the gene of the no beginning demon that was only at 29% completion saved him. Just as he was about to be swallowed alive by the blood flames, his body turned into a black figure like Vincent. The blood flames that were sucked into Daniel's body were continuously swallowed by the no beginning demon life gene chain. Fortunately, the blood flames exploded quickly and left in a hurry. After the no beginning devil birth body that was temporarily maintained disappeared, once again Daniel relied on the newly born gene energy to turn into a ball of lightning to withstand it. Under the puzzled gazes of the four pairs of eyes, Daniel walked in front of Commander Henry. How… how did you… do it? Henry said as he opened his eyes wide in shock. Daniel shook his head. He was not interested in explaining his dangerous journey to a dead man. As the saying went, if it wasn't too late, there would be a change. No one could say for sure whether something unexpected would happen during Daniel's explanation process. For example, Mendelssohn Sr. suddenly appeared. Lightning! Daniel activated his elemental essence conversion. Endless lightning poured onto the four of them, cutting off their last chance of survival. After confirming that they were dead, Daniel impatiently stretched out his hand. Gene extraction. Dark colored formation. The fog in the formation gradually dissipated in the wind. The emptiness inside the formation made people panic. The four huge snakes fought over the broken limbs of the demon moon lotus, causing chaos in the temporary camp. A brigadier general of the rebel army organized his men and fled far away. General, what should we do now? A colonel's eyes glazed over as he asked the brigadier general of the rebel army in fear. Commander Henry had never been a magnanimous person. When he snatched the demon moon lotus from the colonel in front of everyone, it could be said that he was an unscrupulous commander. He always acted without any scruples because of his strength. It seemed like this essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion hunting plan had nothing to gain from the current situation. He had lost so many people. Once the commander got angry, these people would not have a good ending. A trace of ruthlessness flashed across the eyes of the brigadier general of the rebel army. He was a six gene chain expert. Why did he let others call him over? After leaving the welcome home sanctuary, he could live a more comfortable life. Let's go. We will go to Oklahoma City in the south and seek refuge with the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association there. The rebel brigadier general's order caused everyone to feel uneasy. This limestone forest is more than a hundred miles wide and it's filled with danger. There's even a monster like the forest boa. It's too dangerous. What if the commander finds out? Will the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association's president accept us? The brigadier general of the rebel army was annoyed and shouted at the crowd. If you want to go, come with me. If you don't want to go, just stay here and wait for the commander. Why are there so many questions? When the brigadier general of the rebel army finished speaking, 
Everyone kept quiet and did not dare to say anything. They were afraid that this brigadier general would get angry. General, look what we caught. A few three jean chain awakened practitioners dragged the wailing bear over. The brigadier general frowned. What are you doing catching this thing at such a time? A colonel gritted his teeth and said, He was the only one who had seen Daniel and the bear snatch the demon moon lotus. I've seen this beast bear. It appeared with a young man. The lotus that the giant snake fought over was given to me by that young man. They are the main culprits. All right. The brigadier general perked up and rolled his eyes as he said, We will carry out our original plan and set off for the Demon Slaughter Marshal Association. If we are stopped by the commander or the commander's troops on the way, we will give this bear to them. Yes. After the group of disloyal rebels finished discussing the plan, Daniel sat on the tree and spoke softly. What a flawless plan, but can you return my pet to me? Who is this? The rebels looked up. The colonel, who had been deceived by Daniel, looked excited. He pointed his finger at Daniel and said with his tongue tied, Yes, who is it? The person who gave me the lotus. Daniel stared at the colonel seriously and said, Aren't you sure you didn't snatch the demon moon lotus from me? Daniel heavily bit on the word snatch. It made the school official's face turn red, and he jumped up. You bastard! I said you were giving it to me! You gave it to me! Don't you think you can accuse me of being innocent? The rebel soldiers looked at the colonel whose face was flushed red. How could they not understand? It was obvious that the colonel had snatched someone else's treasure. And then the commander had taken it away. Then he had attracted the giant snake. These rebel soldiers were not good people. Everyone judged others based on themselves. Wasn't it normal for them to snatch something? Wasn't the main culprit behind this incident the academy officer? The leading brigadier general looked at the school officer with an unfriendly gaze. He felt that this person was the same as the bear, a scapegoat prepared for the commander. Daniel erupted his aura with a loud bang. The aura of ten gene chains was incomparably thick, directly crushing everyone present. In the welcome home sanctuary, who else is there? Daniel said in a deep voice. The rebel soldiers could not catch their breath. The iron chains that were locking black loosened, and the bear moved its paw and ran to Daniel's side. There are also two deputy commanders and three generals. Cold sweat broke out on the forehead of the quasi-general. He could feel that even with all his strength, he could not last more than three moves from Daniel. He can only tell the honest truth. Daniel was silent. There were so many people. If he rushed into the welcome home sanctuary, he would not be able to kill all of them in a short period. Furthermore, there were people from the New Kingdom Command Center. If they attracted more people... Episode 196, Giant River City After Daniel killed the four men, he extracted their blood flame energy gene chain, causing the gene chain to be completely repaired, making it even more powerful. Daniel looked at the chaotic camp after being tormented by the giant snake and said in a deep voice, Where did those four giant snake strange beasts run off to? The rebel brigadier general pointed towards the deep gray stone forest, trembling with fear. The gray stone forest that had originally entered and left felt like hell that ate humans. If they could run out of giant snake exotic beasts that were at least seven gene chains today, would there be an elephant tomorrow? Giant crocodiles. Daniel nodded and pretended to be happy. That giant snake swallowed the demon moon lotus and ate so many people in your fallout shelter. Now that it has stretched its muscles and bones, it must be a great tonic. I will go and capture them now. Daniel licked his lips as he spoke. The rebels were so scared that they did not dare to move and believed him. In the eyes of the rebels, the strong preyed on the weak. 
The strong treated the weak like they were nothing. It was not impossible to use so many people to fill the appetite of the giant snake. Daniel turned his head and was about to leave. He seemed to recall something and turned his head again. Oh right, your commander and the three generals divided a lot of essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion and ran away. I only got half of it. When I finish eating the giant snake, I will go to the welcome home sanctuary to settle the score with you. After saying that, Daniel took out the glass holding the essence blood and shook it in front of their eyes. Only then did he drag the stupid bear into the limestone forest. After Daniel left, that oppressive aura gradually fell. It's at least eight chain chains or even higher, stronger than the commander. The rebel brigadier general said as he looked at the school's officers, who were lying on the ground and unable to get up. Then, will we now? One of the officers got up and carefully asked, Are we still going to Oklahoma City? The brigadier general slapped his face and scolded. That madman is in the limestone jungle. If you want to die, go and die yourself. He grabbed the colonel who brought the demon moon lotus. We will bring this troublemaker back to the welcome home sanctuary and listen to the orders of the deputies. Dozens of awakened practitioners burned the corpses and led the only culprit towards the welcome home sanctuary. Daniel stood in the limestone forest and watched them leave. It has been eight days since we left Oklahoma City. The pyrazine fallout shelter will fight for power and profit these few days. There is no time to go to Oklahoma City, and with the possibility of me in the limestone forest, I can at least give the Kansas Chamber of Commerce one or two months. I hope they can evacuate as soon as possible. Daniel could kill his way into the welcome home sanctuary, but if there were any survivors, they would go to the president of the demon slaughter in Oklahoma City. This would bring trouble to the Kansas Chamber of Commerce. Let's go. Daniel patted Black and continued to head east. Arrgh. Black whimpered in a low voice as he stared at the essence blood of the dragon blood and devil lion in Daniel's hand. Daniel rolled his eyes. The demon moon lotus had already been taken away by him. In any case, he didn't need this essence blood anymore. It wasn't impossible to feed it to Black. Gene extraction. The black essence blood in Daniel's hand started to emit steam. The inside of the essence blood was bubbling, making it even more turbid. Black's eyes lit up. Although the steam coming from the essence blood could not be compared to the demon moon lotus, it was still a very good supplement. Whoa! The gene energy rapidly grew as it entered its mouth. However, a pain that came from its bones soon crawled over the shaking bear's face. It was now Black's turn to take the path that Daniel and Nala had walked on in the past. Oh! A bear's roar in the forest startled birds and birds. Sand and stone wasteland stretched as far as the eye could see. The scorching sun hung high in the sky above their heads. Vegetation was scarce and animals hid deep underground. It was very difficult to replenish food. After walking in the wasteland for more than 10 days, Daniel and Black had only caught some wild rabbits, and they barely managed to get some food. No wonder this area is so deserted that even water can't be found. Even exotic beasts like to stay in this kind of place more than humans. Daniel sighed. Under the support of gene energy, it would not be a problem for Daniel to persist for another month. However, Black was an exotic beast that had awakened not long ago. Even if he broke through continuously, the gene energy in his body would not be able to withstand the consumption. Black's shiny black fur had also become dim and dry for more than ten days. Roar! Black's nose twitched as if he'd smelled something. Daniel looked over and surprised. You're a dog, right? What did you smell again? A few days ago, Black dug out a rabbit hole under the sand and pulled two rabbits from it. Daniel was amazed by the sensitive sense of smell of wild animals. What did it smell now? Roar! Black ran with small steps and stopped under a yellow and brown boulder. He then moved the boulder with force. Under the rock, Wet soil the size of a square inch was gathered. 
Some dark ants were building nests under the rock, and they were able to reproduce and survive tenaciously. Some bugs had been scared into a ball, and strange insects that had many legs. Black had not eaten for so many days. Seen so many insects, it was as if he had starved for a day and entered a buffet restaurant. His eyes were red. Insects? Daniel curled his lip and turned away not to look at Black. Although with awakened practitioner's terrifying digestive ability, the insects were all protein in his stomach. Daniel still could not take that bite. While Black was gorging on his food, Daniel looked into the distance. He was suddenly happy, and a hazy city appeared on the distant horizon. He finally saw the city. The closer he got to the city, the more extraordinary he felt it was. The city was surrounded by sand hills, but the city gates were endless. More people were coming and going than on the resource-rich plains. Caravans lined up to enter the city with all kinds of exotic beasts, while humans and exotic beasts crowded together. Daniel stood at the end of the line with a bear. It was not eye-catching. Master Awakened Practitioner is going into the city to buy supplies? As soon as Daniel entered the city, someone stopped him and asked him passionately. Daniel nodded. Whether it was daily necessities or cultivation materials, Daniel needed to replenish them. That's right. Is there any in this place that I can recommend? The man looked happy. Then you found the right person. The Walker's family auction of Great River City is about to begin. As long as you have an invitation letter, you can enter. I happen to have an invitation letter. As long as Master Awakened Practitioner is willing. The man said as he rubbed his fingers and chuckled. It turned out to be a yellow cow. Daniel asked directly, How much? Only 20 low-grade beast core. The imitation letter is yours. The yellow ox was overjoyed. He took out a brand new hard paper card. There were some exquisite drawings on the card. Daniel was too lazy to say anything. He took out 20 low-grade beast core and threw them to yellow ox. Take me there. I can't find where it is. Episode 197, Bad Luck This isn't the Great River City, this is Sand City. Under the lead of Yellow Ox, Daniel felt the wind and sand blowing on his face before he even arrived at the auction. No wonder the people who came to play were either wearing veils or wearing robes. <laughs> Yellow Ox laughed and said, Sir, you might not know, but there was still a Great River in the Great River City 40 years ago. The Great River City was born from the trade in the Great River, but later on a gigantic beast appeared. It drank up the entire Great River. It turned this oasis into a desert, and the name of Great River City did not live up to its name. An exotic beast that drank up a huge river. How big was that exotic beast's belly? Daniel did not bother with this story that was more like a strange rumor in the market. He focused on looking around. Lord Awakened Practitioner, the auction is here. You can enter the auction first. It will start later. Yellow Ox said with a smile. He seemed very happy that he had earned more than a dozen Beast Corps. Oh, right. Yellow Ox moved closer to Daniel and whispered, Great River City has a lot of forces. Master, you better be careful. Daniel nodded indifferently. Thank you. Go ahead and do your work. Outside the auction... Awakened practitioners who were wearing long robes had gathered. They gathered in twos and threes and chanted in low voices. Some rich people rushed into the auction house in a grandiose manner, surrounded by a group of people. Daniel and Black casually ate some food and walked into the splendid hall of the auction. Invitation letter. A uniformed guard reached out his hand to Daniel. Daniel gave him the invitation letter. The guard glanced at Daniel and pointed at the mafia behind him. It also needs an invitation letter. Daniel frowned. I only have one. Can I buy one now? Ha <laughs> ha! The lazy goalkeeper laughed and suddenly perked up. He stretched out three fingers and said with a smile, Sure, 300 Beast Corps. So expensive. Daniel asked doubtfully, This price is not right, right? 
The man standing at the entrance looked at Daniel from head to toe and saw that he was wearing worn-out clothes. The black bear behind Daniel had even darker fur. It was covered in sand, and its fur was condensed together. He concluded that this young man in front of him must be a rogue practitioner who had some strength. This kind of person did not have any backing and could be extorted at will. If I say 300, then 300. If you are not willing to hand it over, then you don't have to go in. He tossed the invitation letter to Daniel and threw it back at him. He raised his head and snorted. Daniel frowned. The intent to kill flashed in his eyes, but killing someone else's subordinate in front of the auction was too arrogant. Daniel's actions attracted the attention of passers-by. Those who participated in the auction were either rich or noble. Daniel was dressed in tattered clothes. They surrounded him and pointed at him. Lee, what are you doing? A young female voice came from behind Daniel, but the anger in her voice was terrifying. The guard who was making things difficult for Daniel immediately shrank his body and looked at her in fear. Daniel turned his head, and a quick and decisive woman walked over quickly. Her face was covered with a white veil, and her long, narrow eyes were full of vigor. Lee only glanced at her and lowered his head in fear, not daring to meet her eyes. The tall woman looked at Daniel and said with a smile, I'm sorry, customer. The Walker family's auction did not serve you well and caused you trouble. We can give you a private room for free to solve your problem with your beast companions. Daniel was happy to do so, so he didn't bother to argue with the guard. Thank you. The woman nodded and looked at the guard fiercely. Lee, I will clearly explain today's matter to my father. Lee was shocked. Cousin, don't tell the patriarch that I was wrong. Go back first. The woman waved at Lee. When she turned to look at Daniel, she looked like she was in love with him again. Mr. Awaken Practitioner, come with me. Yes. Daniel nodded. He looked back at Lee and saw his distorted face. This guard was not an ordinary person. He was actually the younger cousin of the patriarch's daughter. Daniel shook his head and was too lazy to care about other people's family matters. Under the leadership of the woman, Daniel did not have any obstacles along the way. The woman seemed to be the manager of this place. Everyone who saw her bowed and greeted her respectfully. Yo, isn't this Miss Walker? A young master wearing a casual shirt was holding a folding fan in his hand. Behind him was a group of bodyguards in suits and collars. Their auras varied. This seemingly carefree young man stopped Daniel and the woman who was leading the way for him. Simon, Lynn frowned, I'm working, stay away from me. Simon did not give up. Sister Walker, what did you see in the auction today? I, Simon, have nothing else. I have enough Beast Corps. I will help you get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Lynn pulled off the veil on her face and her red lips curled into a cold smile. The auction was opened by her family. As the manager of the auction, she could just draw whatever she wanted on the list. After that, she would use the Beast Corps to make up for the cost. How could she need others to buy it? Lynn's attitude did annoy Simon. Simon did not dare to offend Lynn. He only looked at the man beside Lynn whose face was covered in dust. Simon waved his folding fan and shouted at Daniel. What are you looking at? Have you never seen a young master picking up girls? Get lost. Daniel was bored. He was just dressed a little dirty. Why did they all look down on him? Did they think he was easy to bully? Daniel let out a cold snort, slightly leaking out a trace of spirit. However, the young master who had awakened a gene chain was so shocked that he stepped back and bumped into the guard behind him. You! The young master's eyes widened. In that instant, he felt as if his heart had been squeezed by someone and his chest suddenly hurt. If it wasn't for the person behind him supporting him, he would have fallen on the spot. What's wrong? Daniel's eyes widened, and a trace of blood flame rose in his eyes. The blood flame that could burn down everything was a great deterrent to all lives. Simon, who was facing Daniel's gaze, felt a jolt in his heart. 
countless bloody scenes flashed across his mind and he was petrified. His lower body felt sore and a foul smell drifted in the air. Simon! Lynn's pretty face turned pale with anger and she hurriedly covered her mouth and nose to avoid it. Usually Simon would cause trouble at her auction, but this time he broke the rules in front of her guests at her auction. How much trouble would this bring to their auction? I... I'm sorry. Simon held his crotch and ran out in a hurry. As he ran, the orange liquid was flowing out of his pants. The group of guards was at a loss and could only follow in the footsteps of their young master. Episode 198 The Auction Psst. Psst. Having encountered so many ugly incidents in front of the guest, even she, the daughter of a large clan who had experienced hundreds of battles, had seen all kinds of strange things, was somewhat unable to bear it. Dear guest, I have troubled you. Lynn changed her cold and elegant demeanor and bowed slightly to Daniel to apologize, causing some passerby to stare with their eyes wide open. They couldn't help but wonder what kind of background did this brat have to be able to let the daughter of the Walker family personally lead the way. Fortunately, Daniel came early enough. Except for Simon, a young master who didn't do anything, he didn't provoke any other wealthy young masters. Daniel waved his hand casually. It's fine. Take me to the private room. Whether it was Lee who entered the auction house, the young master Simon, or even the young lady Lynn in front of him, they were all very weak. So Daniel didn't take them seriously. The private room was on the second floor of the auction house. The environment was elegant. There was a sofa, a bathroom, and a television broadcast. There was also a lady holding a plate waiting in the room. After the auction started, they could watch the live auction through the television broadcast. If they saw something, they could just write a number on the plate and let their lady bring it out. Guests have come from afar, you can wash up. We provide the Chamber of Commerce's closing for the guests to choose from. If there's nothing else, I'll leave. Lynn had a formal smile on her face as she closed the door and left. Huh? Daniel laid down on the sofa and waved his hand to signal Black to wash up first. Although this bear was a little dazed, he was not stupid. The shower equipment could be used by just fiddling with it a little. Daniel waved to the girl in the room. Hello. What kind of service do you need? The woman in the white uniform looked very tall and straight. Her beautiful face and neat short hair made her look very energetic. She was like an exquisite white strawberry that people could not help but enjoy. The formal smiling face she had made Daniel unhappy. Ever since entering the auction, every woman here wore this kind of fake smile, making their youthful and beautiful attire lose a lot of colors. Forget it. What did this have to do with him? It wasn't like he was looking for a wife here. Do you have an illustrated guide for the auction for the guests here? Daniel changed into a new set of clothes and held a cup of iced fruit wine in his hand. Of course, these were all for the Beast Corps. Yes, please wait a moment. The lady opened the door and walked out. After a while, she came in with a thick illustrated handbook and gave it to Daniel. As expected of an auction in a big business city, with just a glance, Daniel saw a few extremely rare things. There was a cubic meter of nanometer compressor, the bone marrow of a Wyrim exotic beast, and genetic mutation medicine. For middle and high level warriors who had not awakened, the genetic mutation medicine was especially the most precious item. Consuming it had an extremely high probability of directly promoting the evolution of their body, awakening the gene chain to become an awakened practitioner. This kind of drug had always been in short supply in large families. Daniel quickly flipped through the illustrated handbook. His eyes lit up. Finally, he discovered something he was interested in, the red scale steel. In the picture was a fist-sized red scale steel, 
It was not enough to be used to forge a weapon, but since Daniel lost the flying dragon halberd, he did not have a suitable weapon. Although half of the spike was still powerful, it could not be broken at a critical moment. Daniel would often throw it into the nanometer compressor and eat it. It could be used to repair half of the diamond-shaped spike. Daniel looked at the surface of the fiery red metal piece that looked like a fish scale. His heart palpitated. He touched the red scale steel's illustrated handbook with his finger, and his heart was filled with thoughts. He looked at it for a long time before flipping to the next page. The items at the back had all kinds of exotic beast materials and a small number of genetic weapons. These were all items that large families and major powers often collected. As long as the price wasn't too ridiculous, they would easily be auctioned off. It was only when Daniel flipped to the last page that he saw a tower-shaped cone. A question mark was lightly marked on the top right corner. The starting bid below it was a terrifying 1,000 beast core. Why was this item so expensive? Most of the genetic weapon's starting prices were only 500 beast core. Concentrating incense, consumable item one. After being tested by the Walker family's inspectors, the concentrating incense has the effect of calming and focusing the mind. It has an unknown special effect when used for a long period. <laughs> Daniel smiled and shook his head. It turned out to be an item that he had yet to figure out at an auction. It was just that he didn't want to sell it at a low price, so he set the bid at a high price of 1,000 Beast Core. If he sold it, it would be a huge profit. If he didn't sell it, he would just wait for the next auction. Was it something to nourish the divine soul? Daniel shook his head. Why would he want this thing? Har. Black washed his body until it was clean. The bear that was steaming hot crawled onto the bathroom. His head and body were shaking and drops of water were splashed everywhere. The lady in white said to Daniel softly, Sir, the auction is about to start. Do you want to wash first? No. As soon as Daniel finished speaking, the live broadcast television in front of him lit up the scene of the auctioneer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the scene of the Walker family's auction. I am the auctioneer Rich. Now let's start with the first item to be auctioned. A fresh fire dragon lizard's head. The starting bid is 60 beast core. The fire dragon lizard's head and half of its body were pushed out by someone. The broken part was covered with a special preservation film. Daniel could see the texture of its meat. After whispering to each other for a while, someone immediately made a bid. 70 beast core, 75 beast core. 100 Beast Core. In the end, half of the Fire Dragon Lizard was bought by a young man wrapped in a long robe. He took his things and left the venue in a hurry. Obviously, he was not interested in other things. Daniel guessed that it was also possible that the other party was short of money. The next item, a bottle of 200 milliliters of genetic mutation potion. The auctioneer Rich shouted with an exaggerated tone, Everyone, this is 200 milligrams of medicine. How many awakened practitioners can be nurtured for the family? If you are interested, please state your price on the number plate. Starting price, 400 Beast Core. 405 Beast Core. 450 Beast Core. 500 Beast Core. Our Rigid Pterygoid Association wants it. I hope everyone can give our Rigid Pterygoid Association some face middle-aged man said. A group of people stood in a private room. Although they were tempted, none of them dared to bid higher. The rigid pterygoid association had recently occupied a small city in the wilderness. They were either preparing to form a tribe or become a refugee for the rebel army. No one knew their attitude, but no one was willing to offer the powerful rigid pterygoid association for some genetic mutation potions. 200 milliliters of genetic mutation potion is sold for 500 Beast Core. Daniel shook his head. His price was cheap. Episode 199 Wings Society Threat The next item up for auction is a 1,560 gram red scale steel. The red scale steel comes from a place rich in volcanic gene energy. 
The production is low and mining is troublesome. It has always been an excellent weapon for forging metal. Awaken practitioners who want to forge a weapon, bid as much as you want. The starting price is 180 Beast Core. The red scale steel was precious, but it was also a little too expensive. All the major powers did not have any reserves for the red scale steel. If they wanted this 1,560 gram red scale steel, they would have to wait until the next auction. This investment was too high. How could it be worth it to directly buy a genetic weapon? The customers began to discuss among themselves, but no one made a bid. After a long time, a voice sounded from the venue. 285 Beast Corps. The auctioneer heaved a sigh of relief. Finally, someone made a bid. He gently raised his hammer and looked at the venue. 285 once? Is there anyone who offers a higher price? 285 twice? The gray-haired man who shouted out the bid gradually revealed a smile on his face. The red scale steel seemed to be easily obtainable. Daniel immediately wrote a number on the plate and ordered the girl in the room to send the plate out. 190 Beast Corps. The girl read Daniel's bid. The smile on the gray-haired man's face froze. He frowned and looked at the private room where Daniel was. He then stood up and bid, 300 Beast Corps. Daniel bid, 305 Beast Corps. 350 Beast Corps. Daniel sighed softly. His price rose too quickly. However, he was determined to get the red scale steel. His hands moved quickly and wrote down another price before sending it out. 360 Beast Corps. The gray-haired man looked at Daniel as he stared at his price, and a cold expression appeared on his face. 350 Beast Corps was the last price the organization would give him. If he were to bid a higher price, he would have to spend a lot of money. If he were to work for the organization, he would not be able to get any benefits. If he were to even throw in a little bit of money, that would be a huge loss. The gray-haired man took a deep breath and looked at Daniel's room. He decided to bid once more. 365 Beast Corps, brother of Booth Eleven. I am the profiteer of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Before you bid, you'd better think about whether or not you want to offend our Rigid Pterygoid Association. Hmm, I will say that with good words. After that, the man with gray hair finished speaking. He flicked his robe and sat down. The hall was silent. The Rigid Pterygoid Association has recently been too arrogant. In private room number three, an elegant, noble young master had sword-shaped eyebrows and star-like eyes. A green longsword was placed beside his hand. He said coldly, Great River City is a commercial city built by our family. The Rigid Pterygoid Association is nothing. The noble young master and Simon were somewhat similar. However, one of them was glib-tongued, while the other was sharp. Both of their bearings were completely different. Besides the noble young master, an old man nodded and said, The rigid Derigoid Association is indeed arrogant, but they have a leader with a strong bloodline. He is also a big shot who keeps his word outside of the wasteland. This leader has just awakened his bloodline, so he inevitably has the mentality of an upstart. The other private rooms also had different reactions. The Rigid Pterygoid Association, huh? There are so many powerful forces here recently. Are they all here to participate in the Great River City Ruins? <laughs> the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Who do they think they are? Daniel frowned in private room 11. He looked up and asked the girl who was in charge of raising the sign, Do you know what kind of power the Rigid Pterygoid Association has? The lady in a white suit pursed her lips and said nervously, they are a group of major powers that have recently risen. They have occupied a city. It is said that the chairman is also a figure who can cover the sky with one hand in the command center. In the command center, he is also a big figure. Daniel could not help being cautious. A command post has to command dozens of command posts. Every command post had people with extraordinary strength and awakened bloodlines. 
Although Daniel had 10 gene chains, he was still a distance away from awakening his bloodline. The auction hall had always been open. When it came to business, it was one of the things that annoyed customers the most. However, they didn't stop the Rigid Pterygoid Association from doing so. This meant that the Rigid Pterygoid Association wasn't offending them, so they had chosen to silently accept the Rigid Pterygoid Association's actions. He then looked at the red scale steel covered with red scales in the illustrated handbook. He was reluctant to part with it. He gritted his teeth. Wasn't this the Rigid Pterygoid Association? Anyway, he didn't intend to stay in the Great River City. Could he still chase me to the ends of the earth for a fist-sized red scale steel? Daniel wrote a number on the number plate and handed it to the lady in white. Go. Go and bid for me. The woman in white nodded in shock, surprised by Daniel's boldness. 370 Beast Corps. After Daniel bid in Private Room 11, the venue quickly became noisy. That unknown person in Private Room 11 actually dared to bid? Usually, the top 10 private rooms in the Walker Family Auction House were reserved by important people. Starting from Room 11, the private rooms were reserved by rogue practitioners or the surrounding small powers. The Rigid Terragoat Association was considered to have squeezed through the threshold of the big powers. There was actually someone who dared to offend the Rigid Terragoat Association. Huh. The gray-haired man patted the armrest of the chair and sat down angrily to vent his unhappiness. The task assigned to him by the Rigid Terragoat Association president was something that had to be completed. Since that kid doesn't have eyes, don't blame our Rigid Terragoat Association for being merciless. The auction of the red scale steel was just a small interlude. The well-trained auctioneer was not affected by this small interlude. He continued to auction the next item with a smile on his face. The red scale steel was quickly sent into Daniel's private room. Daniel stroked the patterned red scale steel. The smell of sulfur unique to the red scale steel was emitted in the air, and he was incomparably happy. With the red scale steel, he would be able to completely repair half of the diamond-shaped spike. At that time, other than his genetic talent, he would have another great killing weapon. Daniel calmed his mood slightly and put the red scale steel into his nanometer compressor. Unfortunately, the Beast Corps is completely insufficient. Daniel sighed. In fact, in this auction, there were still a lot of things Daniel wanted to buy. Apart from a pile of messy genetic weapons, there were only a few dozen Beast Corps left. That's right. Daniel suddenly thought of something. Genetic weapons were so rare that he could sell all the genetic weapons that he didn't need. Daniel's eyes flashed. He raised his head and asked the lady, Do you guys want to buy genetic weapons from the auction? The lady in white was a little curious. She often saw people buying genetic weapons, but they were very few people selling them. We will collect all of them. Our Walker family's auction will always collect all kinds of exotic beast materials and genetic weapons. No matter how many genetic weapons you have, we will take them all. All right. Daniel's face bloomed with a smile. Call your manager over. You can't decide on this matter on your own. I have a big deal for all of you. The woman in white nodded her head in confusion. Although she honestly didn't believe that this was a big deal, she maintained her professionalism and she still conveyed Daniel's word to the manager. Episode 200 A Big Deal Big Business A man in a suit raised his eyes behind the table. That private room 11 is just a private room that my little sister gave to rogue practitioners for compensation. What big business does that rundown kid have? The lady in white knew how happy Daniel was when he was holding the red scale steel. She was not sure of Daniel, but she told him everything that Daniel had said. All right, I got it. The man waved his hand. I don't have time to listen to a brat talk nonsense. Let him hurry up and finish buying the things and get lost. Brother! Lynn's beautiful brows were knitted tightly together. Dad asked you to manage the Walker family's actions. 
not to let you mess around. If customers have needs, just go and see what they want. The man chuckled. If anyone asks to come over, after a day I will die of exhaustion. Lynn held back her anger and pleasantly stood up. If you don't want to go, then I will go. Lynn opened the door and left. The man sitting at the main seat sighed. He straightened his clothes and quickly followed. Nonsense. I want to see how you want to mess around. Don't tell me you have taken a fancy to that kid. The two of them soon arrived together in private room 11. The lady in white respectfully introduced Daniel. This is the supervisor of the Walker family's auction, Lynn. She is in charge of the auction. This is the general manager of the Walker family's auction, David. David greeted Lynn and nodded at her. Lynn also returned the greeting with a smile. Daniel looked at the general manager, David, with a curious face. He could not help but feel puzzled. Was the attitude of the Walker family's auction so bad? Daniel wanted to say something, but stopped himself. He did not know what to say. Hurry up. The general manager, David, sneered and said, Didn't you say you have a big business? I heard that you want to sell genetic weapons. But don't think you are a big business just by taking out a half a handful of genetic weapons. Our Walker family's auction has a lot of big business that we can handle. Daniel saw through the man's hostility and frowned as he looked at the woman who had brought him here, Lynn, the woman in room 11. Lynn had a pretty face. She looked very angry, but she was angry at her brother. Lynn took a deep breath and calmed her emotions. She squeezed out a smile and said to Daniel, Sir, our Walker family's auction has enough money to buy the genetic weapons. You can rest assured. Daniel raised his eyebrows and pointed at David, the general manager, and said, What's wrong with him? Your Walker family's auction does not welcome customers? David was in high spirits. He clenched his fist and said, You. Before he could say anything, his sister glared at him. Lynn stood in front of David. She bowed slightly to Daniel and said, My brother has always been hot-tempered. Please forgive him for offending you, sir. Daniel looked up at the strange brother and sister and did not say anything. Instead, he took out the nanometer compressor and a pile of genetic weapons. Sabers, forks, swords, halberds. There were a total of ten of them. Every genetic weapon had been polished and cleaned in the Furious Lion tribe. Nala ordered people to wipe them off one by one so they looked bright and clean as if they were brand new. The anger on David's face instantly froze. Seeing so many genetic weapons, he seemed to want to squeeze out a smile, but he did not succeed. His face was filled with emotions, and it was especially funny. Lynn originally did not have much hope and just came up with the rules and regulations of the auction. She did not expect that this seemingly weary kid would give her a big surprise. Lynn's beautiful eyes widened, and she almost could not suppress her excited expression. After calming down for a bit, she raised her head and looked at Daniel. These? These are all yours, sir? Daniel looked at Lynn lazily and asked, Otherwise? David's heart was beating fast. The auction was going on nonstop. Every month, there would be lots of genetic weapons being auctioned, but most of them were sent over to be appraised by others. They were not for sale, and some of them were used to auction. Their auction house only had the right to help other party auction and could only earn some commission. So if the genetic weapons were sold at the Walker family's auction, then as the general manager, he would have made a great contribution. Then he would have some mobility to speak in front of the old man. <coughs> David pretended to walk in front of the genetic weapons. His eyes were burning with passion. Sir, you are planning to give these weapons to the Walker family auction? I, David, can represent the Walker family's auction to give you a satisfactory price. Daniel did not even look at the arrogant David. He just turned his head and said to Lynn, whose eyes were shining with a strange light, Miss Walker, I have a total of 12 genetic weapons here. Take all of them out to exchange for the Beast Corps. Take a look at how much you can exchange them for. Everything is up to you. It is up to you whether you want to go through with the auction or not. 
Just give me your purchase price. I need to hurry up. Lynn's face was full of smiles. She had been managing the auction for more than a year. Of course, she had her ways. These 12 genetic weapons could easily be earned back by double at the moment. If there wasn't an auction, she would be able to earn even more. Lynn's red lips slightly curved up. Her eyes were overflowing with brilliant light and flowing water. Okay, thank you for your trust, sir. I will settle this matter and give you a satisfactory explanation. Wait. David saw that things were going in a bad direction and quickly interrupted their conversation. Sir, how can you sell items to private people in our auction? David's eyes were half anxious and half vicious. We, the Walker family's auction, specialize in service and have complete means. Sir, please pass the genetic weapons to us. We will not let you down. Daniel did not even look at the general manager, David. The moment he entered the room, he revealed a domineering and arrogant look. This was the outcome of the matter. Daniel treated David as if he were nothing. He smiled and nodded at Lynn. I will leave everything to you. Lynn was overjoyed. I will arrange for an appraiser for you. I will buy at a 50% premium based on the purchase price. Oh, by the way, may I know your name, sir? Just call me Daniel. Daniel sat next to the genetic weapons and leisurely sipped the fruit wine with ice. His expression was leisurely and calm. Remember to help me bring back some exotic beast materials. I need them. The money will be deducted from your genetic weapons price. All right. Lynn floated away, leaving David, who was hopping mad. As the general manager of the auction, David had never suffered such a loss. It had nothing to do with him being the general manager of the auction buying and selling in front of others. He could only angrily slam the door and leave. Little bastard, you evil woman. David paused for a moment, but he still did not dare to call his sister an evil woman. If this was heard by others, it would cause a huge commotion. Episode 201 Framing David slammed the door and left angrily. He went back to his general manager's room and threw a few porcelain vases one after another. Only then did he feel some of the anger in his heart subside a little. Daniel, huh? Daniel, I will teach you a lesson. The floor was filled with broken porcelain pieces, and the water from the vases was sprinkled all over the red carpet. The servants squatted on the floor to pick up the broken pieces bit by bit, and a young man who was sticking his head into the room came in. Sister Lynn is not here, right? Simon looked at the general manager's room. After making sure that the beautiful figure that usually stirred his heart was not there, Simon walked into the general manager's room. When he heard that he was looking for his sister, David became angry again. But when he saw that this was Simon, his young master, he did not dare to get angry and suppressed his anger. She's not here. She's busy. David coldly snorted and glanced away. Simon was pure trash, but his brother was a famous genius in Great River City, so he could not be offended. Oh. Simon licked his lips. There was a pleading look in his eyes. Brother David, I have a request for you. David coldly harumphed. Simon knew what he was going to ask. David could easily guess that it had something to do with his sister. His sister was such a proud and arrogant person. Would she take a fancy to a coward like Simon? Simon did not care about David's attitude. He continued, The kid in room 11 stole something from someone else. I'm here to report him. Room 11. David's hand stopped moving. Wasn't that Daniel? What did he steal? Did you see it? Simon blushed. He was not used to lying as this was his first time. Perhaps it was because he had the talent to lie and he quickly got used to it. He smiled and said to David, He stole someone else's genetic weapon. Genetic weapon? David suddenly stood up. Wasn't that a coincidence? Daniel had just been selling genetic weapons to them. 
Are you sure? David frowned and asked. I'm sure. Simon had a firm look on his face. You know me, Simon. I'm a little glib, but I've never lied. Simon quickly adapted to the feeling of lying. Not only did he feel any psychological burden, but he also quickly displayed his talent for acting. That brat used the stolen genetic weapons to threaten me and even used it to seduce young Miss Lynn, but I saw through it. Big Brother David quickly arrest that brat. David confirmed the seriousness of the matter and slowly sat down in his chair. There's no hurry. Do you have witnesses? Simon patted his chest. I am the witness. I saw it. Oh, there was another person who noticed it too, but he's not with me. Lee, come here. Simon waved at the door and very quickly, Lee walked in while rubbing his hands. Lee looked at Simon and then said with a sincere face, That's right, I saw it. That kid stole from someone else's warehouse. I happened to pass by, but I didn't dare say anything. David was even more convinced that it wasn't a lie because there were two of them who saw it. Daniel was wearing dirty clothes when he entered. If he had money, why didn't he change into clean clothes? This meant that he didn't have money after stealing and was in a hurry to sell the stolen goods. All right. Daniel was selling stolen goods at our Walker family's auction and he even lied to our family's young lady. David felt extremely relieved. This time, he would not let Daniel talk his way out of it. And he could also make his young sister, who had been encouraging him, fall. Huh. The shopping mall was a battlefield for men. A woman should just stay at home and raise flowers and learn embroidery. In room 11, someone quickly sent over a large number of exotic beast materials. Many of them even had the Walker family's auctions label on them. They were items that were directly taken out from the inventory. Daniel stored the items in his nanometer compressor. A few old scholars with white beards squeezed into Daniel's room. When they saw the table full of genetic weapons, they couldn't believe it. This, there are so many of them at once. These are some aged genetic weapons. They seem to be dug from the earth. The moment they saw these genetic weapons, they knew they were valuable. These things were treasures that Daniel had found in the Secret Realm Hall, and they could all tell at a glance that these were all old goods. The old man studied them for about ten minutes before quickly concluding. Lynn had a smile on her face as she said to Daniel, Daniel, these things, according to the auction standard, are 800 beast core apiece. I can buy one with 1200 beast core. What do you think? Yes. Daniel nodded his head in agreement. These genetic weapons that he did not need could be sold for 1200 beast core. When we are calculating, try to give me as intermediate beast core as possible. It is also not convenient for me to bring along low grade beast core. All right. Lynn lightly smiled and said, There is a total of 14,400 low level beast core. The materials I sent over cost 6,900 low-level beast core. As for the rest, I will give you a discount. 8,000 low-level beast core. As we might not be able to find 8 intermediate-level beast core in our warehouse. If there's not enough, we will still use low-level beast core to buy. One intermediate-grade beast core was equivalent to 1,000 low-grade beast core. The key was that if a middle-level beast core could be extracted from a middle-level intermediate energy, the value of an intermediate energy was much more important than low-level energy. He had so many gene chains that he had yet to fuse with, and even needed to spend energy to awaken his bloodline. The more intermediate energy he had, the better. I'll have to trouble Miss Lynn. Lynn's face was slightly angry. She pretended to be angry and said to Daniel, There is no need to be so distant. You can call me Lynn. Daniel's mouth twitched and watched her leave. Businessmen could speak, but Daniel did not take Lynn's words to heart. If they did not complete a deal, they would have a sibling relationship. Who would believe that this person was an idiot? The auction was bustling with activity. Several auction items were sold at high prices and the entire venue was filled with a strong atmosphere. Next item! The auctioneer knocked on the gavel. 
Underground demonic insects like to devour plants. They live underground all year round and have no natural enemies. So they have accumulated a large amount of protein. This item is a kilogram of protein pus extracted from a massive amount of underground demonic insects. The starting bid is 900 beast core. Oh. There was a faint cry from the auction house. One kilogram of egg white pus could be said to be a very high nutritional substance. Whether it was for newly awakened cultivators, awakened practitioners who were still breaking through, or old men who needed nourishment, they all needed this kind of nutritional substance. But the starting price of this 900 beast core also scared away most of the people. 1,000 beast core. 1,100 beast core. 150 beast core. Daniel was in the room and thought about it and wrote a number on the plate. The girl in white slightly twisted her waist and slowly walked forward. 1,200 beast core. Episode 202 Burning Sound Incense After Daniel threw out a price, someone quickly raised the sign and chased after Daniel's bid. 1300 beast core. Another old man also raised his sign. 1350 beast core. Daniel thought for a moment. He had just sold some genetic weapons. There were quite a lot of beast core, so it was not impossible to be a bit extravagant. 1400 beast core. The auctioneer knocked on the wooden mallet. Room 11, 1400 beast core. Is there anyone else who wants the bid? 1400 beast core once. 1400 beast core twice. 1800 beast core. In private room six, a lady was holding a wooden tablet. The auctioneer shouted with an exaggerated tone. Private room six offers 1800 beast core. Is there anyone else who offers a higher price? The demon insect egg white that nourished the body was about to be taken away. 1800 beast core once. 1800 beast core twice. Daniel shook his head in private room 11. The egg white pus did not help him much, but the price of more than 1800 beast core was too much. 1800 beast core three times. Congratulations to the guest in private room number six for buying this precious item. Daniel shook his head and continued to look at the next auction item. The fruit wine in his hand kept on being poured, one cup after another. No matter how expensive this wine was, could it be more expensive than a genetic weapon? The auctioneer knocked on the wooden mallet, suppressing the chaotic sounds of the auction. The auction for this afternoon is about to end. It seems that the distinguished guests have already obtained the item they are interested in, but this last treasure, you must open your eyes and take a good look. Sound fuming incense. The red cloth in front of the auctioneer was lifted open, and under the glass counter was a pagoda shaped item that was only the size of a palm. Daniel looked at the item in front of him and immediately realized that this was the last item in the illustrated handbook that was marked with question marks. An item even the auction appraisers were not sure about but it was marked with a high price of 1,000 beast core. Wait, this is… A strange thought suddenly arose in Daniel's mind. An urgent desire urged him to get it. It was very important. What was going on? Daniel frowned as he checked his mental state, but that anxious feeling did not disappear. Every cell in his body was longing for that tiny burning incense as if it would be of great help to him. The sound fuming incense has the effect of calming the sound and mind and nourishing the soul. If you are in a restless and inefficient state of mind, as long as you light a little sound fuming incense you will be able to quickly break free of the mental shackles and become your own mental master. The auctioneer's words caused a group of people to animatedly discuss this. Although nurturing the divine soul was very important, what people needed more were items such as increasing strength, bloodline, and genes. 
Divine soul and spirit were too far and too extravagant for them. A high starting price of 1,000 Beast Corps was enough to buy a genetic weapon. Huh? 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 Daniel slowly exhaled a breath of foul air and looked at the people below who were in low spirits. He made up his mind. Since his intuition told him that the sound-fuming incense was extremely important, he would spend some money to get it. The starting price is 1,000 Beast Corps. The auctioneer knocked on the hammer, but the whole place was silent. It was a little awkward. A few seconds later, Daniel gently wrote down a number on the number plate and let the lady in white give it to him. Room 11 bids 1,100 Beast Core. Someone increased the bid. 1,100 Beast Core once. The gray-haired man sitting in the crowd frowned. Who was it in private room 11 bidding again? He raised his head and looked carefully at room 11. The white-dressed lady with the plate in her hand took it back and closed the door. He could not see the person inside at all. Ugh. The gray-haired man gritted his teeth. Since he already had a special plan, he decided not to increase the price. He quietly sat in the crowd and watched. 1,100 Beast Corps twice? Is there no one else who wants to increase the bid? 1,100 Beast Corps three times. Good, then congratulations to the person in private room 11 for obtaining this sound fuming incense. Ladies and gentlemen, today's auction has come to an end. In the auction venue, people stood up in twos and threes, enthusiastically discussing the treasures they had won. Everyone had smiles on their faces. Daniel sat motionless in private room 11. His heart was beating fast. He had never been so nervous before. Dong, dong, dong. Someone knocked on the door. Come in. A waiter carried a sandalwood box into the room. Mr. Wilson, this is the sound fuming incense you bought. Please check it. Put it on the table. Daniel sat on the sofa without moving. Okay. The waiter respectfully did as instructed. Sir, according to the Mrs. Instruction, the price of this auction item will be deducted from your genetic weapons you are selling. Miss will personally gift the Beast Corps to you later. Huh? Daniel nodded his head. Then thank Miss Walker on my behalf. After the waiter and the lady in white left the room, Daniel impatiently opened the sandalwood box. His heart was beating so fast that it almost jumped out of his chest. Daniel finally saw the sound-fuming incense that he craved. It was a conical object that was not even the size of an egg. The tip of the conical object had a slight scratch on it. It should have been used by the appraiser when he was checking the goods. Daniel carefully sensed the small piece of the sound fuming incense. The dense gene energy was contained in that small piece of incense, but he couldn't figure out what it was. Strange. What is this thing used for when it falls to the ground? It can't be used to calm one's mind and nourish one's soul, right? Daniel was somewhat uncertain. He could only crash into the nanometer compressor and carefully study it later. Now he had to obtain the Beast Corps first. Nothing was interesting about this auction anymore. He might as well find a place to stay in Great River City, rest for a few days, and then leave Great River City and continue on his journey. What? In the general manager's room of the Walker family's auction, Daniel frowned and looked at the few people in front of him. David was proud of himself. Lynn had a cold face. Simon had his head lowered and there was an angry old man. Daniel looked at everyone and his gaze finally stopped on Lynn. I gave you the 12 genetic weapons. You think I stole someone else's genetic weapons? Lynn had a troubled expression. I didn't think you would steal things, but my brother complained to me. My father. Mmm. The old man pounded the cane down on the ground heavily. In a tone that could not be disputed, he said, Sorry. This man, our walkier's family auction doesn't accept dirty things. I hope this man can tell us the source of the genetic weapons so that we can return them to their owner. Also, the victorious David stood out and shouted, The things you bought on credit at the auction must be returned. 
You also have to pay an additional 20% breach of contract, Daniel, right? Huh, huh, just pay honestly. Pack, pack, pack. David clapped his hands. Outside the door of the general manager's room, several powerful awakened practitioners blocked the door. They were trying to prevent Daniel from passing through the door and escaping. Episode 203 Walker Auction House Loss After the gray-haired man left the Walker family's auction, without saying a word, he went out of the auction hall by himself. He walked along the streets and alleys and entered a dark alley. Finally, he knocked on a large door with his bare hand and entered. Where's the thing? The other party was a gloomy man. When he saw the gray-haired man come empty-handed, he couldn't help but question him. The two items the guild leader needs have been snatched away. Our funds are seriously lacking. The gray-haired man said in a deep voice. Taking advantage of the fact that the other party hadn't gotten angry yet, he quickly said, However, both items were bought by the same person. I know who he is, and I also asked around to find out where he is right now. The gloomy man's face was covered by a black cloth, and only his eyes were staring straight at the gray-haired man. He chuckled and said, That person's eyesight is sharp. It seems like he has some unique points, but the chairman urgently needs those two auction items to increase his combat strength before the opening of the Great River Ruins. We must bring them back. This is also my idea. The gray-haired man followed and said, That person is called Daniel, and he is a kid in his twenties. Right now he has gotten himself into trouble and is being detained in the Walker family's auctions general manager's room. We must be quick. The gloomy man nodded. He turned around and ordered the people behind him. Quickly, gather our brothers. After the gray-haired man left, the gloomy man's eyes became increasingly fierce as he looked into the direction of the auction site. Attacking the Walker family's auctions ahead of time will expose our strength. Hmm, just so happens that we'll be finished in one go. In the general manager's room, a dozen or so guards dressed in suits were quickly blocking outside the door. Their auras were all between three and four jean chains. This was not the end. The sound of continuous footsteps could be heard from outside the door. A few more middle-aged men with oppressive auras had arrived. They were the family worshippers of the Walker family's auction. Usually, they would eat, drink, and have a large number of resources to support them. At this critical moment, these people had to stand out. Daniel's expression did not change. None of these people had more than seven gene chains. To him, it would only take a minute to kill them all. Dad. Lynn's pretty face was full of anxiety. How can you be like this? This matter hasn't been clarified yet. Lynn. Jimmy knocked heavily on the crutch in his hand. His face showed no anger, but he had an imposing manner. If you don't believe this hooligan Simon, the second young master, Lee also saw it with his own eyes. Then you don't trust your own family. David added in a neither light nor heavy tone. Dad, don't say that. Lynn has never believed in her family. Even I don't trust her. It is said the girls are helping outsiders. That's right. Jimmy became even angrier when he heard that. He felt that it was fortunate that David had decided to take charge of the auction before the new year. If Lynn continued to manage the auction, in a few years the Walker family auction house would no longer have the surname Walker. You. Lynn's eyes were filled with tears. She didn't believe Simon and Lee. When she brought Daniel into the auction house, she had personally witnessed Simon and Lee offend Daniel. In her heart, Simon and Lee most likely wanted to take revenge for themselves. All right, Jimmy said to Daniel in a deep voice. Is there anything else you need to tell me about the genetic weapons you stole? In addition to Lynn not believing Simon and Lee, Jimmy also did not trust them. It was just that 12 genetic weapons were a huge profit. 
Did he think that the auction would be able to take out 14,000 Beast Corps so easily? The Walker family's auction had a lot of money flowing in their funds, but they were able to produce 14,000 Beast Corps in one go. This also meant that the amount of funds in the vault had been greatly reduced. It was very likely they would encounter a situation where they would not have the money to buy good things in the future. Since the origins of the 12 genetic weapons were unknown, Jimmy had the idea of blackmailing him. When he was young, he cheated and harmed others for profit. He had even killed others until their families were ruined and destroyed. It was not like he had never done it before. It was just that he was old. There were some dirty and tiring jobs that he could not do, so he stopped. Now that he didn't eat the piece of fat that fell in front of him, could it be that he was going to let someone else eat it? There were a lot of bandits and robbers around Great River City. They specifically looked for those people who were only a single shadow but were extremely rich. Then, not only would they have no money, but they would also be thrown into the desert to feed the wolves. Jimmy was a lot more benevolent. Every time he killed someone, he would keep the corpse and find wind and water cave to bury them. He would let them go to hell and have a peaceful life. Lee. Jimmy sat on the main seat and called out. A middle-aged man dressed in a short-sleeved shirt walked forward. Go. Send the young lady away and let her go back and reflect on herself. Lynn's face was pale as she looked at her father in disbelief. It seemed like she had never met him before. Dad, she said, you, how can you be like this? Isn't the Walker family's auction a legitimate business? <laughs> David smiled with a cold face. The Great River City is full of bandits. Where did this legal business come from? It has always been a win-win situation. Daniel quietly watched them finish their performance. He clenched his fist and said, Are you guys done? When I'm done, it's time for me to say something. Speak. Jimmy chuckled like a gentle neighbor. Just say it. Tell us the source of the genetic weapons and it will save our Walker family's auction some trouble. If it's an ownerless item, our Walker's family auction will keep it safe for the lost owner. Daniel raised a finger and a smile hung on his face. All of you have said so much nonsense, but there's one thing that I approve of and that is... Winner takes everything. Absolute domain. Boom. The strongest martial artist present was only at the early stage of seven gene chains, which was Jimmy, who was holding Lynn in his hands. Jimmy's eyes were wide open, and his eyes were bloodshot as if he wanted to jump out of his eye sockets. Half-step bloodline, damn it. Veins popped out all over Jimmy's body as he stood in front of Daniel. He took the pressure from Daniel's head on. Gah! With a loud shout, the upper half of his training clothes exploded, revealing muscles that did not match his age. Jimmy, who lived in a rich family, had never suffered this kind of pain. He spat out a mouthful of blood and fell onto the chair, even though Jimmy had blocked part of the pressure for them. This was not something that a low-level awakened practitioner like him, who was old and weak, could withstand. Hep, step, bloodline! He's half-step bloodline expert? David's body trembled. Not only did he realize that he had offended someone he shouldn't have. Half-step bloodline referred to having 10 gene chains. It was only because some genes were not complete enough, or because some physical defects, that he was still a bit away from truly awakening his bloodline. Usually, whenever they met a half-step bloodline expert, any power would try to curry favor with them. As long as they could help him awaken his bloodline at this half step, they would be able to help him awaken his bloodline. He would be a great benefactor. The Walker family's auction had suffered a great loss. Episode 204 Extortion Pop. Ah! With a shrill scream, the veins on Jimmy's body bulged and blood gushed out. Under the empathy of Jimmy, the Walker family members were so scared that their legs went limp and they fell to the ground. The two extremes of the situation were reversed. Daniel grinned hideously and walked towards Jimmy, who was sitting in the main seat. What? Do you have anything else to say? 
don't, don't kill me. Jimmy no longer had the imposing manner he previously did, his bossy giving directions to the world. At this moment, he regretted his rash decision. Wasn't it better to just stay at home and enjoy life? Why did he have to force himself into a dead end? A half-step bloodline warrior was about to be roped in by his daughter, but he and his foolish son had ruined the good situation. Daniel! Lynn broke free from the shackles of the Walker family's servants. She ran to Daniel and begged, Daniel, they are my family. Please don't hurt them. Daniel grabbed Lynn and looked at her with a frown. You are making things difficult for me. We, the Lone Wolves, have been roaming the outside world. We always return kindness and revenge when there is kindness. For your sake, I will let the enemies who tried to kill me live a free and unfettered life. Lynn was speechless. When it came to kindness, Lynn only helped Daniel enter the auction and also gave him a private room. The following 12 genetic weapon transactions were just to get what they needed. The kindness between the two of them was not to the extent where he should forgive the enemies who tried to kill him. Eh? Daniel's tactile sense gene had increased to 39%. Even if he did not actively trigger it, he still had an extremely keen sense. Outside the Walker family's auction, a large group of black-scarved, awakened practitioners had appeared out of nowhere. The scattered guards guarding outside were removed one by one. They surrounded the Walker family's auction from all directions. There was an enemy. They might be coming for the Walker family's auction. A faint smile bloomed on Daniel's face. His ruthless expression was swept away. He turned to Lynn and said, Wait a minute. I've changed my mind. It's fine if I let you guys go, but return me the 6,000 low-grade beast cores that you owe me. Lynn held back her tears, and her face was filled with joy. Return! Return it now! As long as you can bypass our family, we are willing to do anything. Jimmy panted heavily and hurriedly called out. David and the Walker family's servants and guards also revealed the joy of surviving a disaster. Don't worry, I still have conditions. Daniel stretched out a finger and said, You will have to compensate me with 10,000 Beast Corps. You can use items, materials, even precious items as compensation. This! Give! Jimmy quickly made a decision. His heart ached. He did not know how long it would take to earn back 10,000 Beast Corps. However, the Walker family's master, who was proficient in business, knew very well that being able to keep his life was the most cost-effective transaction. If he had his life, he could slowly earn back everything. Second, Daniel stretched out two fingers with a faint smile on his face. Let Lynn come with me. Lynn's face suddenly turned pale and the joy that had just bloomed disappeared, bit by bit. Okay. Jimmy heaved a sigh of relief. He had thought that it would be a big problem. This small matter was even simpler than 10,000 Beast Corps. You? Lynn's face was filled with disbelief. She had just pleaded on behalf of Jimmy, but in the blink of an eye, the other party had sold her daughter. David also added a knife to the wound. I have no objections either. Daniel, are you satisfied? Daniel smiled and nodded. Not bad. Hurry up and prepare your things. I want to see what I want in five minutes. It doesn't matter if it's more or less. I'm in a hurry to leave. Lynn seemed to have all her strength sucked away. She fell to the ground and was pulled up by Daniel. Under the perception of the Nether Devil, the group of masked men in black advanced step by step. They saw that someone had been killed, not a single person was left alive. Fortunately, the Walker family's auction occupied a large area, and the enemies were extremely careful. The speed of their advancement was very slow, and they wouldn't be able to reach the center of the Walker family's auction in a short period. Daniel's request to take Lynn away was not because of dirty motives, but because wanted to save her. His objective had never changed. He wanted to kill those who deserved to be killed and save those who deserved to be saved. Those masked men who had come all the way here were all killed. They did not plan to leave anyone alive in the Walker family's auction. Daniel only wanted to take Lynn away because he wanted to save her. As for the life and death of Jimmy, David, and Lee, what did it have to do with him? 
Perhaps under the urge to live, the servants of the Walker family quickly used the exhibition cart to push a few white and round balls over. The things are ready. The servants of the Walker family pushed a cart of nanometer compressors in front of Daniel. Then the entire Walker family looked at him with eager eyes. It meant that they had already paid back what they owed, and the compensation was also in place. Shouldn't you leave now? Heh <laughs> Daniel threw the small balls into his arms. A large leather jacket was stuffed into his pocket. His left hand was holding Lynn, whose eyes were lifeless, while his right hand was touching the head of Shaking Bear Black. Let's go. Seeing the two of them and the bear leave the Walker family's auction, everyone lost all their strength as if they collapsed. Initially, they only wanted to make some unexpected money, but who would have thought that they wouldn't be able to make it? They had offended a great expert for no reason and had even lost over 10,000 Beast Corps resources and a daughter. Jimmy's eyes turned sour. He started to sob. He had never done such a losing business before. Dad, are we still alive? David squeezed out a bitter smile. We can slowly earn more money. That Daniel looks so easy to talk to and little sister is willing to help us. Maybe there is still a turning point? Jimmy let out a long sigh. At that time, to appease Daniel's emotions, their family sold Lynn clean. Would Lynn be able to help them in the future? In the future, they could discuss this further. Boom. The people of the Walker family heard a loud noise. Even the silhouettes on the roof fell to the ground, causing the dust to fall to the ground. What's wrong? After being blackmailed by Daniel just now, Jimmy's anger soared. What's going on outside? What did you blow up, or did the house collapse? David quickly waved his hand. Tony, get someone to go out and take a look. Tony's body was covered in blood, but he looked very serious. The internal injuries were not serious. He nodded and motioned for the guards to go out to take a look. The guards could not stand stably and stumbled as they ran out. Then, they heard a series of gurgling sounds as if someone had accidentally rolled down the stairs. After a while, there was no sound at all. What kind of people are they? David cursed. Tony, go and take a look yourself. Teach these servants a good lesson. They can't even do the most basic things. Episode 205, Walker Family's Destruction. Yes. Young master, rest assured, I will find out what exactly is going on. As Tony spoke, he pushed open the door. Following the creaking sound of the wooden door closing, Tony's voice was stopped abruptly. With another gurgling sound, the outside of the door was completely silent. David swallowed his saliva and looked at Jimmy with fear in his eyes. Dad, you have seen a lot. What is going on? Jimmy was trembling all over. He could not even hold his cane firmly. He had seen all kinds of things in his life. He immediately guessed what was going on. A high-level awakened practitioner is waiting outside the door. The Walker family was going to suffer. How strong was the enemy? Although Tony was the seven-gene chain awakened practitioner who had injected water into his body and could escape even if he couldn't defeat an ordinary expert of the same level, he didn't even have the chance to shout out a warning before losing his life. Hiya! Three or four masked men pushed open the door and entered. Each of them held a bloody head, and one of them was the butler who had left the house not long ago. What a pity! These two men and one bear were just so fast just now, and they ran away before they could even see clearly. The leader of the masked men threw his head to the ground, and his round head rolled in front of Jimmy. It was Tony. Jimmy looked at Tony, whose eyes were wide open, and his heart fell to the bottom. The other party was not friendly. His methods were even more brutal than Daniel's. You, you guys. David's fingers trembled, and his butt kept moving backward. He only wanted to stay away from the god of slaughter, but he was kicked to the ground. Speak. Where is Daniel? A masked man stepped on David and fiercely asked. His triangular eyes were aggressive, 
and from his black scarf, one could vaguely see a strand of gray hair sticking out. Daniel... <coughs> Daniel has already left. As soon as he left, you guys came. David did not dare to go against the other party. He said everything exactly how it was. He said that his sister was being held hostage by Daniel and that his own chamber of commerce was being blackmailed. Damn it. The man with gray hair kicked David to the side of the wall and he vomited blood. Master, we're late. About one third of the things in the warehouse is missing. Hearing the report from the masked man, the leader pointed at the trembling Jimmy, then at David and at Lee. Kill them all. No! Poo, poo, poo. The blade fell from the sky. The father and son of the Walker family, who had been holding the 10,000 gold coins in the master of the Walker family's auction, each of their heads fell to the ground one after another. Sir, we also caught one. He's hiding behind a bookshelf. A masked man pulled out a young man who kept calling out to him. Simon. The masked man immediately recognized the famous idler young master in Great River City. He was useless trash, but his brother was a famous genius in Great River City. He was already a bloodline expert at such a young age. Kill. The masked man in the lead was not moved. He knew very well that the rigid Terragoid Association's operation must not be exposed. Even if someone with ulterior motives could easily guess it, they could not let anyone catch hold of it. This Simon must not be left alive. Swoosh, swoosh. Simon, who had always been arrogant and despotic in Great River City, fell to the ground with his eyes wide open. He did not expect this. Someone had ignored his brother's fame and killed him with a single slash. The leader of the masked men lightly ordered, Remember this clearly. What we did today was all done by the mighty masked gang. It has nothing to do with the rigid Terragoid Association. Do you understand? Yes. The masked man sighed. He wanted to pour the dirty water on Daniel so that he would have nowhere to run and would be exhausted from being chased. However, Daniel was alone, so how could he have allowed them to kill every single one of them without leaving a trace behind? Hurry up and pack up the things in the warehouse. We'll go after Daniel. He is something the president needs. Yes. In the hotel in the Great River City, Daniel was leisurely checking the things in the nanometer compressor. He threw away the things that were not valuable and took up space on the spot. The valuable things were left behind to be used. Yo, there were seven intermediate beast corps. Daniel could not help but look up to Lynn. Their Walker family had indeed accumulated a lot of wealth over the years, but unfortunately, all of it was given to that group of robbers. Lynn sat on a sofa in a daze. Her arms were crossed in front of her chest, and her eyes did not have the slightest bit of spirit. When they broke out of the Walker family's auction, Daniel and the others ran into a group of robbers. How could she not understand that Daniel took her away to save her? She should have hated Daniel for not saving her family. It was just that her father and David's performance had disappointed her. To live, they didn't even want their daughter and sister. This made Lynn unable to hate Daniel no matter what. She could only hide on the sofa in sorrow. <laughs> Daniel smiled. Your father and brother are considered heroes in the business world, but people can't be trusted. I'm afraid your Walker family has eaten too much dirty black money. It's not surprising there is such a disaster. Daniel paused for a moment. He was not just making sarcastic remarks. Besides, no matter how much money we make, if we don't know how to spend it, it will be in vain. If we have the energy to figure out how to earn money from others, only with strength will we be able to protect our wealth. The Walker family is a good example. Lynn did not say much, but her eyes lit up slightly. Lightly opening her cracked lips, she lifted her head and asked, Do you? know who destroyed our Walker family. Daniel shook his head. 
He wasn't a member of the Walker family, so how could he know who the Walker family's auction had offended in the past? Lynn swallowed her saliva. Her throat was still dry. She held a cup of water in front of her chest. Her eyes glittered. If the Walker family died, so be it. They gave up on me in the end. I don't need to avenge them. But those people stole the property of the Walker family. I'll make them spit it out sooner or later. Daniel looked at Lynn with high regard. This woman was about to get out of her grief quickly. The ability to adjust one's heart was not something an ordinary person could do. When I have time, I will help you investigate who did it. Daniel nodded and continued to bury his head into the things that covered the sofa. Knock, knock, knock. Someone knocked on the door of the guest room, and an old voice sounded at the same time. Is this little friend Daniel? I am the craftsman of Great River City, Halbert. Halbert? Lynn took a sip of water and her mouth became slightly moist. She recovered some of her energy. What is it? Is he very famous? Daniel raised his head and asked. He had just arrived here and everything in Great River City was a complete mess. With the news blocked, how could he know who Albert was? Episode 206 Crimson Dragon Calamity Albert is a famous master craftsman in Great River City. He's very good at making genetic weapons and researching all kinds of strange gene energy. Our Walker family's auction once promised him 5,000 Beast Corps, but he didn't even agree to it. Lynn said quickly. Well, Daniel opened the door. An old man with a smile walked in. Daniel, huh? Lynn is also here? Albert walked into the room with some small talk. His eyes swept across the mess of exotic beast materials, and his gaze finally stuck tightly onto the three red scale steel. What a pity, what a pity. I was delayed on my way here. Such a treasure missed me. Albert sighed with emotion. Then he raised his head and looked at Daniel with a serious expression and said, Daniel, I am willing to bid two intermediate beast corn to buy this red scale steel. I wonder if you are willing to part with it. Two intermediate beast corps were equivalent to 2,000 low grade beast corps. These three kilograms of red scale steel were bought by Daniel after spending 370 Beast Core. It increased by six times in one go. However, Daniel had just extorted the Walker family's auction. He did not lack Beast Core. Thank you, Mr. Hayes, for your kindness. This red scale steel is of great use to me. I really cannot give it to you. If I can get another one in the future, I will remember to keep it for you. Albert had a smile on his face, but when he heard this, he immediately frowned and said in a serious tone, Daniel, this red scale steel is very precious and difficult to deal with. A gene refining expert who is not very experienced can't use it to forge genetic weapons. Daniel laughed and said, and I happen to be an experienced gene refining expert. You? Albert did not have a smile on his face. He only felt that Daniel was arguing with him. I want to see how you use this red scale steel. If you don't use it well, don't blame me for robbing you. Albert's temper became stubborn. He found a place to sit down and stared straight at Daniel. Is this old man crazy? Daniel frowned and used his dark demon touch to sense the old man. The old man was just an awakened practitioner with six gene chains. In terms of strength, Daniel could easily crush him. However, Albert was stubborn. He wasn't afraid of the spirit rising from Daniel's body. Either you prove that you can use a good red scale steel or kill this old man. So troublesome, Daniel sighed. Didn't you doubt my ability? It just so happens that I want to repair my weapon. I will let you broaden your horizons. You? Albert sneered. Right now? Do you want to refine high-grade genetic weapons without using an atomic furnace? What kind of trash can be refined out of it? 
I advise you not to waste precious red scale steel. Albert kept muttering without stopping. He did not shut up and kept running his mouth. He was not afraid that Daniel would pinch him to death in a moment of anger. Daniel grabbed half of the diamond-shaped needle with one hand and used gene energy to drag it, causing it to float in the air. With another wave of his hand, the star steel turned into a liquid silver color and wrapped around the diamond-shaped needle layer by layer. The red scale steel landed under the diamond-shaped needle. Under the effect of the gene energy, the red-colored particles on the surface of the red scale steel floated up bit by bit and fell into the silver star steel, just like stars in the Milky Way. I can't do it without an atom furnace. Albert was persisting in shouting, but his eyes were wide open. He could not help but be surprised at Daniel's gene energy's size and stability. He had to rely on his hands to do what the atomic furnace could do. More and more red particles rose from the red scale steel. They looked like burning charcoal. The red particles were rolled up by a small vortex and were all absorbed into the silver liquid. The red scale steel seemed to be on fire. The floating red granules were as dense as coal smoke. The red scale steel also became smaller and smaller, turning from the size of an egg to the size of a finger. Finally, it also disappeared from their line of sight. Albert widened his eyes in shock. The red scale steel had terrifying stability. He had to maintain gene energy stability. In a special low density, the red scale steel would float down like dust, so this process required the help of the atomic furnace. But Daniel did it without using the atomic furnace. Could it be that this kid's brain was made of a machine? What shocked Albert even more was that Daniel's two hands were suspended in the air. His five fingers were moving, and the fine gene energy was moving the liquid that was suspended in the air. Wait. There is no spiraling centrifugal force here that can damage the weapon embryo. Albert shouted in panic. The ball of star steel, the red scale steel, and half of the damaged genetic weapon were mixed. Useless impurities needed to be thrown out and the useful parts had to be left behind. This process had to be completed with a centrifugal force or else what was left would be a pile of steel waste. Albert was so anxious that he wanted to pull Daniel down. He wanted to do it himself, but he could not do it without the spiraling centrifuge. Lynn also saw the anxiety in Daniel's eyes. She was worried that Daniel would make a mistake and waste a treasure that even Albert was worried about. Daniel dismissed what Albert was saying and did things his way. This step won't do. Albert shouted again. There must be a liquid plane converter filled with helium. This step must be equipped with a melting point detector. This step does not mean that many people working together will damage the weapon. Let me take this step. I am a professional. Finally, under Albert's dry stare, Daniel's forehead was covered in sweat. A red, short, diamond-shaped thorn about the length of an arm slowly fell from the sky. This, this... Albert was so anxious that he could not say anything. He scratched his ears and cheeks, wanting to snatch the weapon from Daniel's hands and check it to see the color of the new genetic weapon. The tip of the red short thorn was orange in color. It had not cooled down from the high temperature yet. Quick, I'll go get the polymerized metal coolant. Albert suddenly stood up and was about to rush out the door. There is no need, it's done. Daniel stopped Albert. The orange tip of the short thorn quickly extinguished and turned into a dark red color. The gene energy on it floated. Albert sat down and looked at the red short thorn with dry eyes. He kept mumbling. It's a bloodline divine weapon. No, it's still a little lacking. It only needs to be forged once more before it become a bloodline divine weapon. It's only a step away. Bloodline divine weapon? This was the first time... Daniel had heard of this term, but he did not hesitate. Looking at the freshly forged genetic weapon in his hand, Daniel thought, What should I name you? Crimson Dragon Calamity. It's called Crimson Dragon Calamity. This name is suitable. 
Albert's throat dried up as he shouted. Daniel nodded. Not bad. This name was perfect. You can call it Crimson Dragon Calamity. Episode 207 The Gang Master Daniel Albert rubbed his palms and watched from the side. His eyes were full of desire. Can this crimson dragon calamity, can it? Impossible. Daniel refused immediately. He needed a suitable weapon. How could he give the crimson dragon calamity to the other party? No, no, no. Albert hurriedly waved his hand. I do want your crimson dragon calamity. I just want to take a look. Just a few glances. Daniel threw it to the other party. Albert scrambled to take the Crimson Dragon Calamity. He carefully held it in his hand and carefully caressed it. This made him feel disgusted. It was as if the other party was not looking at a weapon, but his wife. Daniel took back the Crimson Dragon Calamity. He was afraid that Albert, the crafter, would lick this weapon. This would make Daniel sick and turn green. I'll look at it a few more times, just two more times. Albert waved his arms anxiously. Knock, knock. Someone knocked on the door. Daniel and Lynn looked at Albert at the same time. Albert shook his head. I was alone when I came here. No one should be looking for me. Before Daniel could open the door, it was knocked open from the outside. A seemingly reckless young man barged in. It was an awakened practitioner. Daniel's heart rang with alarm. The other party seemed to have quietly knocked on the door, but in fact, the other party broke the lock of the hotel's anti-theft door. Huh, I'm sorry, I walked through the wrong door. I thought it was my wife and someone else. <laughs> I'm sorry. The young man left the room with a sly smile. His eyes quickly swept around the room. When he saw Daniel and Lynn, his eyes could not help but be filled with excitement. He turned around and left without hesitation. He was acting. It seemed that he was a man who caught a traitor. When he saw Daniel and Lynn, his eyes lit up. They were coming for him. The young man hurriedly ran away. Daniel turned around and looked back at Lynn. The people who are chasing us are here. Let's go. Albert seemed to be deep in thought. That was someone from the Rigid Pterogoid Association just now. The Rigid Pterogoid Association? Daniel and Lynn looked at each other. Are you sure? Absolutely. Albert returned to his serious look when he entered the room. That young man has a pendant on his waist. Although he hid it well, he accidentally exposed a part of it just now. That is the symbol of the Rigid Pterogoid Association. The Rigid Pterogoid Association? Lynn frowned and said, They have taken away the property of the Walker family. I will take it back. Daniel started to think more about it. In the auction, he had stolen the red scale steel that the Rigid Pterogoid Association wanted. Perhaps they had the intention to kill and seize this red scale steel treasure. They had even attacked the Walker family's auction, causing blood to flow like a river. Perhaps they had the intention to rob the Walker family's auction long ago, but since he had facilitated the operation of the Rigid Pterogoid Association, the end of the Walker family's auction happened earlier than expected. Let's go first. Daniel had heard that every major power in Great River City had a bloodline warrior supporting them from behind. The Rigid Pterogoid Association would not be an exception. If it was a bloodline warrior who tried to kill him, even if he could escape, Lynn and Black would be in trouble. It's too late. A gray-haired middle-aged man walked into the room. Daniel, hmm, hmm. you made me look for you. How is the Walker family's auction doing? Lynn's pretty face was covered with the intent to kill as she heard his question. The Walker family's auction? <laughs> the gray-haired middle-aged man laughed and said, Isn't this kind of foreign training company just a piece of trash that can be slaughtered once it's fattened? You don't even have a quasi-bloodline expert. You think you can live for a long time. It's not just us who take action. Others take action as well. 
The Rigid Pterygoid Association? I will remember this name. Lin said coldly. The gray-haired middle-aged man looked at Lin in surprise. How do you know our names? He looked at the others in the room and finally locked his gaze on Albert. Oh, so it's a old Mr. Albert. What a coincidence. Our guild leader has some things he needs to trouble the senior for so he can come with us. Huh. I've never helped a pack of jackals or wild dogs forge anything. Albert was exceptionally tough, and he didn't even look at the middle-aged man. The middle-aged man laughed loudly. <laughs> Don't worry. I have plenty of time for you to change your mind. Today, I will kill Daniel first. Primordial Chaos Saint Slash. The man shouted and used his bare hand to slash through the void. The blade light was formed through the void as it slashed down towards Daniel. It was unfathomable. Daniel could feel extreme pressure from the white blade light. It was the convergence of gene energy and the sharpness of the blade. Even if Daniel was hit, his body would split open and enter his bone marrow. Daniel grabbed Lin and rolled into the bedroom. The blade light went into the wall and disappeared. Ding, ding, ding. The vases and oil paintings that were neatly cut into pieces fell to the ground and scattered all over the floor. Oh! Black roared and rushed towards the man. His cumbersome body erupted with gene energy as he charged forward. Where did this beast come from? Get lost! The man shouted as he kicked him, causing Black to fly backward and fall into the sofa. With just one kick, Black was seriously injured and could not move his body. Albert, the master craftsman, wanted to help, but he was not good at fighting since he had studied gene refining experts. With six gene chains, he could not even release one genetic ability, so he could only stand at the side in a daze. The opponent had ten gene chains. Daniel took a deep breath. Strictly speaking, he also had ten gene chains. However, a large portion of the gene chain was missing, and the explosive force of the gene energy was not enough. He had always challenged those who were higher level than him and crushed those of the same level. He relied on the superiority of the high-level gene chain. He did not believe it. The fusion genes of several gene chains he had passed could not be compared to the opponent's ordinary genes. Absolute domain. Under the suppression of his aura, the middle-aged man with gray hair had no choice but to directly face Daniel. Such a high suppression of aura, young man. You must have had countless opportunities to reach this step. The man sneered. But I will make you spit out all your opportunities. Let them display their worth in our rigid pterygoid association. Divine Dragon Blade. The three blades in the air that controlled the gene energy transformed into three floating and roaring golden divine dragons. They collided with Daniel from three different angles. Under the golden light, the gray hair of the middle-aged man became golden, and the vigorous gene energy in his hand surged. Roar of the nether. A trace of a proud sneer appeared on Daniel's face, and he spat out a mouthful of spiritual energy. The middle-aged man was directly hit by the spiritual energy attack and his body stiffened in the air. The three divine dragons continued to crash down in the same direction. This is bad. Episode 208 Red Dragon Tribulation Destroyed The gray-haired man threw out three divine dragon blades. These three divine dragon blades were not only a threat to Daniel's attack, but also a defense against a sneak attack. The gray-haired middle-aged man was frozen in the air by the mental attack, but the three divine dragon blades did not slow down at all. They directly attacked Daniel. This bit of attack wouldn't be able to harm Daniel in the slightest without his assistance from the side. Instead, Daniel would attack him and he would lose his protection. Daniel lightly wrapped his arm around Lin's waist. His figure disappeared from the three divine dragon blades. Rumble. The explosion of gene energy created a fog that blocked his vision. Daniel relied on his dark demon touch gene to jump to a safe place and put Lin down. 
He touched his other hand and the blood red Crimson Dragon Calamity appeared in his hand. Crimson Dragon Calamity extinguish. The Crimson Dragon Calamity that was only a step away from becoming a bloodline divine weapon flew out. A blood shadow that could take one's life flashed across the room. Just when he had broken away from his stiff state of mind, the gray-haired middle-aged man felt as if his soul had left his body and his hair stood on end. Saber Array. The gray-haired middle-aged man decisively activated the gene energy, and a dense cluster of blades spun in front of him to block the attack. The blades that were condensed from the gene energy mixed with several solid genetic weapons of the same standard. These were all the result of his painstaking efforts. The two blades connected into a single piece. The water could not be poured in, and it was seamless. No matter which angle they attacked from, they would be blocked by the blades. Ding, 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 ding. The Crimson Dragon Calamity plunged into the blades. The blades formed by the gene energy shattered into pieces. Those few genetic weapons were unable to block the sharp Crimson Dragon Calamity, and all of them created a gap. Before the gray-haired man could feel his heartache, an intense pain came from his chest. Crack, crack. The sound of his ribs being unable to bear the heavy burden was heard. His tear gland quickly secreted tears, and a mouthful of blood was spat out from his mouth. Daniel aimed at the middle-aged man's chest and waved his hand. The Crimson Dragon Calamity seemed to have a mind of its own as it was pulled out from the middle-aged man's chest. Blood gushed out even more violently. The middle-aged man covered his wound with his hand, and dark red blood continuously seeped out of his fingers. What a good Daniel! The gray-haired middle-aged man stared at the Crimson Dragon Calamity in Daniel's hand. What a good Crimson Dragon Calamity to extinguish. You've used all of the red scale steel in that scarlet weapon, right? Daniel's figure flashed. He held the Crimson Dragon Calamity in his hand and the sharp spikes aimed at the gray-haired middle-aged man's neck. I want to run. You can't stop me with your strength. The middle-aged man ignored the large hole in his chest. His arms spread out like wings of a bird. Sparrow dance. A beast transformation quickly took place. Daniel had just touched the gray-haired middle-aged man's side when he had already completed the beast transformation process. Both of his arms were covered with wings. He flapped his wings. He flew out of the window. Whoosh. The last attack barely managed to hit the gray-haired middle-aged man. He stretched out his hand and pulled. The Crimson Dragon Calamity cut open a hole in his waist. Blood gushed out and his pants were full of blood, leaving some blood stains on the window. What a pity. Daniel looked at the gray-haired middle-aged man who was flying away. He had a type of bird-type gene chain. If they continued fighting for another ten minutes or so, he would undoubtedly die. Are you alright? This place is no longer safe. We are preparing to leave. Lynn and Albert walked out of the ruins. Except for some dirt on them, they looked fine. Black, on the other hand, looked a little miserable from the casual strike from the Ten Gene Chain Warrior. The opponent felt that Black was annoying and kicked him away, but it was not something that Black, this strange beast with only two or three Gene Chains, could withstand. Black's chest seemed to have caved in. The originally energetic bear had become on the verge of death, Daniel quickly fed it some gene drug. Only then did Black slightly regain his consciousness. Daniel gradually relaxed. As long as he was still breathing, the awakened practitioner could recover by relying on his body. And this was even more so for the strange beasts. I have a secret property in Great River City. We can hide there. Lynn pursed her lips and suggested... No, that place of yours will be discovered very soon. Furthermore, the rigid pterygoid association is becoming more and more arrogant in the Great River City. It must be because the Great River remains. We need to live Great River City. This city is not safe anymore. Albert sighed. The remains of Great River? Daniel perked up a little, but now was not the time to ask this question. 
Then let's go outside the city. We will leave now. That was indeed the case. As soon as Daniel and the others left the hotel, they were surrounded by people. The leader of the group had a stronger aura than the middle-aged man with gray hair. Vice Chairman, we are a step too late. Daniel and the others have already left. The man with the scar quietly listened to the report. A fierce light flashed in his eyes as he sent the messenger flying with a kick. Chase! Chase him all over the city! Catch Daniel and the others and all of you be on the lookout to find him. Think about the fury of the president. Under the scolding of the vice chairman, everyone felt a chill run down their spines. The vice chairman wanted to scare them, and the founder of the rigid pterygoid association, the chairman, had always been cruel. If anything was not as he wished, blood would be shed. The chairman had a new batch of followers. The previous ones were all cut into pieces by the chairman in a fit of rage. Many of them had just taken up their positions during the day, but at night they had turned into broken corpses and were buried. Behind the vice chairman was a gray-haired middle-aged man covered in bandages. He stood there trembling with fear, like a primary school student who had made a mistake. The matters that the chairman has entrusted to me are the red scale steel and the sound fuming incense. You didn't even get a single one of them, and you even let the main culprit escape. A survivor from the Walker Family's Association also ran away. Tell me what will happen when you're in front of the chairman. The vice chairman said calmly, but the gray-haired middle-aged man became colder and colder. He could only force himself to say, I... We have snatched the treasures and resources with tens of thousands of beast cores from the Walker family's auction. <laughs> the deputy chairman waved his hand. Go tell that to the chairman. It has nothing to do with me. The gray-haired middle-aged man was silent for a moment before finally saying, Daniel, the kid and Albert know each other. They've already used the red scale steel to make a scarlet red spike. They only need one more refinement to become a divine bloodline weapon. Oh. The vice chairman was slightly interested. Is this the work of Albert? It must be his work. The middle-aged man with gray hair firmly said, That weapon activated the genetic ability, and it was able to break through my saber array. There were also four genetic weapons mixed into the array of blades, and in the end they were all shattered. I even suffered a serious injury. The vice chairman's eyes slightly narrowed. A crimson weapon. Good. That would save Rigid Pterygoid Association from the trouble. We will capture Daniel and hand over the quasi-divine weapon to the chairman. At that time, both of us will be greatly rewarded. Now we must find where Daniel is going. Yes. Episode 209. Using the Burning Sound Incense The sandstorm was blowing towards them leaving layers of wrinkles on the golden sand. The evening weather was extremely cold. To the east of Great River City was even more desolate than the direction Daniel had come from. The vegetation was so scarce that there was not even a hint of green in it. Occasionally, some sand thorns came out of the desert, but they were also torn apart by wild beasts. <laughs> Lynn covered her mouth and nose. Even though she lived in Great River City for so many years, she still could not get used to the sand flying in the air. There is a ditch in front of us. We are hiding there. If we are lucky, we can find some water. Daniel pointed at the endless desert in front of him and said, How do you know? Albert's old face was full of curiosity. Lynn also had a strange look on her face. The two of them, who were residents of Great River City, had no idea what was going on outside of the Great River City. Why did an outsider like him seem to be worth everything? He could accurately report the situation of the road ahead several times along the way. Daniel knew more than them. Under the touch of the Nether Devil, not only did he understand a lot of the road condition, he even deliberately avoided the pursuit of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Daniel could see ahead within ten miles, and it was as if he had opened a map to find a place to stay. No gene energy's reaction could hide from his dark devil's touch. 
Under Daniel's senses, there were many tiny ripples of gene energy in the deep concave area ahead. It should be a small, ecstatic beast that lived in the river. The three of them stepped on the sand as they walked. The area in front of them opened up, and, as expected, they saw a deep river in front of them. This is the branch of the Great River, Albert sighed. These branches used to be everywhere around the Great River City, but they were gradually drowned by the sandstorm. It's really rare to find a deep river here. Let's go down. We can find water and food, and we can also avoid the pursuit of the Rigid Pterygoid Association, Daniel said softly. Yes. The trio and Bear went down from a relatively flat slope. Albert supported Albert's old bones as he asked curiously. I heard you guys talk about the Great River Ruins in the hotel. What is the origin of the Great River Ruins? The ruins of the Great River? Albert shook his head and wiped away the dirt mixed with sweat on his face. Ten years ago, I went there. A group of people rushed down and got nothing in the end. A group of people even died. It's boring, really boring. Under Daniel's urging and Lynn's curious gaze, Albert said, In the past, a great river was flowing around Great River City. Later, giants were passing by, and there were also said to be strange peace passing by. In short, Great River City had been drunk up in one gulp, but the existence of the Great River did not leave. Instead, it started to wreak havoc on the side of the giant river, and after that, there was an additional Great River ruin there. However, how could that strange beast cause such trouble? I don't believe the ruin was built by itself. It's inside. The terrain was vast, boundless, and isolated from the world. It was like an independent space. There were exquisite jade buildings inside. There were tall buildings and mutated beasts. We didn't even reach the end after walking for a long time. In the end, we had no choice but to leave that space through a special formation. Albert said and drank a few mouthfuls of water in a row. When we went in, there were fifteen people in the group. When we came out, there were only three people left. The other major powers also suffered losses like us. The remains opened once every ten years. Counting the days, it should be opening up soon. Daniel's eyes lit up. Isn't this the secret realm? Daniel had made a lot of money during his last trip to the secret realm. This time, he didn't plan to miss it. This was a mysterious ruin that no one had ever explored to the end. Once he found a treasure, he would make a huge profit. Albert pondered for a moment and said, It is said that there is an inheritance in the Great River, but who can say for sure about such things? Anyway, I will not go. Albert turned his head and saw Daniel and Lynn's bright eyes. They had thought of something and could only laugh bitterly. Why is there a need? There are many opportunities in this world. Why must we enter that dangerous place? Daniel shook his head. Most of the things in this world have an owner. If you want to touch other people's resources, it will be worse than killing their entire family. If you can find an ownerless ruin and there is a heaven-shaking treasure inside, wouldn't you be able to easily rise to the top? Daniel couldn't help but think of the thunder demon in the forest. Charles had been hiding in a remote place and had been fighting with others for so many years. Wasn't it because he wanted to get the thunder demon's crystal treasure? If the majority of awakened practitioners hid at home and cultivated according to the method written in the books, he might not be able to touch the threshold of bloodline awakening in his lifetime. As an awakened practitioner, he must have the determination to take the risk himself. Up to you, Albert signed. I am already old. 
I just want to live a stable life and study gene energy. In the future, I will also let the world know about me, Albert. I don't want to be a fool about things like this. Only then did Albert remember a very important thing. You have the sound fuming incense. Do you know how to use it? Under Albert's scrutiny, Daniel was stunned for a moment. It smelled good, but it didn't take long for it to finish burning. How could it be used? The three men and one bear took it off in a corner. Albert took out a small booklet and threw it at him. This mind extraction method is for you. If you don't know this, using the sound fuming incense recklessly will endanger your life. The old man suddenly laughed evilly. <laughs> the rigid terrified association must be chasing you for this sound fuming incense. Why don't you take the opportunity to use the sound and fuming incense and let them return empty handed? Sound and fuming incense. Lynn looked at Albert in puzzlement. Could it be that the appraisers hired by their family had missed it? It was a treasure that was sold at the Walker family's auction at a cheap price. Daniel let go of the mind extraction method and read it carefully. The book talked about the method to sharpen the mind. It was a method to stabilize the mind, and it required some external items to help with the cultivation. Daniel took out the sound fuming incense and wiped it with his finger. The finger-sized incense stick lit up the fire. This thing needs to be careful. We can't absorb it. Albert set up many restrictions around Daniel. The gene energy was arranged in an orderly manner, blocking the flow of air. Under the sealed air, Daniel immediately smelled the fragrance of the sound fuming incense. A sense of peace rushed into his heart, and the restlessness he felt from being chased by the rigid pterygoid association quickly disappeared. Wasn't this the tool to calm his mind and nourish his soul? The appraiser from the Walker family's auction was right. How could it be as dangerous as what Albert said? The taste of the sound and fuming incense became more and more concentrated. Daniel easily immersed himself in it. Even the whistling wind in his ear died down in the fragrance. Daniel's eyelids became heavier and heavier. He couldn't help but want to fall asleep. This fragrance was too intoxicating. Kid, you can't fall asleep. You have to endure the fragrance. Albert said sternly. Episode 210 Tempering the Spirit The light was dim and silent. The soft incense stick emitted a smooth, white, silky stream of smoke, and it was sucked into Daniel's mouth and nose. The whistling sound of the wind became quieter and quieter, turning into a hypnotic sound. <sighs> After a long yawn, Daniel felt his eyelids fighting to stay open. His eyes were half open, and his sleepiness was continuous as he could fall asleep at any time. I can't fall asleep. Endure it in the fragrance. Albert's fleeting figure sounded beside Daniel's ear. He sat up straight, and only then did Daniel remember that he wanted to use the sound fuming incense to cultivate. What a terrifying hypnosis. Daniel looked at the sound fuming incense that was constantly emitting white smoke. He no longer dared to look down on this small gray piece. He hurriedly operated the mental energy training method that he had just learned. At this moment, Daniel's entire mind was in between his mind and soul. His physical body was completely put to the back of his mind. A blue spiritual body came out of his body. The gene energy was fluctuating in different places, and it was spreading out in a ring shape. In Daniel's eyes, the two people outside the restriction were also glowing. One was dark yellow with a hunched back, and the other was light blue. The heart of the person was beating rapidly, sending out waves of information. For him, the entire world had become even more direct. No mountain or no stone could stop his vision. This is amazing. The white smoke of the sound fuming incense also became terrifying and fuzzy. 
It was no longer the smoke that was gently drifting in his eyes. In his spiritual vision, the white smoke was made up of small gray balls with sharp thorns. Every time Daniel sucked in some of the spikes, a part of his spiritual body would be destroyed by the spikes. The small balls with sharp thorns were destroyed by the thorns. With steady speed, they were slowly pulled out of the sound-fuming incense bit by bit. Nothing could stop them from entering Daniel's body. The more Daniel sucked, the more his spirit body was worn out by the spiked ball. The inside of his body was riddled with holes. Yes. The pure spirit body was like taking off his clothes and exposing his skin. It made people feel as if needles were piercing into his body. Daniel's spirit body shrank together. If it wasn't for his body being used to all kinds of pain and torture during the gene extraction, he would not be able to help but return to his body and extinguish the sound-fuming incense. In his physical body, the sound-fuming incense made him sleepy and calmed his soul. However, he needed to remember that using the sound-fuming incense could be extremely dangerous. A slight carelessness could cause his mind to be destroyed and his soul to be damaged. Daniel gritted his teeth. His mind was like a lone boat under a sea of pain, rising and falling continuously in the waves. He tried his best to stay conscious and not be overwhelmed by the pain. Pop! The clear sound of water dripping echoed in Daniel's ears. A hole was made in his mind by the small ball of thorns. Then, the small ball of thorns seemed to have found a breakthrough point. It was no longer wandering peacefully in the air. It drilled into his mind like crazy. Pop, pop, pop. As more and more small balls of thorns entered his spirit body, the skin of his spirit body was full of bumps and hollows. However, in the end, his spirit body could not maintain its state of mind. It exploded into countless tiny dots of starlight. The blue dots poured into Daniel's body, and he returned to his physical vision. <coughs> Daniel coughed and trembled. If his physical body had been attacked at that level, he would have bled more than just now. Outside of the defense mechanism, Albert saw Daniel moving. He forced a smile on his old face and said, not bad, not bad. I completed a spiritual tempering. Lynn blinked her big eyes curiously. This kind of cultivation method was still unheard of. However, the true value of the sound-fuming incense was a small piece of 10,000 beast core. She was afraid that she would not have the chance to see him again in the future. Daniel opened his eyes in a daze. The moment his spirit body collapsed, he thought that he would die. He looked at the gene panel and was so excited that he almost jumped up. After another round of training, his spirit attribute had increased by 50%. Looking at the sound-fuming incense that was slowly floating with white smoke, in a short 10 minutes or so, a third of the small sound-fuming incense had already burned away. Daniel did not dare to delay any longer. Again, Daniel's spiritual body was breaking away from his physical body. As the spiritual force became stronger, his spiritual body became stronger and stronger, but also more sensitive. The small ball of spikes rammed into Daniel's body bit by bit. The pain came again, and every time it made his body tremble slightly. Lynn was shocked by what she saw. Albert sighed in shock. Back then, when I occasionally obtained a small piece of sound-fuming incense... When I used it for the first time, I could not even withstand a complete collapse. Fortunately, I have the protection of mind tempering method. Otherwise, I would probably be lying in a bed in a vegetative state for the rest of my life. Not only did this Daniel withstand the collapse, but he could also endure the intense pain and continue burning the sound fuming incense to temper his spirit. He was worthy of being called a young elite who could refine the Crimson Dragon Calamity. It was a pity that his talent as a gene refining expert, who had nothing but potential, chose to do something like fighting and killing. Albert sighed endlessly from the side. In a vast space, the spike balls slowly drifted out. Every time the spike balls were born, they would crash into the azure spiritual body. 
Daniel sat there with his legs crossed, silently enduring every bit of pain. No intense pain could stop him. Young master, you've done something great. Albert sighed as he looked at the remaining one-third of the sound-fuming incense. Who would have thought that someone would be able to do it? He had endured this kind of pain twice in a row. With such ordinary endurance, how could this person not succeed? Albert looked at Daniel, who had just woken up, and saw that he did not even take a breath. He kept making finger signs with his hands and, once again, immersed himself in the spiritual world to temper his mind. This was the third time. The sound-fuming incense had just finished burning. Daniel opened his eyes tiredly, but his pupils were like a pair of glittering stars. After three rounds of mental tempering, the effect was better than the last time. Daniel's spiritual force had increased by 2.5 times. The effects of the sound-fuming incense were terrifying. Daniel looked at the gene panel in ecstasy. It had always been the lowest mental value in the three-dimensional world. Surprisingly, it had exceeded his physical strength and was slightly lower than his physical strength. Daniel, energy, 12,300 points. Intermediate energy, 100. Stamina, 823 points. Strength, 1,152 points. Spiritual force, 952. Daniel knew very well how difficult it was to improve the spiritual force. Most of the huge gene chains could only increase the spiritual force by a tiny amount. After using up a small piece of sound-fuming incense in less than an hour, the spiritual force had increased dramatically. No wonder Albert and the Rigid Pterygoid Association's chairman were in a hurry to buy the sound-fuming incense. The effect of this thing was too shocking. Albert removed the restriction around Daniel and impatiently asked, How's the situation? Daniel lowered his head and looked at the sound-fuming incense that was only a thin layer of ash. He smiled and said, Very perfect. Episode 211, Enemy Attack Huh? Daniel was about to say something more when suddenly he felt an image flash across his mind. Although it was very short, it was very clear. After the spiritual force was enhanced, the effect on the Dark Devil touch also doubled. Dozens of people followed Daniel's footprints and touched the river. Their movements were too fast. They found Daniel's tracks before the sandstorm buried his and the other's footprints. At this moment, Dozens of people were looking around the river and climbing down by themselves. We have been discovered. Get ready to leave. Daniel took a deep breath. He blew on the ashes on the ground, but saw that a small piece of the ground had been burnt black. He had to give up on covering his tracks. An awakened practitioner, who was at Daniel's level, could easily detect any signs of him. Even if he scraped off the black rock, the other party would use obvious man-made means to determine that Daniel had been there. Daniel pointed in the direction he came from and said, This direction has been blocked by the other party. We can only go in the other direction of the river. Albert shook his head with a bitter smile. Unfortunately, the other direction leads directly to the main trunk of the Great River. It roughly matches the root of the ruins of the Great River. It's easier for us to be found. Forget it. Let's go. Daniel led the way and sped along the river. He felt that he was getting further and further away from the rigid Terragoid Association members behind him, and Daniel gradually calmed down. Even if the other party had found traces of being burnt, they could not be sure that it was him who did it. If they rashly reported the wrong information, they would have to bear a heavy responsibility. Daniel was sure that the Rigid Terragoid Association would be more cautious. The valley was deep and long. Occasionally, there would be small animals sticking their heads out of the cave. The entangled plants grew in this shelter, and there seemed to be a lot of water accumulated in the valley. Nature was marvelous. It was like the mysterious stone space in the north of the Welcome Home Shelter. Occasionally, some natural energy would fill a certain section of the river. 
Under the interference of this natural gene energy, Daniel's sense of humor would lose its effectiveness. Daniel relied on the Dark Devil's sense of touch gene to avoid countless searches and ambushes from the Rigid Terragoid Association, and he always walked along the river without getting his shoes wet. He went around a gloomy river, and there was a cave at the side of the river. It didn't seem to be very deep, but the gloomy environment inside made people feel cold all over. Just as they bypassed the cave, a gray-haired man with empty hands stood in the middle of the river. His back was facing Daniel and the other two, and he was in a daze. Hmm. Sensing the footsteps of Daniel and the others, the gray-haired man turned around. He stepped on iron shoes and searched for the right path. <laughs> the gray-haired man couldn't help but laugh. Originally, he had only jumped into the river to take a look, but he had bumped into him. Daniel, what a coincidence. Why are you so impatient to die? Daniel's eyes were cold. I will return the sentence to you without changing anything. <laughs> the gray-haired man laughed loudly. Naive. Daniel, you are too naive. You don't even know the gap between us. The gray-haired man tore off the long robe he was wearing, revealing a diamond-shaped green gem on his muscular upper body and neck. Albert's gaze turned cold as he leaned closer to Daniel and said in a low voice, Be careful. That's a spiritual protection accessory. The gray-haired man took out a palm-sized Jane Greed knife from his waist. He gently used his hand to pinch it, and the small willow leaf knife turned into a dozen flying knives. The last time you defeated me was because of your mental attack talent, and the weapon forged from the red scale steel. As the gray-haired man spoke, a cruel smile appeared on his face. This time I will make you lose all of your advantages. I will let you know what a true half-step bloodline is. So, it was a half-step bloodline warrior. Last time, Daniel was able to suppress the gray-haired man and force him to transform into a beast and fly away because of the roar of the nether's spiritual attack and the sharpness of the crimson dragon calamity. Albert's eyes were unique. With a single glance, he recognized that the gray-haired man was holding a quasi-bloodline divine weapon that was not weaker than the crimson dragon calamity and the green gemstone on his neck was also a spiritual armor that targeted Daniel's roar of the nether. This time, Daniel would have a hard time. Albert could not help but think regretfully. If they had enough time to refine the Crimson Dragon Calamity once more, this Crimson Dragon Calamity with unlimited potential would become a true bloodline divine weapon. Only then would he be able to firmly suppress the pursuers of the Rigid Terragoid Association. I hope the mental energy tempering will be of some help to Daniel. Albert could not help but try to comfort himself. However, he could not convince himself to do so. He had just received mental torture. Someone couldn't recover quickly. However, he did not know that Daniel had a killing weapon like the gene panel. Even though he had a tiny bit of mental damage, as long as Daniel still had a breath left, he could use the gene panel to digest energy and recover quickly. This recovery speed was ten times or a hundred times faster than an ordinary person, as long as Daniel was willing to spend the gene energy. Lynn's heart tightened. She silently blessed Daniel. She and Daniel shared a common enemy. She wished that the Rigid Terragoid Association would suddenly die. The middle-aged man stared at Daniel and said seriously, Kid, it seems like you have a few more opportunities. However, this bit of nonsense is useless. Daniel, die. The middle-aged man slashed horizontally with his right hand. A crescent moonblade light covered the entire river and slashed towards the three of them. Black, who was walking in front, let out a roar. He fell to the ground and the blade light swept past his head. Then a strand of black hair fell from his head to his feet. Behind Daniel were Albert and Lynn. They had nowhere to run. They held the Crimson Dragon Calamity with their left hands, and their right hands bent into claws. Scorching flames covered their palms. Divine Flame Fist Rip! 
The blade lights shattered into pieces and smoke covered the area. One could only hear a burst of wild laughter from the opposite party as several jade green flying blades pierced them. Daniel swung the crimson dragon calamity in his hand, and the blood red flying blades danced wildly in the air. Ding, 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 ding. Amidst the sounds of metal clashing, a slender jade green color revolved around a dazzling blood red color. Every time the crimson dragon calamity collided, a jade green color would fall like a blood-red spider hunting dragonflies that filled the sky. One minute. The gray-haired middle-aged man rushed forward together with him. Several divine dragon blade energy blades flew up and down around him. I can finish you off in a minute. Sure enough, Albert was extremely worried. The other party used that set of willow blades to entangle the crimson dragon calamity. Then Daniel would be in danger. Who gave you the confidence? A fierce light flashed in Daniel's eyes. Last time, he seemed to have found a trick, but in fact, he had too many trump cards that he did not use. Roar of the Nether! Daniel opened his mouth, and a mental attack hit the middle-aged man in the narrow river. Even if the middle-aged man wanted to dodge, the mental attack would hit the wall and bounce back, and it would still affect him. Episode 212 Crush The gray-haired middle-aged man immediately pulled back the divine dragon and let it fly around his body. The divine dragon was made of saber energy without scales and claws. It only had a slightly dragon-shaped head, and a long white saber energy was dragging behind it. The four-blade energy divine dragon was pulled by the gray-haired middle-aged man and started to circle his body. The energy blades were tightly arranged in front of his body, and there was not a single gap left between the blades. It's coming. Hum. The ring-shaped sound wave crashed into the middle-aged man's body. The sound wave was like a sponge absorbing water as it was completely absorbed by the middle-aged man. Crack. Crack. The green diamond suddenly lit up, and a transparent curtain appeared in front of the middle-aged man. As soon as the layer of the wall appeared, layers of vein patterns split open, and with a clear explosive sound like glass, it disappeared in front of him. The green substance swimming inside the green gemstone lost its color and turned into a colorless liquid. This liquid was exposed to the air and quickly dissipated until nothing was left. The broken glass pieces fell to the ground. At the same time, drops of blood flowed down the middle-aged man's face, dripping down. What a powerful spiritual ability! Albert couldn't help but sigh. However, the rough usage of the spiritual force made him sigh with regret. With this vast ocean of spiritual force, he had to use the crudest method to force his opponent to drink it. If Daniel had received professional guidance and training, with just this spiritual attack alone, he would be able to walk in all directions. This kid still needs to be taught slowly. Albert stroked his sparse goatee and nodded his head in satisfaction. Daniel's spiritual attack had completely exceeded the middle-aged man's expectations. Not only had the roar of the nether blasted open the spiritual curtain of the green gem, but it had also caused immeasurable mental damage to the middle-aged man. His eyes were wide open, and blood continuously flowed from his eyes. However, he had a blank and ignorant expression on his face, and his mouth was half open. The flying blade leaves and dragon-shaped blade spirit were unimpeded as they circled the gray-haired middle-aged man to protect him. The mental attack did not affect these physical objects. Your death is here! Lightning crackled around Daniel's body. He suddenly accelerated and closed in on the middle-aged man. The middle-aged man's pupils contracted, as if he had realized the danger. However, Daniel's fist was already right in front of his eyes. Absolute domain. Define flame fist. Amidst the exploding flames, the gray-haired middle-aged man recovered from his trance. 
a vicious voice squeezed out from his throat. You want me to die? I want you to accompany me in death. Thousands of blades descend upon me. Daniel's fists were burning with raging flames. Lightning exploded outside his fists, and his fists, which were covered with high-temperature solution, pierced through the middle-aged man's chest. However, the middle-aged man gave Daniel a resolute and proud smile. Danger? Daniel's dark devil touch told him to stop. He quickly pulled out his fists, and his body shrank backward. Poof, 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 poof. A white blade suddenly stabbed out of the middle-aged man's chest. This blade was made of gene energy, but it was a dazzling blade under the sunlight. Shink, 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 shink. It was as if a blade had grown out of his body. Shink, 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 shink. More and more blades, longer and longer, in his chest, in his head, in his limbs. The middle-aged man with gray hair was like a cactus with a razor-sharp blade. Blades could be seen everywhere from top to bottom. When the blades grew to a certain extent, they would shoot out from his body. The middle-aged man's tattered body collapsed to the ground. The bloody blade pieces filled the sky and shot out in all directions. Daniel, be careful. Albert and Lynn hid behind a huge rock. Lynn saw Daniel's body floating in the air and had nowhere to hide. She could not help but shout. Daniel smiled in front of several knife. Balls of lightning. Crack. A wave of blade fans passed through Daniel's elemental body, and the ball of lightning in the air fell to the ground. His body returned to normal, and he was completely unharmed. Daniel, it's an elemental transformation. Lynn ran in front of Daniel in a gust of wind. When she saw that Daniel was unharmed, she awkwardly took a few steps back. Albert clicked his tongue in surprise. The elemental transformation was publicly acknowledged as a type of gene chain that was difficult to train. Not only had Daniel completed his training, but he also had grasped the ability to transform elements. Daniel did not have the joy of winning. This gray-haired middle-aged man could not even be ranked in the Rigid Pterygoid Association. There were even more powerful enemies in the Rigid Pterygoid Association. With the sense of the Nether Devil, Daniel could sense that in the distance, the sound of a fierce battle between two has attracted some people. More and more experts were gathering in this direction. Let's go to the ruins of the Great River. Albert, do you know how to go to the ruins of the Great River? Daniel made a quick decision. He felt that instead of hiding everywhere and being chased around, he might as well go to the ruins of the Great River. There were many experts there. The rigid pterygoid association search would be hindered. That's good. Although the Great River remains aren't safe, the rigid pterygoid association won't dare to act recklessly. The rigid pterygoid association is strong, but amongst the major powers surrounding the Great River City, the Rigid Pterygoid Association is only ranked at the bottom among the dozen or so major powers. After obtaining Albert's recognition, Daniel led the trio and bear forward along the river. What Daniel didn't know was that tens of miles along the trail behind him, Daniel was being chased by the scar-faced man and they had come all the way here. If Daniel delayed for an hour, this deputy chairman of the Rigid Pterygoid Association would be able to find him quickly. The Scarface man and dozen of people rode ostrich beasts at a very fast speed. Hmm. The Scarface man raised his right hand, and the team behind him quickly tightened the reins. In front of the Rigid Pterygoid Association's chasing team, several people stood quietly in the desert, blocking the way of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. The Scarface man frowned, and one of his Scarface eyes fiercely swept across the group. The Rigid Pterygoid Association is handling this matter. If you know what's good for you, get lost. The Rigid Pterygoid Association? The leader of the group, the young man in embroidered clothes, said softly, 
I, Wade, do not know who the Rigid Pterygoid Association is. You. The members of the Rigid Pterygoid Association were enraged and were about to curse, but the scar-faced man broke out in a cold sweat. Wade. He was Simon's brother. A few hours ago, Simon had been killed by him in the Walker family's auction. They had been keeping a tight watch on the news and had even released smoke bombs from the Black Evil gang. They should not have been discovered so quickly. Wade wore a face cloth and held a folding fan in his hand. His eyes were filled with coldness. Although Simon is useless trash, he has lost the face of the Parker family. But he is not someone the Rigid Pterygoid Association can casually target. You killed him. Where do you put me in? Where do you put my Parker family? The scar-faced man forced himself to remain calm. He spoke to Wade from afar. Young Master Wade, that was our mistake. We didn't know that the second young master of the Parker family was also in the auction. We will definitely... Blood splashed everywhere. There was a distance of tens of meters between the two of them. The other party's sword pierced through the air, and the scar-faced man's left arm was directly broken and sent flying. Bloodline expert! The man knew that there were two bloodline experts in the old generation of the Parker family, but he didn't expect that this new, advanced genius, who was only over 20 years old, had already broken through to the realm of bloodline warriors. Episode 213 Rigid Pterygoid Association Losses Bloodline Expert The Scarface man knew that there were two bloodline experts in the Parker family's older generation. But he didn't expect that this new advanced genius, who was only in his 20s, had already broken through to the realm of bloodline warriors. Blood gushed out of the Scarface man's left arm like a fountain. But he didn't care about the injury on his left arm and begged Wade. Young master of the Parker family, we, the Rigid Pterygoid Association, have eyes but fail to see. We have harmed your brother. As long as the Parker family is willing to forgive us, we, the Rigid Pterygoid Association, are willing to share half of the Walker family's auction resources. So noisy. Wade thrust his sword at the scar-faced man once again. This time, he pointed his sword at the scar-faced man's head. Puff! The red and white juice exploded. The scar-faced man only spat out the last few words in his throat. Commander, no, let... The vice commander is dead. The rigid pterygoid association spread out like a bird beast, driving the ostrich beast to flee in all directions in the desert. Wade looked at the dozens of rigid pterygoid association members in the desert with interest. He waved to his left and right and said, Go, get rid of them. Don't leave a single one alive. Yes. The five half-step bloodline warriors took a step forward and shot out like five flying arrows. In an instant, miserable screams could be heard continuously. And Daniel, Lynn said, Huh. Zing. Wade sheathed his sword and looked into the depths of the river. My brother Simon died in the Walker family's auction. Why should Daniel and Lynn still be alive? Hmm, I want all of you to die with my brother. Daniel and the other two walked deeper and deeper into the desert. As they went deeper and deeper, the weather in the desert gradually dried up. After walking out of the small section of the river, The sun above their heads became more and more ferocious and vicious. They wished they could squeeze every drop of sweat from the passers-by and make them die of thirst in the desert. Albert was a firm and solid six-gene chain expert. This little bit of difficulty was not a problem for an old man like him. He stretched out his dry fingers and pointed in front of him. I remember there should be a flowing market in that direction. We can go and take a look. If we are lucky, we can replenish some food and water. All right, Daniel nodded and said. As for Lynn, she did not even have the strength to speak. 
Among the three men and one bear, her strength was the lowest. She could only lower her head and sit on Black. Black the bear stuck out its tongue and rushed forward. The weight on its back was nothing, but it felt that it was getting hotter and hotter. After walking for a while, there were more and more people coming and going on both sides. As expected, Albert pointed in the right direction. There was a market set up with tents in front of Daniel. Little girl, dress a little heavier to avoid getting into trouble. Albert laughed and took out a long gray robe. Lynn understood what he meant. He wanted to prevent her looks from attracting people. Although Daniel was very strong, if bugs were harassing them along the way, it would be a waste to slow down the pace and increase the possibility of them being exposed. Lynn looked at the gray and white robe in front of her. There was a faint smell of sweat on it, and she was very unwilling to do so. Wear mine. Daniel took out a long robe from the nanometer compressor. This robe was brought out from the Furious Lion tribe. It had been piled under the nanometer compressor, but Daniel had not worn it. Lynn's face was slightly red as she took the long robe from Daniel. When she smelled the faint smell of the robe, she felt extremely relieved. Albert looked at the couple in front of him and laughed. He put away his tattered clothes. One of you is handsome and the other one is beautiful. You can be considered a natural couple. Lynn blushed and did not dare to raise her head to look at the two of them. Daniel silently sighed. This old man was messing around. He, Daniel, had a fiancé. The market was built around a small oasis. It was bustling with people, and there were many tents set up around the market. These were pedestrians passing by, and they were intentionally resting by the side of the market. Daniel and the other two walked into the market in a strange silence. Their strength was neither high nor low, so they did not attract much attention. Walking to a tea shop, Albert smacked his lips and pointed at the crude little shop. Let's drink some water. Daniel did not refuse. He nodded and agreed. Albert and Lynn lived in their own homes. They had never suffered the pain of not having supplies to travel across the desert. They had practically walked over a hundred miles without food or water. If it wasn't for the fact that they had discovered some water source along the way, Lynn might not have been able to make it here. Daniel swept his gaze across the tea stall. Other than a young man with a deep aura and deep eyes, the rest of the people were at the bottom and not worth mentioning. The young man saw Daniel looking at him and curled his lips. He squeezed out a cold smile with deep meaning in his eyes. Sit, why are you standing there? Albert was familiar with the way. He sat down on a stool and said, In the past, I like to come out and wander around, so I remembered this market. I didn't expect it to still be here. Albert held a cup of warm tea and drank it leisurely. He sighed and said, Unfortunately, the tea stall I drank at that time is no longer here. I don't know where they went. Lynn's cracked lips touched the tea and did not care whether the cup was clean or not. She gulped down the tea and looked around with her beautiful eyes. When she found that no one was paying attention to her on ladylike drinking style, she carefully poured another cup of tea and sipped it lightly. Daniel's mind was filled with that young man's strange smile. Even though he glanced away, he still felt that the young man was looking straight at him. Someone from the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Daniel carefully recalled the young man's attire. Albert had once reminded him that the Rigid Pterygoid Association would have a jade pendant hanging on their waist. But the young man did not have this. He was not a member of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Furthermore, the young man's attire was different from this place. He looked more like a tourist from outside the desert. Daniel thought to himself, could it be that he had accidentally forgotten about someone he had offended in the Furious Lion tribe? Albert drank his tea and found that the young man and woman were deep in thought. He was unhappy and knocked on the table. 
the both of you are getting married at the right age. Have you not thought about being together? Lynn could not withstand the teasing and her face instantly turned red. Daniel raised his head after realizing what he said and shook his head while laughing. Covered, I only known Miss Lynn for a day. You're telling me this, and I... Eh? Albert waved his hand. What's the point of being so particular these days? As long as you look right, you can be together. There's no need to worry so much. Albert happily ordered the lover's list. What he got in return was a bitter smile from Daniel. <laughs> a figure came from the table next to them. The young man David was afraid of stood up and walked over to Daniel and sat down next to him. Let me speak on Daniel's behalf. Actually, Daniel has a fiancé. Episode 214 I Believe in Her The young man picked up a cup of tea and put it back in his mouth with a frown. You are... Daniel had an intent to kill. Someone who could hand over his name and know about Nala must not be from the Great River City. The young man chuckled and his eyes met Daniel. Senior sister Nala followed Master to King City to learn. Although Mr. Wilson's talent is not bad, he is still far from being comparable to his senior sister. I suggest Daniel leave senior sister as soon as possible. Don't delay senior sister Nala's future. You know Nala? When Daniel heard him call Nala senior sister, he couldn't help but frown. How is Nala now? The young man took out a small jar from his chest and opened the cap. A smell of alcohol drifted out. Senior sister is very good. She will awaken her bloodline soon. After the young man drank a mouthful, he stuffed the small jar back into his mouth and looked at Daniel seriously. Today is just the right time, I will tell you. Daniel, you have already fallen behind senior sister Nala. In the future, you will only fall behind even further. I suggest you get to know reality earlier. Otherwise, it will be a kind of harm to you and your senior sister. Daniel did not hesitate to glare back at her. This is your idea or Nala's idea? <laughs> the young man laughed. This is what I said. And also what the teacher said. You are so weak that you are not worthy of Nala. The young man put one hand on Daniel's shoulder. A strong pressure suddenly came from the young man's tender hand, which made Daniel almost unable to raise his head. Gene energy burst out from Daniel's body at the first moment. The tea table in front of him was thrown out with a loud bang. The tea set fell to the ground with a clanking sound. Ah! Lynn screamed, and the tea splashed all over her body. Albert quickly pulled Lynn a dozen steps away to prevent her from being affected by Daniel's gene energy. Boom. The long stool under Daniel's butt broke into several pieces. He activated all the gene energy in his body to resist. Elemental transformation. First, use elemental transformation to dodge, then let this arrogant brat have a taste of lightning. This thought quickly popped up in Daniel's mind but a flash of lightning had just rushed out of his body when it was suppressed by his opponent and dissipated. It was simply unable to produce spherical lightning. Yeah. Daniel half squatted, his face red. He gritted his teeth in exerted force, but his body was still sinking bit by bit. Compared to Daniel's miserable experience, the young man was calm and relaxed. One of his hands seemed to be gently resting on Daniel's shoulder. A bloodline expert. How could Daniel not understand that this young man was a true bloodline warrior? Just his strength alone was enough to make him almost unable to stand up. My strength. Do you understand these things? The young man lightly smiled. Blood flame wave, the young man said. The moment the young man spoke, Daniel's body turned into a surging blood flame. An unexpected situation occurred. The young man instinctively pressed down with his hand and slammed it into the flowing blood flame. Daniel took the opportunity to stand up. Roar of the Nether. 
Daniel crazily unleashed the spiritual force. Now that the spiritual force had increased, his spiritual attack was his most powerful attack. In particular, the fact that a roar had shattered the green protective gem and injured the middle-aged man made Daniel extremely confident in this attack. The spiritual force seal was almost solid, and a pale purple sound wave surrounded the young man in a ring shape. Eh? The young man's eyes were filled with surprise. He stretched out a finger and pointed it forward. All of the sound waves were blocked in front of him. Hum. The roar of the nether turned into a nothingness under the finger of the young man. Daniel jumped ten steps back and stood between Lynn and Albert. He was breathing heavily. He looked at the young man with unknown origins cautiously, as if he was facing a great enemy. Interesting. A smile bloomed on the young man's face. I have nearly half more gene change than you. I thought I could crush you with one hand. Looks like I underestimated you. Daniel slowly stood up and shouted word by word from his throat. I, Daniel, will not be worse than anyone. No matter if it's you or Nala, I will catch up to you. <laughs> the young man raised his eyebrows slightly and looked at Daniel with a higher gaze. I thought the same a few years ago, but ever since I became an in-name disciple of my teacher, I have become more and more aware of the difference in talent. He took out a wine pot from his nanometer compressor and took two gulps. He looked a little lonely. Senior sister Nala, take two gulps from the wine pot. I can surpass you in just one or two months. <laughs> there was one thing he did not say. Nala, under the guidance of her teacher, would only need another year and a half to surpass him, this in-name disciple. Daniel was not knocked down by the other party's tone. For Nala to be able to advance so quickly, he felt happy for her from the bottom of his heart. Furthermore, bloodline experts were not his endpoint. It had only been a short year since he had walked until now. With the support of the gene panel, he would prove to everyone that he, Daniel, was not weaker than anyone. The young man picked up the table on the ground and found a bench to sit on. It is meaningless for me to advise you. The key lies in yourself. If you insist on chasing after Nala, then you can slowly chase after her. At that time, the one who will be in pain will be you, not me. Hmm. After saying half a sentence, Daniel threw a few pieces of beast core to the shop owner and turned around to leave. After leaving the tea shop, Lynn looked at Daniel's silent back. She wanted to say something several times but was unable to. Albert walked to Daniel and whispered to him, You know Dwayne Devil Master? Daniel frowned. I have never met him. Who is he? Albert showed his thumb to the young man who was still sitting at the tea stand. His name is Chase, a disciple of Dwayne Devilmaster. He collects precious resources near Great River City all year round. Your fiancé is his senior sister. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it will be hard for you to meet in the future. What do you mean? Daniel frowned and looked at Albert. Albert looked like he was sighing, which made Daniel feel anxious. Chase has a married wife. After they got married, his wife was taken in by, as a disciple by Dwayne Devilmaster, who was passing by. He is only an in-name disciple. Originally, the difference in strength between the two was not that big. A married couple who had just gotten married could be considered to have made a name for themselves. What a pity, as that female disciple's strength increases, she looks less and less like this chase. I'm afraid they haven't seen each other for a few years now. When Daniel heard this, the corner of his mouth curled into a cold smile. So you're a, still a pitiful person? <laughs> Albert raised his eyes. Well, it seems like you trust your fiancé. One should know that if a person's strength is higher, a wife would betray him. Are you sure your fiancé can follow you wholeheartedly? Daniel looked at Albert seriously. I believe in Nala.
Episode 215, Was There More? When Albert heard Daniel's serious words, he chuckled and didn't refute them. He just shook his head with a sigh. Albert looked at Lynn, who was quietly following behind him and gently squeezed Daniel's shoulder. Are you not going to consider Lynn? Think about it. If you marry and have children here, it would be good to settle down immediately. Furthermore, Lynn's strength was slightly weaker, but she managed the Walker family's auction on behalf of the Walker family. After so many years, her management ability is top-notch. Albert said, his mouth open and closed when he saw Daniel's cold gaze. He couldn't continue speaking. Fine, young people have the freedom of young people. As an old man, I don't have to waste my energy. Then where are we going now? Albert stroked his gray beard and said, 20 miles to the north is where I live, and the remains of the Great River are to the east. Shall we part ways here? As you wish. Daniel answered briefly. Albert looked at Daniel and then looked at Lynn. What are you going to do later? Cultivate. You haven't cultivated enough. Albert was stunned. Ever since Daniel left Great River City, he was either rushing or cultivating. Every time they did it, Daniel would find a quiet place to adjust his breathing and exercise the gene chain. He would take on a book and read it nonstop. He was like a cultivation machine, and he did not know how to stop. Albert suddenly felt curious. Daniel had reached this stage without anyone's guidance. If there was someone to guide him... Albert suddenly decided not to leave. He wanted to see if Daniel could continue to walk like this. If Daniel was worth investing in, he might be able to find a successor to the floating frost hall that was almost lost in his hands. Just like what Daniel said, the trio and the bear found a hotel to rest in. Daniel kept sitting cross-legged and cultivating. The stupid black leaned against Daniel and yawned. His fat body supported Daniel's back, and he was as obedient as a dog. Daniel lifted the gene energy and washed his body over and over again. During this process, the gene chain would slowly absorb the free genes in his body. When the timing was right, the incomplete gene chain would be slightly more complete. The flow of the gene energy was raised and put down. Albert looked at Daniel in disbelief. The gene energy was maintained at one level, never stopping. He could not help but feel amazed in his heart. Just his patience and perseverance, as well as the endless supply of gene energy, made Daniel have the ability to surpass ordinary people. Albert thought for a moment and said, The effect of your cultivation like this is too low. You are still far from awakening your bloodline. You can try to awaken more gene chains. Even if the awakening fails, it doesn't matter. I know, Daniel said faintly. He did not have many complete materials in his hands, and it was very difficult for him to absorb gene chains. If you are in a hurry to increase your combat strength, I can teach you some combat skills for free, and also take a look at your aptitude. Albert squeezed his old face into a ball of chrysanthemum and said with a smile, Oh? Daniel opened his eyes. His eyes were filled with desire. He had never received guidance from an expert, especially the knowledge of cultivation. The control of cultivation information in King City was extremely strict. Blood Surge. Albert took on an ancient leather booklet. This is a type of cultivation method that can stimulate blood spirit. Due to the cultivation process being too dangerous, not many people have grasped it. Daniel grabbed the booklet and impatiently flipped through it. Albert explained the mysteries of the secret manual as he said, The key to the blood flow is to stimulate blood energy and not harm the internal organs. This is especially important. After successfully cultivating, the blood energy will surge, and the strength will increase by 30% out of thin air. 
Back then, I cultivated for a whole year before I managed to grasp the key points. After Daniel roughly read through it, an impression formed in his mind. The blood energy in his body began to surge, and his aura suddenly increased by several tens of percent. Daniel casually grabbed Lin's sword and forcefully gripped it. A clear handprint was left on the iron sword. The secret manual is not bad. Do you have any more? Daniel looked at Albert with a face full of joy, as if he was looking at a treasure that had yet to be reclaimed. He did not expect this old man to know so much. Albert was stunned. Could it be that Daniel had practiced a similar technique in the past, which was why he was able to learn it very quickly? Yes, this is Spiral Spikes. Aren't the spiritual force huge? After mastering this skill, the power of spiritual force skill can be doubled. Albert took a deep breath and said, Practicing spiral air spikes is easy. However, the number of people who can use this skill is very small. I have been practicing it for a long time, but I still haven't mastered it. I have a late junior brother who's been practicing the spiral spikes for two years. Only then did he learn this mental killing skill. As soon as Albert finished speaking, Daniel finished flipping through the Spiral Spikes manual. The gene panel instantly recorded these words and deduced the technique in Daniel's mind. Daniel suddenly opened his eyes and the dark tent suddenly lit up. The surging spiritual force seemed to have materialized. The spiritual force rushed out of the tent and stabbed towards one side of the tent. Rip. A layer of skin was torn off the cloth tent. A cold wind blew in from outside. You! Albert stood up. Electricity is generated in the virtual room and your mind is turned into reality. You have mastered spiral spikes so quickly. What else? Daniel licked his lips and looked at Albert with anticipation. Is there more? Senior Albert, you know a lot. Anything else? I want to learn some more. Albert's face was half green and half white. He stared at Daniel with his dead fish eyes and said, Tell me the truth. Didn't you already know this skill? You lied to me, this old man. Daniel rolled his eyes. If I had known this skill long ago, I would have used my rough spiritual seed to attack the enemies of the rigid pterygoid association in that chase. That's true. Albert sat back down but he couldn't believe that the secret technique skill that he had used to defeat countless geniuses had been learned by Daniel in just a few hours. Listen up. This is the blood sacrifice skill. The cultivation process is too dangerous. You must be careful and not be greedy. Once you make a mistake, it will be too late to regret it. Albert said seriously, the main point of the blood sacrifice technique is to search for the bloodline and take the initiative to help the gene chain improve its completion level. However, the blood sacrifice technique consumes too much of the body. Every time the blood is used, it will spit out rotten blood. The genes in the blood will be completely extracted. Huh? Daniel spat out a sticky grayish-brown liquid. The joy in his eyes could not help but surge out. His gene chain of no beginning demon birth had increased from 29% to 30%. Although it had only increased by a percentage, this was an experience that he had never experienced before. There were no natural treasures or materials to extract. He only needed to use the blood sacrifice technique to gradually complete the gene chain. Albert widened his eyes. There was fear, joy, and doubt in his eyes. There were all kinds of mixed feelings. Episode 216 Vomiting Blood Ew! Daniel spat out another mouthful of grayish-brown liquid. The rotting blood emitted an indescribable stench that could make one feel nauseous and want to vomit. The smell quickly spread throughout the entire tent. Lynn used her sleeve to cover her mouth and nose. 
If it was not for the thorn tearing a meter-long hole in the tent and the cold wind whistling in from the outside, Lynn would probably run away and not dare to stay in the tent for another moment. Daniel and Albert didn't seem to be able to smell the stench, and their expressions did not change as they did their things. Daniel was focused on his cultivation and had no time to care about external things. Whether it was the pursuit of the Rigid Pterygoid Association or Nala's meteoric rise under the Duane Devil Master's hands, Daniel suddenly poured all of his thoughts into his cultivation. Only by possessing strength could he take back everything that belonged to him. Albert was a research maniac. Daniel, a cultivation genius, was right in front of him. He wished he could stick to Daniel's body and carefully sense how Daniel was able to produce one secret technique per hour. Strange. This is really strange. This is too scary. Albert stared at the sticky and rotten blood and saw that the grayish-brown blood was the same as what was described in the blood sacrifice technique. It was no different from the memories Albert had when he was young. In Floating Frost Hall, other than his master who had passed away long ago, no one else had mastered the blood sacrifice technique. After saying that, Albert took a sniff of the rotting blood that was emitting a strange smell and nodded his head in satisfaction. This caused Lynn to feel nauseous, and she could only look away. Not bad. Not bad. Daniel's face was pale, and his heart was overjoyed. His blood energy had emptied, and the completion of the Dark Demon Touch gene had increased by 3%. As for the matter of replenishing the gene energy and blood energy, wouldn't it just be a matter of eating and drinking? Daniel took out a large number of fresh materials from the nano machine, such as dragon leg meat, mutated bat wings, and worm meat. Daniel did not hesitate and directly bit down and swallowed them. Daniel ordered the gene panel to extract the exotic beast materials that he ate into his stomach. Under the continuous consumption of gene energy, his blood and spirit recovered very quickly. These fresh, exotic beast materials were filled with all kinds of gene fragments, which were great tonics after practicing the blood sacrifice spell. Lynn saw Daniel bite a piece of the horned demon dragon's leg and cut it open. Her beautiful eyes were wide open, and she quickly said to stop him, Many portions of meat are poisonous. If you eat it without processing, you will get sick easily. It's fine. Daniel swallowed and replied with a whimper. The blood and spirit in his body recovered quickly. His eyes looked at Albert, who had an inquisitive look on his face. Thank you, senior. The secret manual. Do you have any more? Albert's body trembled. If Daniel continued to learn it like this, he was afraid that in a half a month, the entire floating frost hall would be emptied. <coughs> Albert pretended to pat his chest. Daniel, I do have a lot of secret manuals, but these are the secret manuals of the Floating Frost Hall. They are from the Floating Frost Hall. They are not allowed to be passed on to outsiders. You are making things difficult for me. Oh. Daniel's eyes lit up. This old man still had a lot of strange techniques like this. Floating Frost Hall. It sounded interesting. He didn't know how long it would take for him to learn it. Then I'll join the Floating Frost Hall. <coughs> Albert almost choked to death. This was the first time he had seen such a childish way of acknowledging a master. After thinking for a while, he shook his head and refused. About this, I will observe again. If Daniel meets the criteria of my Floating Frost Hall to accept a disciple, I can... Except the disciple on behalf of my master. Furthermore, the geniuses of the Floating Frost Hall have fallen. Now I am the only man left. The Floating Frost Hall had existed for hundreds of years. If he accepted a genius as soon as he saw one, he wouldn't have fallen to the level of an old man. Albert strictly abided by the rules of the Floating Frost Hall. 
He only recruited those young talents with a talent and a bottom line. If they had talent, they should at least be at the entrance level of the Imperial City College, right? Having a bottom line was also commendable in this chaotic world. It was no wonder that the Floating Frost Hall could not even recruit an apprentice after so many years. Daniel answered seriously. All right, if my talent is in the eyes of old Senior Albert, please tell me. I will join the Floating Frost Hall. Then I will learn all of your secret techniques. Good, good. Albert narrowed his old eyes. He gently stroked his beard and smiled. Who is it? Daniel suddenly turned around. He looked sternly at the hole in the tent, which was blowing in the cold wind. It was dark outside. The torches in the camp were flashing, but there was nothing. Is anyone there? Lynn stood up and took the opportunity to run out of the tent. She looked around and took a breath of fresh air at the same time. Albert also jumped out of the tent and looked down carefully at the yellow sand. He did not see any trace of it. Other than our footprints in the sand, we did not find anyone else. Daniel frowned as he stood at the entrance of the tent. The cold wind whistled by his ears and the sand hit his face. That feeling just now was not wrong. He sensed the fluctuation. At the entrance of the tent, the other party disappeared very quickly. Even Daniel could not see the other party's appearance. What a strange technique. What's wrong? Albert asked with concern. Nothing. I might not have seen something. Daniel chuckled. A hundred meters away from Daniel's tent, a figure suddenly appeared in the desert. He opened his mouth and spat out dinner mixed with gastric juices. It stinks. The black figure wiped the cold sweat off his head. His concealing ability was first rate. As long as he did not want to expose himself, even bloodline experts would not be able to find him. He hid in the hole in the tent. That strange, rotting blood inside gushed out in waves. At first, he could forcefully hold his breath, but later on he could not help but take a deep breath. The strange smell entered his brain and could not be removed. A desire to vomit rolled out of his stomach. At the same time, Daniel noticed it. Luckily, I have a secret escape technique. The black shadow panted, and he felt that he had recovered for a while. He stood up and walked into the tent. When the people in the tent saw the person who came, they saw that his legs were trembling and his face was pale. They could not help but be surprised. Jake, what's wrong with you? Did you go looking for a woman again? Jake waved his hands and poured water into his mouth. He knew that he would wash away all the messy smells before he shook his head and said, Randy, I found a fat sheep. Do you want a bite? When the brawny man called Randy heard the word fat sheep, his eyes suddenly lit up and his body leaned forward. It's reliable. How fat is it? How strong is he? In short, two men, a woman, and one bear. The strongest hasn't awakened their bloodline yet. The weakest is a woman who only has two or three gene chains. Jake's face bloomed with a smile. Moreover, the strongest young man's cultivation is interrupted. He's crazily vomiting blood. Episode 217, Leaving the Camp. Randy had a flash of excitement on his face, which meant these guys were weak. However, Randy was cautious and still asked, Who are they? Will they have backers? Jake chuckled. I've already figured it out. The other party has a blood-red weapon. I was too far away to know its exact grade, but that fluctuation is not inferior to the weapons that the owner of this camp carries. When Randy heard this, his heart thumped. That was at least a quasi-divine weapon. Today, it's our turn to be rich. I'm not finished yet. Jake continued. There's an old man with a lot of secret manuals on him. When the time comes, we'll make a copy and sell it. It'll sell for a high price. More importantly, Jake said hurriedly, 
The offender to distinguish guest in the capital during the day whose name is Chase. They're simply a bunch of lone wolves without any backing. Good, 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 Randy shouted. He paced back and forth in the tent that didn't have much space. Then he pointed at Jake. When are we going to act? Tomorrow. When this group of people leaves the camp, we will act. Daniel and the others did not know that a group of thieves had set their eyes on them. But even if Daniel knew, he would not take it to heart. Currently, he was doing his utmost to awaken his bloodline and cultivate it with all his might. Everything else was temporarily cast to the back of his mind, not to mention, compared to this bunch of thieves, there were even tougher challenges waiting for him. In the main hall of West Valley City, after Commander Taylor seized this place, he had been cultivating in seclusion. It was only today that he walked out of his seclusion. The entire West Valley City was bustling with activity. He prepared resources for this chairman so that he could enter seclusion for the next time. After taking a bath and changing his clothes, Commander Taylor sat down in the main hall. The entire hall was silent. Commander Taylor was the only master of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. He was the one who kept his word here, the ruler of all lives in West Valley City. I only have an hour to deal with government affairs. If you have anything to say, just say it. I'm going into seclusion soon. Commander Taylor sat at the head of the hall. Below him were members of the Rigid Pterygoid Association in suits. They stood below him, trembling with fear. They wished that the honorable commander would go into seclusion immediately. Of course, no one dared to say this out loud. Chairman! A middle-aged man stood out from the crowd and said, The red-scale steel and sound-fuming incense you wanted were taken away by a kid called Daniel. The vice commander and the deacons who were in charge of chasing Daniel were all in trouble. Bang! Commander Taylor slapped the pure gold chair away. He stood up and walked to the hall. His bearded face looked majestic. Is this what I told you before I went into seclusion? Commander Taylor's words fell into the middle-aged man's ears, but it was more painful than being pricked by needles. The middle-aged man trembled. He only hoped that Commander Taylor could calm down a little and not blame him for what happened. The middle-aged man took a deep breath and continued. Vice Commander Howard was killed by the young master of the Parker family, Wade, when he was hunting Daniel. When we found out about this, you just came out of seclusion. Commander Taylor regained some of his rationality and said to the middle-aged man with a wave of his hand, This time, you will go personally. Not only do I want to see the red scale steel and the sound fuming incense, but I also want to see Daniel's head. Do you know? Yes. The middle-aged man relaxed. Even though he was already a bloodline expert, in front of Commander Taylor, whose strength was steadily crushing his, he was as afraid as the ordinary members of the guild, who had a ruthless temperament. As for Wade, huh. Commander Taylor snorted coldly. How dare you to touch the people of the Rigid Pterygoid Association? When the Great River remains open, I'll make sure that the son of Parker family doesn't come out. The middle-aged man received the order and left. The hall returned to silence. Everyone subconsciously held their breaths in fear, and the sound of a pin dropping could be heard in the spacious hall. Pada, pada. A few figures strode into the hall. Daniel was acquainted with one of them, Chase, who he had fought at the tea stand. Roar! A short young man among them staggered forward. I didn't think that Daniel could be so troublesome. He bullied our famous Commander Taylor. Commander Taylor frowned slightly and ignored the man's sarcasm. He lowered his voice and said, Do you know Daniel? The short man laughed. Daniel is the fiancé of one of my senior sisters. But don't worry, I can't wait for him to die. That's good. Commander Taylor was relieved. Today, a few senior disciples of Dwayne Devilmaster came to collect resources. The resources have been prepared for you. You can just take them and use them. That's how it should be. Chase stepped forward and cupped his fists, answering on behalf of his fellow disciples. The short youth, on the other hand, did not realize what was going on. 
He narrowed his eyes as he thought about Daniel's matter. Daniel, if the rigid pterygoid association can get rid of you, you will save me a lot of time. <laughs> Who do you think you have a bad relationship with? Why do you have to be senior sister Nala's fiancé? Some many people have a crush on senior sister Nala. Just wait for death. The sky started to brighten and the cold night wind disappeared without a trace. The sun gradually rose and the air became scorching hot. Every breeze carried a heat wave and smashed into the passers-by. Daniel tore down the tent he bought and packed his belongings. He looked at Lynn and Albert, who were ready to go. Let's go. The great river ruins are still a dozen miles away from here. There will be a market there. We'll have a good rest there. Albert's long-winded voice rang out. Black landed on the ground with his four claws and straightened his body. Lynn did not sit on him anymore. She bought an ostrich beast from the camp and sat on the ostrich's back with her legs crossed. Her face was covered with a white face cloth, which made her look like a desert traveler. After Daniel left the camp, he didn't say anything. He just walked in front with a straight face. Albert was not surprised. Daniel was originally like this. He was a cultivation maniac. But Lynn instinctively felt that something was wrong. It seemed that Daniel was holding something back. Two hours later, Daniel stepped on the sand. He turned around and shouted at the people behind him. Brothers, you have followed us so far. It is time to come out. Under the vibration of the gene energy, his voice spread far and wide until he reached a dune one mile away. A few people sneakily poked their heads out. We seem to have been discovered. Jake's expression turned cold. His concealment was indeed first rate, but Randy and his subordinates did not have any concealment abilities. How is that possible? Even though we are so far away, the other party could still discover us? Randy looked at the few black dots a mile away and was surprised. Only Jake, who was hiding outside Daniel's tent, knew how terrifying Daniel's perception was. Episode 218 The Desert Bandits When Albert heard Daniel shout, he was confused. He could see everything in the desert. Not even a rabbit could be seen, let alone a human. Who was Daniel shouting at? After a few breaths, Daniel's shout came true. In his field of vision, dozens of people appeared behind a dune. They rode on strange beasts and came out to surround Daniel and the others. Desert bandits, Albert exclaimed. The people in the desert were dying and bandits were everywhere. If they could take root in the great river city, which was full of powerful people, they must be a powerful group of bandits. Albert only has six gene chains. Usually, whenever he encountered a group of bandits, he would think of all sorts of ways to avoid them. When he thought about Daniel standing beside him, who was at the half-step bloodline, Albert forced himself to calm down. As long as he did not meet a gang of bandits with powerful bloodlines, it would be fine. However, Daniel's face had always been stern. Under his senses, Albert had guessed correctly. Among the dozens of people mixed, one of them had a powerful aura. It was a bloodline warrior. Daniel's one night of cultivation had been effective, but if he were to face a bloodline martial artist, he was still a bit... Eh. As the bandits gradually approached, Daniel grew suspicious. That bloodline warrior whose aura was stronger than the others did not follow the bandits. Under Daniel's dark demon touch, the enemy was still standing in the same place, motionless and waiting to approach Daniel. Pata, pata. The bandits were riding all sorts of strange beasts. Among them, there were fiery red horses, camels with two peaks, and also a large, colorful, ferocious tiger. The bandits formed a circle a hundred meters away from Daniel, firmly trapping him within. <laughs> These are those fat sheep? Kill the man, leave the woman behind. 
We can leave their corpses behind if we kill them. The bandits hadn't opened their business for a month. When they saw the well-dressed Albert and the beautiful figure sitting on the ostrich, all of them started clamoring, especially since they were all empty-handed. What did this mean? This meant they had a nanometer compressor on them. They had storage equipment. Randy looked at the noisy bandits, who looked like starving wolves with green eyes. He proudly rode his skinny horse forward. People's hearts were useful. Hey, that kid. His senses are quite sensitive. He can detect us from so far away. Daniel suddenly did not realize it. He narrowed one eye and looked behind the bandits. The bloodline expert was still motionless. He did not understand. The only thing he understood was that the bloodline expert was not with these bandits. Randy thought that Daniel was scared silly. The skinny horse walked forward crookedly. Randy looked at Lynn. There were not many women in the desert, and there were even fewer women without strength. After all, these women did not live a good life outside. Who would come back to the desert to suffer? Occasionally, they would meet one. It was either a crooked one or a weak female awakened practitioner. Lynn, on the other hand, was not weak and had an extremely good figure. It was impossible for her not to attract attention. Randy calculated that it had been a long time since he had tasted meat. These fat sheep were fat. Lynn slightly tightened the reins and hid behind Daniel. Although she trusted Daniel's strength, she could not help but feel nervous. Daniel retracted his gaze from afar and landed on Randy's face in front of him. He said coldly, You are an eyesore. I do not have time to kill you today. Get lost. Daniel's words did not scare away the bandits. Instead, it made them laugh out loud. Daniel had just finished cultivating the blood sacrifice spell in the morning. After spitting out the dirty blood, he did not have time to eat the meat of strange beasts to replenish his spirit and blood. His spirit and blood seemed weak, and he looked very weak. It immediately made people think of the young masters of rich families who had been emptied of wine and women. <laughs> Randy rode on his horse and laughed loudly. Which family are you from? Do you know that the strong people in the desert eat all? The winner is king. Today this young master will teach you well. Boom. Randy unleashed his aura, and even the dust and sand in his footsteps were pushed back by a layer of air. The surrounding bandits couldn't help but raise their hands to cover their eyes to avoid being blinded by the sandstorm. Crack. The bandits could only hear the crisp sound of bones breaking. They could not help but secretly be surprised. Boss Randy seemed to have gotten stronger. He could break and awaken practitioner's bones with one punch. They did not know which unlucky person was so unlucky. Hopefully it was not that woman. Otherwise it would be too late to take advantage of the heat. These bandits were still thinking of Boss Randy drinking the soup, but these underlings were also wanting a taste. As the wind and sand swept past, the bandits opened their eyes. They were shocked to see their invincible Boss Randy fall off of his skinny horse, and his head was held in the hands of that sickly young man. The skinny horse raised its hooves in shock and ran away, leaving only half of its body in the desert. The blood fountain was completely drained by the dry sand. Phew, phew. A gust of wind blew along with the dust and heat waves. The bandits felt a chill run down their spines. Boss Randy had just broken through to ten gene chains. Although it was a surprise attack, in a blink of an eye, his head was taken off. It was too horrifying. This sickly young man was an expert. Run! Someone shouted and the bandits scattered like birds and beasts, throwing away their armor and fleeing in all directions. Absolute domain. Daniel released his pressure, and a few low-level awakened practitioners who had fallen behind fainted on the spot. Daniel stomped heavily on the bandits who had fallen to the ground and chased after the strongest of them. No. Jake felt that he had been unlucky for eight lifetimes. There were so many criminals running around, but why did they have to target him? He had concealed his aura to the lowest level, 
but he was still glued to him. Hundred steps of godly steps! Jake's speed suddenly increased, and his entire body became blurry. He left behind an afterimage in the air and quickly flew into the distance. Fast is fast, but can you still be faster than lightning? With a crackling sound, Daniel transformed into a blue ball of lightning and quickly caught up to Jake, blocking in front of him. Big brother, spare my life. It's all because Boss Randy is blinded by money. Oof. Daniel kicked Jake's chest. Only when he saw that Jake had completely breathed his last breath did he quickly leave. Would Daniel believe his opponent's nonsense? Among the bandits, he could sense that Jake's aura was somewhat familiar. Thinking back carefully, wasn't he the one who was lying at the tent entrance and eavesdropping that night? If it wasn't for this person secretly informing them, Randy and the others wouldn't have come to die. This Jake was the one who deserved to die the most. Is it settled? Albert stretched his head and looked into the distance. Some of the bandits were running further and further away in the desert. Soon, they became small dots. Why didn't you kill them all? This doesn't seem like you. Albert held his gray beard and said, Episode 219 Swordsman Daniel shook his head and nodded again. Albert looked puzzled. Daniel thought for a while and still did not tell Albert about the secret bloodline expert. Not only could he not help, but he would also panic. It was meaningless. Yeah. Daniel heard Lynn scream. They turned around and saw Lynn squatting on the ground. A red dot landed on her delicate calf, and a sand scorpion was digging into the sand in a hurry. When Lynn was standing on the sand, she accidentally stepped on the sand scorpion that was hiding under the sand. In a panic, the sand scorpion raised its tail and stabbed Lynn. There were traces of blood on the wound, but Lynn frowned and endured the pain. Tears were rolling in her eyes as if they would fall at any time. Albert grabbed the sand scorpion, which was trying to move in the sand in vain, and examined it carefully. He smiled and said, Although it's not a beast, it is a sand scorpion close to awakening, and it has a lot of toxins in its body. It must be dealt with immediately. Albert looked at him and said, However, the toxin must be absorbed quickly with its mouth. Daniel, I think you are the most suitable for this. When Lynn heard this, her originally pale face turned red. She turned her face to the side which happened to expose her red ear to Daniel. Daniel laughed dryly, and his mind scolded the old man. He was already a person with a fiancé. Why was this old man always thinking about this? There's no need to go through so much trouble. Daniel gently grabbed Lynn's tender calf. He pointed at the wound with his finger, and gene energy flowed along the skin and flowed into it. Whoa. Lynn bit her lower lip and moaned softly. The sand scorpion's poison began to take effect, and Lynn's calf trembled slightly. It was supposed to be a very charming scene, but the old man was laughing strangely at the side, disrupting the ambiguous atmosphere. The venom mixed with the black blood clot squeezed out bit by bit from Lynn's calf. The paleness on Lynn's face also faded bit by bit until she had bright red cheeks. It's done. Daniel gently rubbed Lynn's calf. It was smooth and delicate to the touch, but Daniel was completely focused on massaging her gently. The nerves that were paralyzed by the poison were also recovering. Daniel smiled and stood up. Albert handed him a towel, and Daniel took it. At this moment, he suddenly felt a sharp aura on his head. The underworld demon's sense of touch instinctively spread out to search for the units around him. The bloodline martial artist had been hiding behind the dunes had unknowingly disappeared. Be careful. Daniel pushed Albert away with a hand. At the same time, he grabbed Lynn's waist and rolled out. Swoosh. A sword light descended from the sky. Lynn's strange beast ostrich did not even have the chance to let out a scream before it broke into pieces on the spot. Zing! 
A clear sword hummed and a cold light pierced through the sky. Daniel held Lynn tightly. After rolling a few times on the slope of the desert, he suddenly stood up and pointed his sword at the two of them from ten meters away. In front of him was a middle-aged man with an indifferent look. The middle-aged man had a focused look on his face, and his body was skinny. There was a rigid pterygoid association symbol hanging on his waist. He was completely unarmored. And there was only one sword in his hand. He thrust it straight at Daniel. The distance of ten meters was covered in a flash. The sword light arrived first, and then it sent out a sound wave. Ha! Roar of the nether! Daniel opened his mouth and spat out a wave of mental energy. At the same time, a spiritual thorn appeared between his eyebrows. The thorn was spiral, and it pierced the middle-aged man's eyes. The 952 spiritual force increased the damage to spiritual skills to an extremely terrifying level. The roar of the nether hit the middle-aged man first. His body only shook a little, but after the spiraling void spike attack entered his body, the middle-aged man's eyes widened and his pupils contracted. Gah! Lynn's tied-up hair just touched the tip of the sword. Her black hair was fluttering in the wind and fell on Daniel's face. Daniel stared at the assassin from the rigid pterygoid association. He hugged Lynn with both hands and took another ten steps back. The middle-aged man's body swayed. Then, like a shadow, he disappeared from Daniel's sight. Where is he? Daniel loosened his grip and was about to go forward to take a look. Only then did he realize that Lynn was also hugging him tightly. Her heart was beating nonstop. That's the vice president of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Albert rushed over from afar, panting heavily. It was an emergency. He had just been pushed by Daniel and felt that his internal organs had shifted. Fortunately, his degree of awakening was not low, and he recovered quickly. The vice president of the swordsmen of the Rigid Pterygoid Association, except for President Taylor, is the only bloodline expert. When he awakened his bloodline, he found a trick. Although his strength increased greatly, there are hidden dangers in his body. His explosive speed is high, but his endurance is very low. As Albert kept talking, Daniel cautiously pulled up his sense of distance. The surrounding miles were all within his range of perception. Unfortunately, the middle-aged man seemed to have disappeared into thin air. There was no trace of him within a few miles. His name is Aaron. Two years ago, he stabbed the master of the Four Seas Sanctuary with his sword. But then he was trapped by a group of eight or nine gene chains, an awakened practitioner, and he almost became a joke. He is a bloodline warrior who specializes in explosive attacks. He is good at assassination. Daniel found nothing after looking around. Hearing Albert's words, he could not help but feel enlightened. No wonder when the desert bandits came out, he had been hiding in the dark and refused to come out. It turned out that normally he could plan a sneak attack on Daniel. I never thought that the Rigid Pterygoid Association would pay such a huge price to get the red scale steel and sound fuming incense from you. Albert sighed and said, They even bid for Aaron. I'm afraid that our trip will be... It was easy to dodge an open spear but difficult to guard against an arrow in the dark. They stood in the open and wanted to rest. The strength of the three people were different. Aaron could rest at any time. He could launch a sneak attack at any time. He wanted to hide. He did not even know where he was hiding. If it was a surprise attack, Albert knew he would not have a chance to survive. Are we going back to the Oasis camp? Daniel frowned. Albert shook his head. It's useless. There are many people in the Oasis camp. But it's easier for Aaron to hide in the Oasis camp. It's better to stay in the desert. Daniel sighed. Then there's no other way. Let's continue our journey. Daniel tilted his head slightly and looked at Lynn, who was still in his arms. How is your leg? Can you still walk? 
Lynn nodded her head firmly and let go of Daniel's body. The once all-powerful female businessman had now become a woman who relied on Daniel to survive. Yeah. Her right leg was still a little shaky. Although the poison was forced out, there was a sudden piercing pain that made her unable to travel steadily. Black? Daniel called out. In the sand pit, a black thing poked its head out. A bear crawled out from inside. Lynn, sit with Black. Let's keep going. Episode 220 One Sword Demon Seal That night, the moon hung high. The three beast-skinned tents stood silently in the desolate desert. The howling cold wind was spiraling around the tents. Daniel had prepared a nanometer compressor for Albert and Lynn. The nanometer compressor was filled with food, water, and daily necessities from the camp. And this tent had all of them. Daniel added an iron pot on top of the bonfire. The water in the pot began to boil. Daniel poured hot water into the pot and said to the other two, You guys go to sleep. I will just keep watch. Albert grinned and nodded. He went into the tent. He saw that it did not matter whether he slept or not. If Aaron aimed at him and wanted to attack him, he would not be able to dodge at all, so he might as well go to sleep. Lynn looked at Daniel with sadness. Daniel was not as old as her, but Daniel's life was very tough. He cultivated secret techniques, practiced gene chains, and hurried on his way. Ever since she fell into Daniel's hands, these were the three things Daniel had done the most. To chase after his fiancée, Daniel must have gone through a hard time. Lynn could not help but think with pity. Lynn was envious of Daniel's fiancée, whom she had never met before. Such an outstanding man worked hard every day to chase after her. Even when faced with many difficulties and obstacles, Daniel was not afraid at all. Moreover, Daniel had almost all the qualities of an outstanding man. He was powerful and talented, cared for women, and fought for justice. How blissful must that woman be? While Lynn was lost in her thoughts, Daniel gently patted her shoulder. You should also go to sleep. I will be fine here. Lynn's body tightened. Under the bright red light, it was not obvious that her face was red. I will accompany you. I'm not sleepy yet. Daniel smiled and shook his head. It was up to her. He took out the rare beast meat from the Walker family's auction storage and swallowed it in big gulps. After replenishing his spirit and blood, Daniel sat cross-legged and immediately started circulating the blood sacrifice technique. Ugh. After spitting out a mouthful of rotting blood, the gene chain rose by another percentage. The visible rate of growth was unbelievable. If it wasn't so troublesome for the way he replenished his blood essence, Daniel would have hidden in a place where others couldn't find him and cultivated slowly. He spat out the third mouthful of blood, and the spirit in his body dropped to an extremely low level. Lynn had curled up and fallen asleep. Daniel stood up and wanted to put the coat on her. Daniel's blood was low, and he was unable to get used to it. He could not stand stably and almost fell. Clang! After the bonfire, a familiar sword hum sounded. I was waiting for you. Daniel knew that as long as he suppressed his blood to a low enough level, the other party would think that he was cultivating and spitting out blood. He would seize this opportunity. Bang! Bang! The bonfire exploded and the burning torches scattered in all directions. In the darkness, a sword shadow flashed past under the light of the fire. Aaron was here. Absolute domain. The bronze sword did not slow down under the pressure. Aaron, who was good at explosive attacks, would not be afraid of a normal gene's skill. Divine flame fist, rip. Daniel's hands were blazing with flames as he grabbed at Aaron's blade. Divine martial blade. Ding! Ding! With the sound of metal clashing, sparks flew in all directions. Boo! See? Aaron's blade stabbed into Daniel's chest. The middle-aged man's lips curled into a smile. 
Daniel! Lynn was woken up by the sound. She jumped up with a scream. She happened to see a sword in Daniel's chest. The middle-aged man pulled the sword's blade and a powerful gene energy rushed into Daniel's body. At the same time, he slashed at Daniel's heart. Voila! Daniel's body was like a pool of liquid that splashed out, and Aaron's sharp sword missed. The smile on the middle-aged man's face froze. Daniel's body was like liquid, and there was a layer of red blood flame on his body. The wound quickly healed. A special gene chain? Aaron's eyes lit up. I'll let you see what it means to awaken a bloodline. Sword light demon seal. Aaron's body suddenly faded. When Daniel looked over, Aaron had already turned into a shadow. At the same time, a sharp pain appeared on his shoulder. Aaron, who was behind Daniel, held his sword with one hand. The sharp sword light broke through Daniel's gene energy defense. At the same time, a black current spread out from the bronze sword and entered Daniel's body through the wound. This is bad. Strange energy spread throughout his body like warm water. It was different from the pain or torture Daniel had expected. The moment this strange energy entered Daniel's body, it fused into his gene energy. There was no rejection at all. The gene energy that should have clashed with him did not appear either. Be careful. That demon sealing seal will seal your gene chain talents. The master of the Four Seas Sanctuary was injured by this move a while ago. Albert hid behind the tent and shouted at Daniel. Crack, crack, crack. Just as Daniel was confused, a cold air suddenly came out of his body. Even his nose and mouth were covered with ice drags. At the same time, his limbs were sore and weak. The level of gene energy and blood energy in his body were visible. This was not a false drop in blood energy like cultivating the blood sacrifice technique. The drop in blood energy caused by the blood sacrifice technique could be recovered very quickly as long as it was replenished with nutrients. However, the one sword demon seal had frozen a gene chain in his body. Not only had the gene chain lost its effect, but his stamina, strength, and mental attributes had also dropped. <laughs> Aaron's figure disappeared amidst the strange laughter. His body sank into the dark shadow and disappeared without a trace. Albert did not want to expose his position in front of Aaron, but he couldn't bear to see a young man with a bright future die in the hands of the executioner of the Rigid Terragood Association. He gritted his teeth and shouted, Aaron's one sword demon seal. It only has a few minutes of effect. You have to be careful. After saying that, Albert's head shrunk. He touched a patch of shrubbery and prayed secretly. Don't come and kill me. Ah. Swoosh. Swoosh. The mist carried ice crystals, and even the temperature in front of him dropped by several degrees. Daniel's expression was solemn. The effect of the sword seal was too horrifying. In these few minutes, the gene chain that he lost seemed to have disappeared into thin air. The price of using this technique must be huge, and it was impossible to use it multiple times. Otherwise, why would Aaron need to work for others and be a vice president for someone who did not live up to his name? The awakened practitioner, who had continuously sealed President Taylor into a gene chain with a single sword, could not kill him and become the vice president. Daniel looked around cautiously, testing the skills in his body bit by bit. Finally, he concluded with a smile that wasn't a smile. His blood flame wave gene had been sealed. Episode 221, Void Shadow. Blood flame wave. Was the gene chain very important? Daniel rarely used this gene chain skill. The other party mistakenly thought he would rely on this to save his life. Aaron had sealed the gene chain incorrectly. Daniel's most important gene chain was the very inconspicuous Chimera gene chain. This gene chain was not complete yet and only had an ordinary power, absolute domain. But the Chimera gene chain was formed from three high-grade gene chains and was the most important source of Daniel's three-dimensional abilities. Blade Cleave! Aaron suddenly appeared behind Daniel's head. 
Three sharp blades slashed down from above Daniel's head. Daniel smiled again. He knew Aaron's way of doing things. The middle-aged swordsman's mind was rigid. He seemed to prefer to sneak attack from behind. Three sharp lights intertwined in a triangle, firmly locking Daniel's escape route. The only safe center was indeed Aaron's sword that came from the side. There was no way to avoid it. There was no chance of survival. Die! Aaron seemed to see the hope of victory. The sword pierced through the air and shot into Daniel's eyes like a green ray of light. Lynn and Albert each hid in a safe place. They covered their mouths and stared at the intense battle situation within the sparks of fire. Unfortunately, the fire was pierced by the sword, and the torch became darker and darker in the cold wind. Yeah! Daniel was about to be stabbed by the sword. Lynn was so scared that she closed her eyes. She did not hear Daniel scream, but heard the sound of thunder and lightning. Sweat oozed out of Aaron's forehead, and electric sparks exploded in front of his eyes. His sword stabbed into the plasma, and Daniel, who was in front of him, split into a group of elements, leaving only one. Not only did Daniel have a gene chain that could liquefy flesh, but he also had an elemental transformation gene chain. I caught you. Daniel's elemental transformation hand tightly gripped the sword's blade, bringing with it the power of the gene energy as it surged into the other party's body. Spiral Space Piercer an invisible spiritual thorn stabbed into the other party's body. The space in front of him was like a stone thrown into a lake. It was an extremely transparent wave. Aaron threw a fierce look at Daniel. Next time, I will kill you. Next time. After saying that, Aaron's body turned from a body of flesh and blood to shriveled up like a thin piece of paper. Then it became darker and more transparent disappearing under the three pairs of eyes. Huh? Daniel spat out the last mouthful of ice dregs. His strength, stamina, and spirit immediately recovered. The sealed blood flame wave gene chain had returned. This is great. Albert crawled out from the bushes and ignored the dirt on his hand. He patted Daniel's shoulder and said, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect you to be able to break Aaron's invisible shadow twice in a row. Under the curious gazes of a few people, Albert smiled and explained. Void Shadow is one of Aaron's gene chain talents. Its special feature is that after being seriously injured, the body will turn into nothing. The skill can only be used three times in a short period. His life-saving technique is left with only one last move. His opponent will be extremely careful. How many times can he use that sword demon seal? Daniel asked with a frown. Albert shook his head. I don't know about that either. One sword demon seal is a skill he learned after his bloodline awakened. Only he knows how to use it and when to use it. He can't teach it to others, nor can he use words to describe it. It's like an instinct. An ability that belongs solely to him. Daniel couldn't help but think of his gene panel and chuckled. This could only be considered a coincidence. The dawn was bright and a bright red sun climbed out from the east. A new day had begun. The entire distance from the ruins of the Great River to the ruins of Great River City Aaron had never appeared again, but Daniel never dared to let his guard down. After all, he was a bloodline expert. He wasn't going to let Aaron win this battle. If it wasn't for Daniel's deep foundation and the other party being so cautious, it was really hard to say who would win or lose in a fight between them. Every once in a while, Daniel would use the dark demon touch to check his surroundings. Most of the time, he would not see anyone within a few miles. Occasionally, he would sense Aaron quietly hiding somewhere, and after a while, he would quickly leave. Ten miles away, when the sun was about to set, Daniel, Albert, Lynn, and a bear arrived at their destination. Albert pointed at the triangle on the map and said, In front of us is the small market built around the ruins of the Great River. 
It is a very small market, and you might not even be able to buy water. Moreover, the conflict is intense, and it's not a good place to stay. Albert said as he gulped down water. As he went deeper into the desert, the soil under his feet became worse and worse. At first, he could see some sand thorns and other plants that were resistant to drought. But when he arrived in this area, it was already a complete desert. The people of Great River City attributed the desertification of this place to the unknown existence who drank up the entire Great River in one gulp. Daniel did not think so. We're here. After climbing over a dune, Albert pointed to the front and said, We are here. It is a small market. Look. Following Albert's finger, Daniel saw a majestic city. The city was built with neatly arranged huge rocks. People were coming and going at the entrance of the city. Countless powerful auras were entrenched in the city. Lynn covered her mouth and said with a smile, When I was in charge of the Walker family's auction, I heard that a city was built here. However, the journey was long and it was not safe, so I have never come here before. Huh. Albert's face darkened. The last time he came here was ten years ago. It was obvious that his news was outdated, but Lynn knew that he had said something was wrong and did not laugh at his joke. The city was even grander and more magnificent than Great River City. It was just that it was too deep into the center of the desert. Otherwise, the so-called commercial city would not have been so. How could the Great River City have anything to do with it? In front of the City of the Ruins gate, two rows of guards were not smiling. They stood quietly in the heat wave like statues of sand figurines. Daniel, Albert, Lynn, and the bear blended into the crowd and followed them. Just as they were about to enter the City of the Ruins, they heard a cold snort from one of the guards. Two rows of guards were wearing rose gold leather armor suddenly looked towards an open space outside the city and shouted at the same time. Who is it? A figure shook in the empty sand, and a middle-aged man appeared. Daniel's dark devil sense immediately sensed who that person was. It was Aaron who tried to assassinate him twice but failed. He had been following Daniel, but he had not been discovered by him yet. Everyone in the Rigid Terragoid Association has the right to kill Aaron. Kill him! The guards unleashed five to seven gene chain auras and rushed towards Aaron. Swoosh, swoosh. Two sword radiances slashed out. Although the guards were strong, they were unable to block Aaron's attack. Several guards fell to the ground. Aaron let out a cold snort. Just as he was about to escape, a black light shot down from the city wall. Aaron clutched his chest, his face filled with disbelief. A loud shout was heard above everyone's heads. Aaron of the Rigid Terragoid Association, die. Episode 222, Auction House Announcement A Blood Warrior City Guard. Daniel pursed his lips and quietly stood in the crowd, observing the situation. His judgment of the City of Ruin's strength quickly became three-dimensional. The city guard of the ancient ruin was the sworn enemy of the Rigid Terragoid Association, but no one could say for sure whether there was a partner of the Rigid Terragoid Association in the City of Ruins or not. His strength was not at the level of a bloodline warrior. How could he dare to seek death? Aaron's chest was pierced through, and his heart was in the middle. With a shocked expression, his body turned into a shadow formed by black lines. At first glance, it looked like a black sketch, an empty shadow. The captain of the city guards, who was dressed in rose gold color, jumped down from the city wall. He ran to the place where Aaron had disappeared and looked around. He couldn't find anything so he could only spit angrily and walk back with a spear in his hand. What are you looking at? Just obediently go back to the city. The matter was resolved and the guard shouted at the crowd. Russell. Aaron flew out for over a hundred miles and appeared in an open space. 
the last time the Illusorious Shadow was shattered. Not only did it not give him any life-saving skills, but it also caused him to suffer from serious injuries. Every time he used the gene energy, the source of his injuries would be damaged. Ah! Aaron's eyes were red. He gently opened his hand, which was covering his chest. A deep hole appeared in front of him. Through the hole, he could still see a shattered heart. All the blood in his body was being transported through the gene energy. After the city guard captain's spear broke through the void shadow, the remaining gene energy began to wreak havoc within his body. He had lost the ability to turn into nothing. He, a dignified bloodline martial artist, was not even comparable to a high-level gene chain awakened practitioner. Hateful. Aaron punched the sand. If he could sneak into the city ruins safely, he would have countless opportunities to assassinate Daniel in the chaotic situation inside the city. Does the Heaven's Will want to go against us, the Rigid Pterygoid Association? Hmm. Aaron leaned his body against a large rock. This small movement caused a sharp pain in his chest, and his lips turned pale. Aaron silently thought about how he should explain this to the guild leader when he returned to the West Valley City. The president was still in seclusion. Perhaps there was still a chance for him to make up for it. For example, spending a large sum of money to assassinate Daniel. It was just that price of a bloodline warrior's assassination was not something he could afford. He had to deduct it from the Walker family's auction warehouse income. Aaron closed his eyes and fell into deep thought. Suddenly, he felt a shadow in front of him. You're really lucky you're not dead yet. Daniel held the Crimson Dragon Calamity in his hand and walked forward with a smile on his face. He looked down at the severely injured Aaron. You, Daniel. Aaron was shocked. In his panic, the stable gene energy in his body went out of control. Blood spurted out from the damaged part of his heart. Blade cleave. Aaron pulled out the blade and slashed at Daniel. Daniel was faster and stronger than him. Crimson Dragon Calamity Extermination. The red spike spun and stabbed Aaron. The gene energy tore through the layers of protection on the surface of the body. The muscles, internal organs, and blood mixed under the stirring of the Crimson Dragon Calamity Annihilation. It penetrated through Aaron's spine and nailed him firmly to the rock behind him. Ding! Dang! The bronze blade fell powerlessly. Aaron's upper body leaned back softly, his eyes weak. <laughs> Daniel, you are very strong, but our guild leader will avenge me. Aaron opened his mouth slightly and spoke in a low and hoarse voice. Daniel did not care about that. He held the blood-red Crimson Dragon Calamity with one hand. Aaron's blood flowed down on the Crimson Dragon Calamity. The color was similar, as if it had merged with the Crimson Dragon Calamity. Die! He exerted force with his hand. The surging gene energy fell into Aaron's body. Lightning exploded and Aaron, who had completely lost his defensive ability, could only silently bear it. The smell of roasted meat drifted in front of Daniel. The dignified president of the Rigid Pterygoid Association had fallen just like that. His corpse was half-cooked and no one knew which one of them would benefit in the future. Daniel pulled out the Crimson Dragon Calamity, turned around and left. Punk, apart from a long sword of a decent grade, there's nothing else on him. When they entered the city, Daniel saw Albert and Lynn waiting anxiously at the entrance of the city. Done. Albert raised his eyebrows. Daniel nodded. Aaron's three illusory shadows were all destroyed, and he was seriously injured. If I can't even kill Aaron, I might as well tie him up and send him to the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Albert smiled and said, You are bold and careful. Daniel, I am liking you more and more. Although Aaron is an injured bloodline warrior, after all, he is still a bloodline warrior. Do you dare to chase after him alone? Aren't you afraid that he will use his trump card? A fierce light flashed in Daniel's eyes. Even his shadow is gone. What kind of bloodline warrior is an incomplete bloodline warrior? The captain of the city guards was right. 
Everyone in the Rigid Pterygoid Association has the right to punish those who rebelled. Albert sighed and did not make a sound. If one were to compare which major power in the Great River City was the most hated, then the new army of the Rigid Pterygoid Association had risen to prominence. To break the scheme of those with vested interests, they had done countless things that would anger the heavens. The matter of the Walker family's auction was just a microcosm. Albert was in a daze, not knowing what he was thinking. Lynn, on the other hand, was smiling sweetly like a spring breeze. Ever since Lynn was abducted out of the Walker family's auction by Daniel, she had been in a state of silence and depression. However, at this moment, she seemed to have regained her confidence. She was no longer a hostage that was snatched away by Daniel, but a young lady who had been in charge of the Walker family's auction for several years. A true person with great authority. What's wrong? What's the good news? Daniel looked at Lynn and smiled. Lynn's face was covered by a veil, and under the white veil, one could almost see her lips. Her eyes narrowed into a line. Daniel, I just remembered that there is a branch of the Walker family's auction in the City of the Ruins. The general manager of the branch is my Uncle Fred. Back then, Uncle Fred brought a portion of the Walker family's auction's funds to travel to the City of Ruins alone. I never thought that the Walker family's auction in the City of Ruins would do such a good job. Daniel followed Lynn's finger and looked up. The auction house of the Walker Family Branch Association has opened. The City of Ruins is about to open. What are you waiting for? Quickly come to the Walker Family Branch Association auction house and pick out the treasures that you like. With a treasure in hand, I have the world. It's all in the auction house of the Walker Family Branch Association. The huge billboard, which was about 10 meters tall, stood high in the middle of the City of the Ruins. Even at the entrance of the city where Daniel was standing, huge white characters could be seen on the billboard. The background color paper was a dazzling collection of goods, and the smiling middle-aged man was standing in the middle of the goods. The middle-aged man was holding a watermelon-sized red jade in his hand, and there was a gentle smile on his face that was commonly seen by the middle-aged man. Episode 222 Arriving at the branch. That's Uncle Fred. Lynn narrowed her eyes and reminisced about the good times of the old days. When she was young, she was very ugly. Her brother often bullied her for fun. Her father also treated her with indifference. It was because of this treatment that when she found out that the Walker's family auction had fallen into the hands of the Rigid Pterygoid Association, she felt sad and regretful. She didn't have many emotions. Only Uncle Fred would see her with a gentle smile, just like on the billboard. After so many years, Uncle Fred's smile still hadn't changed. Lynn's heart was warm, and her eyes could not help but become moist. <sighs> Daniel sighed. What is it? Are we going to find him? All right. Daniel had always felt that it was inconvenient to bring a woman with him who could drag him down at any time, especially when he was facing a strong enemy. He was not willing to leave everyone behind. Since this burden had found its rightful owner, that was good too. However, when it was time to part, Daniel could not help but feel a little sentimental. Lynn was generous and considerate, and she had a great figure, except that her strength was a little weak. When he thought about facing Aaron, Daniel hugged Lynn's waist and rolled down the dune. Their bodies were tightly pressed together. Daniel looked at his hands and could not help but feel empty in his heart. Albert laughed. Kid, there is no such thing as a banquet that does not disperse. Isn't it still the same? Why don't we go to the Wonka Family Branch Association and be guests? Right. Daniel, Albert, he happily welcomed his family as a guest. If it weren't for you all along the way, I'm afraid I would have met Miss Fortune a long time ago. This time, I'll do my best to be a good host. Lynn laughed and crossed her hands in front of her legs. The smile on her face was gentle and warm, like a young lady from a noble family. However, there was a trace of reluctance in her eyes as she occasionally glanced at Daniel, but she hid it very well. 
Albert had a panoramic view of everything. The silent Daniel and the generous Lynn. The silence and movement of the two formed a sharp contrast, but their state of mind was the same. Albert secretly shook his head. There was no distinction between fate and destiny. In his opinion, this pair was a good match. One was proud and talented, while the other was a girl from a big family and a business genius. The two of them were a perfect match. One was from the inside, while the other was from the outside. A woman earned money to support her family. A man cultivated and guarded his home. This was the combination of yin and yang that everyone worshipped. It was a perfect match. It was a pity that Daniel had a fiancé, and this fiancé was separated from him. Furthermore, Daniel was a stubborn person. A good relationship was ruined just like that. What a pity. Everyone in the City of Ruins knew about the Walker Family Branch Association's auction. The three of them found a child who was bouncing around and brought them to the magnificent Walker Family Branch Association. Under the guidance of the passers-by, Daniel and the other two arrived at the Walker Family Branch Association. The magnificence of the branch was breathtaking. The branch was even grander than the main guild. Two four-meter-tall stone lions were lying on the left and right sides of the hall. The characters on the white marble stone pendants were two meters in size. The golden foil and silver paint brushed against the wall, preventing the air from leaking. A single glance at them was enough to make one's eyes shine. Two rows of flags fluttered in the wind. The flags were painted with the symbols of various families and forces. These were the investors of the Walker Family Branch Association. They would get a share of every single cent of the Walker Family Branch Association's wealth. Daniel casually threw a beast cord to the kid who was leading the way. The kid cracked his teeth and ran away with a smile. Lynn took a deep breath. It had been many years since she last saw her Uncle Fred. To be more precise, when she was in charge of the Walker family's auction, her business became more and more important. Uncle Fred could bring funds to the foreign land, and the other party could easily develop a prosperous business with the funds from Walker family. Daniel looked at Lynn. What's wrong? Are you a little nervous? Lynn's shoulder twitched slightly. A little excited, and also a little reluctant? When Lynn said the last two words, even though she had already returned to being a lady of a noble family, her cheeks could not help but turn red. It's fine. It's still early. Albert took out a cigarette and started to smoke. We still have a long time to stay in this city of ruins. Why do you two seem to be separated by life and death? <laughs> Daniel and Lynn both turned their heads away. This old man. A woman wearing a red armband walked over with a smile on her face. The Walker Family Auction does not allow smoking. Please move out of the Walker Family Auction House. Albert subconsciously looked at Lynn. He thought that as a guest, he was too arrogant and overbearing, so he put the cigarette bag. Lynn's face turned cold. He's my guest. How can you speak like that? The etiquette lady's expression changed. Stunned, she looked at Lynn and did not understand what was going on, but she forced a smile. Miss, even if it is your guest, he cannot smoke at the auction. The rules of the auction do not allow any smoking. If there are any questions, you. Although Lynn had been bullied along the way, she still kept her word in the Walker family's auction. I am the young mistress of the Walker family, Lynn. In the Great River City, when the young girls saw Lynn, they subconsciously avoided her because Lynn was not easy to serve. She was a manager with a strong desire to control. Lynn. The ceremonial lady was stunned. She had worked in the Walker Family Branch Association for two years and had never heard of Lynn's name, but she knew the owner of the Walker Family's auction was a major shareholder. What's going on? The commotion on their side attracted the attention of several security guards. The lobby manager was also escorted by an awakened practitioner. The lobby manager was a middle-aged man with a mustache. His business standard was average, but he was loyal. 
His eyes swept across the three of them and one bear, and finally his gaze landed on Lynn's face. Big, big miss. It's Uncle Chris. When Lynn saw the lobby manager coming over, the last stone in her heart finally settled down. She was afraid that Uncle Fred and the others would die during the arduous opening of the branch. Then, the situation in the Walker family's auction would be somewhat difficult to control. The lobby manager's face was somewhat stiff at first, but soon it bloomed with endless smiles, as if he was going to squeeze out all the joy in his heart for the past few years. Miss Lynn, why did you come back? Lynn answered his question and quickly asked, Where is Uncle Fred? Is he in the branch now? Oh, oh, right. The lobby manager slapped his head. I'm going to look for old Fred. The lobby manager ran out in a panic. As he ran, he turned around and pointed at the guards. Go and find old Fred from the logistics department and ask him to come and receive eldest miss and a few distinguished guests. Episode 224 Devil Child Nala A red carpet, three cups of tea, and cool air coming from the reception room were cooling off the three people in a bear, especially the bear Black, who was covered in fur and had difficulty cooling down. He endured the heat all along the way and laid down under the central air conditioner. He started to doze off. Lynn held the fragrant tea to her nose and sipped it slowly. She changed into a bright red dress and paced back and forth in the wide space. Her crystal clear eyes were savoring the oil painting of a certain master. She adapted very quickly to her identity as a young lady. After a few orders, the servants began to busy around and brought tea, dessert, and comfortable new clothes. This painting is not bad. When the time comes, move it to my bedroom. Lynn pointed at the painting in front of her. Her eyes were filled with joy, comparable to Daniel's happiness when he saw the blood sacrifice technique. Yes. The servants bowed and nodded, but there was a look of helplessness on their faces. This young lady did not seem to be easy to serve. Pack, pack, pack. A man pushed open the door and entered the room. A man wearing the uniform of the Walker family's auction strode into the room. His expression was half surprised and half strange. When he saw Lynn in the room, the smile on his face immediately bloomed and the strange expression disappeared. Eldest Miss, it's you. Chris's voice trembled slightly, and his eyes were filled with tears. A few days ago, when he heard about the death of the Walker family's auction in the Great River City, he thought that he would never see this young lady again. He never thought that this young lady would be standing right in front of him. Lynn put down her teacup and stretched out both of her hands in a graceful manner. Chris held Lynn's hand and could not help but squeeze it a few more times to make sure that she was perfectly fine. Tears could not help but flow out of his eyes. He had watched Lynn grow up. Back then, when eldest Miss lost her mother... Her father and brother did not care about her and allowed her to play around in the Walker family's auction. The elders of the Walker family's auction watched Lynn slowly grow up from a cute little girl. Now, she was also a tall and graceful lady. When Chris left, Lynn had just become the general manager of the Walker family's auction. She was still a little immature. Now, there was no trace of the little girl anymore. This young lady had grown up. Chris heaved a long sigh and wiped away the tears in his eyes. Only then did he realize that it was not appropriate to hold the young lady's hand all the time. He let go of her hand and said with a frown, Young lady, what happened to the Walker family's auction in the Great River City? And how did you travel a hundred miles from the Great River City to the City of the Ruins? Lynn forced a bitter smile on her face. It's a long story. Speak slowly, speak slowly, there is no hurry. Daniel looked at them happily and helplessly curled his lips. Lynn seemed to have lost all her family, but at least some people cared about her. He was truly alone, and as soon as he transmigrated into this world, he lost both of his parents. Perhaps Nala, who was far away in Texas, would care about him. What, regrets? Albert winked at him. His left hand was holding the tea while his right hand was holding the cigarette. 
He looked like a free and unfettered deity. Daniel rolled his eyes at him. What am I regretting? Daniel turned his head and saw Lynn crying and laughing in the crowd. Daniel sighed. He missed Nala even more. Thousands of miles away in the noble palace in Texas. Nala stood quietly in front of the palace. Dwayne Devilmaster had brought a group of brothers and sisters to wreak havoc in Texas. This female disciple, who would return with Dwayne Devilmaster, had also received a lot of attention. Nala was indeed worthy of this attention. In just a few months, she had jumped from a small shrimp with three gene chains to a new advanced bloodline warrior. She had made consecutive breakthroughs without any hindrance. Even the insufferable, arrogant Dwayne Devilmaster was amazed and impressed by her. She was the successor that Dwayne Devilmaster had reserved. In the noble palace, she was below one person and above all. However, such a girl with a bright future lifted her neck and gazed into the distant west. She was lost in her thoughts, and her pair of misty pink eyes made her heart ache. Devil child, please take good care of your body. A tall man knelt on one knee and said to Nala, You have just awakened your bloodline and your body has suffered a loss. You need to pay more attention to your recovery. A single hair on Nala's head was more important than an awakened practitioner from the noble palace. These people's hearts were as clear as a mirror. If something happened to Nala and Dwayne Devilmaster, none of them would be able to bear it. Ever since Nala awakened her bloodline, she had been looking toward the west every day. She was very worried, which made these servants very worried. Answer me, Nala's cold voice echoed in the palace. My request for the teacher. Has the teacher replied? Lord Magister said that when your cultivation reaches his level, no matter what request you make, Lord Magister will agree. The tall man replied in a low voice, Okay. Nala closed her bright eyes and smiled. I will reach that day as soon as possible. I heard that the teacher's in-name disciples are scattered across the western regions. Help me pass down the message and help me take care of Daniel's people. I will reward you handsomely. Those who harm Daniel will die. Nala's cold command sounded out from the noble palace, causing everyone to tremble. This devil child was angry. Ah! Daniel couldn't help but yawn. Though the comfortable scene was interesting, it was boring for him to sit in the reception room for so long. Daniel smiled bitterly and stood up. Lynn was talking about interesting things from many years ago with Chris in the guest room. Chris also talked about some bitter things that happened in the Walker Family Branch Association. It was not easy for them to walk all the way here. Seeing Daniel's listless look, Lynn, who had followed him all the way here, understood what he meant. He was addicted to cultivation. Uncle Chris, is there a secret room or a quiet room? This is my friend. Arrange a place for him to cultivate. Chris raised his head and saw Daniel's talent. Even though he did not have any hostility, his body was surrounded by an aura of suppression. It made people feel that he was unusual and extraordinary. He must be a good seedling for cultivation. A boyfriend? Not bad, not bad. Lynn's face stiffened and she corrected him gently. Just an ordinary male friend. Chris waved his hand. I understand, I understand. Daniel left the room under the guidance of the staff. Albert also stood up with a smile. Little girl, I'm tired of sitting too. I'm going out for a walk. Lynn respectfully bowed and sighed. Albert... I was busy catching up with old times and forgot about you. Forgive me. It's fine. It's fine. Seeing that you have found your home, I am happy for you. Albert waved his hand and left the reception room. The room immediately became quiet. Episode 225 People Will Change Daniel and Albert left one after another. Chris suddenly stopped what he was about to say. His mouth was tightly shut, 
and his face turned ashen. All of you can leave now. No one is allowed to enter without my orders. Chris turned his head and ordered. The servants nodded in agreement and walked out in a line. Only two of them were left in the spacious meeting room. The cold air from the central air conditioner whistled down and Lynn felt a little cold. She tightened the red coat that she had just put on. Uncle Chris, what's wrong? Lynn looked at Chris in surprise. Chris closed the door and looked helplessly at the eldest daughter of the Walker family's auction. Little girl, you came at the wrong time. Uh, Lynn frowned slightly. The imposing manner of a strong woman emerged on her face. Is there something wrong with the auction? Chris shook his head. Little girl, if it was your father and brother who came with the people of the Walker family, there might not be anything wrong, but you came here alone. He let out a long sigh. Ah, little girl, people change. A bad idea flashed through Lynn's mind, but she quickly chased it away. Impossible. When I was young, Uncle Fred and Uncle Don were so good to me. They wouldn't do anything that would harm the heavens. Chris looked coldly at Lynn. Girl, listen to my advice. Hurry up and leave. If you don't leave now, it will be too late. Lynn suddenly stood up. Her pretty face was expressionless and pale. Uncle, I don't believe it. I don't believe they will do this. The lobby of the reception room was suddenly opened. The gentle middle-aged man on the billboard, the Uncle Fred that Lynn spoke of, the founder of the Walker family's auction, City of the Ruins branch, Fred had come. This Uncle Fred, who Lynn was worried about, clapped his hands and walked into the guest room with a smile on his face. Through the door of the reception room, one could see the guards in suits, jackets, and black sunglasses lining up neatly on both sides of the road. Girl, you're right. Fred was over 50 years old, and her bright eyes revealed a wise and rational gaze. Under his right sleeve, she could inadvertently see a gold watch. If you could have come a few years earlier, I would have been very touched. Uncle Fred, you... Lynn looked at Fred. He still had a gray-white buzz cut and was wearing a work suit. It seemed that his physical appearance did not change at all compared to back then, but he also seemed to have completely changed. Lynn carefully sized him up, and sure enough, he had changed. His dressing was more exquisite than before. The expensive suit was more expensive, and the watch on his wrist was bigger and heavier than before. Fred smiled at Chris. Old Chris, you still care about old times. This is also what I admire the most, but there are also some things that you can't do. Chris pursed his lips and quietly retreated from the room. Fred said to Lynn, Girl, you came to my Walker family's auction as a guest today. I, as the master, must treat you well. She heard Fred emphasizing the two words guest and master. After a while, Lynn's face became paler and paler. Why? Lynn's pretty face was already snow white to begin with. Under the circumstances, where there was no blood at all, her lips lost their color. Why? Fred laughed. Do you know how difficult it was for us to come to the City of Ruins? Family, gangs, fallout shelters, bandits. Everyone wants to bite onto our heads. I, Fred, led a group of brothers and have them rise and fall in the City of Ruins. I'm not working for the Walker family for free. Fred lit a non-standard cigar and put it in his mouth. We brothers are risking our lives for our future in the city of the ruins. More than half of us have died. We cannot let you send one person to take everything. Besides, in these years, our branch has sent 20 times more funds to the main association than the initial funds. Our branch doesn't owe you anything in the Walker family. Lynn took a few steps back and staggered as she sat on the sofa. The shares have been approved by the command post. You are trying to seize the Walker family's property. Ha! <laughs> Fred coldly snorted and waved her hand back. Bring it up. A female assistant who lightly twisted her waist handed over a thick stack of documents. 
Brett ignored the female assistant's coquettish eyes and took out the last page from the documents and placed it in front of Lynn. Lynn looked over and saw that the legal representative on this page was actually Fred and not their Walker family. You. Lynn closed her eyes painfully. She did not remember the loss of her family property. The entire Great River City would fall into the hands of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. Lynn felt lonely and lost her mind for a while. What she truly felt pained about was that, in her memory, Uncle Fred, who treated her warmly and protected her, had left her. In this world, no one truly cared about her. Fred retracted the paper in her hand and coldly looked at Lynn. Back then, the Great River City's main association was slowly growing in my hands. I never thought that old man Walker would send me to this distant city of the ruins with just a sentence. The main association also fell into your hands. Ha! <laughs> In terms of pain, who can compare to me? Fred snuffed the cigar in his hand. Someone come out and take Miss Lynn out. I heard that the Rigid Terragoat Association is offering a reward for her head. Today, I, Fred, should be able to make a fortune. Fred! Chris, who was waiting outside the door, did not go far. When he heard Fred's words, he could not help but frown and shout. We used to be family. There's no need to be so ruthless. Fred turned around and stared at Chris with an intent to kill. Taking away someone's family property is the same as killing your father. Lynn is our mortal enemy now. I will not let her go. What? Chris, the logistics department has eaten too much. They have grown a conscience. A single sentence directly blocked off Chris, the head of the logistics department. The other party's tone became sluggish and he could only lower his proud head and not say anything else. When the guard grabbed Lynn, this young lady's eyes were blank, and she did not resist at all. Fred saw Lynn being taken away and continued to order. I heard that the eldest miss brought people over. Capture them too. Not a single one of them will be spared. In the secret chamber, Daniel cultivated the blood sacrifice technique several times. The underworld demon touch gene reached 50% of what he liked. The completion rate was very fast. Daniel quickly replenished some exotic beast meat to make up for his withered blood essence. Under the dark demon touch, he found out that someone was pushing a food cart near the door and was approaching. Daniel frowned. Before entering the mystic realm, he had already instructed everyone not to disturb him and also not to hinder his cultivation because of trivial matters such as food. Why was there someone still coming? Knock, knock. Someone knocked on the door. Episode 226 Kill Who is it? Daniel put down the book in his hand and looked up helplessly. Sir, Miss Lynn asked us to bring you dinner? Please open the door and enjoy it. Come in. Daniel frowned slightly. He had just finished practicing the blood sacrifice technique, so it did not matter if he was disturbed. If he was disturbed while practicing the blood sacrifice technique, he would have been furious. But Daniel felt it was a little strange. The waiter pushed the dining cart into the room. Not only was there a huge plate on the dining cart, but there was also an exquisite small stool. It was extremely considerate. The waiter put down the cart and slowly retreated. Mr. Daniel, Miss Lynn ordered you to enjoy the food as soon as possible. If the food is cold, Miss Lynn will be unhappy. Hmm, Daniel said and frowned. Lynn would never say such things to him. On the journey, she would sometimes quietly wait for Daniel. Once, she accidentally sprained her ankle and her bones were dislocated. She had to trouble Albert to go out and hunt for food. Daniel was immersed in his cultivation, so Lynn forcefully endured the pain in her ankle. Her ankle had swelled by 20% until Albert returned. Lynn knew very well that Daniel was addicted to cultivation, and it was life-threatening to interrupt his cultivation. Lynn would not rush him over such a small matter. The waiter did not realize that he had said something wrong. He put down the things and carefully left. Daniel's sense of instinct had always followed him. 
Outside the secret room, the waiter carefully slipped to a corner, about a hundred meters away from the secret room. A group of several dozen people, an awakened practitioner's team was waiting for him. The dining cart has been pushed in. The awakened practitioner, who was leading the group, said impatiently. The order was issued by the Walker family's auction. The reward was rich and the danger level was low. Such a good thing needed to be taken care of by the Walker family's auction. The attendant coldly snorted. I have good news. That kid vomited blood while cultivating. The entire room was filled with the stench of blood clots. Furthermore, his face was pale white. It's definitely not fake. Oh. The person opposite him smiled and said, Looks like our luck today is pretty good. Let's wait a little longer then. If that kid eats the food with extra ingredients, and there's a mistake in his cultivation, our deal is a sure win. All right. Although Daniel could not hear what was being said outside the secret chamber, the cold expression and sinister smile on the other party's face indicated the ill intentions of the dozens of awakened practitioners. Daniel let out a cold snort and gently opened the lid of the silver plate. A fresh seafood dish was emitting a tempting fragrance. Even Daniel, who was not hungry, could not help but raise his eyebrows. There was something here that the other party had spent a lot of money on. However, Daniel was very worried about Lynn's current condition and did not have time to play with them. Outside the secret room, dozens of awakened practitioners patiently waited. They all held weapons in their hands, and the two leading awakened practitioners even took out their genetic weapons. As long as they completed this order, the Walker family's auction promised to customize a genetic weapon for them. This was much better than the incomplete genetic weapon they had taken from others. Ah! There was a rapid scream of pain in the secret chamber. The scream was shrill and short, followed by a whimper. It was done. The mercenaries saw the joy in each other's eyes. They heard that this kid accompanied Lin from the Great River City to the City of the Ruins. They thought that he was very strong. It was because they thought highly of this kid. They did not even have this bit of vengeance. Charge in! Bang! The awakened practitioner who was leading the way kicked open the door and stepped into the secret room. However, there was nothing in front of him. The dining car and the plates were all placed in the room. Where is he? Are you looking for me? Daniel jumped down from the roof. The crimson dragon calamity pierced down his head and the blood red spike turned into a vortex, bringing with it a rain of blood. This was bad. The mercenary leader raised his thick blade to block the attack. Ding! The snow white back of the blade had a hint of red. Then, the entire spike of the Crimson Dragon Calamity pierced through the back of the blade. The genetic weapon that had accompanied him for several years was like tofu in front of the Crimson Dragon Calamity. It was shredded into pieces. Light of martial life! The mercenary leader roared. A layer of snow-white transparent eggshells lit up on the light leather armor. The fragment of the genetic weapon shot into the light screen and shot out. Crimson Dragon Calamity extinguish! The sharp tip of the blood-red thorn released a thick, bloody smell. It was as if the Crimson Dragon Calamity was born to drink blood and live. The bloody smell was so thick that it seemed to be real. During the stabbing process, it pulled up several bloody red ribbons. Crack! Crack! The Crimson Dragon Calamity stabbed into the defense of the light of martial life. The thin layer of eggshell was unable to bear the heavy burden. It suddenly lit up for a short moment, and then its piercing eyes lit up. Then, it quickly dimmed down. Crack, crack, crack. The top of the eggshell cracked open, and the tip of the Crimson Dragon Calamity pierced into the light of martial life protection. As an expert with eight gene chains, this martial life light was the genetic talent of his eighth gene chain. Its defensive ability was extremely outstanding. It could be said that no one at the same level could break through him. However, with just the power of the opponent's stab, the light of martial life lost its bright light and turned into a transparent glass ornament. You can kill me with just two moves? The mercenary captain felt the protective shield above his head had cracked. No, I can kill you with one stab. 
Daniel had a cold smile on his face, and he exerted even more strength in his hand. Bang! The fragile eggshell exploded, and the crimson dragon calamity plunged into the head of the mercenary leader. Absolute domain. Excluding the eight gene chain powerhouses, the rest were just a bunch of small shrimps with four or five gene chains. Divine flame fire fist. Boom. A fist carrying explosive flames smashed down, and the human figure was sent flying. The weaker ones were charred on the spot. Daniel's flaming hand tightly grabbed the deputy captain of the mercenaries who was disguised as a waiter. Tell me, where are Lynn and Albert? I... <coughs> the captain's deputy's tears and snot flowed. He choked under the flame and could not speak. Daniel threw the deputy captain to the ground, his eyes coldly staring at him. Tell me honestly, where are they? I... don't know. Crack. Daniel executed him with a kick. He looked at the main building of the Walker family's auction with a cold gaze. He thought it was a happy reunion, but who knew it was just a dirty trap? It was rare that he wanted to start a fight, but these people could not do what he wanted. Then don't blame me, Daniel, for starting a massacre. Woo -woo 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 -woo. The flame burned in the secret chamber, and the green smoke floated up for over a hundred meters. The entire Walker family's auction could see the raging flames in the distance. When they noticed the smoke with particles, all the alarms in various places kept ringing. Episode 227 Evil Grows the Walker family's auction quickly mobilized its troops. With the drastic reduction in civilian technology, the fire defense system was no longer as convenient. A large number of people rushed into the fire with buckets in their hands, challenging the raging flames with their meager firepower. Daniel had left the scene of the fire early on and was wandering around the reception room building alone. The alarm was affected by the smoke in the distance. They were making sounds of alarm and flashing red lights. There was not a trace of a person in the wide corridor. Daniel followed the way to the living room. The originally lively living room was deserted. There was only a waiter squatting on the ground to clean up the mess. He stepped into the room. Where's Lynn? How is she? Ooh. The servant felt the strong hand in front of his neck and immediately realized that it was an awakened practitioner. He could take her life at any time. Daniel loosened his grip slightly so that she could say something. The female attendant's face was filled with blood and she trembled as she said timidly, Lynn was locked into the chairman's room by Fred. I don't know how she is. Where is the old man who came with us? Daniel asked coldly. The female attendant shook her head. She was just the lowly servant. How could she know so many things? Daniel pointed at her neck. The waitress tilted her head and fainted. In the room on the roof, Lynn's entire body was tied up tightly, and she was thrown onto the sofa, unable to move. Even though the rigid pterygoid association wanted Lynn's head, according to Fred's intentions, if they handed over a living person, they might be able to earn even more. Fred was a businessman. Since doing this could double the reward, why not? It would not be nice to leave a bloody head at home, right? Don paced back and forth in the room, while Chris sat in the corner without saying a word. Why did Fred suddenly leave for such a long time? The lobby manager, Don, asked in puzzlement. Among the three of them, Don had the lowest position, but as an old man who had worked together with Fred, he did not have any credit. He also had to work hard. Although his position was low, his status was indeed very high. When Don said those words, the guards in neat suits were like wooden puppets that did not move at all. Chris, who was in the corner, rubbed his face and sighed with mixed feelings. I don't know. After Fred heard some movement, he casually said that he had something to do and left. 
It had been almost 20 minutes. What could keep him occupied for so long? Don was bored out of his mind. He looked at Lynn, who was on the sofa. The room was full of men. This young lady was quite pleasing to the eyes. He could not stop looking at her. Quite some time ago, Lynn was only a stinky girl who caused trouble everywhere. Her body was thin, her temper was irritable, and her face was not pretty. But after she grew up, she really changed. Her curvaceous body and fiery temper also stabilized. When she spoke, there was a different charm to her, especially that cold and elegant temperament. It was definitely not something that an ordinary female could have. Don's anger became stronger and stronger. He couldn't help but think that it had been quite some time since he had vented. He narrowed his eyes and said to the row of guards standing in front of him, All of you can leave. The guards did not have any objections and directly opened the door and walked out. Lynn noticed that Don's gaze was getting hotter and hotter. She immediately thought of the other party's thoughts. She had already underestimated the limits of these uncles. She did not expect that Don was much more despicable than she had imagined. Don, what are you doing? Lynn said weakly. When she was kidnapped, her internal organs were injured due to the intense resistance. She, who was already weak, was even more powerless to resist. What are you doing? Don proudly stroked his beard at the corner of his mouth. Of course, I'm doing what we all love to do. Don, you're crazy. Chris, who had been blaming himself, suddenly stood up. Don frowned, then looked at Chris and said, What do you mean I am crazy? How can you say that? Chris, look at how arrogant you are. Do you think I'm afraid of you? Don, this is Walker's daughter. Chris gritted his teeth and said, <laughs> Don sneered. Who are you trying to scare? What happened to his daughter? Besides, it's not like you didn't betray him. You still ate a mouthful of fat from this branch. You. Chris's sore spot was mentioned, and his hand fiercely pinched Don's arm. Chris had awakened his gene chain when he was young, but he had neglected training. Compared to Don, who had never awakened his gene chain, his arm was as hard as steel. When he held Don's wrist, even his blood could not flow smoothly. If you dare touch her, I will kill you. Chris's eyes were red. Protecting Lynn was probably the last thing he could do to vent his conscience. At this moment, all the uneasiness he felt turned into anger and poured onto Don. Let go! Let go! Crack! Crack! Ah! Let go! Don pulled out the pistol hidden in his chest. Bang! Chris widened his eyes. The three bloody holes in his chest were bleeding. Don gasped for breath. This firearm was useless against an awakened practitioner, but it was still useful to an awakened practitioner who had a gene chain like Chris. Bang, 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 bang. Don was so angry that his head was about to explode. He aimed at Chris's head and shot a few more times. Ah. Lynn cried out in shock. When she saw Chris die, her heart was filled with sorrow and fear. Don was gasping for breath. Although this was not the first time he had seen blood, Chris was still an old friend. His sweaty palm almost couldn't hold the handle of the gun. Smelly girl. Don threw the empty handgun away. You made me kill Chris. Now you will pay for that. Don walked forward with a fierce smile. Lynn became more and more scared and was worried about what he was going to do to her. She also knew that she heard the sound of a figure falling outside the door. Hmm? Don felt a chill down his back. The sound of that thing falling was too strange, and he vaguely heard a muffled groan. What's going on? Don shouted towards the door and quickly took out a pistol from his chest. He held it in his hand to bolster his courage. Even Chris, the awakened practitioner, was killed by him. How could he be afraid of anyone? Daniel gently pushed the door open. Don's pupils suddenly contracted. The pistol in his hand aimed at Daniel and shot out a series of bangs. 
Daniel raised an arm to block in front of his eyes. Ding, 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 ding. With the sound of metal clashing, four bullets jumped around on the ground. Don's chest tightened, and he almost forgot how to breathe. Copper skin and iron bones, this was a high-level awakened practitioner. How could a high-level awakened practitioner walk all the way here from the outside? Episode 228, Establishing Control. Someone come here! Someone come quickly! Don shouted at the door. The door opened slowly with a creak. Two corpses with half of their bodies fell into the room. The broken parts of the corpses were smooth. It was obvious they had been cut in half by a sword. Daniel held a sword in one hand and a spear in the other. He slowly approached Don. How could Don not understand what had happened? The awakened practitioner guards outside the door were all killed by this little monster with just one strike. You... don't kill me. I'm Lynn's uncle. I watched her grow up. Don stepped back step by step until he was behind the chairman's table. He leaned against the wall and sat down. The solid wall behind him made him not feel safe at all. He could only hold a gun and shiver. Daniel tore the tape from Lynn's mouth. Lynn pointed at Don and cursed. I don't have an uncle who was worse than a beast like you. Daniel, help me kill him. Daniel. So it was Daniel. Information about this man immediately popped up in Don's mind. There was an order to kill him in the Rigid Pterygoid Association, and they knew he was a very powerful awakened practitioner. He could not be killed unless he was a bloodline warrior. I have offended such a person. Just as Don was about to stand up straight, his legs gave out and he fell to the ground. That is a person that only a great warrior with a bloodline can kill. How did I offend him? Only now did Don remember that the Rigid Pterygoid Association had put Lynn and Daniel on the wanted list. He should have thought that there would be a connection between them. Where is your boss, Fred? Daniel said to Don coldly. Don shook his head. I... I don't know. He guessed that Fred had noticed something unusual earlier, so he quietly slipped away. What a cunning bastard he was. He left him here to stall for time. Then forget it, Daniel said softly. Don suddenly had a bad idea. Just as he was about to move, his vision blurred and a bronze blade flashed past his neck. Blood flew in the air. Don's head spun in the air. When he saw Aaron's blade that was engraved with fine lines, Don couldn't help but praise it. What a beautiful sword. Then Don, whose head was still in the air, saw the headless corpse leaning against the wall. A question flashed through his mind. Am I dead? Pack, pack, pack. Don's head rolled twice on the ground. His eyes were open, and his wretched face showed surprise. Daniel cut the rope that tightly bound Lynn with his sword. Before he could say anything, a fragrant body cried and jumped into his arms. Daniel! Lynn muttered as she sobbed silently. Before coming to the City of the Ruins, there were still a few uncles whom she regarded as her elders. But at this moment, she had nothing. The huge loss made her feel fear. Other than this man who had always accompanied and helped her, she had nothing else. However, she was still very smart. She knew that she could not keep this man. The wandering dragon would not stay at the bottom of the pond for long. Sooner or later, he would roam above the nine heavens. Being tightly hugged by a woman who he had known for less than half a month, Daniel was not only nervous, but also happy. It sounded like an enviable story when a beautiful woman threw herself onto him and hugged him. But Daniel, who valued relationships, knew very well that he could not be responsible for this woman all the time. If he really fell in love with her and kept her by his side, what would he do if he met Nala in Texas? If she waited for him for a long time and found out that he brought a woman with him to find her, would Nala be sad? Daniel wanted to push Lynn away, but she, who was sobbing on his chest, made him unable to bear it. He could only hold his weapon with both hands and stand by his legs. 
quietly waiting for Lynn to vent her emotions. In the wide space outside the house, there were corpses dripping with blood, and inside the room, a man and woman were hugging each other. Lynn silently released her arms and took a few steps back. She lowered her head and said in a low voice, Where are we going now? Where are we going? Daniel smiled. This place is yours. You don't want it anymore? Lynn shook her head gently. There's no one here. I can't protect it even if I stay here. What's the use of them? Daniel shook his head. You and I have known each other for a while. We can be considered to have gotten along. Naturally, we have to help to the end. I will help you take back the Walker Family Branch Association. At that time, it doesn't matter if you stay here or wander around with me. The property of this branch must at least be in my hands. All right, Lynn simply replied. An hour later, the fire in the secret chamber finally stopped. The middle management of the Walker family's auction was surprised to find that the higher-ups and bosses above their heads had disappeared. Instead, it had turned into a pair of men and women. In the meeting room, everyone was staring at each other, not knowing what to do. Are we the only ones left? Where did the other higher-ups go? Old Chris and Don are both gone. Oh, and Boss Fred is also gone. Why should we let these two brats care about us? From today onward, the Walker Families Association will be taken over by Miss Lynn from the main association. I, Daniel, am in charge of supervising this matter. Anyone who dares to disobey me or Miss Lynn will end up like this table. Bang! Daniel slammed his hand on the table in front of him, and a surging gene energy was poured into the wooden table. The middle-level managers below were either confused, disdainful, or their eyes flashed with the light of ambition but they quickly stood up in a panic and withdrew all the emotions in their eyes. Crack, crack, crack. The dark black long table cracked open from the surface, and the hardwood quickly softened and turned into powder. Boom. The wooden table fell to the ground, and dust filled the air. A long table weighing a ton was nowhere to be seen. Other than the floor full of wood dust, there was nothing that could prove its existence. The group of business elites covered their mouths and stepped back. Some of the awakened practitioners who had mixed into the middle management were also shocked. These two young people were not the same little brats they were before. They wished they could sew their mouths together. They were two ancestors. It was not difficult to smash a table, but it was very difficult to turn the entire table into powder. This Daniel was a very powerful awakened practitioner. Daniel was very satisfied with the performance of the crowd. Forced deterrence was not a good way to manage, but things were urgent. Daniel and Lynn might not stand the auction for long, so he could not do it slowly. Just intimidation alone was not enough. Daniel squeezed out a smile. Today's matter has caused everyone to be disturbed. Send everyone red packets at the end of the month. Everyone follows the previous arrangements and continues working. Don and Chris's positions are vacant. Both of you recommend two names to each other and submit them. Lynn and I will choose at the right time. After Daniel finished speaking, Lynn sat on the main seat and added a few words. She was indeed worthy of being a true business elite. Although the conference room was still filled with a strange atmosphere, at least it had regained its vitality. After the call, everyone dispersed. Just as Daniel and Lynn walked out of the conference room, a waiter hurriedly walked in front of them. Miss Lynn, Daniel, Chief Soldier Williams from the Relic City has summoned you. Episode 229 Chief Soldier Williams A summon. A summon and a request for an audience were two completely different concepts. One was proactive, the other was passive. The difference being the host and the guest was obvious. Chief soldier of the ancient city? Daniel frowned. What is his background? How could a servant with a low position know so much? He could only shake his head. Lynn thought for a while and said, There are also three chief soldiers in Great River City. The chief soldier is in charge of the city defense and defending against enemies outside the city. 
Usually, it's controlled by big families, big sects, big forces, and so on. I have also come into contact with some chief soldiers before. They are usually not weak, and the strength behind them cannot be underestimated. Chief soldier, Daniel murmured. If the chief soldier could stand firmly in the chaotic ruins, would he not be able to take down the chief soldier with all the strength of a bloodline warrior? What gave Daniel the most headache was the chief soldier's summon was a very clear directive to Lynn and Daniel. Daniel didn't know what the other party's intention was and whether it was beneficial or detrimental to him. Haven't you found Senior Albert yet? Daniel thought of the old man. The waiter shook his head. Mr. Albert has disappeared since he left the reception room. No one has seen him again. Lynn asked worriedly, could something have happened to Albert? Daniel shook his head and said, You underestimate that old man Albert too much. He was alone and not a stranger to the city. He had been wandering around in this chaotic Great River City for so many years and was fine. How could he have lost his life just by drinking a cup of tea in the Walker family's auction? He must have found something interesting and kept him here for the time being. Hmm. He nodded and said, Let's pack up. Let's go and meet that chief soldier. Are we going? Lynn looked worried. Daniel gave Lynn a comforting look. There is still some time before the Great River remains open. If we want to stay in the City of the Ruins, we must go and meet this local snake. I'm hoping everything will be fine. If it's not appropriate, then we will kill our way out. Everything is clear. It is better than being attacked in secret everywhere. Lynn was worried and bit her lower lip. Daniel, promise me you won't risk your life as an inanimate object like the Walker Family Branch Association. It's not worth it. Okay. Daniel was picky in the Walker Family Branch Association, replenishing some of the missing exotic beast materials. He also refined some gene drugs for Black. It might be dangerous for us to go out tonight. If you notice that we haven't returned for a long time, then be careful and hide, okay? Daniel said while patting Black's head. Seeing Black nod his head foolishly and his eyes full of gene drug, he could only sigh and throw the medicine at it. You should stay at the auction. Be smart and don't be taken away. In the evening, when Daniel and Lynn arrived at the chief soldier's mansion, they saw that the mansion was brightly lit. There was an endless stream of people coming and going. The people were wearing different clothes. Some were wearing formal dresses. Some were wearing normal clothes, and some were wearing armor. It looked like a special costume party. Daniel and Lynn were stunned when they stood at the door. They had not expected this. They had thought that it would be a well-prepared question or a fight, but they did not expect there would be a banquet here. However, they did not have an invitation letter. Lynn was also a little embarrassed. As a business elite, she was very familiar with this banquet scene, but today, under Daniel's request, she wore thick leather armor to participate in the banquet as part of her attire. She could not even move her feet, as if there was a nail on the soles of her shoes, freezing her in place. Daniel also wore gray and dusty armor. Mixed in the strange clothing, it was not eye-catching, but it was also not ordinary. Why don't we go back and change? Daniel asked tentatively. It's too late. Lynn smiled bitterly. Daniel and Lynn stood at the Williams residence for a while before someone came up to them. Are you Mr. Wilson and Miss Lynn? Please come in. The waiter had a gentle smile on his face as he steadily led the two of them into the banquet. Daniel and Lynn looked at each other. The chief had come prepared. The other party only glanced at them and immediately called out their names. This banquet was much bigger than Daniel had expected. The banquet hall was filled with elites from all walks of life. Many people with powerful auras released their auras without any hesitation, creating a vacuum in the dense crowd. Lynn, who was weak, felt that she could not breathe properly at the moment. She entered the banquet hall. Her cheeks were red. This was a sign of a lack of oxygen. She was crooked and shaky as if she could not walk steadily. Daniel hurriedly grabbed her arm and Lynn seemed to have found a life-saving tool and clung to it. 
There were many guests with intimate female companions at the banquet, though their attitudes were not very eye-catching. However, Daniel discovered that ever since he entered the banquet, the waiter who led Daniel and Lynn had unknowingly disappeared. He blended into the crowd and disappeared without a trace. Daniel frowned. The changes in the situation had completely exceeded his expectations. The letter clearly stated, summon, but now it had become an inexplicable banquet. However, he could only wait patiently to see what the other party would do. If he continued to wait until the banquet ended, it would be a good result. On the second floor where Daniel could see, a few people stood behind the glass wall and watched the lively scene in the hall below. A dignified middle-aged man with hands behind his back looked at Daniel and Lynn. Chief Soldier Williams, those two are Daniel and Lynn. A short, middle-aged man with a gentle face stood next to Chief Williams. He had a natural smiling face, but his eyes were constantly revealing fierceness and ruining his temperament. He was the leader of the Walker Family Branch Association, Fred. Chief Williams, this person brought Lynn from the Great River City headquarters to the ruined city. He invaded the Walker Family Branch Association because of a disagreement. This is clearly not putting the shareholders in his eyes. Of course, I, as the director who works for all of you, also am not capable enough. The security team of the Walker Family Branch Association is no match for him. Chief Williams did not say much. He just narrowed his eyes and looked at Daniel. After that, he looked elsewhere and said slowly, The fact that Daniel can bring a weak girl and an old man across hundreds of miles and break through the pursuit of the rigid Terragoid Association and arrive at the ruined city from Great River City shows that he is very capable. The Walker Family Branch Association's crime isn't your fault. Chief Williams gently knocked on the fence in front of him. His fingers paused and moved rhythmically. Today, not only Daniel, but also the other kids. I will make sure they won't be able to get out of the Williams family's gate. Episode 230 Bloodline Expert Retreats psst, psst. Daniel took a breath. His ears were filled with noise. The atmosphere of the banquet made the awakened practitioner, who had just stepped out from a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood, feel uncomfortable. The food was exquisite, the dance music was melodious, and the dancers were attractive. However, the entire banquet was filled with a rotten and unreal atmosphere. All the beautiful things were built in secret bloody fights and intrigue, but in front of everyone, the banquet only showed the most beautiful things. Daniel drank the third glass of iced cocktail and looked around the crowd with a serious look. There were too many powerful people in the crowd. There were more than ten bloodline warriors in the crowd. The banquet suddenly quieted down. Da 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 da! A rich, middle aged man walked down the stairs. His face was glowing red, indicating his official good luck. At the same time, an aura that suppressed everyone circled above their heads. This Chief Soldier Williams was a powerful bloodline martial artist. Chief Soldier Williams? Welcome, Chief Soldier Williams. Chief Williams waved his hand, signaling everyone to quiet down. I will say a few words. First, today's banquet will determine the spots of the various major powers. Some of the spots of the fallen powers should be cancelled and distributed to the stronger powers. Is that all right? A faint buzzing was heard from the crowd. Daniel was confused. He looked at Lynn and found that she was confused as well. The second point. Chief Soldier William's tone was long and slow. According to the agreement two years ago, the quota for a rogue practitioner in the Great River City remains set to be 300 people. We will post the list of 300 people across the City of the Ruins. Those who are not on the list will need to take their heads and replace them. Life and death are determined by fate. Please act according to your abilities. 
Then, Chief Williams looked at the person at the banquet. I have a lot of things to do, so I will be leaving now. The banquet was in an uproar. Putting aside the fact that the major powers had guaranteed a spot, the rogue practitioner's spot had to be protected with his own life. Those with weak minds immediately started to think of retreating. More people were still secretly hating the major powers. These people had actually taken over most of the spots, not even giving a chance to the rogue practitioner and the others. Daniel and Lynn were still in a daze. A familiar old voice sounded beside their ear. I only found out today. Two years ago, a beam of light shot out from the Great River Ruins. The researchers of the major families and a gene-refining expert saw a dazzling array of treasures and countless rare and unusual beasts from that beam of light. Albert took a deep breath. Albert! Daniel was pleasantly surprised. This old man had promised to take him to the Floating Frost Hall. That was a huge amount of inheritance. Lynn's joy became even purer. Albert treated them like his own family's elders and was very friendly. Albert's expression was indeed very serious. Daniel, Lynn, you guys have to be careful. Before Albert finished his warning, a group of people dressed in light black clothing, awakened practitioners, rushed into the hall. They were all Chief Soldier William's subordinates. The leader took out a document and began to read it out. The River Valley Gang has 26 spots. Is Larry White of the River Valley Gang here? A thin young man stood out from the crowd. He held a scabbard inlaid with gemstones tightly in his hand. The pattern on the hill was complicated. One could tell it was an extraordinary item at first glance. However, this young man was wearing thin clothes and his expression was haggard. I give up. All right, then. The middle-aged man who was reading the document cracked a smile. Then get the hell out of here. It's none of your business. The young man carried his sword and slipped out alone. Under the eyes of the crowd, he was extremely embarrassed. The Taylor family of the Great River City has 11 people. Is there anyone in the Taylor family? Are you willing to give up the quota? A group of people dressed in plain white mourning clothes stood out at the banquet. They all stood out and shouted at the Williams family mansion. Why? I refuse to accept it. My Taylor family invested a lot of money in the city of ruins back then. Why did they cancel our Taylor family's quota? The reader's eyes turned cold. I don't want to give up. Sure, as long as your Taylor family can withstand the continuous challenges of 20 factions, these 11 spots will be returned to you. A high-grade awakened practitioner stood out from the Taylor family. He took off his plain white morning dress and revealed his armor. He shouted, Our Taylor family is willing to accept the challenge. As soon as he finished speaking, a sword energy shot out from the crowd. The Taylor family did not have time to react and was immediately swept away. Blood dripped onto the white morning dress like a plum blossom falling into the snow. You! The only remaining high-level awakened practitioner of the Taylor family clenched his fist tightly. His eyes were red, and he wanted to turn around and save his family members who were in trouble. However, a sharp sword had already pierced him. Bloodline warrior. This high-rank awakened practitioner had his arms in front of his chest. His high temples indicated that this was an awakened practitioner who was skilled in body refining. His defensive ability was relatively strong, but it was meaningless in front of a bloodline warrior. Crack, crack. A sword pierced through the bones of his arms and deeply into his sternum. Blood gushed out from his back. Hmm. The swordsman frowned slightly. This sword should have been able to directly kill the Taylor family, but it was gripped by a hand. If you want to forgive someone, you should forgive them. Why do you need to? Daniel's eyes were filled with anger. The Taylor family is almost dead. Do you really have to kill them all? Heh, <laughs> where did you come from? The swordman pulled out his sword. Shua, shua. With two slashes, a blood red color danced in front of the swordsman. Ding, ding. Two sparks rang out, 
and the collision of the quasi-divine weapons echoed in the air, as if it was a small bell had been rung, and it was crisp and pleasing to the ear. So fast. The bloodline swordsman felt that this young man in front of him was unreasonable. There was no bloodline fluctuation, but a high-level awakened practitioner's speed was actually on par with his. Crimson Dragon Calamity Extinguish. The Crimson Dragon Calamity in Daniel's hand emitted a thick, bloody smell. The blood-red aura was thick as if it was solid. During the stabbing process, it pulled up several blood-red ribbons. The thorns turned into a whirlpool, bringing with them a rain of blood and wind. The smell of blood entered the nose and mouth of the blood assassin. His vision blurred, and it was as if he had seen a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. The bloodline in his body constantly gave him a sense of danger. The swordsman came back to his senses, and the spinning crimson dragon calamity had already approached his face. Enough. Bang. Ugh. A barrier was formed in front of the bloodline swordsman. The swordsman flew backward and crashed into the crowd. The guests were so shocked that they quickly retreated. In the hall, several gazes hid behind the glass wall and looked. The bloodline swordsman, who was staggering, was stopped. Daniel stood among the dead and injured members of the Taylor family. For a moment, there weren't even two of them. Everyone was muttering Daniel's name. Daniel, what do you think? Chief Soldier Williams spoke in a flat tone, but no one could tell whether he was happy or angry. The person next to him thought for a moment and said, That's all. My disciple is after an all-powerful bloodline expert. Usually an awakened practitioner's explosive strength is low. For example, the defective vice president of the Rigid Pterygoid Association. As long as my disciple activates his bloodline talent and moves around for a while, he will definitely kill Daniel. Episode 231, Killing the Heart Yes! Fred added fuel to the fire. Daniel is just a chicken that thinks it's a dog. He's nothing in front of Chief Soldier Williams and Commander Johnson. Fred's words of interruption flattered the two of them, causing smiles to appear on everyone's faces. He was not strong, but he operated their wallet and was very smart. Otherwise, Fred did not have the right to sit with them. In the hall, Daniel quietly walked to Lynn's side. Lynn looked up and down at Daniel worriedly. She saw that he was still intact. She was relieved. Albert sighed. To save a few Taylor family members, he had offended so many powers. Was it worth it? He recalled the responsibility of being the last successor of the Floating Snow Palace. Daniel was talented and kind, which fit the requirements of the Floating Snow Palace. The readers continued reading the following words as if they didn't see anything. Sand Scorpion Tribe has 18 people. Gerald Johnson, are you going to give up your spots? With the encounter with the Taylor family, Gerald had already lost his spirit. Now that he was scared out of his wits, he lowered his head and said, I give up. The Tri-Devil Gathering has nine people. I give up. The Great River Bandit Gang has a quota of ten people. I represent the Great River Gangs to give up. I will leave now. In the calm voice of the readers, the pale-faced awakened practitioner gangs were called out one by one and then left in dejection. They thought it would be a happy feast, but most of the people present did not expect this to be the result. The hall was dead silent. The reader closed the file and casually threw it to his feet. Only then did the small and medium-sized forces who were not called heave a sigh of relief. There is still one more. The reader looked at Daniel with a smile that was not a smile. Walker Family's Auction. The Great River City will have 12 people in the main meeting. Daniel, Lynn, do you want to give up this spot? The Walker Family's Auction actually had a spot. Lynn was also stunned when she heard this. She had been in charge of the Walker family's auction for a few years, but she didn't know anything about this news. It seemed like David and Jimmy had hidden it well. She, the young lady of the Walker family, wasn't trusted by the two of them. Lynn immediately remembered that this quota was what Daniel urgently needed. 
but it also meant that there was a risk of confronting the 20 major powers. I... Lynn was at a loss as she pinched the corner of her skirt. I give up. Daniel raised his hand and looked at the reader. The reader frowned. This matter had exceeded his expectations. He subconsciously looked up to the second floor, which was where Chief Soldier Williams was. Daniel. Lynn felt pity in her heart. Daniel shook his head and leaned over to Lynn's ear. He said, It's fine. I can go and fight for the rogue practitioner's spot. After saying that, Daniel pulled Lynn and Albert out. Seeing Daniel and Lynn walking further and further away, the readers were also at a loss. The net had been set up. After Chief Soldier Williams' reminder, awakened practitioners from all the families rubbed their fists and prepared to meet Daniel. Who knew that Daniel was going to escape? Wait! A familiar figure ran down the stairs. After all, anyone who had been hanging at the city gate for so many years would get used to this kind of appearance. This person was the leader of the Walker family's auctions branch, Fred. Daniel, Lynn, the two of you broke into my Walker's family auction and killed my branch staff. This matter must be settled today. The Walker Family Branch Association belongs to me and Lynn. What does it have to do with you, Fred? Facing the little girl's rebuttal, Fred's face bloomed into a smile and took out a contract. Voila! The contract flipped open and stood in front of everyone. Little girl from the Walker family, Daniel, this is written here in black and white. This Walker Family Branch Association has nothing to do with you from the beginning to the end. It also has nothing to do with the murderer, Daniel. Fred smiled proudly. Someone come! He shouted. A few men and women who were suddenly crying rushed in from outside the door. The blue uniforms on their bodies were indicated that they were from the Walker Family Branch Association. Daniel looked at them one by one. These people looked familiar to him. They were the kind of people who liked to play dirty tricks on their employees. It was not surprising that they would suddenly choose to betray them, but he did not expect they would betray him today. It's him! It's him! An employee pointed at Daniel and shouted. His ears were filled with fear. I saw him break into the chairman's office, kill manager Chris and minister Don with that evil woman. It was the two of them! They took over the Walker's family's auction. Chris and Don's bodies were still behind them. Don's head had been chopped off by a sword. Chris had been killed by a spear. To make them feel it was a common enemy who did this, he had used a knife to cut Chris's body a few more times. Chaotic sounds rang in Daniel and Lynn's ears. Outsiders like them did not know the inside story and only saw the situation through the surface. Chris and Don died so miserably. They were the ones who treated me when we talked about business last month. This couple is really disgusting. They forced their way into the auction house and wanted to take over the magpie's nest. I saw the contract. There was indeed not a single word for Lynn and Daniel. A mist rose in Lynn's eyes, and her face turned red. You're talking nonsense. You took the money from my family. Without the money from my family, where would the Walker Family Branch Association come from? Oh? Fred raised his eyebrows. The money I took from your family? Why didn't I know? The little girl was spouting nonsense. You have to bring evidence. This contract didn't say that it was your family's money. I... I... Lynn opened her mouth but did not know how to argue. Maybe David or Jimmy would have the receipt or contract, but she definitely didn't have it. Hmm. Fred turned around and faced the middle-aged man who read the document and even the important people sitting on the second floor. Everyone, this pair of men and women have stolen the wealth that I, Fred, have earned with half my life and wisdom. They have killed the upper echelons of my Walker family's auction. Please excuse this pair of villains on my behalf. Kill! We must kill them, or the City of Ruins will not be peaceful. Kill them and seize their wealth. Where is the justice? Where is the law? I want to report this matter to the central government so the central government can eradicate this pair of villains. Everyone looked at Daniel and the other two of them with eyes full of anger, as if the three of them were in the incarnation of evil. As long as they were wiped out, all the sins in this matter would be peaceful. Fred squeezed out a smile from the corner of his mouth. 
With his wisdom and some special arrangements, Daniel would certainly die today. Daniel, we... Lynn's lips lost the color of blood. Under the thousand accusing fingers, she felt fear. Fred not only wanted to kill, but wanted to kill all of them. Oh. A bitter look flashed across Albert's face. My floating frost hall was just about to develop a seedling. Am I going to die here today? Episode 232 Bloodline Expert Perishes A life for a life. I, Xander, am willing to eliminate demons for all of you. A muscular man with a naked upper body took a step forward. His aura was ignited, and the noise in the hall was immediately suppressed by half. Fred looked up, nodded, and said, Xander, huh? Xander was the captain of a group of mercenaries in the Relic City. He had stepped into the half-step bloodline and had been there for a long time. He was only a little bit away from breaking through to the bloodline. He was almost invisible under the bloodline. It was also good to let Xander test him. In life and death situations, opportunities were the most important. Xander had this kind of thought in his mind as he brazenly fought. His eyes were full of light as he looked at Daniel and met his indifferent eyes. What an outstanding young man. Xander was secretly shocked. Under his imposing manner, he had no fear at all. It was perfect for him to sharpen his knife. After killing you, I can level up. Blue Thunder God Fist. Xander clenched his fist tightly, both his hands exploding with dark red destructive light. His body jumped high into the air. His fist aimed at Daniel's head and smashed down. Crimson Dragon Calamity Destruction. Daniel pulled out his spear and the sharp needle that was wrapped around the blood vortex collided with it. The blood red color clashed with the dark red color of the divine lighting. The two kinds of neon lights reflected off each other, making people feel intoxicated. Puff. A large hole appeared in Xander's chest as he fell from the sky. Daniel stood in midair, his eyes bright and piercing as he looked at Xander, who had fallen to the ground. Spiral space spike. Oh. Xander's brain felt as if it had been pierced by an iron drill. It violently stirred as he opened his mouth and roared. His eyes were bloodshot as he faced the savage. Crack, crack, crack. His jaw, which had been opened excessively, had been forcefully broken by him. The sound was as if his life had been extinguished at the same time. Everyone stood up in a roar. Xander was killed by Daniel in a single exchange. He was someone who could awaken his bloodline very quickly. Just how far had Daniel gone? Did he not awaken his bloodline yet? The devil is arrogant. Let's attack together. Several young men with similar strength as Xander's jumped out. They didn't get along with each other and drew their swords directly at each other. Several bloodline experts also didn't want to fall behind and jumped out at the same time. They were all secretly instructed by Chief Soldier Williams to allocate the quotas of those fallen forces. Whoever killed Daniel would get the biggest share of the quotas. In their eyes, Daniel was no longer Daniel, but the hope for the rise of their families and forces. It was their future. Daniel must die. Mountain splitting moon fire. Heaven's sorrow devastating hand. King Kong's emperor's leg. Three different genetic abilities rushed towards Daniel. Daniel raised his hand, and the blood-red spike flew out from his hand. Crimson Dragon Calamity Extinguish. A beautiful and decisive arc was drawn in the air. A red light flashed, and the half-step bloodline warrior in front was sent flying. He was nailed to the wall, and no one knew whether he was dead or alive. Absolute Domain. Divine Flame Fire Fist Tear. Dong, ding, ding. The two of them were hit to the ground, and their injuries weren't serious. They took a few steps back, and when they felt a thick gene energy gathering power above their heads, they hurriedly lowered their heads and made way for the bloodline expert. Ghost Legs Demon Devour. It was the awakening of the bloodline. Daniel's hair stood on hand. 
It wasn't because his body was shocked, but because the dark demon touch. Every hair on his body was absorbing information from the outside world. That kick was still tens of meters away, but the nether devil's touch made the veins on his forehead jump rapidly. If he didn't dodge, he would die. Blood flame fluctuations. Daniel's chest turned into a ball of flames, and he received a heavy blow to his chest. The old man's ghost kick pierced through the air, and the entire space was kicked by him. Boom. Blood flames erupted from Daniel's chest. He had just completed the liquefied blood flames in his body, and he was almost immune to all physical attacks. Blood flame, devour! Daniel shouted as his body transformed into a flaming giant. His body grew more than three times larger than before, and the blood that splashed out from his chest turned into sparks that dotted the air. Every drop of blood that gathered in his body became part of Daniel's strength, and the blood flames surged without end. Roar! The five-meter-tall flaming giant slashed its hand towards the old man. Ghost kick, shadowless! Bang! 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 Roar! Roar! The blood-flamed giant roared as its flaming hand was shattered by a single kick. The liquid flame poured into the old man's body, burning his life force. The old man quickly felt the terrifying might of the blood flame. His face grew old and withered, and the largest one was even the size of a soybean. His movements were slightly more intense, and the grayish-brown old-age spots were torn apart. A nauseating smell gushed out from them. It's not that easy to kill me, the old man shouted at the top of his lungs. The few gray hairs on his face became snow white, and wrinkles quickly grew on his skin. He fled for his life. There were so many bloodline experts here, so he would definitely be able to stop Daniel. Henry, save me. Ha ha ha, die. Daniel transformed into a giant and roared. The blood flame on Daniel's body suddenly rose several times, and the blood flame rose all the way to the second floor. The guests in the hall all retreated. As long as one dipped a little into this blood flame, it would cause one's skin to age, hair to wither, and cells to decay. Daniel's gene energy clearly didn't show any signs of soaring, but that blood flame's abnormal rise was too inconceivable. This is Daniel? That was close. Let's go! It was a blood surge. Albert's eyes widened as he thought to himself, Can blood surge be used like this? Blood surge could temporarily increase one's blood vitality by several times. It was usually used to increase one's body's strength and carry out an explosive attack. However, Daniel was coordinating with him with the blood type gene chain. With the two combined, the damage would increase by several times. This was no longer a description of an innate talent and intelligence. Such miraculous effects were truly terrifying. My floating hall chose the right seedling. Albert's old face bloomed with joy. Bang! Bang! After the two bloodline warriors attacked, they quickly retreated to avoid being affected by the blood flames. The flames exploded from Daniel's forehead and back. After the blood flames were attacked, they fell to the ground and slowly moved towards Daniel, merging back into one. Die! Raging blood flames poured into the old man's body. In just a short minute of the battle, the old man had aged dozens of years. Even though there was surging gene energy in his body, his aged internal organs and muscles were unable to move them out. Spiral air spikes! Define flame fist! Zip! Daniel threw down three genetic abilities, and the old man lying on the ground shattered into pieces. So what if he was a bloodline expert? So what if gene energy was abundant? If he could not use any skills, he would be a target to be hit. Before the old man died, his pair of shriveled white eyes rolled upwards, and his eyelids were torn open. He was beaten to death by a half-step bloodline awakened practitioner, and he couldn't die in peace. On the second floor, the bloodline expert who had stabbed Daniel trembled all over. He couldn't even hold the sword in his hand anymore. He thought that his sword technique was exquisite, and his bloodline skill was incomparably sharp. He was the strongest among his peers, but when he saw Daniel's genetic ability, he couldn't help but sigh with emotion. This blood flame wave 
was too shameless. Episode 233, Kill Fred. The bloodline experts on the second floor were silent. If he were to face this Daniel, how would he deal with this blood flame fluctuations? Blood flame fluctuation. Chief Soldier Williams gently used his knuckles to grab the armrest of his chair. I have heard of this kind of gene chain before in the South, but those few awakened practitioners' strength is very weak, so I did not even think twice about it. Who would have thought that his power would be so terrifying? A half-step bloodline, just by relying on the advantage of the gene chain, could crush an expert with an awakened bloodline. This kind of enemy was too troublesome. The few bloodline experts felt their scalps go numb. It wasn't that they had never heard of such a troublesome gene chain, but this kind of gene chain was mostly the inheritance of the 14 families in Texas. If Daniel's blood flame wave was comparable with Texas's 14 families, this gene chain would probably be ranked in the top eight. If Daniel had a son and inherited this gene chain, this kind of gene chain would appear in large numbers. This would be a disaster for their families and forces. Their gazes passed through the glass wall and swept over Lynn's lower abdomen. This girl was not pregnant yet, right? These people did not know the truth about the blood flame wave. They could only think about it due to the error of the information. <laughs> the flames on the blood flame giant's body became smaller and smaller and Daniel had no choice but to withdraw from the blood flame wave. This genetic ability skill burned too much blood and spirit. The president of the demon slaughter from Oklahoma City and Henry from the Welcome Home Sanctuary had used too much of the blood flame. Their life force was almost burnt to nothing. The two bloodline experts who were fighting suddenly sped up. Their eyes flashed. Sacred fire spell. Extreme Blade Ghost Sword. With the eruption of their bloodline, the two bloodline experts used their bloodline awakening at the same time. Everyone's chest froze, and they felt a sharp pain in their chest. The blood flow in their bodies also slowed down. Daniel's body shrank. Just as he transformed into a human form, two bloodline skills came crashing down on him. Perfect timing, Daniel sneered. His body turned into a ball of lightning. Elemental transformation. The surging gene energy collided with the elemental lightning. A ball of lightning quickly streaked between the two of them, landing on the head of one of them. Roar of the Nether. A deep purple ring-shaped sound wave enveloped the middle-aged man's head. Childish, a low-ranked gene chain like this won't be able to harm me in the slightest. Even though the lips of a bloodline powerhouse were slightly stiff, their minds were clear and their movements smooth. Daniel's movements did not stop. His finger pointed toward the middle-aged man's chest and his eyes stared at the other party. Monstrous nightmare. Spiral air stab. A lump of black burnt oil gushed out from Daniel's eye sockets and quickly slapped towards the middle-aged man's face. The black burnt oil seemed to have a quality, but it was actually invisible. It pierced directly through the middle-aged man's blade and into his eyes. Daniel's spiritual force could crush all awakened practitioners of the same level. When faced with a bloodline expert, as long as the opponent was not a cultivator who specialized in the spirit, the bloodline expert would be affected as well. You! The middle-aged man holding the sword froze on the spot his eyes empty. The sharp air thorn pierced into the sword-wielding middle-aged man's neck without any warning. Whoosh! A crisp sound was heard, causing people to look away. Half of the head had been cut off by Daniel's conch, leaving only a little bit of skin. Xander! Henry's eyes were wide open as he roared in disbelief. If the first bloodline expert died, the blood flame wave gene was too terrifying. Then the death of the second bloodline expert was Daniel's true demeanor as a powerful expert. This person was truly a dragon hiding at the bottom of the pond to be able to use the dazzling genetic ability to kill the enemy and his subordinates. 
He had to be pressed to death as soon as possible. Henry took a few steps and shouted at the experts on the second floor. Chief Soldier William, what are you hiding for? Are you waiting for Daniel to kill us one by one? Hurry up and attack! Fred, who was hiding behind the stairs, trembled. He knew that Daniel was very powerful, but he didn't expect Daniel to be this terrifying. He could even kill a bloodline expert with ease. Fred held the railing with both hands. He was extremely afraid, but he did not regret it at all. Daniel and Lynn had traveled a hundred miles and came together. He, Fred, had enough time to work for others. The Walker Family Branch Association was run by him, and the procedures were complete. Why should he give it to the young lady of the Walker family who did not do anything? Why did they not come when the Walker Family Branch Association was at its most difficult and needed people the most? Fred's eyes were red. He gritted his teeth and looked at Daniel. He wanted to remember this person deeply in his mind. In the future, when he saw him, he would get as far away as possible. This god of slaughter was not someone he could provoke. With just one look, something had happened. Daniel happened to look at him and their eyes met. Run! Every cell in Fred's body was shouting at him, but his feet seemed nailed to the floor. No matter how hard he tried, he could not move his feet. Balls of lightning! Hippo! Daniel flashed in the air, and a blue ball of lightning passed through Fred's chest. This merchant, who had been floating here for half his life, had finally died under his scheme. He should not have schemed against someone he could not afford to offend. Daniel! Bang, bang, bang. This was an emergency. The leaders of the big forces did not slowly walk down the stairs. They broke the glass walls around them and landed in the hall. You dare to kill my men. Chief Soldier William's face was full of anger. He had paid for the loss of so many awakened practitioners that night. Now, even the money bag that he always admired had been killed by Daniel. This made him furious. Ever since he became the chief soldier of the City of the Ruins, he had never been so furious. Chief Soldier Williams, Daniel has killed the nameless awakened practitioner of my Blue Wolf Society. We must take revenge. Chief Soldier Williams, the Swordmaster has also died in Daniel's hands. We have no leader in the Sword Altar. I hope Chief Soldier Williams will stand up for us. Chief Soldier Williams. All sorts of voices rang in Daniel's ears. After killing so many people in a row, even though Daniel kept replenishing gene energy in the nanometer compressor, he gradually felt that his strength was not enough. In particular, the blood flame undulation consumed blood vitality and life force. These two things needed a long period of recuperation. Chief Soldier Williams waved his hands. Someone come. The devil Daniel cultivates an evil art. Today we must kill this devil and avenge our brothers who have sacrificed themselves. Yes! Outside the hall, the awakened practitioners who were wearing light black uniforms rushed out continuously. They were all part of Chief Soldier William's army. The situation had been turned upside down. Lynn's heart was happy again. She squeezed out a sad and beautiful smile from the corner of her mouth. Today, she saw Daniel go on a killing spree for her. Even if she had to die, her life would be worth it. Albert gritted his teeth, and his expression changed. In the end, he still stood out and stood in front of Daniel. Chief Williams, I have something to say. Episode 234, The Fight Against General Williams Albert was stuck between Daniel and Chief Soldier Williams. It didn't seem like he was hiding from anything. He gritted his teeth and raised his head to look at Chief Soldier Williams. Chief Soldier Williams, Daniel is the Nine Pole School. I hope that Chief Soldier Williams will give the Nine Pole School some recognition. Recognition? Chief Soldier Williams' old face was covered with frost. You should ask him to take out the Nine Pole School's seal. He doesn't have the slightest symbol or style of Nine Pole School on him. This, this... Albert was filled with regret. 
If he had known earlier, he would have done this to Daniel. No one would have thought that today's situation would develop like this. Chief Soldier Williams coldly harumphed. The reputation of your nine pool school is just too great. In the future, if you point out anyone who is a member of your nine pool school, I will obediently stand aside. Now get lost. Chief Soldier Williams' hand struck out with a whistling sound. It was so powerful that it could topple mountains and overturn seas. His face was filled with anger, and he showed no mercy at all. Senior Albert. Daniel stretched out his hand and pulled Albert away. Albert was thrown behind him. His fists were filled with raging flames as they collided with Chief Soldier William's hand. Divine Flame Fire Fist. Boom. The flame solution splashed onto Chief Soldier William's body. The huge gene energy also crashed into Daniel's body. Local, elemental transformation. No matter how powerful the gene energy was inside his body, Daniel would be seriously injured in this exchange. Daniel's skin turned into a thin layer of blue film, and the surface of his body was covered with elemental plasma, absorbing all of Chief Soldier William's probing attack. Tap, tap, tap. Both of them took a few steps back, and Chief Soldier William's body fell backward. After taking two or three steps back, he stabilized his body. Daniel, on the other hand, took more than ten steps back in a row. His back hit Lynn's soft body, and she let out a low, muffled groan. This Chief Soldier Williams was not a match for him. Daniel did not have time to appease Lynn, who was injured by him. He stared only at the master in the hall with a burning gaze. If the two bloodline warriors Daniel had killed before were only at 1 or 1.3, then Chief Soldier Williams had at least 2.5 points of strength. His strength was 2.5 times that of an ordinary bloodline warrior's. As expected of a cultivator who had awakened his bloodline long ago, this foundation was extremely deep. It was not something that ordinary bloodline warriors can compare with. Daniel secretly sighed in admiration. His mind was also filled with a cloud of dust. It was likely that there would not be a peaceful day today. He could only fight with blood. Roar of the Nether! With the enhancement of his mind, the sound seemed to have been dyed in color. A deep purple ring-shaped sound wave appeared in the air one after another, aiming at Chief Soldier Williams and enveloping him. Spiral Space Spike. Nightmare of the Heavens. Daniel used his three ultimate mental energy techniques consecutively. At the same time, he hooked his finger, and the Crimson Dragon Calamity that the awakened practitioner had nailed to the wall loosened slightly. With a plop, the Crimson Dragon Calamity flew over, and the Awakened Practitioner softly fell to the ground. Crimson Dragon Calamity extinguish. The blood-red shadow was flying towards Daniel. Suddenly, it made a turn and accelerated, spinning and stabbing at Chief Soldier Williams. The Crimson Dragon Calamity rolled up countless bloody auras, and the blood that flowed in the hall had rushed towards the Crimson Dragon Calamity, adding 20% of its power to it. The Crimson Dragon Calamity stabbed down from behind Chief Soldier Williams, and the blood that was brought along by it rotated around the body. The Crimson Dragon Calamity seemed to have doubled in length, and like a spear of God, it absolutely stabbed towards Chief Soldier Williams. Under the impact of layers upon layers of gene energy, Chief Soldier Williams stood proudly, laughing instead of being shocked. Daniel. I am a martial artist who has awakened my bloodline for 20 years. You are a bloodline martial artist. There is still a 30% chance you will succeed. You are currently too weak. Bloodline awakening, clear the barrier. Spiritual serpent force, fragmentary star fist. Ha! Chief Soldier William's eyes widened as he was sent flying dozens of meters away. As for Daniel's bombardment, it also stopped in the air. It stopped in the air like a painting with heavy ink and colors. It was extremely colorful and strange. Several purple concentric circles extended between Daniel and Chief Soldier Williams in the shape of megaphones. They could not reach Chief Soldier Williams no matter how hard they tried. A blood whirlpool spinning in the air was above Chief Soldier Williams' head. It was only half a meter away from his head. The last half meter was like a natural chasm. 
Chief Soldier William's fist was in front of Daniel. It looked normal, but Daniel did not dare to be careless. Divine Flame Fire Fist. Chief Soldier William's fist, which was like raindrops, landed on Daniel's body. It was raining down on him. Every punch was like a spirit snake swinging its tail, heavy and heavy. The Divine Flame Fire Fist fire was like a candle in a fierce wind. The fire core swayed left and right, then suddenly disappeared. The blood in Daniel's chest was boiling. He had no choice but to activate his elemental essence conversion to avoid the impact of the opponent's unparalleled strength. Ball lightning. Chief Soldier Williams grinned at the crackling lightning sparks in front of him. It's too late. Scorching sun hand. Chief Soldier Williams dug his hand into the elemental lightning ball. A powerful gene energy was thrown into the elemental body, and countless plasma scattered. Daniel's face darkened. The elemental body would not be injured, but the size of the elemental body meant that the gene energy was abundant. Chief Soldier Williams' attack had at least taken way one-fifth of his gene energy. Bang, bang, bang. Daniel did not have time to retreat. Chief Soldier Williams struck out three scorching sun hand strikes in a row. Two of his hands hit Daniel's body. His hand missed and hit the handrail of the stairs. Boom! The fire erupted. The expensive wood that was painted with fireproof paint set off a 30-meter large fire. The entire staircase was engulfed by flames in just a few seconds. Oh, it's on fire! Put out the fire! Run! The ordinary people who were mixed in the banquet had long lost the thought of watching the show. The ones who were still in the hall were all low-level awakened practitioners who had some strength. However, the flames that seemed to be able to swallow everything frightened them. Daniel was fine even after being hit by so many hand strikes, but what about them? If they were careless and took a hand strike, they would turn into ashes like the stairs in a blink of an eye. Not to mention the gene energy and all sorts of elemental attacks that flew out. One hit was heavy and would be a serious injury. The hall was filled with people fleeing in all directions. Everyone ran out of the Williams family residence to watch the battle. Daniel maintained a weak elemental conversion. As Chief Soldier Williams' attacks became increasingly heavy, Daniel was like a small boat in the middle of a storm. As the waves rose and fell, the electric ball became smaller and smaller, and the fire raged as he ran for his life. Daniel, your death is here. Chief Soldier Williams' face was full of ruthlessness. He jumped to the ceiling of the Williams residence and looked down at the tiny electric ball in the fire. Void Cicada Tyrant Hand. Separated by dozens of meters, Chief Soldier Williams' hand struck down from afar. The air in the entire room was grabbed by Chief Soldier Williams' hand and lost. As the air surged, the fire in the room rose sharply. When the remaining private soldiers in the room who were responsible for Daniel saw this, they turned around and ran. If Chief Soldier Williams' attack was accidentally brushed by it, he would die. Episode 235 No Beginning Devil Body Run! The awakened practitioner, who was wearing a light black uniform, kept rushing out of the Williams residence. The people surrounding the Williams residence were discussing the situation with each other. What a pity. Daniel is considered a genius of his generation, but in the end he will die in this poor place. What a pity. Geniuses who have yet to grow up are all geniuses with powerful backgrounds. Think back to the past. Chief Soldier Williams wasn't a genius. What bloodline expert didn't come here with the name of a genius? Amidst the noise, Lynn's beautiful eyes were filled with mist. Daniel had been in danger because of her, and Lynn had fallen into deep self-blame. She had unknowingly gripped the delicate dagger tightly in her hands and quietly held it in her sleeve. She secretly decided in her heart. If Daniel died, she would go with him. She would not be able to be his life partner. Then, after death, they would go to hell together. Albert's eyes were blurry, and he felt anxious. At this moment, Daniel was already a disciple of the Floating Frost Hall that he had decided to meet. It had been so many years since the Floating Frost Hall had found a satisfactory lineage. 
It was a pity that he had lost him here. If it was a critical moment, even if this old man had used all his strength to save Daniel, he would still save him from this dangerous situation. Cree? Cree? Chief Soldier Williams reached out with his hand. The air within a hundred meters of him flowed, and a highly compressed air current was grasped in his hand. A strange sound came from his hand as if there was a hiss. Boom. Chief Soldier Williams aimed at the electric ball below him and struck down with his hand. You don't know how to do it. Elemental essence conversion. This hand strike was earth shattering. Even Daniel, who had used elemental essence conversion, had to exhaust all of his gene energy to block it. I will let you live and die in your elemental essence conversion. The air pressure suddenly poured down, and Daniel heard the sound of wind whistling in his ears. Then, an unparalleled hand force pressed down from above his head. The nether devil's sense of danger kept coming. He had to change his move. The creation devil body. The violent power of thunder suddenly turned into a subtle fluctuation. Under the surging airflow and hand force, it was almost impossible to detect it. The gene energy revealed its ferocious side. In a martial artist's body, it was a gentle fluid. Once it left a martial artist's body, the gene energy was like a mortal enemy of matter and life, corroding all things they could encounter. The fire was extinguished by the energy storm. A cloud of thick smoke came out and spread out along with the airflow. The luxurious Williams family mansion was reduced to ruins by the corrosion of the gene energy. The owner of the Williams family mansion, Chief Soldier Williams, did not feel the slightest bit of heartache. The ground below was almost empty. No matter if it was the corpses of the bloodline warriors lying on the ground or the hard metal furniture, they were all destroyed by the energy storm. <laughs> Chief Soldier Williams' eyes lit up. He is still a young man after all. If I give him another ten years, I will definitely lose. What a pity for a genius. Let's go, let's go. Daniel. Lynn closed her eyes in pain. What she did not want to see happen, the most had happened. She would not live alone. In her sleeves, Lynn tightened her grip on the dagger in her hand. Daniel! Albert shouted out at the ruins filled with smoke and dust, but there was no movement inside. His heart was sinking. What a pity, the lineage of the floating frost hall. The heavens are not protecting the floating frost hall. Ha ha ha! Chief Soldier laughed. He didn't know why, but today he felt incomparably happy. He had just killed a half-step bloodline awakened practitioner, and this awakened practitioner had even harmed countless people of his. However, the feeling of crushing a genius was really pleasant. A rising star of tomorrow had been shattered by his hands. This feeling was even more pleasurable than the night he got married. Ha ha ha, Chief Soldier Williams frowned. He looked down and saw an unusual fluctuation in the runes. Damned old man, you are laughing too early. A dark figure walked out of the smoke. His voice was hoarse and ghostly, and the black smoke was drifting in the air. It was impossible to see his face clearly. However, judging from his figure and tone, Chief Soldier Williams immediately concluded that this person must be Daniel. Why wasn't he dead yet? While he was still in shock, Chief Williams suddenly thought of even more terrible information. The black silhouette was immune to the damage of energy. When the information was combined, it was clear that this was one of the 14 families in Texas. This was the gene chain of the no-beginning devil birth. No wonder! Chief Williams suddenly thought of something else. No wonder Daniel could defeat the strong with the weak. No wonder Daniel had the blood flame wave. This was a kind of strange gene chain. Where did this genius come from? This Daniel was simply a disciple of the capital city who had left Texas. Chief Williams wished he could smash these swines to pieces. If it wasn't for them making him deal with Daniel, there wouldn't be so many problems. No way. Chief Soldier Williams' eyes narrowed. Daniel must die. Once he returned to the King City, his Williams family would have nowhere to survive. Stop right there. Before he could raise his hand, 
His other hand grabbed his wrist tightly. He was safe. Daniel heaved a sigh of relief. The darkness on his body faded bit by bit. The life form of the no-beginning devil could only be maintained for a short period. Once he continued to fight Chief Soldier Williams, he would lose without a doubt. There were no prominent injuries on his body, but the gene energy in his body was severely lacking. The cells in his body were crying and waiting to be fed. Every muscle fiber was faintly twitching, and his body could not bear the burden anymore. Daniel did not even look at the situation above him. He quickly took out the beast core from the nanometer compressor and replenished the gene energy in his body. Chief Williams looked over angrily. The one who stopped him was Chase, the disciple who came from Texas to collect the resources for Dwayne Devilmaster. Does your noble palace want to stop me as well? Chase shook his head gently. It's not the noble palace that wants to stop you, it's me who wants to stop you. Behind Chase, a few scattered figures walked out from the streets. Each of them was a bloodline expert, and each of them carried the ultimate secret techniques of Texas. It wasn't a force that the City of Ruins could afford to offend. What frightened them the most was the force behind them. Noble palace, Dwayne Devilmaster. This old devil had lived for an unknown number of years. Ten years ago, he had mobilized all his forces to attack the position of the Great Sovereign. Although he had suffered a crushing defeat, in the end, he was still strong. Now that he had returned with great fanfare, all his disciples were following him. In the Noble Palace, there were countless bloodline experts. Any one of them could become the king of the place. Daniel! Chase shouted at the figures below. Raise your strength as soon as possible. In a few years, even if you can only touch the corner of senior sister Nala's body, you would still be qualified to serve her. If you are not strong enough, you can't even enter the noble palace. Daniel raised his head and looked up. He did not say anything, but in his heart, he fiercely exhaled, touching Nala's corners. No matter what, he had to stand at the same height as Nala, neck and neck. Episode 236, The Floating Frost Hall Chase said these words coldly, but his heart was aching. When Duane returned from the Noble Palace, he had been looking forward to hearing this news every day. Who knew that in the end, he would get Duane's cold and ruthless words, let's not meet again in the future. Since then, Chase had never seen Duane again. As a lowly nominal disciple, he could only vaguely hear that his wife and a disciple of the noble palace were inseparable and always accompanied each other. You have a good fiancé. Chase was extremely envious of Daniel. Ka -ka -ka -ka. Chief Williams, who was standing beside him, clenched his fist so hard that his eyes turned red. However, this couldn't change the outcome of the manor. Seizing the opportunity to launch a sneak attack on Daniel, what about the hostility of the noble palace? Let Daniel go? Such an enemy with incredible potential, how would he deal with it when they found him in the future? After Daniel absorbed a few beast core, he slipped to Lynn's side and pulled her wrist to leave. Albert followed closely behind. Under the watchful eyes of everyone, the three of them left openly. Everyone sighed. A half-step bloodline warrior had killed so many bloodline warriors of Chief Soldier Williams, and in the end, he still swaggered away. However, they could boast about this matter for many years. Daniel. This name was firmly engraved in the hearts of many people. What Daniel did not see was that behind Chase, his fellow disciples were looking at him with envy and jealousy. One of them had the coldest and most serious look in his eyes. Why would such a man be Senior Sister Nala's fiancé? If I get rid of him, wouldn't Senior Sister Nala have no fiancé? The three of them did not say a word. They ran like crazy, and after leaving everyone's sight, they ran faster and faster. Lynn said in a low voice, Where are we going? Hide. What about Black? Lynn asked. Albert chuckled. I have already made arrangements. He walked to the street and called out softly, Big, stupid bear. A dirty bear crawled out of a garbage truck by the roadside. It was stupid and clumsy. 
It didn't know how it climbed up, but when it got out of the garbage truck, it even fell. When it saw Daniel, it screamed and wanted to pounce on him with the unique sour smell of garbage. Daniel threw Black onto the ground with a slap. How awful was he? Didn't this stupid bear know? After slapping Black to the ground, Daniel threw a few bottles of Jean drug at it. Black threw himself onto the Jean drug and happily licked it. Albert looked around to make sure that no one was following him. Then he carefully said, Follow me. I bought a place to stay. Before the Great River remains open, we must not go anywhere. All right. Albert was indeed the only disciple of the secret inheritance. He usually wore tattered clothes and could not see anything. However, he bought a huge courtyard that was nearly a thousand square meters with a casual bid. It was a single villa with a secluded backyard. The front, back, and back gardens as well as a swimming pool were all available. There were only a few scattered buildings in the vicinity. The location was very hidden and very quiet. Daniel and Lynn were very satisfied. In the living room, three cups of tea were served on the tea table. Albert's eyes were unusually serious. He was completely different from the old man who used to laugh and curse. Daniel, today I will seriously ask you one more time. Are you willing to accept the inheritance of the floating frost hall? Daniel could not help but become serious. Senor, please tell me about this floating frost hall. Albert waved his hand. It's not too late to tell me about the origin of the floating frost hall in the future. I only want to tell you about the rights and obligations of the floating frost hall. Join the floating frost hall. I will pass down all the inheritance in the palace to you, and there is only one obligation. When the time is right, you will find a person with great talent in the future. There is a bottom line to everything. Spread on the inheritance of our floating frost hall. We must not let it end just like that. Albert was very excited. It was a branch of the Nine Pole School in the floating frost hall, and the Nine Pole School was backed by the Guild Alliance. Their idea was to flatten all the strange beasts in the world one day and restore a civilization of mankind. However, this is very difficult. I won't ask you to dive into this imaginary career. We have been fighting for so long, but we are still nowhere to be found. Take your time. Albert pointed at the house and some of the maids in it. They are the reinforcements from the Nine Pools School. They can be considered family. You can ask them if you need anything. Daniel nodded solemnly. In conclusion, the Floating Frost Hall was a popular place, and its duty was to take in disciples in the future. Its power was countless inheritance resources. As long as there was such a choice in front of them, only an idiot would not choose. Albert would take in disciples on behalf of his master. He faced the smiling old man, served tea, and kowtowed nine times. Daniel was now a member of the Floating Frost Hall. All right, Albert praised. He turned around and looked around. Except for a smiling little girl, there was no one else who cheered for him. He pointed at Lynn. Little girl, come over and kowtow. You'll be a disciple of the Floating Frost Hall in the future. Huh? Lynn was stunned for a moment and then suddenly burst into joy. That was good. If they joined the Floating Frost Hall together, she would be closer to Daniel. Only after half an hour did she know that her thoughts were wrong. Daniel was Albert's substitute disciple, while Lynn was Albert's disciple. Lynn pitifully served Albert tea. Master. Then she called Daniel even more unwillingly. Uncle Master. Daniel nodded with a smile that was not a smile, which made Lynn feel bad. In terms of age, she was a little older than Daniel, but how did she become Uncle Master's junior disciple? It is done. Albert waved his hand with a smile. Girl, you can leave now. I want to pass the inheritance of the Floating Frost Hall to Daniel. Lynn walked out of the living room leisurely. Albert said to Daniel seriously, 
Daniel, you must increase your strength as soon as possible. There is still a chance to fight for the 300 people quota of the City of the Ruins, and I hope you can get one spot. Okay. Albert took out two small booklets. One of them was old and worn out booklet. It seemed to be everywhere. The other one was a thick ice blue color. When it was thrown onto the coffee table, a crisp sound was heard, as if it was not a book but a piece of ice. Let's not talk much. The first book is the Bloodline Awakening notes gathered by all the seniors of the Floating Frost Hall. The other book is the core inherent and heart technique of the Floating Frost Hall, the Ice Heart Technique. Inherited Heart Sutra? Daniel frowned. Albert gently stroked the blue ice. The inherited mental cultivation method was passed down in the civilized era. It has been passed down for thousands of years. Daniel, those secret techniques are just worldly possessions. But this inherited mental cultivation method is the most precious thing in the floating frost hall. Episode 237 All His Might In the secret chamber, Daniel flipped through the book for a long time, but it was written in an ancient language. Even the words were very different from the modern Mandarin. The entire book was difficult to understand and difficult to read. Daniel helplessly picked up the tattered booklet and carefully read it. The bloodline awakening referred to an awakened practitioner's special bloodline after reaching 10 gene chains. After opening the gene lock, an awakened practitioner's gene chain would awaken a special bloodline. As long as he had 10 gene chains, he would be able to awaken his bloodline. Some people quickly passed this stage. Some people were stuck after 10 gene chains and were only a half a step away. There were many ways to help an awakened practitioner cross this half a step away from the heavenly chasm, such as life and death, stimulation, and meditation. These were the methods mentioned in this booklet. Daniel pondered for a moment, then took out a large number of strange beast materials and beast core from his nanometer compressor and started the gene extraction. Even though it was difficult to awaken 10 gene chains, he could try to have 13, 15, or even 20. He had a gene panel, so why would he be afraid of this bit of difficulty? The only thing he was afraid of was not having enough time. The great ruins were about to open, and Nala was also waiting for him in Texas. Fast. He must be fast. Gene extraction. Extraction failed. Gene extraction. Extracting successful. Congratulations to the host for obtaining this sandwing lizard gene chain. Incomplete sandwing lizard gene chain, 22% complete. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the thousand blade demon tiger gene chain. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the windstorm dragon gene chain. In an hour, Daniel had used up most of the beast core and exotic beast materials. After the exotic beast extracted the broken limbs and the beast core, the dregs were piled up all over the ground. A casual move from Daniel would stir up a cloud of dust on the ground. Fifteen gene chains. This was the result of Daniel's one-hour extraction. If outsiders found out that Daniel only needed an hour to harvest five gene chains, any power would go crazy over it. Even the geniuses of Texas would need to consume the spring water that was rich in gene energy. The carefully cooked exotic beast meat and the absorption ability of the human body's stomach was limited. This process also required the assistance of various secret techniques and mental cultivation methods. Only then would they become the geniuses of Texas. Just like Nala, who was born with potential, those who were only one step away from attracting true talent were extremely rare. Perhaps the entire world could also be counted with two hands and two legs. Daniel's talent was ordinary. He could catch up to all kinds of geniuses by relying on the gene panel. If it was obtained by outsiders, they would definitely capture Daniel, pull out his bones, and carefully study him. Merge. Daniel formed a seal. The blood in his body surged and boiled like magma. This was a relatively normal but luxurious bloodline awakening method. Success meant crossing the dragon gate, and failure would result in the permanent loss of a gene chain. 
For an ordinary awakened practitioner who had wasted half of his life, a gene chain could not be said to be precious. Hot heat rose from his lower abdomen and quickly spread through his entire body. Without using any gene energy, Daniel was like a man on fire, his skin like the shell of a large lobster. Crack, crack, crack. A strange sound came from within his body. This was the gene chain being unable to bear the burden, causing all of the cells in his body to go berserk. His muscles and bones were all under tremendous pressure. Pain constantly came from his four limbs. That was the rupture of his muscles and tendons. Whenever there were muscle fibers that were damaged, the gene energy would rush forward to help repair them. It kept swaying between the repair and the rupture. Daniel felt pain and itchiness all over his body. Bang. With a dull sound, Daniel's face turned slightly green. His first attempt to break through his bloodline had failed. The second time, again. In the hall, after Daniel entered the secret room, Albert had been quietly drinking tea outside the room. For so many years, Albert had been used to seeing wind, rain, and separation. He had always thought there was nothing that could move him, but today he had been on tender hooks. Since a junior brother of his had fallen into the ruins of the Great River ten years ago and was unable to escape, Albert had thought that there would be no more bloodline experts in the floating frost hall ever again, but now he saw a glimmer of hope. He had been stuck in the sixth gene chain for so long that there was definitely no hope anymore, but perhaps Daniel could still do it. He was the hope of the floating frost hall. There would be a day when the floating frost hall could return to the Nine Pole School with glory. As Albert was thinking, he suddenly heard a cracking sound. His expression changed and he stood up from the sofa. Oh no. Daniel tried to awaken his bloodline and broke a gene chain. Albert was extremely familiar with this sound, especially the gene fluctuation that spread out. It carried a desolate smell on his back. This was the final sound of the cracking gene chain. He settled down and looked in the direction of the secret chamber with concern. There was not much movement inside. Fortunately, Albert calmed down. Daniel was still young. Losing a gene chain was not a big deal. He could make up for it in a few years. It was just that he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to go to the ruins of the Great River. Bang! Albert heard another muffled sound. This time... His expression turned strange. Just then, one of Daniel's ten gene chains had broken into the secret chamber. Now, there should only be nine of them. What was the second sound? He felt some fluctuations. That's right. It was the smell of a failed bloodline awakening. Could it be that the nine gene chains could also attempt to awaken his bloodline? Albert's mind was a mess. He didn't understand what was going on. This was very illogical. Bang! Another sound came from the secret room. Albert was half shocked and half suspicious. Eight gene chains could awaken one bloodline? In any case, he did not believe it. But the truth was right in front of him and he could not figure it out. Forget it, forget it. It's because this kid has extraordinary talent. What's so special about him? Albert did not care about the cracking sound of the gene chain beside his ear. Since Daniel was safe and sound in the secret room, it meant that he could handle this situation. He thought of the time when he was teaching Daniel the secret manuals such as blood surge, spiral spikes, and the blood sacrifice technique. Daniel was able to finish one book in an hour. This kid was a monster. It was ridiculous. Albert once again sat down on the sofa and thought to himself, I want to count how many gene chains you can crack today. Bang! Daniel sat down with his legs crossed. His face was slightly pale, and his brows were tightly furrowed. The awakening of this bloodline was really difficult. If it was an ordinary awakened practitioner, he really wouldn't be able to withstand the continuous shattering of the four gene chains. But who asked him to have so many gene chains? Even if these five shattered, he could still prepare another five by fiercely eating the exotic beast meat. I still have 11 more gene chains left. I'll try again. If I fail, I'll rest for a bit. 
Daniel's expression was focused as he threw all his attention into the chaos within his body. The collapse of the gene chain produced a large amount of wandering gene fragments, as well as the chaotic gene energy. Daniel formed a series of hand seals, causing blood to flow through his entire body like a river. Pop! Episode 238 Bloodline Awakening Shadow Row With a crisp sound, Daniel's body seemed to have opened up some kind of aperture. Every cell in his body became lively, as if they had been starving for a long time, crazily devouring every drop of energy they could come into contact with. His body was originally hot. This was the accumulation of energy caused by the broken gene strands. This heat was rapidly reducing, and the red color on his face was slowly fading away. The bloodline awakening was successful. To be precise, it was a success of more than half. The cell's activity increased sharply, and the amount of energy they needed increased by several times. This process could be said to be extremely dangerous. During the process of the cells accumulating energy, if energy was lacking, the cells would devour the awakened practitioner's flesh and suck him dry. Daniel took a pile of beast cores and crazily extracted them. The number of beast cores in the gene extraction weapon decreased, and soon the bottom was revealed. Pop, pop, pop. It was done. A look of surprise flashed across Daniel's eyes. After that, his expression changed, and everything in front of him became distorted. Darkness spread in every corner of the secret chamber. His body was erratic, and he had lost his shape. He stretched out his hand and grabbed at the darkness. A warm feeling came over as if it was not darkness but the vision of a sunny day. A message popped up from the gene panel. Congratulations to the host for awakening the bloodline. Shadow Walker Bloodline. Bloodline Skill. Shadow Roar. Dark Domain. Twilight Divine Thunder. No beginning dame in birth, and dark flame undulation. Bloodline talent, nightmare shadow. This was awesome. Daniel was wild with joy. Other than the dark demon touch gene chain that was still standing there, the rest of the gene chain in his body had been absorbed by his newly awakened bloodline. On the surface, it seemed like half of the gene chain talents were gone. However, a common skill like the Divine Flame Fist could be made up for with the secret manuals of the Floating Frost Hall. The remaining genetic ability was Daniel's trump card, and they had all been strengthened. Daniel was full of confidence on this trip to the ancient ruins. Outside the secret chamber, Albert's excitement turned into worry. The tea in his hands was filled with one cup after another, and he even went to the toilet many times. Teacher, how is Daniel? Lynn poured a cup of hot tea for Albert, her eyes full of worry. Albert shook his head. There's no problem. We can wait for him to come out. In Albert's heart, Daniel's talent was very high. There would be plenty of opportunities in the future, so he was not in a hurry. There were two new successors in the Floating Frost Hall, so he was not in a hurry to continue spreading the news. He was a young man, so he could afford to wait. <coughs> The door of the secret chamber was pushed open, and Daniel's footsteps could be heard from inside. Albert was the first to stand up. He spoke in a gentle voice. Daniel, it's fine even if you fail. There's no rush in cultivating. We... Yes. Daniel stepped out of the secret chamber. Behind him, a dark shadow followed suit. Most people had shadows, but Daniel's was different. Although it was from his legs... He seemed to have an independent personality. Sometimes he was half a beat slower, and sometimes he couldn't wait to walk up to Daniel. Daniel stuck his head out and looked around as if he was a stranger walking into someone else's house. He walked straight to the two of them and sat down on the sofa. Why? Why are you looking at me like that? Your... your shadow. Lynn was tongue-tied. Daniel laughed and looked at Albert proudly. Seen your brother. I didn't let you down, right? Albert was not only not disappointed, but he was also pleasantly surprised. This was the awakening of his bloodline. He actually succeeded. My floating frost hall finally has another bloodline warrior. Yes, Albert sniffled, his eyes also carrying some tears. 
Ever since he lost his junior brother in the Great River Ruins ten years ago, this was the first time he was so happy. Good, good. Albert was relieved. Junior brother, what do you plan to do next? A fierce light flashed in Daniel's eyes. I want to get a slot for the rogue practitioner in the Great River Relic first. Then I will try that, Chief Williams. Junior brother. Albert wanted to say something but stopped himself. Forget it. You should be careful. What? Daniel looked at Albert. Albert sighed. You have just awakened your bloodline, and you have lost a lot of gene chain talents. Your techniques are not as good as before. Besides, bloodline experts are also divided into different levels. Chief Soldier Williams is ranked last among the few chief soldiers in the City of the Ruins. A few chief soldiers are the same. You have offended a family, which means you have offended many families at the same time. A trace of fear flashed across Albert's eyes. And the strongest chief soldier is only multiple bloodlines in the City of the Ruins. The secret techniques you have learned are even more numerous. If you offend them, it will be very troublesome. When Daniel heard this, he could not help but frown. Now that he was up against Chief Soldier Williams, he had about 70 to 80% confidence. However, he did not dare to rashly try against multiple bloodline experts that he had never heard of before. I understand. Then I'll put Chief Soldier Williams in the ruins of the Great River to settle it. Daniel left the room without looking back. Lynn's heart was filled with joy and bitterness as she watched Daniel walk out of the room. She was happy that Daniel had improved. She was happy for him. But the bitter part was that she was even further away from him. He was high and mighty, making her feel like she would never be able to chase after him. Daniel's nightmare shadow suddenly turned around. The dark shadow opened its mouth and smiled at Lynn and then waved its right hand. Lynn instantly smiled like a flower. The rogue practitioner, who had 300 spots, was fighting for it. This was only the second day. The smell of blood spread from the city walls of the City of the Ruins to the end of the city. The intensity of the fight had exceeded the expectations of most people. Those who were afraid of trouble had long withdrawn from the fight for the spots and stayed at home, not even daring to step out of the door. Some people formed groups. After those who fell behind on the hunting list obtained the placards from those who had the placings, they started to fight for the ownership of the placards. The entire city of the ruins fell into the most primitive chaos. Daniel frowned as he looked at the street filled with the scent of blood. Every household had its doors and windows tightly shut. It was silent and dead. Boom! Daniel heard the sound of intense fighting and faint cries for help. Help! I'll give you all the things! Let me go! Stop fighting! Stop fighting! I beg you! Daniel faintly heard the voices of a man and a woman and their voices were mixed with even more chaotic howls as well as many filthy words. The city of the ruins has suddenly become so chaotic. A good city has become so chaotic. The person who set this rule deserves to die. Daniel quickened his pace and rushed in that direction without hesitation. The wind was blowing in his ears. Daniel's speed was more than twice as fast as before. Soon, he arrived at the place where the incident had happened. A group of people densely surrounded them, and two men and women who were calling for help were in the middle. Daniel suddenly stopped in his tracks. Episode 240 Robbery Leader, this is the list of resources. Leader, this is the list of people. A gang member with a cold look in his eyes said fiercely, some of the Walker Family Branch Association employees aren't willing to go back with us. Then deal with it. The Blood Evil Gang's sect master said casually, as if they weren't talking about the lives of humans. The Blood Evil Gang's sect master was different from the group of vicious and evil men. He was just over 30 years old, and because of some lucky chance, he had awakened his bloodline power. It could be said that he had a bright future ahead of him. However, his ambition also rapidly increased along with the growth of his strength. Why did he still work for others? He lowered his head and was busy, submissive, and didn't want to be bothered. He wanted to be the boss. He wanted to have his power. 
Because of this, the Blood Evil Gang was born. Sackmaster, a clever gang member cautiously reminded him. After all, the Walker Family Branch Association is the money bag of the big shots in the City of Ruins. If we rob them like this, won't we annoy them? Also, the recently famous Daniel is related to the Walker Family Branch Association. I'm afraid. The gang leader turned his head and looked at the gang member. He said with a serious expression, What do you know? There's no pattern at all. The Blood Evil Gang stood at a high place and looked far into the distance. Their eyes were filled with the wealth of the Walker Family Branch Association. The rigid Terragoy Association was able to take down the Walker Family's auction of the Great River City. What's wrong with our Blood Evil Gang eating a branch? Do you think that the major figures in the Great River City don't have any shares? The rigid Terragoy Association is still alive and well. As for Daniel, the eyes of the Blood Evil Gang's leader lit up. He was chased by Chief Soldier from the City of the Ruins like a rabbit. If I were him, I would hide far away. I'm afraid he has already left the City of the Ruins. The leader is wise. Boom. There was a loud noise in the distance. At the same time, a cloud of dust rose, and the white smoke pierced into the sky diagonally. What's going on? The Blood Evil Gang's sect master frowned and pointed in the direction of the warehouse. Is there someone from the Walker Family Branch Association hiding there? Is the battle very intense? Boom! Another vibration was heard. The sound of the intense battle stopped completely. The sounds of cursing and begging for mercy stopped abruptly. Not bad, not bad. The Blood Evil Gang's sect master praised. He defeated his opponent with just two strikes. Who was in charge of that area? The deputy sect master behind him had a strange expression on his face. All of his subordinates were in charge of the warehouse. The strongest one was only his trusted aide, who only had six gene chains. How could the power of the two of the six gene chains be so powerful? The commotion just now had caused one of the buildings to collapse, right? This Walker Family Branch Association building was not a brick house for ordinary residents. The main material used to build the building was reinforced concrete mixed with star steel. Even though the deputy sect master was an awakened practitioner with nine gene chains, it would be difficult for him to destroy a building. Sect master. The deputy sect master was about to speak when something shot out from the smoke in the distance and fell in front of the sect master and the deputy sect master. A gang member dressed in a blood red uniform was lying and rolling on the ground. His face, which was filled with fear, finally stopped in front of him. Impudent! The leader of the Blood Evil Gang flew into a rage. Ever since he became the leader of the Blood Evil Gang, no one had ever dared to provoke him. Huh. The Blood Evil Gang's sectmaster shouted. Today is the day of chaos in the City of Ruins, and it is also time for our Blood Evil Gang to establish our prestige. Brothers, Follow me down there and capture that little thief. Long live the Blood Evil Gang. Daniel wandered around in the Walker Family Branch Association's warehouse. When he left the Walker Family Branch Association, he only took away some middle-grade beast core and the exotic beast materials, as well as a huge amount of low-grade beast core and miscellaneous items. There were still at least 10 tons left. However, the warehouse was indeed empty now and the sound of people walking could be heard. Behind Daniel was the female employee who had been rescued from the street. She was wearing high heels, which were particularly eye-catching. Daniel's ears twitched. There was movement in front of him. He grabbed the female employee's arm and stopped her from moving forward. The female employee, who was in shock, was about to scream. She felt something covering her mouth. It was gloomy and chilly. When she fixed her eyes on it, she saw a strange black thing extending out from Daniel's body. What the hell is that thing? The female employee's legs went soft. If it wasn't for the black monster dragging her, she wouldn't even be able to stand steadily. The nightmare devil shadow noticed that the person in his arms was observing him. She turned her head and opened her mouth. The originally smooth mouth split open and one could faintly see the ferocious fangs inside. The nightmare devil shadow laughed very brightly, 
but the person in his arms did not seem to think so. Her trembling body seemed to have frozen. Daniel lowered his breathing and looked forward with a burning gaze. Bang! 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 Several disciples of the blood evil gang who were wearing blood red clothes cursed as they knocked on the door. Break open the door. The storage room was locked so tightly there must be someone inside. I hear the little girl crying. We'll each take one today. Let me do it. Let me do it. A fat man pulled away from the gang members who were surrounding the junk room. He was about two or three meters wide, and the greasy fat on his body was trembling with his movements. Paul, oh, master, someone is hiding inside. The gang members hurriedly made way for him, and someone added impatiently, There is a woman inside. Since the help isn't here, we... The fat hallmaster's eyes lit up and his heart was wild with joy. He kept muttering, Let's work harder together. The door opened and everyone has a share. Work harder. Boom. A few hundred kilograms of weight caused a crack to appear on the small iron door of the storage room. Ah! Oh. An exclamation of surprise came from inside. The blood evil gang members outside the storage room became even more excited. It was indeed the female staff of the Walker Family Branch Association who had not left yet. Boom! The crack was pushed open even more. The disciples of blood evil gang could see that there were many pairs of eyes peeking through the crack, and there were quite a number of them inside. The hallmaster pushed the gang members to the side and patted his greasy chest. All of you move aside. I'm going to use the genetic ability to blast open this iron door. The eyes of the crowd lit up. This hallmaster was an expert with seven gene chains. He was also a great expert who could control a region in the south of the desert. He resided in the city of ruins for the sake of lucky chances. With the full force of the seven gene chains expert attacks, it was easy for them to blast open a metal door. Ha! The hallmaster shouted. The gene energy in his body suddenly rose, and the air was filled with a strong energy aura. The gang members hurriedly dodged. Not everyone had a sense of propriety when it came to using a skill from an expert. If they were affected by the violent genetic ability, no one would be able to reason with them. Even if they died, it would be in vain. Roar of the Raging Bear the hallmaster's body was covered in brown fur, and his aura was soaring. There were two footprints on the ground, and the creaking iron door seemed to be able to be opened with a gentle push. Episode 241 Rescue Wait. Before the master of the blood evil gang could use the genetic ability, the small iron door creaked and opened from the inside. A cowering man came out of the small iron door with his head in his arms. I surrender. I'm willing to surrender. The man was wearing a blue uniform. It was obvious that he was also an employee of the Walker Family Branch Association. A wave of angry curses burst out from the small iron door. Bastard Martin, run away at the last minute, you bastard. You want to join the blood evil gang, Martin, you soft egg trash. As Martin pulled the iron door out, he retorted, What do you know? This is called abandoning the darkness and joining the light. The Walker Family Branch Association is gone. It is the proper business for us to seek refuge with the Blood Evil Gang. In the storeroom, several men and women were fighting with Martin for control of the iron door. The iron door was about to close little by little. The hallmaster laughed. What a useless thing. I guarantee that you will be able to make a name for yourself in the Blood Evil Gang. Ha <laughs> ha! Open it for me. The Hallmaster grabbed the edge of the iron door with his furry hand and pulled it out. With a bang, he broke the entire folding page. A chaotic scream came out of the storage room. The small storage room was filled with more than a dozen Walker Family Branch Association employees. The eyes of the members of the Blood Evil Gang lit up. No wonder they couldn't find anyone in the Walker Family Branch Association. It turned out that they were all hiding here. 
Master, master. Martin licked his lips and smiled as he moved closer to the hall master. Sir, I am the warehouse manager from the Blood Evil Gang. I know who is the richest and most beautiful among these people. Martin, I will kill you first. In the storage room, an awakened practitioner suddenly jumped out. He held a sharp knife in his hand and stabbed Martin. The sharp knife was about to touch Martin's nose when the Blood Evil Gang's hallmaster grabbed the awakened practitioner's arm. Crack! The sharp knife fell to the ground with a clang. You want to kill someone in front of me? Get lost! As expected of the beast transformation of the gene chain, the master of the Blood Evil Gang waved his hand like a bear, and with a single hand, he slapped the awakened practitioner who was attacking him until blood flowed out of his eyes, nose, and mouth, and he was sent flying more than 10 meters away. With a bang, he smashed into the iron sheet between the miscellaneous objects, creating an obvious dent. Oh, ooh! The members of the Blood Evil Gang cheered. Martin laughed loudly. I told you not to resist the Blood Evil Gang. The adults of the Blood Evil Gang are all awakened practitioners. We only have a few awakened practitioners. Isn't it good for us to surrender to the Blood Evil Gang early on? Ha ha ha. As the members of the Blood Evil Gang got closer, the faces of the people in the storeroom became increasingly pale, especially the faces of one or two young girls who were in the prime of their youth. Tears streamed down their face. Don't touch them. The awakened practitioner, who was covered in blood, staggered up from the ground. Although he was exhausted, he still used his body to block the small door of the storage room. The hallmaster's face darkened. With a pinch of his hand, he lifted the awakened practitioner from the ground. I was in a good mood and going to hold back until now. Do you really think I won't dare to kill you? Uh, uh. The awakened practitioner opened his mouth. His throat was stuck and he couldn't say anything. Crack, crack, crack. As the strength of the Blood Evil Gang's hallmaster increased, the sound of bones cracking could be heard. Enough! Daniel walked out from the corner of the wall, his face full of coldness. His patience had been completely exhausted. He could not get any information from these useless people. He just wanted to get a token. Daniel walked out and followed a nervous and timid branch female employee behind him. Daniel's shadow had quietly disappeared. Can you tell me if the Blood Evil Gang has a token of inheritance? Token of inheritance? The disciples of the Blood Evil Gang looked at each other, then burst into laughter. Where did this silly kid come from? Why did he ask them for a token of inheritance? Idiot! Our Blood Evil Gang is a force that has been acknowledged by Chief Soldier Williams. Our sect master doesn't need to fight with his life on the line. He only has a token. This kid is stupid, but the woman behind him looks pretty good. Martin suddenly jumped up. Hallmaster, the woman behind him is a famous beauty of the Walker Family Branch Association. Even our supervisor couldn't catch up to her. Oh. The hallmaster of the Blood Evil Gang put down the cripple in his hand and looked behind Daniel in high spirits. A fierce light flashed in Daniel's eyes. Who asked you to talk so much in front of me? He flicked his right finger, and a dark shadow shot out. What the heck? The fat hallmaster reached out his hand and grabbed the dark shadow. Unlike what he had expected, the inconspicuous dark shadow was not a concealed weapon, but an extremely strange gene energy. With a bang, the gene energy exploded in his hand. His five fingers exploded, and his right arm was bare from his wrist. His white bones were exposed in the open. Oh! The fat hallmaster fell to the ground with a loud bang. He held his right arm and his broken limbs rolled on the ground. He had enjoyed so much in the Blood Evil Gang, and he had never suffered such severe pain before. Martin widened his eyes and felt a warmth in his trousers. If that drop of shadow hit his forehead just now, his head would have shattered like a watermelon. The Blood Evil gang members were stunned on the spot. The power of one strike had knocked down a hallmaster. This kind of ruthless person was not a bloodline warrior, but must be a high-level awakened practitioner. 
Only the sect master could deal with him. The girls in the storage room felt like they had just survived a disaster. Tears gushed out of their eyes. If they were taken by the Blood Evil Gang and trapped in that dangerous place, their future life could be imagined. Master. Martin's legs went soft. He knelt on the ground and moved his knees in front of Daniel. Sir, I am innocent. I am not the same person as the Blood Evil Gang. I had no choice but to do it just now. Martin, you're so disgusting. In the storage room, a bold girl spat out in anger. Martin kneeled when he saw her. No wonder he was able to climb to the top of the Walker Family Branch Association. Daniel glanced at Martin, then lifted his leg and walked away. Sorry, I don't accept trash. A dark shadow rushed out from Daniel's body. What was supposed to come would always come. Bang! A wisp of dark shadow energy shot straight into Martin's brain. This time, no one was able to block this attack for him. A headless corpse fell to the ground. Blood spattered on the ground like an explosion, and the smell of blood filled the air. Daniel waved at the employees of the Walker Family Branch Association. All of you, retreat into the underground safety shelter. Don't come out again for the next 10 days. The employees of the Walker Family Branch Association wiped away their tears and left with gratitude. The little girl behind Daniel waved at him and his shadow with gratitude and left reluctantly. In the noisy storeroom, there were only a dozen or so people from the Blood Evil Gang who were shocked and didn't dare to move. As long as a black object was thrown at them, not to mention their heads falling to the ground, even their heads would turn into mush. How could these disciples of the Blood Evil Gang, who cherished their lives, dare to joke about their own lives? Sectmaster, why aren't you here yet? Episode 239, The Power of the Shadow That's not right. Daniel sensed that the atmosphere was completely different when he probed the area with his dark demon touch. The man and woman who were surrounded were not as miserable as they sounded. They were surrounded by the crowd and could not see anything. However, the nether devils sensed that the two of them were not sad at all. Instead, they had smiles on their faces as they shouted and laughed. The strength of the two of them was obviously much higher than the surrounding people. This group of people had long discovered who Daniel was. As they put on a show, they discussed in low voices. He's here. He's here. Silly kid is coming. Why isn't he moving? After all, we're being cautious. This time we'll act a bit more like it. If we have a token, we'll be able to earn a lot. Unfortunately, what they did not know was that after Daniel awakened his bloodline, his hearing had also increased several times. They could not hide this fact from Daniel at all. So that's how it was. This thought flashed through Daniel's mind. They were here to fish. They were here to fish for those with a sense of justice. Daniel quickened his pace and became faster and faster. His whole body seemed to blend into the wind, and he moved as fast as he could. Why is he so fast? He must be a high-level awakened practitioner. Be careful. Don't let him escape. The crowd dispersed, revealing a man and woman hiding in the center. The woman, an awakened practitioner, was a powerful warrior with nine gene chains. Even if she was no match for him, as long as she did not encounter a half-step bloodline warrior, she would still have a chance to escape. Unfortunately, they met Daniel. He ran so fast. He wants to escape. The crowd took their weapons one after another. Visible gazes were cast from both sides of the road. If the man and woman were to fight, the residents hiding in the dark would not mind taking advantage of the situation. The leading young woman's heart trembled. Her probing aura was like mud flowing into the sea, never to return. The other party was an expert. Dark domain. A dark domain extended out from under Daniel's feet. Anyone who was covered by it would be unable to move once they fell into the darkness. Only a pair of eyeballs rolled around. Run! The male awakened practitioner, whose strength was about seven gene chains, pushed the female youth beside him pushing her towards Daniel while he turned around and ran. In the face of his life, he could care less that the female was his boss and the person next to him. His escape was the most important. 
A black shadow flashed in Daniel's hand. A dark shadow rushed out and smashed into the body of the only person who had escaped from the dark domain. His footsteps paused, and he lost control of his body, causing blood to flow incessantly. He fell to the ground with a thud. He did not move at all. Only the pool of blood under his body proved that he had lost his life. The female youth fell at Daniel's feet and begged pitifully. Big brother, I was wrong. I have never killed anyone. I was forced to do so. Daniel looked at her and asked faintly, Do you have a token in your hand? The young woman shook her head. If she had a token, why would she set up an ambush here? She would have brought people to hide and eat in peace. Daniel lost interest when he heard that. He lifted his leg and stepped over the female youth. The female youth heaved a sigh of relief. She was saved. Would he show a mercy to a woman? His thoughts spread out. Her eyes lit up. This person was so strong. There must be a lot of good stuff in his hands. The female youth looked at Daniel, who was just a step away from her. His back had been completely exposed to her. This was a great opportunity. He felt pity for the female. He would never have thought that she would make a move against him. Divine Eagle Blood Claw. The young woman suddenly exploded. Both of her hands emitted a red light as she aimed at Daniel's skull and clawed downward. When her hand was only two inches away from Daniel, her body suddenly stopped and a chill came from her chest. Suddenly, a black shadow stretched out an arm and it inserted it into her chest, and the gloomy, dark energy took away her life force. You are a monster. The female youth's eyes widened. She fell to the ground and died with everlasting regret. Daniel did not step forward. The black shadow that killed the female youth shook the blood on his hands. The extended shadow was retracted back to Daniel's heels. It was no different from an ordinary person. Yes. The people on both sides of the road withdrew their gazes and hid back home. This mysterious person who passed by was definitely not someone to be trifled with. It was unknown whether it was a bizarre genetic ability or a bloodline ability. The shadow actually existed independently from its owner. This person was too dangerous. Daniel did not take what happened to heart at all. He raised his head and looked around. Where could he get a token? He walked slowly in his thoughts. He did not know how long he had walked. Ah. Daniel was pulled back to reality by a scream. A woman in a blue uniform was running along the street. The uniform she wore looked very familiar. One of her shoes was also flung away, and her fleshy stockings were full of holes. Wasn't this the uniform of the Walker Family Branch Association? Daniel and the others left the branch of the Walker Family Ruined City. The original manager of the branch, Fred, was killed by Daniel and the Williams family. The entire Walker Family Branch Association had fallen into an unguarded state. Behind the woman were several laughing, awakened practitioners. One of them was holding a knife, and the other was holding a bottle of wine, swinging it alongside of the road. Chasing a waiter with low strength? It was just out of interest. He had nothing to do to begin with. Wouldn't it be wonderful to add an interesting story to this dull day? Daniel lifted his leg and walked towards the female staff of the Walker Family Branch Association, grabbing her wrist. Help me. The woman's eyes were full of pleading, and her chest heaved up and down. Bastard, we found that woman. Who are you? A few awakened practitioners saw that he had caught up from behind and surrounded Daniel and the woman. Let's kill him. Let's search him and see if he has any good stuff. If he has a token, we'll send it. A few of them reached out their hands happily. Then, their outstretched hands lit up. They looked down and saw that their hands had unknowingly fallen to the ground. Their wrists had been cleanly cut off, and blood was gushing out like a fountain. Oh! A few of them noisily rolled on the ground. Daniel flicked his fingers, and five shadows flew out. The noisy figures immediately stopped. Daniel looked at the woman with widened eyes and asked, How is the Walker Family Branch Association? Who attacked the Walker Family Branch Association? The woman was stunned. It seems to be called the Blood Evil Gang. As for the Blood Evil Gang, Daniel's eyes narrowed. 
In the Williams family, he did not hear about the elimination of the Blood Evil Gang. If that was the case, then there was a quota for the Blood Evil Gang. Daniel licked his lips. His Blood Evil Gang was a good person. Knowing that he lacked a quota, he took the initiative to take the token in front of him. Within the Walker Family Branch Association, the dazzling warehouse of the branch had become empty. Daniel and Lynn had already taken a lot of things with them when they went to the Williams residence. Now they had been completely robbed. If Fred were to be reborn, he would probably be so angry that he would vomit blood. The result of the ten years of hard work he had put in were cleanly eaten by a group of hungry wolves. The Blood Evil Gang's newly advanced small-scale strength was similar to the Rigid Pterygoid Association. It was in the early stages of accumulating strength and they always did things without any scruples. Apart from resources, they also had to take away the Walker Family Branch Association's population. Episode 242 The Blood Evil Brotherhood Fooled Soon, the place was crowded with people. All of them were wearing blood-red clothes, giving off a strong smell of blood. On this day, many lives were stained on the Blood Evil Gang's hands. Clap, clap, clap. A man clapped his hands and walked forward. Wonderful, you have killed a member of the Blood Evil Gang and saved the Walker Family Branch Association. Mister, tell me your name. Tell me who you are. I'm just a passerby. Daniel raised his head and looked at the leader who was in his early 30s. You are the leader of the Blood Evil Gang? Do you have a token in your hand? The Blood Evil Gang leader laughed loudly. Do I have a token in my hand? This is something I exchange for countless bloodshed. Kid, do you think you can afford this token? Daniel looked around and said, A bunch of trash. If you can have a token, why can't I? Kid, you're courting death. Do you know who my Blood Evil Gang is? The deputy gang leader roared at Daniel. His gang leader had been a famous bloodline warrior for a few years. The Blood Evil Gang had always been unscrupulous. The sect master of the Blood Evil Gang also looked at Daniel from head to toe. He kept thinking about things. He had never heard of this person in the City of the Ruins who was good at using some dark, attributed energy. It was obvious that he was an outsider from the City of the Ruins. He was just an idiot with a righteous heart. As for Daniel, who had shown off his might last night, the Blood Evil Gang did not think about him at all. Lightning, blood flames, spiritual attacks, blood red short thorns. The person in front of them was not the slightest bit worthy of the label that Daniel had. It was definitely not Daniel. How could he know that after Daniel's bloodline had awakened, his innate talent had undergone a tremendous change? Who would have thought that Daniel could awaken his bloodline in just one night? As for killing seven gene chain experts in one move, he, the Blood Evil Gang master, could do it with ease. Blood Evil Gang, chicken and dog, why don't you give me the token? It can be considered a waste to use it, Daniel said coldly. Kill. With the order of the Blood Evil Gang master, all the higher-ups of the gang attacked at the same time. The sky was covered with gene energy. Devil finger, thunderous ghost steps, 39 seals. Daniel's body shook. Dark shadows wrapped around him, and the ground sank like a swamp. The dark shadows extended outward. Dark domain. Dark mist rose, and countless dark figures floated in the mist. Buzz, buzz, buzz. The gene energy smashed into the dark shadow as if it had smashed into a ball of cotton. There was no explosion feedback at all. At the same time, in the drifting dark shadow, the Blood Evil gang members felt as if their bodies weighed thousands of kilograms. Low-grade awakened practitioners fell to the ground. Some of the higher grades awakened practitioners could barely stand, unable to move their bodies. He was a bloodline warrior. The Blood Evil Gang Master's expression was serious. It was obvious that he was an expert when he attacked. No one could suppress most of his subordinates with one move except Bloodline Warriors. Damn it. Why was the Blood Evil Gang's luck so bad? 
They had encountered a bloodline expert on the first day. Uh -huh. A miserable shriek was heard. The deputy chief who had followed the blood evil gang master for many years was killed by Daniel with a single strike. The gang master's eyes narrowed. This was a good opportunity, the only flaw in the opponent's attack. Blood Dragon Annihilation The fist force was like a divine dragon howling, a wisp of red blood rapidly shooting down from the sky. Rumble. Daniel let out a muffled groan through his nose. The majority of the gene energy was absorbed by the dark shadow armor covering his body. The remaining energy surged into his body, destroying his muscles and tissues without restraint. Daniel's cells detected the invasion of the strange energy. Like hungry wolves pouncing on food, they ate the invaders. A blood-red color had just risen on his back, but it quickly faded away, causing the blood evil gang master to tremble in fear. Was it because this kid's defense was too high? Or was his recovery ability too strong? The Blood Evil Gang's master gritted his teeth. If he couldn't kill the snake, he would hit it with his staff. He had to kill this unknown bloodline expert. Even if he couldn't kill him, he had to beat this unknown bloodline expert to submission. This way, the Blood Evil Gang would be able to save so much trouble. Bloodline Awakening, Flying Leaf Kill! The blood and spirit of the Blood Evil Gang's sec master surged. The gene energy rolled and rolled and both of his hands were aimed at Daniel. Bang, bang, bang. A series of blood red bullets shot out from his hands. The sect master of the blood evil gang seemed to have lost all his strength and was unable to recover. His blood and spirit quickly withered and his eyes became lifeless as he quickly retreated. It was a bloodline skill that could burn one's blood and spirit. Daniel was slightly surprised. In theory, it was somewhat similar to his blood flame wave. Poof, poof, poof. The blood red particles shot from different directions through the shadow curtains. The gray smoke was constantly stirred. Daniel's expression became even more shocked. His dark shadow domain could not stop this flying leaf absolute kill. It was worthy of being called a bloodline skill. The no beginning devil birth. Daniel turned into a dark shadow. At the same time, the nightmare devil shadow, who was under his feet, separated from Daniel's body. It was as if he had been split into two. The no beginning devil birth physique of the City of the Ruins? How could the blood evil gangmaster not know about it? Who was this man in front of him? He wasn't an outsider. He was the Daniel who caused a huge ruckus in the Williams family last night. How did his bloodline awaken so quickly? The blood evil gangmaster turned around and ran. He prayed in his heart that his flying leaf kill might be able to stop Daniel. That was true. The flying leaf kill would also burn the life of the person who attacked it. This could be said to be the foundation of his rampage in the outer perimeter of the city. Although Daniel was strong, as long as he withdrew from the no-beginning devil birth body, his blood and spirit would also wither. If I can't beat you, I can't outrun you. Puff, puff, puff. A series of penetrating sounds were heard. The blood red particles passed through the no beginning devil's body without any hindrance. The flying leaf absolute kill had locked Daniel down, but he had to go around a big circle to chase after him. Daniel's speed was extremely fast, and he had already blocked the way of the blood evil gang master. Boom. The blood evil gang master slammed his fist into the ground, and a large number of rocks fell on Daniel's face. Then he turned around and ran away. Where are you going? The nightmare devil shadow stood behind him and blocked the way of the blood evil gang master. One after the other, two dark figures blocked the way of the blood evil gang master. Ten minutes ago, the blood evil gang master was an arrogant man, but now his face was pale. The no beginning devil birth could be split into two? Then why didn't Daniel use it during the battle with the Chief Soldier Williams yesterday? Yesterday, Daniel was still a high level awakened practitioner. So how did he become a bloodline warrior today? Could someone suddenly become so much stronger in one day? Puff. 
The nightmare devil shadow opened his mouth, which was full of fangs, and his palm pierced through the heart of the blood evil gang's master. He started to laugh silently. In the last thought in his mind, the blood evil gang's master had an idea. The blood evil gang had been fooled. Daniel and Chief Soldier Williams had joined forces to deceive him. Daniel looked at it. He didn't even look at the blood evil gang master who was lying on the ground. It wasn't like him, he hadn't killed a bloodline expert before. He looked at the dozen or so blood evil gang members who were lucky enough to survive. With a wave of his hand, dark shadows and evil shadows danced wildly, 